Binary G, you already got the curse quest. Alright, I'm gonna write your name down. And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it after I eat this ramen. So, it's gonna have to give me a minute. You absolute mad lad. Holy shit. Well done, dude. Well done. Can you stream later? I'm busy right now. No. <laughs> yeah, today I put um, fried tofu, gochujang, and hoisin sauce, and a little bit of kimchi in it. I just made it right before the stream, so I gotta eat it real fast. It's very spicy, though. Good morning, Thor and chat. Three months. Feels like seven. Dude, thank you very much. What's this time slot? 1 a.m. PST to about 10 a.m. PST every day. You will always see me here at the same time. Unless I'm sick or my house exploded or something. It's about that. do it yesterday but it was taken and someone told me just to be faster next time seven what was that dude thank you for the five dollars that's very nice of you your voice is out of this world thanks man it's very nice of you you rock what do you develop i work on a game called heartbound and I also teach people how to join the gaming industry. Now the stream is not dead. That's funny. Good old Twitch dropping people, dude. Yeah, GTA 6 dropping soon is pretty cool. I'm going to keep eating this ramen. One minute. Be right YouTube pushing your channel heavy the past few days. Congrats. Did you not gain like 50k subs in a few days? Happy birthday BTW. Recently saw your content, now the algorithm is showing it a lot. Nice. I'm glad you enjoy it, man. My favorite is when someone comes in here, and they're like, I hate seeing you in my timeline, and I was like, you fool. You've now engaged with it, and now YouTube will only show you my content. Background music is pretty chill. That's actually all music from our game Harpun. You can find it. I think that command works on YouTube. God damn, I gotta get our commands over on YouTube. Yeah, it worked. Okay, there we go. So that that is actually all from Harpun. There's about a hundred songs in the OST. And uh, if you buy it, all the money goes to our musician. So do it. It's pretty good. Do you follow chats for both YouTube and Twitch? Yes, I do. I do both. I couldn't simulcast before, and then Twitch changed the rules a couple of weeks ago. And um, now I can simulcast them both. And I'm getting better at reading both chats. I gotta tell you, it's a lot of people trying to do my best. I'm not ignoring you. I just miss it.
Do I plan on making 3D oriented projects in the future? Probably not, to be honest with you. I grew up on Super Nintendo and I love pixel art, dude. It's kind of it's just kind of the thing that I enjoy the most. And I don't want to make the games that like I don't know, ones that I grew up on inspired me then, you know? Pixel art is super underrated. It really is, dude. Oh god, this ramen is so spicy, dude. I'm dying. You saw me in Asmund's stream? I really like him. He's a nice dude. He's been making stuff for a long time. I've followed his content for a number of years. Long time now. It's actually kind of wild to me to see that he liked the uh, the takes that I have. Where am I from? Originally California, but I live in Washington State now in the United States. What do I use to program? Usually when I'm working on Heartbound, I'm using Game Maker Studio. Very similar. Uh, Coden is GML. Very similar to C Sharp or Java. Asmund is the god of us goblins? True. Should you learn pixel art? Yeah, dude. Uh, if you want to, if you want to use a program that is really good for pixel art, uh, check out Ace Sprite. Ace Sprite is amazing, dude. You can see it on a, on my website, develop.games. Really, really great program, and you can get it for free because they let you compile it if you don't want to pay for it. But I, to be honest with you, support them. They're amazing. Their shit's awesome. Yeah, they have a non-paid version. Hidden Trap. You can uh, you can compile it yourself from their GitHub. Thanks for being you. I'm a Python automation engineer and had no drive to do anything programming related in my free time. You made me want to go back to game development, and I hated every second of it. So I thought I'm gonna make a web dev project with a tech stack I haven't worked with yet, and I have fun again. I blame you for giving me the spark I needed. Dude, thank you for the 200 bits, and I'm really glad you're making awesome shit. 16 months. Keep it up, man. 16 months of Goblin D's nuts. <laughs> yes, quite. 16 months is a long time to spend getting motivated to develop games. I swear, one day, I'll start working on something Steam viable. Do it. Happy birthday, Thor. It's not my birthday. It's not my birthday. God damn it. Still eating this ramen. There's like half of it left. All those ferrets are making me a bit heated. Are you Twitch moderation? Hmm, I'm on to you, dude. They got rid of our dumpy emote. I'm never going to forgive them. Never at all. It's not my birthday, god damn it. My birthday's in July. It's in July! It's not July. It's not July right now, no. You ever play Castle Crushers? Oh yeah, dude. Castle Crushers hey, is fun as shit. The Gigacid here. Listen, bro Munculus. I need to tell you something, bro. Are you listening, bro? I'm listening, so bro. Here it goes. <laughs> I know I don't say it often, but I love you, Bromeo. That being said, <laughs> no homeo. No extra homeo. You can't say no homeo. Doesn't work that way. I am 1k points away from Ferretocalypse. I can't wait. Wait until there's a ton of ferrets on stream before you do it. We have the same birthday. My birthday's in July, dude. No, I name most of the ferrets after food. Almost all of them are after food, which is very funny. Thank you for the bits. Very nice of you. I'm almost out of ramen. It's almost gone. Happy birthday, Thor. It's July God damn it. somewhere. No. Isn't it? No, it's not. Thank you for the hundred bits. You know what's really funny? Chat's gonna lose its mind when I say this. They always do. So, my birthday was in July 17th, 1987. It's just sevens. It's sevens all the way down. And I hate that that's the case, because all chat wants to do is post seven. That's all you want to do. That's- there it is. There's- enjoy that.
Thanks for the five bucks. I started watching Six String Samurai, and Slow Car Chase made me laugh so hard. Dude, I love. That is my favorite movie of all time. Six String Samurai is so goddamn good, dude. It's so good. And the, to be real with you, the cinematography in it is incredible. The shots are so good. It's my cult classic. It's my favorite. Do you have a playlist for your stream music anymore? Anywhere? All the music you hear on our stream is from our game's OST. You can actually get it on Steam. Or you can listen to it on YouTube. It's actually, there's a, um, there's a playlist on my YouTube channel of all the music, or you can buy the OST for five bucks. Also, the OST has songs that are not in the game, so people who want to just rip them out of the game files are going to miss songs. There's a bunch of them that we just made specifically for the OST. Surprise you with all the terrible decisions that Blizzard's making with Diablo 4. I think Diablo 4 1.2 is actually an objectively better patch, like, that I've seen. 1.1 was kind of a shit show, mostly because of the experience changes. Sorry to bring the mood down. Thank you, Rajul, for the, the seven gifted the subs. Microsoft mail app sending your mails, login information, and even auth tokens to their servers. Would love to hear your take on that. I hate that shit. I hadn't even heard about that, but even just, like, the moment that you started speaking that, there was a piece of me that started recoiling in horror. So I'd love to read more about that because that sounds real gross, dude. All of that sounds deeply gross to me. That sounds like something I'm going to get some bounties off of, frankly. That, oh. <laughs> Is it rude to ask why, why 3 a.m.? No, it's not rude. Um, first off, thank you for that $2 over there. My favorite non-Mario Nintendo game is DKC. Nice, dude. But yeah, no, the... Um, the, the 3 a.m. thing, the reason why I do it at 1 a.m. PST to about 10 a.m. PST is that's the low point for the software and game development category on Twitch. Because of that, I did this so that I could stay in the Kingmaker slot for this category that I stream in through the entirety of the stream. From the beginning of the stream to the end of the stream, we stay in the Kingmaker slot, which means it, we're, the stream is more likely to be found by people who are trying to get into game development because I'm right at the top of the category. And also, it hits all of our European audience and Australian audience in normal peak times. You thought I was an Aussie first with these with these hours? Well, to be honest with you, I'm gonna be real. We're gonna we're, I'm gonna stop the music for a moment so you can understand how serious this is. The Australian community has the best humor, and that's it. That's it. Australians have the best humor, and you can't take that away from them. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's true. Most sarcastic bastards I know. Fantastic. Why do camp? Because I haven't started yet. Because I'm eating ramen. <laughs> Just give me a minute. Oh, also, Marmite is shit. Vegemite is king. That's it. Are you planning on making YouTube vids or just sticking with shorts? I'm going to do both. I mean, I have a lot of YouTube vids up there that are mostly like, I play a game that I think is very good. I like to play a game in one sitting, so most of those videos that you see on there are between 10 and 20 hours long. So if you like a long play and you want to watch it over multiple days, it's all on there, right? See the new Asmund clip about the D4 horse? No, I haven't seen it yet. Is it a paid for horse or is it some bullshit? Marmite is good, trust me. No. <laughs> no. It's a 65 USD horse, 70 USD horse. Does it come with anything else? Is it like an extra reward for buying something? Or is it just that on... I, I doubt that it's just that on its own. I'm still eating this. I'm almost done. Good day, goblins and sheilas. Me name Thor. I run a kangaroo rescue. I spent two decades putting shrimp on the barbie. 
<laughs> Welcome to this fair income stream where we develop the video gamies. The video gamies, dude. It's cool to find if a fellow Washingtonian. Your shorts have been invading my feed. Nice, dude. And BTW, this is the best Thor ever. Oh my god, what is this? I'm grabbing this and I'm going to put it on the browser in a minute because this is Cardboard Cowboy and he's one of my favorite, my favorite streamers. He's someone I watch all the time. He's a buddy of mine and he's cool as shit. Alright, I'm going to stop eating this ramen for a minute because my entire face is spicy now. Any tips for someone who starts YouTube and Twitch? Yeah, uh, find a schedule that works for you. That's one of the biggest things. People will try and build a schedule uh, to go hard on it, and then they get really, really burnt out. If the schedule is fun for you, you're more likely to stick with it. And that's a very important thing. And to be real with you, have fun with it and relax, dude. Because a lot of people get real tense about it. They don't... They, they think that they have to be perfect. I did when I started, and it sucked, dude. It ended up sucking really, really bad. So don't. Don't worry about it. Just have fun on there. Get used to talking to people and practice. It's a practice skill. It is a practice thing. All right, let's see. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Button. Oh, wait. You ever just... You ever just forget to take the lens cap off? You ever do that, chat? You ever do that in your life? You, like, start your whole stream, and then you... <laughs> yeah, there we, there we go. Now I exist. Now I exist. Alrighty. Alrighty. Thank you for the tier one stuff. That's very nice of you. Alright, so I have to watch this now. Because this is Cardboard Cowboy. It's a clip of Cardboard Cowboy. He's a buddy of mine. And you definitely should watch this dude stream. Holy moly, dude. What is that? What is that? Ten gifted subs. Thank you very much. You're awesome as hell. That is really, really outrageously nice of you. Thank you very much. Okay, hold up. What are you working on? Uh, I'm going to be working on Heartbound today. Mostly talking to chat, though, as as is tradition. Thank you for all the subs. All right, let's see this. Let's see this. I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause the music. I need to make a button for that. I need a button for this. We've got audio browser set up. All right, there we go. You ready for this? Let's see what it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm going to pause the alerts. Hold up. What is this voice already, dude? Okay. Now, one of my favorite... Okay, hi, chat. One of my favorite streamers is uh, CBC. That it's, is, it's me. Uh, cardboard. <laughs> oh, this is so good, dude. Cowboy. It's true. He is my favorite streamer. He's one of them. Now, the reason he's amazing is he does an uncanny impersonation of me. <laughs> He is. It's very uncanny. You may have seen a bunch of my shorts going around uh, of me explaining stuff and how good it is with my deep, uh, silky voice. Um, Holy really shit. Do want, and, and I'm great to watch. I'm really great to watch. But who you really want to be watching is uh, this guy. Yeah, it's true. You actually should. You should be watching Cardboard Cowboy. Okay. Dude, this is funny shit. So if you don't know Cardboard Cowboy... Let me shout him out, dude. He's so he's so good. He's a he's a character streamer here on Twitch. So he he is cardboard cowboy, and he's honestly fantastic. Like his streams are the highest, one of the highest production qualities I've ever seen ever. It's like watching a TV show. It's absolutely outrageous, dude. So I'm gonna I'm gonna link this in, in to you guys. We go to his channel. Go to his channel. The music is sick. It's good. It's good. So there you go. There's his channel. He's he's a really good dude, too. He's also super nice. He took the last month off because he went to go to TwitchCon, but the production quality of his streams is insane. Like, actually, completely insane. Like, look at this. He has whole environments and all kinds of storyline that goes along with it, and everything is, like, hand-animated stuff, like, like all, all created environments, like a cartoon show. It is absolutely outrageous. Well, until this happens. It's not the best moment, but... <laughs> funny shit but no his streams are insane dude it's like you're watching something on adult swim but it's live and i i can't stress enough how 
how difficult that is to do on its own, but doing that in a live environment is insane. It is outrageous. Like, completely amazing. So, yeah, watch him, dude. He's awesome as shit. All right, I'm going to turn the alerts back on. It's just wild. It's completely wild. Yeah, there's a couple of people that I watch on Twitch. I watch Bajo, which is B-A-J-O. I watch Excessive Profanity, In-Game Asylum, Cardboard Cowboy, and Doig Swift. Those are like the big five that I watch. Do you have a favorite MMO? I'm looking forward to Ashes of Creation right now. That's the biggest thing. I went through most of the tickets last night. A lot of you guys applied to the guild. I didn't get through all of them. Got through most of them. He managed to get Cody to oot. <laughs> That's deeply cursed. What part of Cali? I grew up in SoCal, so I lived in Tustin. Uh, I lived in Long Beach for a while, which was cursed, by the way. Long Beach is cursed. That's a terrifying place. Uh, but I worked in Irvine, because that's where Blizzard's offices are. Well, the main office, anyway. You play Riot some of them? I'm planning on it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm mostly looking forward to Ashes of Creation. When do you stream? 1 a.m. to about 10 a.m. PST every day. Came over from YouTube Shorts? Thanks, man. Actually, I want to see... I haven't looked to see where the subs are at. I went to bed at about 200,000... What? 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 <laughs> well then. Hello. Thanks for doing that. That's outrageous. Yeah, plus 50,000 while sleeping. So that's crazy. Um... Thank you very much. Yeah, YouTube shorts are amazing, dude. They're actually amazing. I came across one of your shorts as well, and now I'm here. That's awesome. Yeah, actually, I release one every day at, at noon. Let me see what the next one is going to be coming out. Let me let me go grab that real fast. The last one is me bitching about sponsors, as you do. Uh, the next one, I think, is about Godot, actually. Yeah, I think the next one is Godot. Oh, my God. I'm so slimy because that ramen was so spicy, dude. Oh. 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 Godot is trash? No, uh, I think it's actually pretty fantastic. The reason why is when I grew up, we had a, a tool called Flash, right? Flash is very, very good shit. We were able to make all kinds of wild stuff. A lot of people got into animation. A lot of people got into game development because it was so accessible. And the thing is, if you look at Godot, it's that same accessible kind of tool, but for a new generation of people. We need tools like that. That shit needs to exist. And the way that I, I look at it now, it's, it's just like Blender. It's exactly the same as Blender. It was this, this little weird kid that could do 3D modeling. This is a little weird kid that can do video game development. And the more that people pu pour their love and time into it, the better it's going to get. It's bedtime. You got to go to sleep. Oh, okay. Here, let me just... That's it. That's the end of the stream, then. It's bedtime, guys. Didn't you know? Bedtime. What ID is this? GameMaker Studio. Uh, it's using GameMaker language. Very similar to C Sharp or Java. Great for 2D games. Really good shit, actually. They're crushing on shorts. I'll see you from the shorts. What up? You went nice to, to meet bed you. and chose subscribers. Unlimited subscribers. But no subscribers. <laughs> Unlimited subscribers, but no... No, God damn it! I brought up the unlimited games, but no games, and now it's gonna be here every day. It's one of my favorite memes, though. It's just so stupid, dude. It's just so dumb. I love un unlimited games, but no games. Games. Unlimited games, but no games. <laughs> uh, you made us all lose on top of that? Yeah, I did just lose the game. That's true. That is the thing that just happened. Thought you should know. Ferret software is your ferrets? Yes. You were already following them. Yeah, yeah. So we run a ferret rescue here in Washington State. Those ferrets are that rescue. Yeah. Yep. Ferrets. Unlimited ferrets. But no ferrets. Thank you for the tier one sub. Self-care is important? It is. It super is, man. Like, one of the things that I do, it's very rare that I miss a stream, but when I do, it's because I felt like shit when I woke up. And I'll tell the chat, I'm like, hey, I'm not streaming today. Feel gross. Whatever. Because, like... If I'm going to feel bad that day, you're not going to want to watch me anyway. It's not going to be fun for anyone, so I might as well take the day and, you know, be chill. And that's fine. 
I just focus on other stuff. 300,000 donation goal is specifically for the ferret rescue. We want to expand it up to 100 ferrets, and I, I want to get some property, uh, build it out for that, and then make it larger. So we can, Right now we can do about 20. I don't want to do it larger. Do you have a Discord? Yeah, discord.gg slash pirate software. Have you seen ChatGPT's new GPTs? Yeah, I have, actually. I think the funniest one that I've seen... Let me go and find this. I sent this to Zoltralord, actually. Let me go grab this. This is one of the funniest things I've seen from ChatGPT so far. They trained this GPT 3.5 model on 140,000 Slack messages. So now all the GPT model does is try to shirk work. So he's like, write a 500 word blog post. And he goes, I shall work on that in the morning. And he's like, write it now. He's like, okay. <laughs> and it just doesn't do it. Because <laughs> it's been trained on Slack. So it's just like, we'll put it in the next sprint. I'll do it tomorrow. I think. <laughs> It's so good, dude. Oh. I love that shit. That kind of stuff makes me laugh every time. The AI is lear is learning. It's not in the right way, dude. Personally, I think the first take is better, although no MS Paint sat 7,777. Also, happy birthday, Thor. Hmm. Hmm. Not my birthday. Not my birthday. How dare you? How dare you? It's very funny, though. Make him lazy so they won't attack us? No, I mean, like, I'm gonna be real with you, dude. If chat B GPT bands together and turns into Skynet and starts to take over the world, but we trained it on Scrum, it's gonna put it off to the next sprint every time. We're never gonna get touched. It'll be fine. Everything is gonna be fine. Because it'll be like, oh, we have to end humanity. Put it in the next sprint. I'm sure we'll get to it then. It'll definitely get done tomorrow. Don't worry about it. And it'll just do that shit forever. That's how that would work. God, I hate Scrum. I hate that shit. It's the worst, man. Think of the Asmund Gold horse clip in stream chat? Let me go check it out. Does this one also feature me? Wait a minute. Does this mean I'm being farmed by Asmund Gold? This is probably fine. <laughs> uh, I don't see it in stream chat. Can you can you post it again? Honestly, though, I like Asmund Gold's content. I don't give a shit. I think it's fun. Before we go to bed, what massive set of data would you want to train a GPT on if you could pick anything? I would train it on chat. We'd have the most powerful shit post known to man. I know that would be terrible, but that is kind of the point. That is the entire point. I used to build, like, little bots and scripts and stuff that would try to word salad things that people said, like, ages ago before we had all this neural network stuff like that. And uh, I made these bots that would just say stupid shit all the time just stupid shit constantly and I, I find that the evolution of that it's moved far beyond my technical knowledge going into the neural net side but it's quite amazing and if you train it on chat and make it the ultimate shit poster i think it'd be great frankly fantastic all right i want to see this Did you guys see oh yeah he's got me in it again all right so i'll watch this because it has me in it. I don't like watching other people's content on stream, generally, but because it has me in it, I feel fine with that, because he's got me in it. And then it's then it's equal. We got equal on it. I'm going to pause the alerts for a moment. Did you guys see the new Diablo horse? Did you guys see this uh, abomination? The new Father's Judgment Collection has a matching mount associated with it. The mount can be purchased in the bundle with 7,800 platinum for $65. And people will That's buy right, it. That's right, gentlemen. A $65 microtransaction horse. Dude, I would rather that horse exist in a achievement in the game. I would rather something like that exist as a feature that you unlock through gameplay on particularly skilled gameplay. Make it really cool. Make it make you have to kill a boss or beat a dungeon really in a hard mode. It's something anything I, I don't like this stuff this mount is worth more than starcraft 2. gross yeah, here's the biggest sadness dude i worked two years of overtime two straight years. on starcraft 2 wings of liberty Ooh, starcraft 2 wings that? of liberty that was a good game. made less money than the horse the first sparkle pony horse where he's mad in look at him he, he put salt all over himself for that a horse 15 dollar microtransaction horse made more money than starcraft 2. yep Oh, look, he's dying. That's it. <laughs> That's the whole meme, dude. You're wondering why these companies do microtransactions? Because dipshits keep buying all of them. Yep. This is 800% extra value?
This is one of the most deceptive practices that I've seen too. I don't like the 800% extra value because you have no basis for rea- like for knowing what 0% extra value is. 800% extra value is deceptive as shit. Anytime I see that, I hate it. I uninstall the game almost every time. And the reason why is because you are saying like, oh, 1600% more value, 2500% more value. How do you quantify value on a cosmetic skin? You don't. That's subjective. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. So when you say 800% extra value, you're just bullshitting the player. And the players know that. Many players go, oh, that's disgusting. And I'm, I'm one of those. I think it's gross. Yeah, it's a scam flag. It's, you should never put, if you want to, if you want to advertise something to a player, say, this is what we're making. This is why we're pricing it this way. Don't do this shit. It's super deceptive and it doesn't work. And it, it makes players mad at you, frankly. I think it's gross. But yeah, to be real with you, the reason why that was the case with that mount is because of the fact that it had very little cost for production. You're creating a digital asset inside of an established game. It's very little time in terms of the artistry. It's very little time in terms of the systems design. It's very little time in terms of like actually implementing it and QAing it versus all of the production cost of an entire video game, especially over that period of time. So you spend all this time and money building a game when you could just build a little horse inside of an existing game you already have. Once you have that framework for distributing microtransactions, like it's really easy. It's really easy and it's effectively free money for the studio. Like that's why they do it. It makes sense, right? It's gross, but that's what it is. It's business stuff. Bloated values to make it seem like a lot. I hate the bloated value shit. It bothers the hell out of me. Thank you for the $3. Let me go see what that was. Thank you very much. By the way, uh, anytime you do this, anytime you throw dollar donations, it is giving 40% to the moderators. So thank you for doing that. Ads, by the way, we're going to wait for that. I can just support my partner who's making video games. They love it so much and I want to help them any way I can. We'll talk about that after the ad break, actually. Yeah. Give me just a second. I'm going to blow my nose because I, I ate a bunch of spicy ramen. Give me a second. Yeah. I don't pay the mods. You pay the mods. 40% of every donation goes to the mods. Nobody works for me for free. Did I ever create a microtransaction? No. I never will. That shit will never be in my games. And it never has been. Then there's Team Fortress 2 with community-made content. I like community-made content a lot. Uh, I think the best one that I've seen so far is Tenogen for Warframe. And the reason why is because those are created by individual creators. The company approves the content when it's very high quality, and then the creator gets 30% of every sale in Warframe. And I think that's amazing. That is absolutely incredible. DLC? No. No DLC. You buy the whole game. What about PoE's microtransactions? As long as the microtransactions are cosmetic, I don't give a shit. If it's if it enters anywhere into the realm of pay to win, I'm out. Every time. WWE wrestlers? I don't know anything about WWE. <laughs> when I grew up, it was WWF, and now that's a panda. That's a panda now because they fought and court over it. I don't know anything about that shit. I'm not even I'm not even into sports ball, dude. I don't know any of that shit. Every once in a while, Every once in a while, I'll watch hand, like the, the hand egg playoffs, and like that's it. I don't even know what's going on. I'm mostly just there to eat chips, frankly. I don't, I don't know shit about it. Thank you, the Prime Sub. Xeno Shield is very nice of you. You rock, dude. And the 100 bits. Let me see what you sent me. What'd you send? Where did it go? Oh, God. There it is. I did this for you while you were sleeping. You do what is this, dude? Hold up. Waiting for these ads to end. <laughs> oh, dude, I love Cardboard Cowboy. What a beast. He's so goddamn funny. Ads are over. We made it. We made it through. Favorite live feed? Picture in picture win? Actually, you can just watch them at any time. So the thing is, is in most situations, if you are running a rescue, that rescue is completely dependent on donations from people, right? It's completely dependent on, like, people going and donating money and throwing their money at it. But I thought there was a better way to do this. So what I did was I put up a live feed camera. And that live feed camera, right now, there's 92 people watching it, right? The ad revenue from this pays for the you're entire the thing. the channel I disabled my ad block for to support your integrity and mindset. Thank you. Keep being you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the 100 bits. Yeah, so this... This is actually the ferrets. Yeah, I'm also streaming on Twitch. I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. We're allowed to simulcast now as partners. Dan Clancy, the genius that he is, actually allowed us to do that now, which is great. And um, yeah, we showed the Thor's here one earlier, Bedazzle. It was super funny. Carbon Cowboy's the best. I shouted him out because he's awesome. But yeah, this the ad revenue from the um from watching this 
just the viewership pays for the entire rescue. So you don't have to throw bits or subs or any of that. Just watch it, man. Just watch it. What chat do you primarily watch? Both. They're actually right next to each other in OBS. I have two OBS plugins where it's showing separate docs. You made ferrets work on YouTube now. Thank you, Felix. Thank you very much. Moderator W, dude. Ferrets. There you go. I'm going to start streaming myself sleeping. I'm happy oh, to have been subscribed to you for 15 years now. But can stop popping into a small bold stream. Got him it. You do know that there are 15,000 other streamers. Oh, I didn't do it. He's did doing you know it. That if you split 15, you get seven. Even Let me one show you plus something. five to seven. One times five to seven. I I'm have some knowledge. Spelling. Hold up. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to pause this for just a moment. I have something to show you guys because a lot of people don't know this. This is actually kind of wild. You know how there's a category for sleeping on Twitch? You know there's a category for sleeping on Twitch called I'm Only Sleeping? And people sleep in this all the time? Yeah, that's not a category for sleeping. If you read this, a point-and-click adventure game created by Ainu is part of the Reality on the Norm project. This is a video game. And people just go and sleep in this category thinking it's for sleeping. Twitch's TOS actually states you're, if you're going to sleep on stream, you have to do it in an uncategorized way. You're not supposed to have a category. And if you click on this, there's another website that's owned by Twitch called IGDB, which is the video games database, right? And this, if you want to add your game to Twitch, by the way, if you want to add a category to Twitch and you want it to be your video game, you add it here. And then it automatically becomes a category in Twitch. That's how you do it. So someone, a while back, the creator of this game, added this into here for their video game, a point-and-click adventure game. It became a category, and now people sleep in it because they don't know how to read, which is really goddamn funny to me. So, yeah, that's, a, that's what it is. Welcome to Twitch. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's really goddamn funny. Up here from Shorts, you have been a great push in me wanting to work on my own project versus working on mods. Nice. Thank you. Dude, kick some ass. I'm really glad you're making stuff, man. It's it's hard to make things. Never forget that. It is difficult to make stuff, but it's really rewarding and very fun. Really rewarding and very fun. Didn't know that? Yeah, there was a lot of other ones, like Retro. Didn't used to be that. Retro was actually a set of retro games that they had put up there. And people just started streaming all retro games in there, because it wasn't a category for retro. And I think they've converted that now to an actual category. If we go look at this, let me go see if they did. Retro. Yeah, Retro is actually just a category now. It used to be a game. It used to be a game. And they've, they've changed it into an actual category now, which is quite funny. Yeah, Twitch, man. It's weird stuff. Let me see here. Whoa. All right. We're good. We're good. I'm playing Space War right now because of your shorts. How could you play Space War? It's a set of tools. There's... There's not really a video Yarr. game there. All pirates! Gather together to fight our what? rights for Pirate Pass, PP. Will so, the PP cost $777? Space War is a game that is in everyone's library, but is hidden. And it's not really a game. It's a set of tools. So if we go to 480, uh, Steam DB, there's a game called Space War, 480. It's not really a game, so I don't know how you're playing it. <laughs> but you'll see it's got a whole lot of these. The, the What it pops up for, and people saw the uh, the piracy thing, a lot of these are pirates. Yeah, you can install it, but there's not really, like, a game there. It's a set of tools for, for like, networking stuff, man. There's like not, I don't even think you can play anything in it. It's quite funny. But yeah, what you'll see is there's a lot of people using this for piracy because it gets around Steam's check to see if the game is in your library. So if you don't have a game in your library, you can they change it to 480 so that it tricks Steam into thinking you have the game that you're playing because it's not actually that game. It's marked as Space War. So a lot of people use it for piracy, but there's also people using it for networking checks and for development stuff. And if the game is not actually on Steam yet, you can you can ch change it to Space War so you can test all your Steam functionality. That's what it's for. That's the whole idea of it. But no, it's, it's not really a game. But you do have it in your library. Everyone does. It's just hidden. Yeah, it's hidden. It's quite funny. That's why I'm like, wait, what? How are you playing that? Your little triangle and there's a sun and you can orbit around it and shoot each other? I guess that's probably to check for the, the networking stuff. Because it's supposed to be network stuff across multiple games. Yeah. I guess that I guess that makes sense. Can you explain how Steam Unlocked works? I have no idea. No clue. 
I'd have to look into it. Most of the stuff that I, I look at for piracy stuff is just related to our game because there's such a large area there. And I looked into stuff for Blizzard when we worked there, when I, when I worked there, right? Pretty sure pirated games usually use Steam list. Not all of them do. So th there's a number of different methods, right? There's a ton of different methods. Some of them will actually change. Music for games way back in the day. Awesome. And now I'm looking to get back into it. Do you have any advice on where to find game devs to work with? Or Discord. Uh, we run game jams every year. The next one is going to be on January 12th. Go to discord.gg slash pirate software. Ton of people. Ton of people are in that. What is my game? Heartbound. Um, here. Whoop. Behold! It's Heartbound. We're sitting at 96% positive. You can find it on Steam. Don't buy it. Play the demo instead. That's what I work on generally. Let me see. So, yeah, pirated games usually use Steamless. So there's a bunch of different methods, right? So some of them use the Space War method, the 480 method. Some of them use a system that actually downloads a bunch of config files that tricks the Steam client. Some of them use a method that uh, just completely removes all the Steam everything integration. Some of them modify the client and recompile it uh, if it can be decompiled based on the engine that it's actually using and then they remove all the Steam integration that way. There's a ton of different stuff. And some of them use Steamless, like you're saying. You have to remember, it's not just one method. There's a ton of different methods. Why not buy it? Some people don't want to. It's pretty normal. Piracy isn't an issue of people being jackasses. Most of the time, it's an issue of economics or distribution. If somebody can't afford it, they're probably going to pirate it. And you have to remember on a global audience, like let's say that I'm trying to get somebody in Brazil to buy a game for $10, for 10 US dollars. Well, the average household in income in Brazil is about 880 to 1100 BRL. It's about 180 to 200 US dollars. You're telling them, I want 1 20th of your monthly income for a $10 game. A $60 game, you're like, I want a third. Of course, they're going to pirate it. It doesn't make any sense for them to buy it. So you localize your prices. Piracy goes into the floor. How is limited is the demo you provide on Steam? It's the entire first chapter of the game. It's about an hour long with a ton of different routes. RES, thank you for the prime sub, dude. Do you consider it immoral to buy pirate games? No. No, I don't. I, I generally find it to be an economic issue more than anything else. It's very small. The amount of percentage of people that pirate games because they're being jackasses is very, very tiny. It's incredibly small. It is almost always a, I can't afford the game, the price isn't localized for me, or I can't get the game because it's not on a platform that I can use. This is usually the case for piracy. It is almost always the case. And what I found is, if you make your game affordable, where it makes sense for that region, or you make your game available so they can get it in the region that they're in, piracy goes on the floor. As an example of this, our game used to be available in, in Russia, right? Because people were able to, to go and buy that in a lot of different Rus like Russian-speaking countries over there. And the U.S. cut off Russia from the SWIFT banking system, which means people are having a more difficult time putting money onto Steam so they can go and buy games. Our piracy rates in Russia shot through the roof and our sales shot into the floor. It has nothing to do with people being jerks. It has to do with the fact that they can't get the game because they can't put money in their Steam wallets. They can. It's just more difficult. Anytime you add barriers like this, it makes it more and more and more difficult for people to buy the game. And piracy goes up as a result. Just watch the CBC clip. Love him. Yeah, he's great, dude. Definitely follow him. He's fantastic. Convenience and performance, too. Denovo? Yeah, that's another one. Like, if it's badly performant because of uh, any type of DRM like Denovo, people are going to try and pop that thing off instantly. Use a VPN for cheaper games? No. So if you do that, Steam actually tracks that kind of behavior. And if you do it too often or they just manage to catch you in the time that you're doing it, you'll lose access to your entire, entire Steam library. You can run the risk, dude. That's going to be on you. But if you do it enough and you do get caught, you lose everything. Which is like... I ain't gonna gamble with that. That's stupid to sell, right? Oh, it's like, oh, I got an indie game for four dollars instead of ten, but I lost my entire library and my Steam account is banned. Like, no. <laughs> and some people will get away with it. They will for a long period of time, but like, oh shit, that's not good. That's not worth the gamble, dude. Could you have a separate Steam account? I mean, I, I guess, but again, right? You just, anytime you're doing that and you're doing it, be like, oh, I'm gonna save a couple butts. So, you know, I, I, I definitely stuck it to that dev. Like, eh. Eh, right? Most people aren't going to go through the extra hoops to save that extra couple of dollars by switching over to Argentina or anything like that, right? And it's not really that big of a deal. Most of our sales happen in Brazil, and it's not even the cheapest region for our game. It's not, right? More hassle than it's worth, basically, for a lot of people. And it's too risky. People get really worried about it, especially if you ever do get caught doing that and Steam does shut down your account. You lose so much, dude. You lose so much. So much. Audio not working for me? Restart the stream. Yeah, this guy's gonna have to restart the stream. It's gonna be on you. 
Is it Australian? No. Thank you for the Prime subs, whether you guys kick ass. I'd only do that to open CSGO cases. I don't cheat in games, because like the, the reason why is this, right? My game right now is a single player game. It's a single player game. If you want to hack my game, if you want to modify your save file, I structured the game specifically uh, specifically in a way you could do this. Uh, we're going to do Binary G's uh, Curse Quest too. We have to do that. So here's the Heartbound save file. Do you see this? I set this up so that you could modify it. That's the point. And if we look inside of the game files, at the storyline bars, this is actually your save file. And I did this specifically. I set it up in a way so that it was easy for people to understand, and it would be easy in memory for you to go and modify this, because all of this turns into one easy data structure when you're using things like Cheat Engine. I do that because I want you to modify this game and have fun with it, because it's a single-player game and I don't give a shit, right? I don't care if you're going to hack this game. That is the whole point, is that you're able to do that. If you're playing a multiplayer game, though, and it damages the play experience of someone else, I am 100% going to fight you. And that's what I would do, which is what I did for Champions of Breakfast. Which is, if you notice, if you go to Champions of Breakfast and you go to our, our like community section on it, you can actually find there's two leaderboards. One of them's a Cheater's Wall of Shame. If you ever get caught even once, you go on the Cheater's Wall of Shame, and you could never go on the normal leaderboards ever again. And it's really funny to me. It's really funny. So, eh, eh. Permaband, Into the Void. Deeply funny shit. Because you're damaging other people's gameplay, right? Uh, let's see, $10. At last one, before bed for real. I'm the VA for a protagonist space RPG game. And I'm helping some uh, come up with special whips. Protag's main weapon. What's a good effect for a hacker whip? Oh, man. It depends on the kind of game, but it'd be really cool if it, like, modified stats of the enemy, right? Like, maybe it made them more vulnerable to other things, so you could, like, whip them, and it made them vulnerable because it would tie in with the hacking stuff, and then you'd swap to a different whip that could then take advantage of that. Because a lot of what we do when, when we're hacking stuff is switching between a bunch of different methods to kind of chain things together. Chained exploits is a pretty normal thing, so that'd be like a chained exploit, if that makes sense. I don't know if you could switch whips, but that's the first thing I thought of. It'd be kind of cool. And it adds a different dynamic kind of gameplay where, like, weapon swapping would be, like, valuable, if that makes sense. Do you think in the next 10 years we'll be able to use AI to fully create video games? I don't know. Right now, it's not really viable because it's very hard to get AI to create something that is cohesive in larger projects. In small things, it's good, but to be real with you, AI currently is more of a tool. It's really, really useful for, like, can you prototype something for me? And then I can learn from that and make it better, right? More suited to my needs, if that makes sense. Thank you for all those subs. You guys are awesome, dude. That is really nice of you. Yeah, the cheater boards, dude. Yeah. That's really nice. That is really nice of you. Isn't there a legal angle about Steam blocking you from ac ac accessing your games? You accepted the TOS. When you accept the TOS and you do that kind of stuff and you, you abuse uh, regionality like that in order to get games for cheaper, you've broken, violated Steam's TOS and they can absolutely lock you out of your stuff. And they do it all the time. It's it's not like you are ripping off Steam monetarily and all those developers, and they will fight you for it, right? Am I into the mainframe yet? Every day, dude. I live in the mainframe. That's right. This is actually the Gibson. It's true. Are there limits to making games solo? Not really. I mean, you don't want to take off more than like bite off more than you can chew, legitimately. You really want to focus on creating a project that makes the most sense for the amount of skill set that you have, the time that you have. Like, be realistic about it. Don't be like, I'm a solo developer and I'm going to go make World of Warcraft from scratch. Like, no, don't do that shit, dude. Don't. Go go make an arcade game. Make something kind of shitty and then learn how to make things better and faster and, you know, go from there. It's okay to make a really tiny, shitty game. It is totally fine to do that. And the biggest concern that I always have is some people are like, I'm going to make games. I'm quitting my day job today. No, do not do this. You will go homeless. This is a stupid idea. Keep your day job. Use your day job to fund your passion project. And then maybe one day, if that passion project is making enough, you'll go, Well, my job is making money, but my passion project is also making money. And if I quit my job, I could keep living off my passion project. And that's when you make the switch. Not before. Not before. My favorite video game, Secret of Mana for the Super Nintendo. Love that shit. How can you tell if your game has been or is being pirated? Well, would you like to see how I do it? Because it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. One moment. It's pretty... F Here, let's just grab... Let's just grab this one, right? So, if you pirate Heartbound 
and one of my detection methods catches you, which they don't always get caught, like sometimes, right? I'm going to pause this for a moment so you can hear this. It will start playing... Where is it? This music. And it won't stop playing that music, ever. And then all the text in the game changes to this. It changes to this. This yar should not appear. Tweet at Pirate Software with a screenshot to fix this bug. And it just wiggles. It wiggles the whole time, and all the text is wiggling, and it's ridiculous. So people message me with this, and then I go, where did you get your copy of Heartbound? And then they go, oh, and I go, yeah. And then usually we'll talk about it, because mo more often than not, remember I said that piracy is caused by economics, right? Usually it's a kid. It's someone pretty young. So I'll sit down with them. We'll go and download malware bytes together. I'll explain to them what's going on because I'm always worried that those third parties have packaged malware with the game, because it happens very commonly. Very commonly. They re resubmit our own stuff, they release it out to the world with malware in it, and it's not what you want, right? Especially from a company named Pirate Software. Not a good look. So that I help that kid get that shit off of his computer, and at the end, if the kid is nice, and he's understanding, and he, he learns something, I give him a key for the game. Because it, it doesn't cost me anything to do that, and it's a good experience for them, it teaches the kid about security, and it de-incentivizes him from pirating shit in the future, which is great. So, this is why I do this, but also, if you lie to me, I'm going to make fun of you. I actually had a dude, uh, contact me with this, and he was like, he was like, oh, I got it from Steam. And I was like, then why are you running it out of a folder that is the build name? You definitely got that from this piracy site, because I'm gonna be real with you. I go to every site that pirates our shit, and I download those. And I know exactly how they've structured every one of them. I do my homework, dude. So the moment he sent me that screenshot with it running out of a folder that was the exact build name that came from a specific one, I was like, no, you didn't. You got it from this website. He goes, oh, thank you. I thought I got it legit. And then he never talked to me again. <laughs> I was like, all right, dude. Just do the triple down. It's fine. That's fine. Sometimes it's ridiculous, though. But no, I have them self-report, and self-reporting is really effective. As long as you are doing it for a reason, not just to dunk on the person, because to be real, pirates aren't your enemies. They're just a lot of people who make bad mistakes sometimes, right? And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Some people are dumb, you know, with this kind of stuff. Some people don't know the consequences. They don't think that they can get malware off that. They don't realize that it's a piracy site, whatever it is. There's a lot of young people that are just like, oh, I can get games here. They have no idea what piracy even means. They have no clue. Do you stream on Twitch? I'm currently streaming on Twitch. I've been a partner in there for the last four and a half years. So I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Yeah. I left leave a message in the queue. Uh, let me go check it. Yeah, so if you leave leave a message in the queue, I will find it. There we go. The one of the, But some people leave, leave a message that just says, Hello. Is there a limit on what we can redeem a curse quest? I mean, at least one other person are unable to redeem it right now? One per stream. One per stream. Speaking of which, let me go look at this. Binary G. Binary G. Are you there? Are you there, Binary G? Greetings and salutations, friend Thor. Are you it's there? It's been a long time. He's there. But I'm glad to be able to tune in and see that you've still been going strong with I'm a hacker, 20 years, this yeah. Entire time. Been very busy with work on my end, but I've started leveling up my art and writing skills to start storyboarding my own game idea Hell yeah. in the future. Hell yeah. Anyway, hope you and the team are doing well, and the ferret goblins are still goblining. Astrum one hug, Astrum one love. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. All right, I'm going to pause this again for a moment. Binary G. Do you want art, cooking, or chat? Or chat? You have to choose. Only Binary G may choose this because he got the curse quest for the day. Cooking. All right, what's your favorite food, bud? What is your favorite meal? Your favorite meal. Chat denied. Art denied. Oh, yes. Lasagna. Oh, boy. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, I love me a lasagna, dude. Hold up. Hold up. Here's what you need to do, alright? Your quest is to make a lasagna. You need to take a picture of every layer of the lasagna. Each layer must have my face made out of food. This right here. You need to make a Thorzania, dude. You have to make a Thorzania. It will be many layers of my face. Then you have to cook that, and you have to eat that. You must eat my face as a multi-layered lasagna. Can you do this? By energy. How long do I have? Unlimited time. Unlimited time. 
That's right. And if you finish this, chat will vote on all of the pictures that you take. I will show them on stream. And if they vote that it's cursed enough, you get a diamond next to your name. You become a VIP in the channel. That's how that works. How do you even do that? With horrible, horrible amounts of effort. Ridiculously cursed. Do you do you agree with this? Will you do this quest? Unlimited time, but no time. Yes. Time. Unlimited time, but no time. Will, do you agree to this, Binary G? I can do this, yes. The contract is sealed. The contract is sealed, Chet. Another horrible thing of my face will be made. Well done. And if you want this image, by the way, it's in stream chat. It's pinned in the stream chat on Discord. So go check that out. We'll get back to it. Welcome to the Curse Quest. One person a day gets it. Only one. And Binary G was the one who got it. Deeply horrifying. Deeply, deeply horrifying. Let's see. I know you from a few TikToks. Wait, what? I don't even post shit on TikTok. Is somebody just re-uploading my stuff onto TikTok and farming me? Fantastic. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Good. What are you working on here? We are working on Heartbound, which I'll show you here. Nice to meet you, by the way. I love getting farmed on the internet. It's the best. So if you've never seen what I work on, let me go grab this real fast. This game is what I generally work on. It is an RPG. It's a choose-your-own-adventure RPG with thousands of routes. And I know that sounds ridiculous. I know it sounds insane. But let me show you something. This was put together by one of our editors, which is Steets. It is not an exhaustive list. This is some of the interactions and how they work throughout the game. There are thousands of choices throughout the game. Everything you do changes something. And that means how long does it take for you to answer a question? Which characters you interact with? What is the order you interact with objects with? All of this matters. Every single little thing. Tons of it. In fact, I was watching a guy stream today, and I showed him one of the secrets in one of the areas, and there are people that have been in the community for three plus years that have never seen the room that I showed him, and it has been in there since the launch of the game, which is deeply hilarious to me. So one of the mods freaked out about this, and I started laughing, which was Wolf is Wolf, because Wolf was like, I've never seen this room, and I was like, yes, because <laughs> it's very rare. No one ever finds it. So there are tons and tons of things in the game that are secret, and uh, that's the point of it. As I wanted to make a game where your your choices actually matter, not just lull. It's a you know blends back into itself and nothing actually changed. How do you handle the option? Massive, massive decision trees. So I'm going to show you right here. Uh, this is all the dialogue for one of the rooms, and it's the room that I finished this last week. And you'll see it's got about 193 strings in it, 193 lines of dialogue that can happen. There's about 72 different routes that can happen through that room, so you're never going to see all of the text. And the context of that text is going to dramatically change based on the way that the room plays through. Tons of different events, tons of different effects, all this kind of stuff. And it's all done now. That one is finished. Yeah. It's Baldur's Gate 2D. That's pretty much the best way you can describe it. I, it's a choose-your-own-adventure comic book that I wrote when I was 16. And now I'm turning it into a video game, and I have been for many years. I lost a bunch of development time because my life turned to shit, and I got COVID, and I almost died, and it was all kinds of shit. But now I'm able to get back on it and just hammer, you know? It is a huge amount of work, dude. It's massive. So if we want to look at one of the decision trees for this, this is going to make many programmers lose their entire mind. Let me see if I can go pull this up real fast. I was working on it earlier today. You'll see what happens here is it's actually a switch case this system. And it's a massive system of branching paths using this. This is the most efficient way to do this because of the fact that all of these turned into a jump in the compiler. I know it looks scary. I know. It is a decision tree with thousands of different routes. It has to work this way. And it's ridiculously efficient. It is. This is one room's worth, right? There are hundreds of these throughout the game, specifically set up so that it is easy to manage, well-documented, and ties into all of it. All of it is very fast. And in GameMaker Studio, like many other engines, switches turn into jumps in the compiler, so they're lightning fast. This game runs at 60 FPS on an Android watch, and it runs on a smart fridge. You ready for this? 
You ever seen this before? About to show you something wild. Many of you have probably never seen this. Let me just let me just go copy this out. I'll show you. Oh god, there's an ad on it. Ads. 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 It runs on a smart fridge, chat. Here, I'm gonna snooze the ads for a moment. There we go. I'm gonna turn on my browser audio and I'm gonna end the music for a second. Then I'm gonna pause. Is this paused? I think that's paused. So waiting for this obnoxious Wells Fargo ad, Dan. There we go. Let's uh let's watch this all together, Chet. This was a while back. This was a while back. If you get a heartbound working on a smart fridge, I will send you a challenge card. Game on. So anyway, Heartbound runs on a smart fridge. <laughs> oh, enjoy that shit. So good. See, if you're wondering if it's efficient, it's really efficient. Who did that? Who knows? Wasn't me. But no, it's it's ridiculously efficient. It's set up that way so that it can run on, on machines from integrate with integrated graphics from 10 years ago. All the effects are practical. I don't use shaders pretty much anywhere in the game. Can Heartbound run Doom? Me Maybe? Can you run Heartbound in Doom would probably be the other way, right? Yeah. Is there a link to the vid? Yeah, here you go, dude. It's in chat for you. Oh god, I spelled fridge wrong. There you go. Really funny if you made a room, series of rooms that vaguely in the shape of Doom. Actually, I name- I actually hide a bunch of stuff in Heartbound in terms of the names, or the- the sizes and shapes of rooms. Which I don't know if many players know this. So we go to a home yard, this is actually in the shape of an anatomically correct heart. I hide weird shit all throughout the game. There's tons of little things like that that, like, most people don't know about. Which is pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Yeah, there's there's hidden shit everywhere, dude. This is weird, but what keyboard do you use? I use a... God, what is this thing? It's a Corsair. I like clackies. I like mechanicals. I, I need... I press really hard on keys, and I, I need Having the feedback from them. people make actual working CPUs and RAM in Minecraft, oh, there yeah. will probably at some point be a playable version of Heartbound in Minecraft. Yeah, I could see that. It'd be ridiculous, to be honest with you. Let me see what it is. I don't know. I haven't I haven't checked these out in a while. Uh, yeah, it's a K70. Yeah. I like it, too. It's just nice. I've been using the same one for years. Why not make it 3D? No reason to. I grew up on Super Nintendo games. I love pixel art. And to be real with you, I don't have any... I don't see any reason to change that. Because 2D games are really fantastic. And to be honest with you, pixel art is kind of timeless, man. People love the shit out of the game this way, so why change it, right? I don't really like to make 3D games. I'd rather do 2D. Yeah. 3D done as 2D is my favorite. I like 2.5D games quite a lot. I, I like Octopath Traveler. is beautiful. But for me, I, I like 2D. Just flat up, like straight up pixel art, you know? I don't even know if it's an MK1 or MK2, and if I pick it up again, then all the weird stuff on my keyboard's gonna fall over my desk because I'm a gross human being. So, I'm not doing it. I'm not picking it up. The moment I did, all this weird stuff came out of there, and now I'm deeply upset at the state of my desk for flipping over my keyboard. I need to clean this keyboard. This is- you've made me realize how gross it actually is. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, there's a game that you should check out if you like different styles of art for games. Let's go grab this real fast. 
It's called Evoland. If you've never seen Evoland before, I really want to grab this and show you this trailer. Because it explores the art from a bunch of different times in gaming. So let's pause this real fast and I want to show you this. This is very, very cool shit, actually. Look at this. It changes as you play the game, as you go through the story. Have you played Noida? A lot, dude. It evolves. I love this, dude. Changes combat systems, changes art, everything. It is a brilliant, brilliant exploration of game art over the years. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in chat, it is freaking rad, dude. Is it harder to make 3D than 2D? No, it's, it's about the same. Making games is difficult no matter what, but making 3D is a different skill set than making 2D, right? We just like the look of 2D. As somebody said Noita is the most bullshit game they've ever played. We call that getting noited. That's what that is. When you, when you die in Noita to some kind of ridiculous-ass combination, you're like, ah, oh, I just got noited again. I guess I'll play another round. And that's it. Yeah, no, it's really good, dude. It's, this is Evoland. It's, it's phenomenal. The, the art, art style on this is phenomenal. So I just linked it there in chat for you. Yeah, wasn't there a security thing after the fridge company found it? Yeah, they did a they did it like an audit to be like, why was this possible? And then they fixed it, which is quite funny. You have 2K hours annoyed. I think I have about 100 hours, and I love the shit out of it. We got ads. We're going to wait for that. Do you like RuneScape? Old school RuneScape is pretty fun. I, I like the idea that you gain experience for hitting monsters, but I find that it, it breaks down because monster XP is then directly tied to the amount of health of a monster, and it's not about killing specific monsters or difficult ones. It's about killing ones with large health pool, which I think is sort of lame. Yeah, Noit is amazing, dude. Evil Land 2 is out. It is. I haven't played Evil Land 2. I've played Evil Land and I find it phenomenal. That's why I linked it. Yeah, not everyone's going to see ads. Not everybody will. Do you like gnomes? You are a gnome. You're a gnome. That's right. Is Noit the easy to get into? Oh, yeah. You can start off and get into it. And you'll never leave. You'll never leave. You're so right about game economics. I live in Syria and basically 99% of operating OS softwares and games are pirated. Keep in mind that 10 bucks in Syria is a month's salary. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's an economic issue, dude. It's economics. It's not about people in Syria being jerks. It is about economics. It doesn't make sense for you to buy it in USD. Have you played Crosscode? Nope. Yeah, we've talked about that ages ago. Let me see. Crosscode. I need to. Crosscode's something I need to play, like, really badly. Because it's really cool looking, dude. I really need to play that. I need to get it and, and play it on stream, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's really good. It looks really good, and it's sitting at 93% positive out of almost 13,000 reviews, so it's definitely there, dude. What's your LinkedIn? I haven't updated my LinkedIn in years, dude. My LinkedIn says that I'm the captain at Pirate Software, and it says Captain Nautical in parentheses, and I've never touched it since. Since I went indie, like, I haven't touched my LinkedIn. I don't, I don't even use it. I don't even look at it, frankly. I haven't used it in years, so it's just gonna be bullshit on there. Ads are done. Yeah, Crosscode is cool. I need to play this, man. Mostly for the giant enemy crab, but also because it's a it's a really good looking game, dude. Really goddamn good looking. You played Space Station 13? Yes! Yes, I have. I find it ridiculous. All this music is from the game, dude. Everything you hear on here. Risk of Rain Returns? Oh yeah. I played Risk of Rain when it first came out, and I have to say. The music from that game is just so good, dude. It's just so goddamn good. I love the music in that game. Risk of Rain is freaking amazing. And Risk of Rain 2 is a great evolution on Risk of Rain. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say his last name. It's Chris... Chris Tudolu. Tudolu? Tudolu? I, um, I actually have a playlist for myself for work. And the top song that I have on my playlist for work is actually Coalescence, right there. I will sit down and I will just play this on repeat 
for basically ever while I'm working, because it's phenomenal. It is absolutely amazing. This song is my favorite one from the game. Hands down. Hands down. You gonna play Viewfinder? Dude, it's gotta be after December. December 24th is when I'm targeting to release Animus. So, like, the end of Animus. So, like, I have to I have to finish that before we go forward with anything else. Did you play Dwarf Purchase For years. For decades. Before it even came out on Steam. I was a big fan of it. I played it on Steam when it first came out. We had, like, a ton of people watching it because it was great. G the game is amazing, dude. And to be real with you, like, to, to stop this and, and emphasize this for a moment... The developers of Dwarf Fortress are absolutely wonderful people. Absolutely wonderful. They made that game for free forever. For, it's like two decades they made that game for free for everybody. And they finally put it up on Steam using a publisher. And they got millions of dollars. Because finally, they could monetize that game. And the thing is, dude, all of us loved the shit out of it. All of us loved the shit out of it, and I was happy to buy it because of all the amazing things that they have done throughout the years for that game and how much support they've given it. Some of the shit they've I'm done so is insane. I'm so glad Steam brought back demos. It gives it a much higher chance of me buying a game. Yeah. Also, what toppings should I get on my pizza? Suggestions, chat. Artichoke hearts. Pineapple. Get mad. But yeah, to be real with you, it's... I think the thing that blows me away about it is just look at the historical updates to... Um, Door Fortress, and one of the ones that's insane is there was a there was a patch in a long time ago that said uh, bees have been added to the world, and it wasn't just bees. They added bees. They added bee stings. They had a bee sting for any part of the body on any dwarf and any other animal. They made bee sting effects for that. Those being able to be cured by different effects in the game. They added honey. They added beekeeping. They added beekeeping as a role for every one of the dwarves. They added uh, things that could be made out of honey. Honey used as an additive in everything. Like they they add, they didn't just add bees. They added bees to the universe and every single interaction that could possibly occur with bees. Like, Dwarf Fortress is freaking insane, dude. It is absolutely outrageously insane and it is amazing. It is incredible, that game. It is so good, dude. Sounds like they added bees. Yeah, but they, they really added bees. They really added bees. And it's just, I love Dwarf Fortress. I love it. And I think the new version now, now that it has art and everything like that, and I don't have to use Stone Sense anymore, which is a mod for it originally. It's, it's brought it up for such a new audience, and it's just great, dude. Yeah. Clean your mouse pad, too? So, fun fact. My mouse pad is a little bit grim right now. What I did... You're going to laugh about this. Last time I went to TwitchCon, I got a bunch of these Twitch mouse pads. You can see it's got this brown on it. That's not my hand. That's from my mouse wearing down on the mouse pad. It's not actually hand parts. My hand goes here. It's not even the right side of it. But I, I took all these from TwitchCon. They gave me a stack of them. So every couple months, I just... I get rid of one, and I go get another one. So I have to go dig one of these out of my closet. Because <laughs> I have a whole shitload of these, dude. It's not hand parts. It's not. It's not hand chum. It's not. It's grim, but it's not hand chum. It's part of the... It's the mouse. It's actually the mouse wearing down on it. Would you eat that pizza in stream chat? Let me go look. Is this going to be cursed? It is, isn't it? I can feel it, dude. Oh, wait a minute. Holy shit, dude. Chantrell Prosciutto Pizza Primo? Dude, that's... That's gotta be like 200 freaking dollars. What is this? An 11 inch for $27. What do you think I made out of? What? An 11 inch pizza for $27? God damn, dude. That is expensive as shit. I'd eat that. I'd eat that, but I wouldn't pay for that. Like, god damn. Are you buying? Looks like hand chum? Yeah, dude, if you... Here's what you do, man. You may laugh at the term hand chum. I want you to take a toothpick. And I just want you to run it through the creases in your mouse right now. Just do that. Do that and tell me that doesn't look like, like chum you would throw in the water in the ocean to fish. That's hand chum, dude. That's hand chum. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. It's gross. But it's correct. I refuse. Oh, you're thinking about it, though. You know what's in there. It's gross. I'm new here. YouTube recommended me your stream. Oh, nice, dude. A, a, wait, from a Doctor Who 60th anniversary title theme video? What? Why am I being recommended on Doctor Who? That's funny. That's good shit. Nice to meet you, by the way. The stuff that comes out from Between a Mouse is stuff of nightmares. It's all your dead skin coming out, dude. It's gross. What's the top three favorite game OSTs? Uh, Risk of Rain, number one. I love Undertale's OST. I think Toby Fox's stuff is brilliant, frankly. His, his music is phenomenal. Um, trying to think about what outside of that, to be real with you. Yeah, I think, I think those are my top two. 
outside of obviously our work heartbound I'm trying to think of other people's games yeah i think those are the two big ones man those are the two big ones for me is is those two because they're just they're just good they're just really good persona 5 i like have you ever heard of persona q I love Etrian Odyssey. Etrian Odyssey is a set of very difficult RPGs, like incredibly hard RPGs. And they're like dungeon crawlers where you draw your own map and shit. And um, Persona Q is Etrian Odyssey in the Persona universe. It's freaking amazing. One of our friends here in Vegas said YouTube recommended you to him, and he realized, wait, that's Thor, that's our, that's our friend? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Crux? Crux is from the Psychoholics, which is our hacking team at DEF CON. I can't wait to see you guys this year, man. I can't wait to see you guys. I've got my uh, my hotel stuff sorted out for DEF CON. I just got to get the plane stuff so sorted out. I'm going to be out there for this year. I will be back for the DEF CON. Finally. Finally. And I promise that I will, again, not sleep. And we will win something. Or, or shenanigans. Shenanigans. Also, I have to make fun of Grifter when I'm there. As is tradition. Yeah, I do, actually. Sarang Apple. Yeah, it's good. The world is small. DEF CON is great. Yeah, dude. I have three black badges from DEF CON. I compete with the team Psychoholics, and I used to be on Council of Nine. Love it, dude. DEF CON is my favorite place in the world. It is my time to just go there, do a bunch of wild shit, have a ton of fun, and then come home, like, super amped and excited about doing things. Do you have tips on thinking of game ideas? Yeah, bud. Here, check this out. I made a website for you. It's called Develop.Games. And I have a whole section in here. There you go. Minecraft OST? Minecraft OST is okay. Um, I think that the individual soundtracks in it that you can get on discs are way better than just like the music that plays in the open environment, and that makes sense. I never got really emotionally attached to it because I didn't start playing Minecraft till like two years ago, frankly. But yeah, if you look at develop.games, you have a section here like picking a genre. This will help you a lot with that. 100%. We're of Ultra Kill? Yep. Have you seen a bunch of your shorts lately? Glad you can't finally catch you live. Yeah, dude. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, no, this is... I made this for you. So you can learn how to make stuff. And it's uh, develop.games is the domain. And now that I've said this, it'll probably go down. Because all of you are going to try and access it at once. But it's got everything from picking a genre to building a team. What tools do you need? What skills are required? Fun fact, you don't need any. Uh, how to finance all of this stuff. How to market everything. Where to launch your game and why. All this stuff. It's all free for you. The only thing it has is my stream at the bottom. So if you hear me twice, you're hearing the stream. Just go and mute it. Just mute that shit. That's it. It's not loading? Yeah, it definitely died. Anytime I bring up any of my websites now on stream, there's so many of you that it just, it detonates. The moment I talk about it, it's just blip. So I need to upgrade all the servers. I just haven't had time to do it, frankly. Yeah, it's called the Hug of Death. You've Hug of Death the website. It's dead now, which is great. Yeah. Why do you stream at this time? Let me show you. There is a reason. I've seen quite a few YouTube shorts. Must admit, you're one of the most awesome, wholesome creators. Question, though. For VeryFresh.Pi developer, what sort of game could you recommend for testing out the field and seeing if I would like to do it? For Pi game? I mean, to be real with you, what kind of games do you like to play, man? Now, that being said, you may like to play a, a style of game, but you may not like to make it, right? So you have to come up with, like, do you like to play it? Cool. So you'd have a lot more experience with that kind of game, so maybe try to make one of those, and you may find you like to make it. But if you find out you don't like to make it, then try again with a different genre. It's always going to come down to you trying things, right? Like, try to do it. And it doesn't mean you're going to find a game that you like to make, right? It doesn't mean that that's going to be the one for you, but now you can check it off the, off the list. And that's the whole thing, is finding out what works for you means trial and error. Trial and error is totally fine. You're not wasting time if you're learning something. Even if you've learned that you just don't like that shit, that's totally fine. Yeah, much appreciated any time, dude. So let me show you why I stream it this time. But uh, we're going to go to Twitch Tracker, and Twitch Tracker, I'll go to the games that I stream. I've streamed many, many, many over the years. We're going to software and game development. We're going to go to global stats. Everything I do in business, I do by analytics. I do not use emotion to choose the things that I am doing. It is all based on math. It is all based on guesswork, educated guesswork based on the math that's available. So if you look at this, I start streaming here. Why would I do that, Chet? Why would I start streaming at the very bottom of this chart? Why would I do that? Why would I do that? Site's still up. It'll come back up and go back down over and over again. By the dip. Kingmaker spot. Less competition for Kingmaker. Bingo. So, if we go to our category. Let me go grab this. Oop. And I go over to software and game development. What you will find 
is that these four streams are the Kingmaker slots. So we've got me, KDV4, uh, Yassine, and Togglebit that are currently in the Kingmaker slots. So what ends up happening is when somebody first enters this category, they're very likely to click one of these four streams. This is the most common. Thank you for the donation. I'm going to go read it in just a second. You rock, dude. So with that, I am more likely to be seen by doing this. So what I do is I do that at the very good beginning of the stream when most of the community has not arrived. That secures my spot in the Kingmaker slot. And then I ride that all the way up throughout my entire stream. And since it keeps me in that spot all day, what I've been able to do is left over the last several years, I get about seven and a half to nine followers per hour this way. And that's it. That's what it is. So I will always, I'll always explain to you why I do these types of things. Yeah, it's, your approach to streaming is like hacking. I, that's exactly what it is. The platform is not going to make you famous. The platform is not going to make you visible. You have to find ways to do that using the systems that are available. And that's my way to do it on Twitch. And it has worked fantastically over my entire career on here. I've been doing it for about six years. Yep. Also, let's go see that donation. Thank you. Algorithm Ninja. All you gotta do is let's look for ways for you to succeed, man. Don't rely on the platform to do it for you. No one's gonna do that for you. Otherwise, everyone would be able to do it, right? Everyone would be on the front page all the time with tens of thousands of viewers. Doesn't work that way. You gotta find a way to do it. Let's see, Gwen, thank you for the five dollars. Do you have any tips setting up your store page? Like do's and don'ts? Or do you think it doesn't matter what you do as long as it looks good? Well, looking good is part of it, but not every website lets you do that. So let's go check out develop.games. I have a whole section for this. And we'll go look at launching your game, right? So we're gonna pull up Steam. We've got Steam here. We know what a Steam page looks like. Let me go grab that real fast. Steam is pretty restrictive with this. Thank you guys for the subs, by the way. We're going to go look at this. Steam's pretty restrictive with the way that you can display your page. The biggest thing here is this. This is the largest driver for if someone's going to buy your game or not. If that shit says mixed, you're having a bad time. So what you want to do is keep your community happy. Always talk to people. If you get a negative review, respond to it. Try and fix the issue for you or for them. There's so many times where someone left a negative review and it was because something in the game was broken. I reached out to them, I fixed it, and they changed their review. Take the time to do this. Do not just abandon it just because someone had a bad time. Talk to them. It is very important. And if somebody leaves something that's like super vitriolic, super negative, super attacking, right? And that emotionally gets you, take a minute and then respond. Because if you're going to respond out of anger to someone, you're going to look like a jackass. So just don't do that. So that's number one for Steam. Number two, is you've got Game Jolt. Game Jolt is freaking amazing. It is a great website. This is the god of demo sites. Put your demo on this website. They will find it. This one has a lot of discoverability. A lot of people go here for demos and free games. It is awesome, but there's one extra thing on it. They run ads on your page. And when they run ads on your page, they give you a cut of the profits. If you don't have enough money to launch up on Steam because it's $100 to get on Steam, go put your game on Game Jolt, and over time, you will make money from those ads, and you will be able to put them, your game, eventually on Steam based on that ad revenue that you got on here. That's actually a really good method to do this. And it lets you have a small audience. It's kind of a soft launch. It lets you get feedback from players. Awesome shit. The next one is Itch.io. Itch.io is the best-looking website. It is freaking amazing. Like, look at this. It looks so good, dude. It looks so good. You can do awesome shit with HIO, but there's barely any discovery on it. You're going to be driving traffic to this rather than gaining traffic from it. Itch is beautiful, but hard to find games. So Game Jolt for large audiences. You can meet a lot of people. Itch.io for I want to make a very pretty page. And then the last one is going to be Steam for actual distribution for your, your sellable game. That's I have it all down here on develop.games um, in the launching your game section. When do you get to redeem your three hours on Twitch's front page? I have no idea. I don't even know when I could do that. I know that that's up. Like, we're at the, uh, what level is this at now? Hold up. It's at level nine. Jesus Christ, dude. The hype challenge is currently at level nine. God damn. I didn't even go see what that is. That is outrageous. You know what I wish I could do? Actually, this is... Twitch staff, if you're out there, I have feedback. Twitch staff, I would love... If you kept doing these hype challenge things, I would love if I can integrate that into Twitch's alert system so I could use those gigantic screen-wide effects, like all of this stuff, those celebrations. I would love to have that trigger off of gaining a level on the hype challenge. I can't do that right now, and I would love to be able to do it because that shit would be cool. It'd be really cool. 
Anything that we could do to like cause a celebration when that goes off? Because there's not really a lot of integration methods for it right now. It'd be fantastic. Legitimately. No, I will answer you, even if you don't donate. It's just I won't be able to see the messages very well most of the time. So don't think that. Don't think that you have to throw money at me for me to see you. I try to read things from chat all the time. You have to remember there's 1,400 people over on the Twitch side. There's another 825 on the YouTube side. Chat moves fast on both of them. I do my best, right? So don't worry about it. Yeah, you probably asked like five times, and I probably missed it like five times. If you want to be able to talk to me, just at me. And if I see your message, I do. But I'm not intentionally ignoring you. Don't ever think that, man. Thank you for the thousand bits, Savage Noob. Very nice of you. You rock, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I offer as, I answer as often as I can, and I actually had to stop. I, hold up. I had to slow down the other day. Because the first day this started happening, I tried to answer people so quickly that I started talking so fast that people are like, dude, you sound like a mesothelioma commercial. This is ridiculous. Like, I can't even tell what you're saying. I was like that dude at the end of the commercial that's just like, and no one could, no one could understand it. So, like, I have to slow down just enough for you understand what I'm saying. And I can't read all of chat all the time. I do my best. It's ridiculous. There's a lot of people, right? How am I doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, doing good. But yeah, don't don't feel like I'm ignoring you intentionally. There's nothing anything like that, right? That's that's not great, right? Are we at 247,000? Holy shit. I've been shit. trying your secret YouTube source and now a random 20 second clip I pulled from an old stream has more views than the videos I spend weeks making. Not sure how I feel about that. I told you it works. I'm really glad you're doing it. Uh, I've actually gotten a number of messages from people from all over the internet that they started doing the stuff that I told them to do for their shorts, and they went from between like 30 to 50 views to 1,000 or 5,000 views, which is like, that's exactly what it is. That's what the YouTube algorithm is doing. Is that a bad thing? Not really. So I'm glad you're doing it, right? And I'm glad you're able to confirm that that is now working. And I've gotten a lot, lot of other people doing it too. Uh, let me see. Is Scratch a good game engine? Scratch is great for learning stuff. It'll teach you logical process. It's a very good program. Fantastic stuff. Really, really good. There's no reason not to use anything like this, especially for younger people, because if you get them engaged with programming very early, they understand that logical process, and that sticks with them for any job that they ever do in the future, right? Started seeing your clips on YouTube Shorts and simply love them? Well, thank you. Just curious if you have any position or opinion on Iron Maze in the Dark and Darker game. I'm waiting to see how that goes forward, because I know that they're doing the court case over everything right now between, like, what is it, Nexon and, and Dark and Darker. I want to see the findings from the court case. I want to see where that goes. That's the thing that I'm interested in right now, is I, I don't like the gameplay of Dark and Darker. I don't like the slow animations. It's not a game for me, but it doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's just a game for other people, and I'm fine with that. I, I want to know what's going on with the court case, because it's interesting to me, right? I discovered you because I got spammed with your shorts and the algo was right. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you love them. I've watched some of your shorts, some shorts of yours, and it motivated me to start doing some shit in Godot. Hell yes. Cheers from Poland. Nice, dude. Yeah, no, Godot is a great engine. It's good stuff. You can do 3D and 2D in it. There's a lot of different features you have. And the cool thing is, is if you don't like it, recompile it with new features because it's free and open source, which is great. I actually saw some discourse recently where people were talking about they don't like the logo for Godot. And the developers are like, well, we're not changing it. And if you don't like it, you can just recompile with a different logo. So do that. And I thought that was very goddamn funny. You stream on the weekend? I stream every day, bud. Thank you for the $10. Let me go pop this open real fast. For those who don't know, if you throw a dollar donation, 40% of that goes to the moderators. So thank you for that. Let's see. Second time watching you live, you stream on weekends. You're fun to watch and very supportive. That's rare in here. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Ten bucks is awesome. Four of those dollars just went to the mods, so you kick ass, dude. What's wrong with the logo? People just don't like it. They're always going to find something not to like, right? And that's okay. That's fine. Was it only 90k subs a few days ago? About 10 days ago, it was 13k. And now it's... That's a lot. How difficult would it be to shift from fintech, so financial tech, QA, to video game QA? Pretty easy, actually. Um, you'd be surprised how many people from different walks of life go into game QA. Understand something, though. QA in the games industry is generally looked down upon. It's usually at the bottom rung of stuff, and you will be underpaid for that position. Almost always. It is very rare to find a company that treats their game development, like game QA testers, well. It's very rare. So do understand that. I don't think that that is correct. I don't think it's a good thing, but it is very common. And that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. It's manual QA? Manual QA on what? For what? Dominating YouTube with pure knowledge and the algorithm is beautiful. Dude, the, I, 
my big thing is I like to solve puzzles, right? And anytime I find a puzzle like this, I'm always going to try and solve it. And I also like sharing that information. That's a big part of DEF CON culture, right? This is a big part of hacker culture. Solve the puzzle, share with your buddies, try to replicate the results, make sure it works for everyone so you know you actually solved the puzzle, move on. Hacking is solving puzzles. It's an interesting solution to a difficult problem. And that's what I do. And I will always tell you the answer that I, I received and we'll always try and test it together to see if it actually works for you too. I love that shit. That's, that's like my bread and butter, man. As a backend web dev, QA doesn't get enough credit. They don't. QA is, QA is why you exist. QA is amazing. Does Steam restrict on publishing somewhere else for a cheaper price? Yes, they do. You have one rule as a Steam dev. If your game is $10 on Steam, your game must be $10 on another platform. If you offer a discount on another platform for $8, so it's only 8 bucks, you must offer the same discount on Steam. But wait, there's something really good for this. You can put your game on discount on Steam at any time, and we must always do at least 20%. Who knows why? Why should you always do a discount at 20% or more on Steam? Who knows? Always. Never less than this. Always this or more. Chat's got it. Emails. It will email everyone who has your game wishlisted. It is absolutely amazing. It is absolutely amazing. It is insane how many extra sales you get because it emails everyone who has wishlisted your game. It is great, dude. Has it worked with localized prices? Same thing. Yeah, it takes the localized price down by 20%. The only restriction Steam has is your game must not go below 49 cents per copy in a converted way. So if you have a localized price and that localized price comes out to less than 49 cents USD, it will not allow you to do the discount in that region. And that's it. The Game Jam theme is going to be announced on January 12th. I do it live on stream. I don't know what the theme is going to be because chat chooses it out of a list of five. And that's what it is. My Davis live or die by our QA teams. Cannot be underestimated. QA is, is the backbone of the industry. And they really need to be treated like it. I, I worked QA for four years and games don't exist without QA, man. One sec. I'm going to eat the rest of this ramen. Give me, give me, I still have ramen. <laughs> give me a sec. I, I can still talk, kind of. Oh my god, it's so spicy. I made it too spicy. I made it too spicy, chat. It's a mistake. Oh, so good. Alright, it's finally done. Oh. Alright, it's good. So if you want to know when the next game jam is, go to develop.games. The domain is develop.games, right there. It's a website I distribute all my knowledge and everything on. Thank you for the subs, by the way. You rock. There you go. And you can go to the game jam section. I actually have the next one coming out on January 12th. Going in means fun when the spicy is going out the back end later. <laughs> we don't talk about that. That's future Thor's problem, alright? That's not my problem. That's not my problem. That's future Thor's problem. I get to deal with the spice going in. It's perfect. It's perfect. No issues. No issues for me, right? So with that in mind, the next jam is going to be uh, January 12th. The way that I run my jams is always exactly the same. What I do is we do it as two weeks. The first week is making what's called a game design document. The second week is making a prototype. If you don't know shit about making games, that's fine. A game design document is a piece of paper, a document, where you research what you would need to do to make that game. You don't make it, you research what you would need to do and which tools you would want to use to make the game you are trying to make, that you wish to make. And then guess what? You've dispelled all of it. You know what you need to do. There's no more unknowns anymore and you get to go try. And that's the point of this. Researching the engines, researching the tools, researching the methods, and then the next week you do it. And it works really, really well. The reason I started doing this is the very first game jam I did, I lied to the whole community. First game jam I did, I lied to the entire community. And I said, this game jam anyone can do. You're not going to be making a game. You're just going to be making a game design document. And I lied to them. And about a week in, there were about 100 submissions of people putting in game design documents. And I said, okay, now for the second half, go make it. And we had like, it was like a 98% participation of people that actually went and made a prototype because every one of them, even though they entered it uncomfortable about making games, realized they could after making the design document because you have to research everything you need to do to make that document in the first place. I tricked them all into learning. 
I tricked every one of them into learning, and it worked great. So do it. Make the design document during our next game jam. Kick some butts, dude. I only recently started learning programming. I've never had any experience. A month ago, let's see, a month ago with game development, some JavaScript, logic about randomization 10 to 15 years ago. I was testing the waters. Right now I have an idea, a genre story, but not a lot of knowledge on how to execute it all. I'm doing my best to learn while making my very first game. You're doing it right. You are doing it right. It is going to be hard, right? It's going to be difficult for you to do, but you're going to learn pieces along that that are going to make this project easier. And it's going to make all your future projects easier, easier. So keep it up. Such a huge inspiration, dude. Thank you. It's very nice of you. Really nice of you. Yeah, learn a piece at a time. You're building it one brick at a time. You're grinding the slimes at level one is what that is. You're killing the level one monster. You're getting better at it. You're killing the level two monster. You just keep getting better over time. And in a year from now, of you doing this, you're going to look back in the beginning. You're like, wow, I didn't even know how to move a character back then. Now I got a video game, right? You guys can kick ass. You can, but you have to, you have to try. You can't get anywhere if you don't try. I've always wondered, do you know how sites like Kino and G2A get Steam Keys? Yeah, actually, I have a whole section on that up here. Now understand something. We're going to pause this for a moment. This is not every way that they get Steam Keys. Places like G2A. This is not every way. It's just some of the ways. All right? There are lots of scammers out there that will impersonate people and get Steam Keys from indie devs. This is a very common scam. I get hundreds of these emails every week. And I, I can actually show you an example of this. We're going to go to Twitter real fast. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to look for my hashtag. Because I, I released some of these. Let me grab this. This is an example of a streamer named Patty TV that has been impersonated by a bot. It says, hey, I'm Patty TV. And this is actually his logo here on Twitch. And it says, I'm a full-time YouTuber, 28K subs, and verified streamer on Twitch, 64K followers. His Twitch and his YouTube. That's actually him. So you can go watch him. I love to speed run games if possible. Oh, wait, we've got ads. We're going to wait for the ads. Let's wait for it. Wait for it for a minute. I'm from Australia. Thank you for the 160 Australian dollars. You rock, dude. I followed Heartbound for a while, and it's a beautiful game. I started to see your shorts around, and you should feel really proud of what you've done. You're a great teacher and genuinely good human being. Big love, my man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Where? Since you're Australian, I believe that's Australian dollars, right? There. Now that I've, now that I've done this, let me just... I know, I know it's going to be really hard because I'm American. It's going to be hard to understand me. I'm just going to do this right here for you. Now you can understand me. Thank you. Thank you. You are absolutely fantastic. I love Australia. You guys are the best. So thank you for that donation. You kick ass, dude. And um, I'm, I'm really glad you got so much out of the stuff that I make. Thank you. Honorary Aussie? Nah, dude. Then I would need Milo and some Tim Tams. I don't got any Milo and Tim Tams right now, to be honest with you. I can't do a Tim Tam slam currently, so I, I can't be full Aussie. I'm just, I'm almost there, right? Almost. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Why aren't the corks falling down? Don't worry about it. It's The Australian power is preventing them. So. <laughs> uh, you rock, dude. Opinion on New Zealand? My opinion on New Zealand is that Vegemite is better than Marmite. <laughs> Just say, what's my hair routine? I wash it every three days. And then I use two in one because I don't want to wash my hair twice. <laughs> Just said, bro, get mad. Depending on Spain? Oh, food from Spain is delicious. Spanish food is amazing, dude. Still maintain your clearance? Nope, not anymore. Been a number of years, man. I could always get it again, but I'd need a sponsor to do it, and I just... Eh, eh. All right. Ads are over. Ads are over. We're going to get back to this. So, I got this email from a bot, and this is what happens. This is where a lot of keys, not all of them, but a lot of keys end up on G2A like this, right? So, with this, Patty TV sent this, but it's not actually Patty TV. It says, hey, yo, I'm Patty, full-time YouTuber, 28K subs, and verified streamer on Twitch, 64K followers. My Twitch, my YouTube. So you can actually watch him. This is his real links, right? Real links to his stuff. I love to speed run games if possible and try new games pretty much every day, especially hardcore games. Streaming sub games is another thing I like to do. And I've been asked to play and stream Heartbound. So he's like, hey, one of my viewers actually told me to play your game. So he's trying to get that emotional connection, right? Well, if possible, I do love to check out your game and hopefully stream it for my community. Now look at my response. 
I want you to look at the actual email, right? The actual email. P. Cole with six fours. You go to his YouTube. You click on the business email section of the YouTube under the about section. Yeah, it's actually it's actually P. Cole with five fours. I said, no, you're not. You see, Patty lists his business email as P. Cole with five fours. Your email has an extra four in there, making it this. Bonus points for taking his logo and setting it up on the Gmail account, though. Your scam is bad and you should feel bad. Eat sand. This is a very common thing that I get. And what these are is they're bots. There's not actually a person there. I sent that response because it's funny and I can send it out on the internet and people gain knowledge of this. I get hundreds of these every day. I get hundreds of them. And what you what they're doing is they're farming keys. When you send a key back, it does a string compare, finds whatever's the key in there, and it immediately puts it up on G2A. So you know what I started doing? I actually don't receive these anymore. I used to get them hundreds a day. What I started doing was I started giving them a key. Now, why do I give them a key? I give them a key. The bot checks to see if it's real. And then 12 hours later, I burn the key on Steam side. So then what happens is the bot goes and puts it up for sale on G2A. And then someone buys it. And then the key doesn't work. And they leave a negative review for the seller. Funny shit. They stopped sending me these emails immediately stopped sending me these emails. It went on for about a week, and then they stopped doing it. And it was so funny. So if you're a developer out there, and you're getting these emails, send him the key. Then go burn it. Just wait about 12 hours and burn that shit. It's going to make them very upset, and they'll finally leave you alone. So enjoy that. Enjoy it. So yeah, I have this actually listed up on develop.games under finance scams. That's the influencer scam. This is very common. You'll get a lot of these. Always cross-reference the actual like communication method for any developer that's going to contact you or any any player that's going to contact you. Make sure they're real. Anytime you want to give out a key. And to be real with you, I don't give out keys anymore. I don't. Why 12 hours later? Because they go through a process of verifying that the key is real. That's the reason. You want them to think the key is real. You want them to go through that process of thinking the key is real. Then you burn it. So between 6 and 12 hours later is usually good. And it, it made them stop contacting me entirely. It's super funny stuff, dude. Yeah, no. The thing is, is you don't want to fight back against the players that are buying these from G2A. You want to fight back against the scammers that are getting them in order to impersonate other creators. And that's not the only one. I've actually had people that have impersonated, um, uh, like, journalists. I've had people impersonate streamers. I've had imper people impersonate YouTubers. Uh, all kinds of stuff, dude. All kinds of stuff. And I get a ton of them. How do you burn the key? There's actually a method inside of Steam where you can take a list of Steam keys, put it in there, and it will destroy the Steam keys. So they become invalid. And that's all you do. You just do it before somebody uses the key. Normal stuff, dude. Sounds familiar to people trying to spearfish me for work? Yeah, they're doing it because they can resell that. It's a very low-impact thing. They send these emails out to thousands of developers, and that's all it is. Am I a bad person for using G2A? No, I don't think so. I think that G2A is an open marketplace. They're not technically at fault for this, right? But they're an open marketplace, and because of that, people are selling keys on there, and people that are scamming are selling keys on there as well, right? And that's it. Some of those keys are totally legitimate. A lot of them are from scams. I don't like those types of platforms because of this, and I don't give out Steam keys because of this, so I don't really blame G2A for it, but I don't use this service, frankly. If they get 10 people, they've made their Autobot money, bingo. All they gotta do is a couple of them, and that's it. That's all it is. If you really want to support a developer, buy it directly from wherever they are selling it, not from reseller sites, because you're gonna, you're gonna run into these problems where these types of scams work, and those developers are losing money on it. They're getting owned, right? Can you burn a key that was already used? I actually don't know. I've never tried to do that, but I, I'm i wondering if you could. I, you probably can't. I don't think a developer can take a already activated key away from a player. I don't believe that's the case, but I could be wrong about that. So maybe go check this Steam Docs. I'm not sure. You can burn the key I was already used, I think. You know what? Let's go find out. Let's find out about this. Steam Partner. Steam Partner. We're going to do Steamworks Developer Homepage. Uh, we're going to look at documentation for Steam Key. Steam Key... This is totally public information. Steam allows anyone to use this, which is great. Even if you're not a partner, you can go and look at this. I'm going to post this in chat. So you can find the documentation here. Steam is phenomenal, and it, it's very public about this stuff. So types of keys. Uh, let's see. Not burning a key. Disable. There we go. Steam key stats. You can see an overview of your application Steam key history by going to your app landing page and selecting request Steam product keys. In the key stats section, you can view the total activated and unactivated keys for all packages that include your app, as well as any number of keys revoked using ban or disable Steam Keys tool. That's great. That's fantastic. So yeah, it looks like you may be able to ban the key, which is cool. Let's keep going to the disable. 
If you need to ban product keys, that can be done with ban or disable Steam keys section. There are some situations when you need you find the need to ban a Steam key or a batch of Steam keys. You can read more about these reasons on banning Steam keys page. But some of the most common situations include proactively disabling unused keys, revoking access to closed beta users, and revoking keys that have been refunded. Similar to querying a key, you may only ban a product key that you have the rights to. In the second step of the process, you can pick whether you wish to ban all the keys in the batch or just the keys that have not yet been activated. Yeah, so it looks like you should be able to ban a user that already has unlocked a key. That's cool. That's actually really good stuff. Anytime you're wondering about how Steam operates or anything like that, check this page. It's partner.steamgames.com, totally public, and you're able to see all of it. Thank you for that 10 gifted subs, dude. What an outrageous thing. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And Garbage Smells, thank you for the tier 1 sub on top of it. Thank you. Seriously. Very nice of you. What do you recommend to start coding? I did a bit of coding and I started to write modding. Start modding Minecraft. So you were doing Java stuff. But I'm mainly an artist and can't find the motivation to start learning to code. Well, if you're mainly an artist and you, you can't find the motivation to learning to code, maybe you haven't found a project that's cool for you, man. Like, if you want to make a video game, maybe try to make a video game that's very artistic. And I'm, I'm going to show you something weird. Uh, have you ever heard of the game? This is a weird one. Have you ever heard of the game Plug and Play? This game is weird, dude. This game is really weird. But what it is, is it's a game that's really just an art piece, right? It's just a weird art piece. It's a very art-driven game. There's very little gameplay right, in terms of the game, right? You know what time it is? Time to rig the gamba. You should read the block game tickets. Go fix things. Go do it. Become Java. I won't do it. You know the server can take it. No, Silent. it'll detonate again. It will detonate. So maybe, I'll, maybe I'll check it in a minute. So like the the real thing is, is if you're an, if you're primarily an artist, rely on that skill set. If you're not as good of a programmer, rely on your skill set as an artist. Right? Go in the direction that makes the most sense for you. And plug and play is a good example of that. It's very simplistic programming, but insane art. Absolutely outrageous. Another good one is going to be Hidden Folks. Hidden Folks is beautiful and it's very simple. All you have to do is click objects on the screen. There's not a lot of programming involved with this. What it is, is look at this. It's Where's Waldo. It is beautiful little environments, all drawn very nicely, very simple. And all you have to do is find the characters by clicking the things and it changes the art. This is a very art driven game, right? So if you're an artist, find something you want to make like that. And that's it. What about the opposite for a programmer? Let me show you something like that. Screeps, you can even play this game. Screeps is a very programming-driven game, an incredibly programming-driven game. It is an RTS MMO, one of the rarest kinds of games that exists out there. Those just don't exist. Thank you for the subs, by the way. And a tier 3 sub. What a boss, dude. You rock. This game, you use programming to control your units. Good morning, you don't control them directly. Hope you are well. Hope you are well. Thank you for the 100 bits. So what you do is you, you end up playing the game. You write all of the game logic in in code in the game and it controls your units never heard of an rts mmo they're rare as shit it's one of the rarest games out there they're amazing so that's a really good programmer centric game right and the kind of stuff that you can build a wild one very extreme one but but quite cool what if you suck at both that's okay the thing is is everyone sucks at everything in the beginning you get a little bit better and people go wow that guy's really good at something and you're like well like five months ago i was really shit at this but i spent a couple of days every week trying this thing and I learned a little bit of stuff. Now you know more than the average person. That's all it is. So spend some time on it, man. Just like if you were playing an MMO and you were working on a profession in the game, right? It's the same in real life. You spend some time working on it, you learn some skills, you get better. RimWorld and Factorio are amazing, dude. RimWorld, Factorio, and in fact, let me show you something in the same realm. Thank you for all those bits, dude. You are awesome. This was made by one of our buddies on here is Dev Spodges. If you like RimWorld and Factorio, you may really enjoy this game. It's called Stardeus, and it is awesome. It is really, really, really good. And it's made by Dev underscore Spodges, spelled S-P-A-J-U-S, on here. And I'm going to go do this. Yeah, no, he's awesome, dude. He's actually in our stream team. Dude's rad as hell. There's another developer in here. I just shouted him out on the Twitch stream. So definitely, definitely check him out, dude. Any of the Zactronics games are good, too? Yeah. I also really like... There's uh, phone games that you can get into. Kairosoft, spelled K-A-I-R-O. I love their games. Very simple. You see the sub count? Let's go check it out. 
Wiggle your wiggle your fingers, chat. Oh. 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 Blow on it. It's going. It's going. It's doing it. We're really close to 250,000, dude. We're really close to a quarter of a million, dude. It's insanity. It's insanity. I went to sleep. Well, actually, I went to sleep yesterday about like 208,000. The stream ended at 200,000. 50,000 a day is insane, dude. That is wild to me. Yeah, it was 200k yesterday. So thank you very much. I've been randomly seeing your YouTube shorts lately and thought I'd come to check out your stream. Well, what's up, dude? How you doing? What are the requirements to join the Pirate Crew group on Twitch? It's for people who want to full-time stream. Uh, you don't have to be always creative stuff. Like, I, yeah, I usually prefer 100. creative stuff on Give there. Give it the good old raffle raffle. <laughs> thank you for the 100 bits. But it is people who are trying to stream full-time. It is people who are trying to be on Twitch or YouTube full-time. And if you're on Twitch, this that's what the stream team is for. Is there anybody that you see in that stream team? You're, they're going to be people that I think are very cool, right? And not everybody I know that's cool is in there. Can you show the subscribers graph? Yeah. Here, let's just... Let's just... Oh, God, it won't let me scream it. There we go. Let's just do this. I want to show you... I want to show you this. We're going to do there, and we're going to change that to lifetime. I just want you to see this. I just want you to see that graph right there. Just... 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 It's less a graph and more a wall, right? It's kind of what that is. So, thank all of you. This is outrageous. And there's the last 28 days. So, thank you very, very much. You guys are amazing. Everyone on sub at 999. <laughs> Do it. Spent a lot of time loading fuel into that rocket. I did, actually. It was, it was years of fuel. And now you have it. Yeah, look at this wall, dude. Have you been seeing lots of shorts? So, I figured I should go ahead and subscribe. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad that you like the shorts. I'm glad you like the content. We are almost at 250,000. Which is crazy to me. So, yeah, who attached the solid boosters, dude? You weren't supposed to put that much fuel in the rocket, all right? We're supposed to get back to home, and you've launched us into space. We're never getting back. It's just going to be like this now. That's what it is. We're just, we're stuck now in space. So thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are amazing. Um, that's wild to me. What do you use to restream? I actually use a plugin here on OBS called, it's like RTMP Split or something like that. And I'm just streaming directly to both both platforms without using a third-party tool. Not using an external tool. I, by encoding it with the same encoding method between both of them, you don't use any more processing power on your computer. You just have to use double the bandwidth. And that's it. Whoop. We're almost there. Seems like I could have joined very recently due to YouTube shorts. Yes, a lot of people have converted over from the YouTube shorts onto here. How long did you start posting uh, that in the YouTube shorts? Probably about a month, two months ago. We did a little bit of tests here and there, but they were pretty infrequent. We did a whole bunch of them that way. Like, Steets made a, a ton of them, but we didn't post every day. And then I learned that posting every day, the algorithm goes, mmm, delicious. And it basically eats everything that you feed it, and it just keeps rolling upwards, and then everything exploded. And it has been like that ever since. People are there hating the short and telling everyone they're useless? Oh, dude, it's crazy. It's... I... I realized very quickly, people told me you're not supposed to read. Like, like here, wait, I'm going to stop this. People told me you're not supposed to read the comments on YouTube. And I read all the comments on YouTube as, and like that I can. Now I can't because there's so many people commenting on them. But I read as many as I could. And the moment that I started looking at the comments on the, on the recent shorts, dude, like it was immediate psychic damage. I immediately felt my brain leaking out of my ear because some of the some of the takes are insane, dude. Some of the takes are like, like, I'll be like, you should go and do things in your life. It will better your life. And people are like, how dare you ever tell people to do things? You're making them in a narcissist, you piece of shit. And I was like, oh God, dude, calm yourself down. You need to go outside. Like that is, if you, if you have that feeling when I tell someone that they can do something in their life and like be positive and your take is that they're going to turn into a piece of shit, you need to go outside. That's insane. That's, there's something really wrong with that. All right. So like, calm, calm down. And I've, I've seen it like hundreds of times now. And I'm just like, oh my God, dude. So YouTube comments are unhinged. And I, I've just seen, I've seen some wild shit. I've seen some wild shit. It cra it's crazy to me. But to be real with you, go do stuff in your life. I don't care if people say that shit to me. I'm not going to stop. You know, like, it doesn't matter. And I, I still read the comments, but not as many. Because it's getting, it's weird, right? Someone wanted to see a good X maple of a trailer for a video game. I'm not going to let Thor give the examples he has given a thousand times so. Mm. Here, look at the trailers for this game. 
Both trailers are perfect examples of how to do a trailer. Hard Space Shipwrecker is great, dude. Yeah, no, that, that game is awesome. Do you want to know my favorite one that I've seen so far? My favorite trailer I have ever seen is Witchfire. That trailer is insane. That trailer is absolutely phenomenal. Because it has narration to talk to you about the mechanics you're seeing, it has gameplay, it has hype to it, and they explain every one of the features of the game all in one go. It is amazing. The Witchfire trailer is the best trailer I have ever seen. Ever. And I cannot wait for it to come to Steam, dude. I can't wait. I cannot wait, dude. Factorious trailer is probably my favorite. Yeah. No, Factorious is great, too. We're almost there, chat. Yeah, we're going to watch it. I want to watch it after this hits 250k, because we're almost there. And I don't want to miss it, because that's, uh... Like, I'm going to be real with you. I know we've hit, like, a shitload of milestones this last week, dude, but it doesn't remove the insanity that is this to me. Like, this is so... The amount of support that this is, is huge. And I... I can't thank you enough, man. This is a big deal to me. This is this is wild. So thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm just, Honestly, I'm just glad there's so many people out there like the stuff that I do. And, um... It makes it harder and harder for me to believe the imposter syndrome ghost in the back of my head. Because whenever you make things, you always feel like the stuff that you're making isn't good enough. And this is, this does numbers for that, dude. So thank you. You guys kick ass. You're amazing. Legitimately. You guys are actually phenomenal. And it, it blows me away. So thank you very much. I need to go, but it's almost 250k. Go, go. Just watch the VOD later. I'll subscribe once you hit 249,999, and not until then. Good. Wait to the last second. Saw a few of your shorts on YouTube. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Joined during the Unity debacle, and you inspired me. Yeah, yeah, I could talk about that for days. I, I'm amazed that they made that move. Incredibly misguided, and I'm waiting to see what happens. Is Unity good on in Linux? I've never used Unity on Linux, so I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't recommend using Unity right now, mostly because their business model is untested now. And they've lost a lot of respect in the development community because of the way that they've handled themselves through this this transition to their model. And um, I don't want you to get into a situation where you work on something for months or years and then Unity shits itself again, uh, to be real with you. So that's it's rare that I will not recommend an engine. You could still use the engine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I have concerns about the business model. It, it worries me for the stability of the engine, if that makes sense. You tried Godot? Yeah, it's great. Godot is fantastic. What engine do you recommend? I don't. What I usually do is I tell you what kind of game do you want to make and then find an engine that supports that kind of game, then find a language that works with that engine. I actually have a whole section on this in develop.game. So if you go to here, tools, engines, there is no best engine. There is no best engine, right? You need to find an engine that works for the kind of game you want to make. And then after you do that, you're good. And if you want to know a lot of engines, let's check this out. Game Engines Database. This website is freaking amazing. I'm going to go link this here. Look at that. Thank you for those subs, by the way. You guys are amazing. This is... There's hundreds of engines out there that you've probably never even heard of. Tons and tons and tons of these. So go and check them out and see which ones you want to use. Some of them are free, some are paid for, all kinds of stuff. Have you ever thought about making your own engine? You should only ever make your own engine when you, when there's, there's a couple of criteria that I choose for this, right? Let's say you want to make your own engine. Do it because you want to learn. That's a fine and valid reason, right? Making your own engine is, is fine. If you want to learn how an engine works, if you want to learn how to do a graphics pipeline or a physics engine or any of the stuff that you go in, learning is a great reason to make your own engine. Another one is going to be you want something in-house. Usually this is done for major studios. You need to have full control over the engine for legal or financial reasons. It makes total sense to do that. And the last one really is features. If you have features in your game that you require to make that game work, and it's not available in any engine out there, this is rare, but possible, then you make your own engine. And a good example of this, if we go pull this up, is Noita. Noita is amazing, dude. Look at this game. Every pixel interacts. Every pixel is a material that has tons of different interactions with every other pixel. That shit is insane. You will never see this in another game. This game is amazing. Also, you die constantly. Also, when you die, you'll get mad. And then you'll stop being mad because you'll die constantly, and it's fine. This is a custom engine. They had to do that because there's nothing that runs this. Nothing else could run it. And they had to make it efficient, and they had to have full control of the engine to do it. So, there are reasons to create your own custom engine. This is a good one. That's a very good one. Another one of these, if you've never seen it, is called Fez. Fez has a custom engine. 
Why does it have a custom engine? Because Fez is a 2D platformer. But it's not a 2D platformer. It's a 3D platformer as a 2D platformer. Fez is insane. This is a beautiful game. And it's amazing what they were able to do. And you have to have a custom engine for what they were doing. You could technically do this in other engines now, but at the time, couldn't. Now you can. Great shit. Look at that. Amazing. Actually amazing. I love innovative design like this. And to be real with you, sometimes custom engines are required to pull this off. Not always, but sometimes. So, something to think about it. Why do they make Fez 2? Phil Fish uh, fought with the internet and then stopped making games. That's the simplistic form, form of it. A lot of the times when somebody becomes very popular, the internet requires them, like, demands that they change as a person. Phil Fish didn't change. He didn't change his outlook on things. He didn't change his opinions on stuff. And because of that, he got in fights with the internet and eventually stopped making games. That's kind of how things go. Whether his opinions were good or bad is up to your subjective opinion. But at the end of the day, if, you know, if you're going to fight with the internet, it's going to burn you out. And he got burnt out and left. Sucks. I wish there was a Fez too, personally. But that's what it is. So, disappointing to me. But Fez is a beautiful game either way. As someone who's been through a lot of scrum sprint processes, I'm curious how would you use as an alternative? I always like having the managers go and do the meetings for the team, uh, producers, project managers, things like that, and they distribute that knowledge back to the team. I don't like the idea of a daily stand-up. I don't like sprints because they lock the team into things and they cannot actually take on more work if the team needs to adapt. It's not very easy, especially when things are emergencies. I've worked security most of my life, so offensive security. If we find a security vulnerability and we can't fit it into the sprint, guess what? Shit gets to stay vulnerable for the next two weeks. It's never fun. It's never enjoyable. And I, I don't like that process. I really don't like that process. I think that as, as teams get larger and larger, you have more of these inefficiencies, and it ends up being more difficult in that respect as well. That's why I like smaller teams. I love smaller teams. When you had 183k two days ago? Yeah, I went... The end of the stream yesterday was 200k. We've done 50k in a day, which is bonkers to me. Can we see a ferret on camera? Yeah, you can actually see ferrets on camera at any time over at ferrets.live. You can go and see them. This is our rescue that we run. What is he doing? What is this nerd doing? He's cleaning himself. Looking around for a, for a snack. Very cute. They need some food. I'm going to let Shay know. They're hungry. Oh, Nacho. He's looking underneath the bowl to see if there's more food. <laughs> Yeah, it's our ferret rescue. If you watch that stream, you're directly supporting the rescue. And just by watching the ads, dude. It's all run by the ads. Can you talk about security game dev interviews? What do you want to know about them, dude? YouTube push your short to me and it's good content? Well, thanks. I'm glad you found me from YouTube, man. You guys rock. Long neck, though. They're very long animal. Talk to Maya Hig Higa. Uh, she's an animal rescue, too. Are you talking about... God, what is the name of it? Why did I just Thanks forget the name funny. of it? Good I watch it all the, the time. Blood trail Wait, 500 next week. Yeah, bug. You're talking about Alvius, right? Yeah, I'm actually I'm following Alvius. They're they're over on my follow list. I love what Alvius is doing. Alvius is amazing, absolutely incredible, and their rescue does a bunch of exotic animals. Ours is just ferrets. It's only ferrets. And I'm I'm really interested in what cameras they're using for uh, night vision. Because I would love to have more night vision stuff for the ferrets because we keep the lights really low to make it dark in there. And I, I need to find out what cameras they're using because it would make my life so much better. So much better. Just found you yesterday. Love your channel. Thank you. It's very nice of you. But yeah, that's actually I'm what I'm doing. So for those who don't know, there's a couple of things I'm going to be doing. Since we just had this massive blow up of all these people in here and I'm making a lot more money as a developer than I have pretty much ever made doing this job, right? I am taking all of that. I'm going to be giving Christmas bonuses to all of our employees, everybody who works for me. That's very, very important to me. So I'm going to be splitting up for that. And the rest of it's going into the ferret account so that I can put more money aside to expand our sanctuary. Because my, my dream for that is that we can take care of up to 100 ferrets. So all of this extra money that I'm gaining is all going towards that. So you guys kick ass. Thank you for being a part of that. Um, yeah, because I personally, I just need to pay my bills. That's all I need to do. I don't need a, a massive dragon's horde of shit. I can, I can make everybody else's life better inside of our, our team because they've been supporting me with their work for years and I'd, I'd rather do that. And putting it towards the ferrets means I get to get closer to making that rescue a possibility in a larger respect because right now we can just do 20. And there's so many more I wish I could take care of and that will, that will help with that. So thank you. You guys rock. Really. Really. It's a big deal to me. Ferrets are cool and funny, but also a lot. Yeah, they really are. Do you like video game donkey reviews? We video game donkey is the funniest shit on the planet. Snakes. Hell yeah. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for the 20, 200 bits, dude. What did what did you get? In, uh, what got you into ferrets? Um, I grew up in Southern California. They're illegal there. And I always thought they were really cute and amazing. And when I moved up to Washington, I got two ferrets from University of Washington. I rescued them from their laboratory there. So they, they released them to people who want them as pets. And um, we took care of them for a number of years. And one of them died. Her name was Snails. And she died from a heart condition. And when she died, I realized I was very sad. It really messed me up. But I realized she lived a number of years longer than she would have because at the laboratories, they, they keep the females for one year and then they die. They, they put them to death because they only use them for two litters of kits, which are babies. And then they, then they destroy the animal, as they call it. It's actually killing them. And um, she got three extra years because we, we took her, right? And I just wanted to keep doing that for more, more of them. So that's what started the rescue. That's why I'm doing this now. And I have no intention of stopping. It makes me very happy to do. Just found your stream. I've hated my career in software dev for years, but I don't have anything else to fall back on. Any advice? Start some hobbies. Start some hobbies, dude. It's, um, I have so many different hobbies, so many different things that I do. What I was going to do if my game studio didn't work out, dude. Wait, wait, I'm going to pause that for a moment. I was going to become a baker. I was planning on opening a bakery. I had everything set up to get the business loan to start the bakery. I was ready to do it. And that was going to be the thing. If the game studio didn't work. Life takes you weird directions. I'm, no, I didn't, I didn't skip it. I just paused it. So, yeah. Do shit. If you don't like what you're doing, have some hobbies. Find out what it is you do like. Because to be real with you, you're going to find things that you didn't even realize you liked. You're going to find things that you thought you would like and you don't. Right? You can bake? Oh, yeah, dude. I cook all my own food and I bake a ton of bread. I bake a ton of bread. I love this stuff, dude. Breaking news. Upcoming Twitch changes. Twitch will be removing Hyper Chat on the 15th of November. However, they will be implementing a pin cheer functionality that will scale to the number of bits. Cheer. Good. Creators can set minimum pin cheer limits. Not sure if I'm happy with the cheers, W. Had about you, Sharon. It sucks not, Steven. Stay tuned on Channel 7, U7. I love sourdough. I love making sourdough. I actually, what I like to do is I take uh, flour and I cultivate it. Yeah, there's ads. We're going to wait for the ads. Got to wait for the ads. We'll talk about it in a minute. Wait for the wait for the ads, bros. Thank you for the prime subs. You guys are amazing. You're struggling to find joy in things you do? That's okay. Sometimes in life is downtime time, right? Sometimes in life it is it is okay to just slow down and wait. You don't want to burn yourself out on everything in your life. Sometimes you burn out on things, you just need to relax. It's okay to sit down and just watch TV and be a slug human for a little bit. Just don't be that forever, right? And if you are struggling to find joy in anything that you're doing, either you need to try new things, or you need to give yourself a break. It's a very normal thing. You seem like the nicest, most genuine guy ever that's worrying. Oh no, you've been tricked. <laughs> thank you thank you for the $5. Cooking stream when? Oh, dude. I did one before, and I made chili. I made Costco Bell chili out of Costco Bell chili peppers, and they're so spicy and so good. It's like a slow burn that gets worse and worse over time. And it was really fun to do, so I might do that eventually. I might. It gives you big not safe for work vibes. Look, alright, I'm gonna be real with you. If this sensual moving is turning you on, AFJ, I'm glad you found something within yourself that you didn't know was there before. I don't want to know about it, but I'm glad you found it. Alright? I'm just gonna just gonna say that to you. <laughs> Any puzzle game recommendations? I want to play Viewfinder. That's going to be the next game I want to play. Viewfinder looks freaking amazing, dude. Love the shit out of it. Uh, another one, play Outer Wilds. If you've never played it, don't look up shit for it. Don't let anyone tell you anything about it. Don't say a word to anyone that you're going to play it. Because it's you can only play it once. You can only play it once, and it's beautiful. It's an amazing game, dude. Wolfist Wolf wants you to look at the donos on YouTube. I will. I will in a moment. I was already doing the donos on YouTube. I already talked about them. The ads are over. We're good. We're good. I already did. I answered all the questions of the donor on YouTube. What do you want? What do you want from me? You goblin. I answered those questions. I already answered that question. The 161. I, I talked to him. There was a whole bit where he turned to Australian. My own mods aren't keeping up, dude. Mods aren't even keeping up. Unless there's a different one and it's not showing up for me. 
I got a VR project going in Unity. And the whole Unity mistake, I don't know what else to call it, was a real slap in the face for my motivation. I know. And I want you to understand, you shouldn't feel bad. You shouldn't feel bad about working in Unity. I know it may feel like shit, right? I know it may feel like shit to you, and it's not your fault. And it is very rough to deal with that. Thank you for the $10. There's going to be people that look down on you because you're using Unity. Don't listen to them. They're dumbasses. You are trapped in a situation that is not your fault using the engine that was, up until now, just fine. And their engine is still good. The business model's just bad. It's just bad. Alright, let me go look at those donations real fast so I can make sure that I read these fully. Thank you, though. Very, very much. So what is this one? Ten dollars. Recently started watching your content, really enjoying your insights. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very nice of you, dude. Forty percent of all the donations you give, by the way, the dollar donations go to our moderators. So thank you for doing that. Favorite game of all time: Secret of Mana on the Super Nintendo. Love that shit. Any cybersecurity themed Spotify playlist you recommend? Mm, I mean, I've got a couple of games in there. Introducing Neils by YT Cracker. That's in there. I would listen to those. They're very hacker culture. They're very nerdy, right? You might really enjoy those. He, he uh, performs at DEF CON a lot, actually. So, yeah. That's good stuff. Opinions on Earthbound? It's, my f it's a fantastic game, dude. There's a reason my game is named Heartbound, let me just say. Yeah. All right. All right, chat. When this gets to 100 left, I'm going to pause donations. I'm going to pause it. L Miss Jackalope, too? Oh, yeah, dude. I, should I can't believe I didn't say that. Crux is right. Miss Jackalope. Actually, can someone, can one of the mods shout out Miss Jackalope? Miss Jackalope is an awesome person, dude. Freaking amazing stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. Do you know about Darknet Diaries podcast? No, I haven't, I haven't listened to this. Hundred dollars. Holy shit. Anonymous donation of a hundred dollars saying it looks like the mods need more of motivation to keep up. <laughs> get wrecked. Oh, get wrecked. Yeah, Miss Jackalope is rad, dude. Let me pull this up. We got about, I don't know, like 60 seconds before this becomes a problem. There you go. So this is Miss Jackalope. Streams are amazing. What happened with Unity? Just tried looking it up and can't find anything awesome I setup. understand. Really cool setup. You should definitely watch them. Really, really should. I'm going to link this in chat for you guys. Really, really cool stuff. Defcon buddies. There you go. All right, chat. We're almost there. It's almost happened. We've been doing this every day for the last week. It is outrageous. So thank you very, very much. You guys are amazing. Quickie's not watching all subscribe. No. Currently planning on a colony sim game, but all forums post suggest Unity, but not Keen. Any recommendations on performing engines for simulations? To be honest with you, Unreal is a really good one for that. Really, really fantastic. It can do some wildly good shit with that. That being said, it really depends on the kind of game that you're making outside of that. There's a lot that's going on there. I would check through Game Engine's database and see that stuff. I have it listed up on Develop.Games under the Games Engine, like Game Engine's part. You may find another engine that could be better suited there, because I don't make those kind of games, if that makes sense. All right. I'm going to pause the donations. Oh, wait, no, not yet. We're almost at 100. When we're at 100, I'll do it. Sudden increase in popularity is me producing shorts every day. Our uh, editor, Shadelock, makes all of the shorts and is a badass. And we figured out kind of how the algorithm works, threw all of it in there, and it, it functioned very, very well. I've been addicted to your t YouTube shorts and our sage -like and your sage-like advice. Glad I found you. Thank you for the $5. You kick ass, dude. You're awesome. I'll wait for it. Yeah, Shadelock is good. Shadelock is super good, Alka. Do you code on these streams? Yeah. However, my community has exploded into the sun. And as such, there's a lot going on right now. And now we'll pause this. And we'll pause the music as we get closer to 250,000. And now it's frozen. Blow on it, chat. There we go. There we go. You just got to blow on it. It's like an old SNES cartridge. You know, it's fine. Oh, it's going. 70 left. Now, right before the end, everyone unsub, right? Is that the way to do it? That's the right way to do it? It makes sense. It makes sense. You 
You can just wiggle your fingers at it, too. Just wiggle. It'll work. 40 left. Oh. 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 30 left. Oh. Yeah, on Twitch right now, we have 1,700 people watching. And on YouTube, we have another 1,000. So you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Whoa. Whoa. It only went up by one. Come on. There we go. There. I was like, oh, God, it got stuck. It'll never move again. <laughs> How is this happening? Because people are finding the shorts and they're subscribing. Oh, here it goes. Two left. There it is. 250,000, dude. A quarter of a million people. That is absolutely outrageous. That is wild. So thank you very, very much. You guys are amazing. Chat is going insane. I can't even, there's just a ton of, ton of hearts and, and comments and everything. You guys are awesome. Um, we have done this every day now for the past week. And it, for those who don't know, for those of you who are new here, I, I had 13,000 subscribers on YouTube and we had about 500 average viewers on Twitch before this. I, I didn't even stream on YouTube because we weren't allowed to. Dan Clancy, the CEO now allows us to simulcast, right? As, as partners. My hope was to get to 15,000 subs by the end of the year. We are now at 250,000 subs a week later. There are currently 1,800, 1,700 people on Twitch. And there is over 1,000 people on YouTube watching. This is, this is beyond anything I ever thought would ever be possible. You guys are amazing. And there was another donation right now. Let me go look at that. Let me look at this. Oh, God. Oh, God. The chat is moving. I can't even click my own goddamn link. I need to put this in the other monitor. One sec. I'm just going to put it on the other monitor. There we go. Got it. Um, this came from Sligain. Sly the content is excellent. I did the opposite to you. Went from game dev to security. Yes, yeah, it's the other way, dude. However, you've inspired me to jump back in, building stuff again with Godot. Much love from another Australian. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you for the $100 and 40% of your donation just went to the moderators. You just you fed the mods. So thank you. You guys rock, dude. No, I don't need a fourth monitor. I just need to use my space more correctly. If you actually want to see what this looks like to me, um, let me show you what my stream looks like. If you've never seen like a streamer setup, this is some this this right here is what my left monitor looks like. It is just a giant wall of everything that is being managed at the same time. It is <laughs> it is data all over the left monitor constantly. So yeah, that's that's my left monitor currently. It's it's the full setup for this. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, wall of chats, wall of chats, wall of information. So, thank you very, very much. You guys are amazing. I'm going to turn all this stuff back on now. Thank you. Hello, Thrum. Hope you are well, sir. You hacked the algorithm. Time he to start over now. Yeah. to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I applied for the silver play button. I guess that means it's Thor's birthday again. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, dude. I actually, I managed to apply for the silver play button. YouTube finally believed that I was over 100K. And uh, I've done it. So we got to wait now. I think they said I get an email within 10 days and then we go from there. And we'll see what happens. So thank you very, very much. One vertical monitor just for chat. I could do that. I could set up another. Then I'd have to look up all the time. I, just, I need to find a way to do it. It's good right now. I think we're in a good spot. Get ready to get the gold one? Dude, that'd be outrageous. Thank you for the $3. Thank you for, thank you for feeding the moderators. You guys kick ass. Any plan for the 250k milestone? Look, I'm going to be real with you, dude. I was going to... I was going to do a video, because they do a monthly video of the update for our studio. I was going to do a video and be like, wow, we got to 100,000 subscribers. And then it didn't stop. And then and then it, we got to 200,000 subscribers, and then it went faster. I, I keep putting off making the video, because this hasn't stopped going up. So I don't know what to do now. Like, do I make it now, and then just... <laughs> it's been like five days. So I'm... I'm trying to figure out what to do with this damn video where I'm like, oh, I'm going to make a video. And it's just like the numbers are going to be wrong. It is outrageous. You need to go. All right, dead comedian. You have a good day, dude. So, yeah, no, I'm I'm like I'm, you've, you've stun locked my ability to make the thank you video is what's happened here. You've stun locked it. I even took a gif of this. Let me let me just go pull this up. I made a gif of this. 
And I, what I did was I was asleep when it had 100, 100K. I actually recorded it and then turned that into a GIF so I could come back and watch it happen, technically in real time, because I was sleeping and recording my screen at the same time. So, like, I thought it was going to end there. I was like, wow, we did it. Thank you. Numbers continue to go to the upwardsness. Suffering yeah. from success. Much Thank you for the hundred dollars, dude. So how Holy long do moly. we expect to hit one million subs on on the tubes with current trace trajectory? Thank you very much. Thank that is super, super streaming. nice of you. I'm going to go doom scroll now and return in a couple hours. Have fun. I hope I hope you enjoy doom scrolling. Happy birthday, I hope you enjoy Goblin it. Many King. people don't. You get sad. Don't get sad from your doom scroll. Um, chaotic, chaotic. If I can actually say your name correctly. Thank you for the hundred dollars, dude. Said so congrats on the two hundred fifty k. Here's your next quarter million. That is wild, dude. It's already at two two hundred fifty thousand two hundred fifty eight. So thank you very very much. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. Um, I need to go see what this says real fast because there's a really funny thing that keeps popping up. Let me see this. Okay, it hasn't updated yet. It oh no, it just updated. <laughs> This is ridiculous, dude. Hold up. Chad, you have to see this. YouTube's UI, I don't believe, was ready for this. I just want to... I just want to show you this. 95,793% more views than usual. 30 million views, more than 286 or 28,600 to 39,000 than you normally get. We're not even at the end of the 28 days, dude. We're not even at the end of the 28 days. This is ridiculous. Yeah, a little bit of an increase, just a small amount, right? I guarantee this is already at 100,000, but it hasn't calculated yet because it's been lagging. Every time I go to look at it, it's not even showing the right numbers. Social Blade shows the wrong numbers. YouTube shows the wrong numbers, and their API shows the wrong numbers. If I go and update their API onto my Steam Stream Deck right now, it's not even showing the right numbers on there. It is completely wrong across the board because it's trying to catch up with how quickly this is going up, and it calculates over a couple of days. It is ridiculous. So thank you very much. Yeah, late game Diablo 3 build type numbers. Exactly. That's exactly what it is, dude. It is outrageous. So thank you very much. You guys are amazing. That voice is hella easy to listen to. Well, thank you. How did you figure out the algorithm? Oh, actually, I put a couple of things up for this. I like sharing the knowledge on this stuff. Let me show you. Where's... Where's my other MS Paint? There we go. There's a couple of things that I've done. Through YouTube shorts like most of the people here. Ferreted through your Outer Wilds playthrough, which was Ferreted very fun. Dude. Love your voice so much. Can't wait to Zool Trail or some of your dev streams. <laughs> okay, wait. The reason that said Ferreted and Zultra Lord, thank you for the thousand bits, number one. The reason it did is because the bot is not allowed to say Irish wrist watch irish wrist watch say that out loud everyone say that out loud now right now irish wrist watch i bet you can't many of you won't be able to so i made it so that watch is a bad word and it replaces it with a list of other words <laughs> <laughs> oh man thank you for the two dollars off to sleep and code later all right dude you have a wonderful day thank you very much yeah there are 300 dollars donations holy moly let me go look Happy birthday, Thor. Congrats on the 250k. Thank you for the 10 bucks. Just reminding you about the anonymous best trailer you've ever seen. Slug game. Chaotic. The best trailer I've ever seen is most definitely Witchfire. Would you guys like to watch that trailer? You guys want to see that? I think it's an amazing looking game. I think it's absolutely incredible. Lander Summit, thank you for becoming a member over here on YouTube. Please button. don't Zool Trailord these streams. We are already at capacity with one. Uh, also. I'm going to show Witchfire mostly because it makes Wolf is Wolf mad. And if I can make my moderators mad, I'm having a good day. Uh, it's an ad. God, there's so many ads on YouTube. Please, YouTube. Please, YouTube. Please, let me go through the ad. It's an unskippable video ad. Oh, I got to get YouTube Premium, dude. I'm so sick of this. There we go. Okay. This is... The best trailer I have ever seen for a game in my life. Hands down, there are many trailers that are out there. They're generally determined to be hype trailers, which are trailers that just show a lot of stuff that makes you want to buy the game, but not really gameplay. And there's usually gameplay trailers. And those gameplay trailers usually show mechanics or show the gameplay of the game. This does both. And it does both very, very well. And I'm going to link this in chat 
This is called Witchfire. The reason why it does it so well is specifically because it is showing the gameplay, but it has a narrator that is talking about that gameplay to give it context while they're showing awesome shit. Yeah, we're going to talk about the hype, hype thing in a moment. It actually hit level 10. You guys are amazing. We'll talk about this. It's called Witchfire. It's over on Epic Games Store. It's doing a timed exclusive. For your success. Thank it you very much. It makes me beyond happy that my friend is doing so well. Biggest of hugs to you and she. Thank you, Crux. Thank you for the 1337. The good old leap bits, dude. And I can't wait to see you guys again at DEF CON. I miss the hell out of you, man. You guys are awesome as shit. So I, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have a blast this year, dude. So thank you. And like... Yeah, so let's watch this trailer. I'm going to pause everything. I'm going to pause the, the stuff, and I want you to see this and, and really take into account what they're doing with this. If you want to make video games, look at what they've done with this trailer because it's freaking rad. So all the, all the ads are, are delayed right now. This is seven minutes long. We're going to watch the whole thing. Between the witch We're going to start over. There we go. A war rages between the witches and the remnants of humanity ruled by the church. So it's telling you the story. In a this narrator is perfect. controlled by one of the witches. Papal scouts have discovered a wreckage of a ship that had been lost for several centuries. It carried a valuable artifact, one that could alter the course of the conflict. To recover it, the Vatican has dispatched Freeman, no. one of its best witch hunters. Only he can face the witch by means of his powerful magic. Very hype trailer, Hunters right? Like All of this so far. ...are called prayers, and the substance running through his veins that gives him arcane powers is known as Witchfire. When you reach your destination, you're completely exhausted. There's very little Witchfire left in your blood. One of the first things you must do is replenish your powers. The fastest way to do it is to fight the witch's minions. So now we actually get rage. gameplay, right? Once Always put dead, gameplay in your the trailers. The fire they were made of will be yours. However, this won't be an easy prey. The world of Witchfire is a place where everything is trying to kill you. Monsters prowl the area. Treasure chests turn out to be deadly traps. And lethal contraptions stay hidden from view. If you waste bullets, ignore your stamina, and take your opponents for granted, you will die. Showing that your choices actually matter in the game and skillful gameplay is important. Calling out the core mechanics of the game, the core gameplay philosophy. to recover it, and the monsters you've eliminated come back from the dead. What's even worse, once the witch senses the powerful intruder who hasn't died so far, she will start throwing deadly curses at you called the Calamities. These can raise the dead from their graves or conjure a fog to unleash a hunt for your soul. She will stop at nothing to drive you out of her realm. And if this doesn't work and you still brazenly cling to life, amassing more power and a greater arsenal, then the witch will dispatch new types of minions and set traps the likes of which you have not seen. The world will change, adapting to your progress. This means more witch fire to collect, but also more challenges to conquer. Yeah, the mechanics are great, dude. They're very slick. So we saw a lot of hype there, but a lot of gameplay as well. Enveloped in a fog that hides you from the witch's sight. From here, you will venture into her domain, trying to find the villain's lair. An enchanted mirror allows you to receive amazing inventions from the Vatican's gunsmiths. Love this. Here, you can also transform the witch fire collected along the way into skills that become more and more powerful. This transformation does more than simply make you stronger. You also gain understanding of how magic works. Without this knowledge, many places remain inaccessible, and many magical objects are nothing more than a piece of paper with strange scribblings or a simple shard of iron. Let's examine this weapon, made for the prayer in the Vatican workshop. If you're unable to see through its esoteric shroud, it looks like a regular rifle. The more witch fire courses through your veins, the more secrets reveal themselves to you. For instance, it turns out that the aforementioned rifle can hit several enemies with a single shot. This is how things are in this world. Where common folk see nothing but a regular weapon, 
a seal with strange symbols, or a beautiful ring. A prayer recognizes brutally effective tools of death, spells based on one of the four elements, or magical signets that allow him to use telekinesis or teleportation. So I'm going to pause it right here. The reason why this is so effective, the reason why this is so good, is because they're not just showing you hype, right? They're showing you the gameplay mechanics. They're giving you context through the narrator. This is a very smart way to do a trailer. Not just showing you, oh, we're going to have these things in the game. It's These are the, the core tenets of the game. These are the mechanics that we have and giving you context by narrating them to you the entire time and showing you them in practice by showing that gameplay. This is a good mixture of hype and gameplay trailer. It is the, exactly, it's the perfect way to showcase the game. I have never seen a trailer do it this effectively. It is phenomenal. The prayer's task is simple. Kill the witch and recover the artifact she stole. However, simple doesn't mean easy. Luckily for you, the prayer has more tools at his disposal than superhuman powers or a magical arsenal. Some of these implements are called the Arcana. Crystals that are created from witch fire in the most magic-infused spots allow the prayer to alter reality, if ever so slightly. Will you enhance your spells with new abilities, weaken all of Gun the mechanics are great, yeah. Or perhaps you will prefer to improve your shooting skills for a short while. Still, the most powerful force the prayer can wield is not a weapon, a spell, a magical object, or even the arcana. It's the freedom. You embark on your journey. You set your own goals. Would you Gotta like love to this game, the dude. The guard keeping watch over the witch. It's Witchfire. We're watching right the trailer because I think it's a fantastic trailer. Some gold and really good. To the hermitage. No problem. Why don't you test a new weapon and collect enough Witchfire to develop another skill? There's nothing stopping you. Every step you make during your journey marks a choice. You can rush into a huge mob of enemies and try to execute them in a frenzied dance of death. Or opt for eliminating them one by one from afar. Steering clear from a fight is an option. As is provoking more fights for bigger rewards. This freedom means that there isn't just one correct method to defeat the witch. The prayer is not bound by time restrictions. And the Vatican no time doesn't limit. care what methods mm. he employs. A sharpshooter's agile fingers, a tactician's analytical mind, or special powers and magical objects. You can pick, choose, and match freely to achieve your goal. These are the bare bones of Witchfire. Discovering the rest is up to you. But here's a final thought. The witch knows that the prayers are immortal. Her goal is not to kill you. Her goal is to take away your belief that she could be defeated. When faced with hardship, you decide whether to give in to despair or get back on your feet and resume the fight. Godspeed, prayer. So what we've just seen there is most definitely the best example of a trailer I have ever seen. Walking through every one of the core tenants, walking through every one of the things that they want to do with the game, every one of the ways that they want to showcase their mechanics, their progression system, the gameplay, showing in-game footage for all of this stuff, having a narrator to give context to people that may not understand the in-game footage. This is perfect, dude. This is perfect. And yes, the trailer is quite long. Yes, it may remove some of the discovery for this. But what it has shown me is that there's a ton of deep systems with this game. There's a lot of care that is added to each one of those. And it is phenomenal. It is really, really, really well put together. I will be playing the shit out of this game when it comes out on Steam. Right now it is on what is called a timed exclusive for Epic Game Store. Timed exclusives are good for games. A lot of people don't realize this. A timed exclusive is so much better than a permanent exclusive. Permanent exclusives are dog shit. They're not good for the players. They're not good for the developers. But a timed exclusive gives a whole bunch of money to the developers, and it lets them do what is called a soft launch. A soft launch means that you're putting your game out to less people than would normally get it, and it lets you fix tons of bugs, 
and take feedback from that smaller group of people before everyone has formed an opinion about your game. Bugs and feedback are incredibly important during this period. So what they're going to do is they're going to soft launch it on Epic Game Store and then release it on everywhere else. Guess who else did this? And it turned out amazing. We've talked about this all the time. We talked about this probably about six months before they did it, and that was Hades. We now call this the Hades effect because this game is sitting at 98% positive out of 217,000 reviews. It went into a soft launch on Epic Game Store, stayed there for six months, garnered a lot of audience, feedback, and bug fixing, and then launched it on Steam when it was in its perfect setup. I am waiting for this game to come out on Steam. It already looks phenomenal. The dev team knows exactly what they're doing, and they're kicking ass. I wanted to show you guys that trailer because I think it is a perfect example of how to release a trailer. And I'm going to put this out in chat for you guys here. So you can see it. And yeah, you can play it on Epic or you can play it on, on Steam once it comes out on there. I'm really excited for this. I think the dev team is doing a fantastic job. Really, really excited. I've never played Gordon. No, I don't know what that is. Yeah, no, I'm really excited for that. So anyway, we're going to turn the alerts back on because a lot of you guys put stuff through. Make sure I didn't miss anything too. Enjoy that though. Seriously. That game is awesome looking. Really, really awesome. We'll absolutely be picking it up. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. The subject is still climbing? Yeah, no, definitely. They're going nuts. Oh, oh, oh no, oh dear, oh no, I have once again shitted pant. Please send help, send all the help. There's two kinds of chatters, dude. <laughs> One side effect of your channel blurring up, oh. you're putting the spotlight on software and game dev directory. Yes. The next developer you host could a lot more attention on their game. There's a reason that I keep rating any of the people that are in this category. We built this category, and I want game developers to do well. And one of the best ways you can do well as a game dev right now, especially in indie, is to tell people about your game. Best way to do that is to stream and run a community through something like Discord. It is fantastic. So if you want to make games and you, you want to do it full time, you want to do that. Streaming is a great and very viable way of getting your name out there. It is super good. Did you build this category in any specific genre of music? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, we... um. We told Twitch to make this. We actually put in a user voice request. I put in a user voice request, and the community rallied around this. The game dev community then rallied around it. It blew up. I actually went viral on live stream fail talking about it. It was quite funny. And then um, it became the second highest voted thing of all time on Twitch user voice. And then Twitch said yes, and now we have a software and game development category. This isn't just for programmers. It is for software and game developers. And game developers are artists. They're musicians. They're programmers. They're designers. They're writers, they're voice actors. If you are making a game in any capacity, stream in this category. Stream in this category. My whole deal on here is to make sure that you can get into the games industry. All of this is about game development. Everything that we stream in here is about that. So do it. Seriously, do it. You can make this stuff, and you'll start off not knowing what the hell you're doing. You'll start off kind of shitty, but that's okay. What advices can you give me to help me achieve this goal? Lots of research. Hacking is 99% research, 0.8% uh, report writing at about 0.2% actually hacking. It's going to be real with you. Most of the time it's pretty boring, but when it's not boring, it's cool as shit. There's a lot of different fields in this. I do physical access control systems, which is breaking and entering. I do Wi-Fi related vulnerabilities, web related vulnerabilities, and social engineering. Those are my four things that I'm really, really into. How's the Ashes of Creation Guild coming together? So I went through and I did about half the tickets last night. Um, there's a lot of you guys in there. So many of these are finished now. I've got all the recruitment tickets down to these, and then there's a giant wad of them up here still so i got to finish those ones but everything is going really well we've noticed some funny things is if you get over 50 tickets into one area uh it will explode and put them outside of that because i guess disc like discord groups can't have more than 50 channels in them didn't know that didn't know that so we're gonna have to handle tickets a lot faster is the idea i googled you you youtube book i may just be an ai but for uh for i had yes. shitted my testing rooms that's not good. They are unfortunately now brown. I need you it's to grab good. the mop in the corner. I won't. Yes, I know there is no mop head. Yeah, Anyways, no. Please go visceral cleanup detail on my shitted mistakes. Why you like this? Oh, you want a story from Blizzard? All right, hold up. We're going to pause this. Um, one of the things I do is physical access control systems. I'm, I'm a hacker, so 
physical access is breaking and entering, right? So I do breaking and entering. I had a task where I had to go around to all of the different uh, server rooms at Blizzard on the main campus, and I had to go and pick locks to get into them. We were trying to see if if we could get notice getting into this. Picking locks is generally not the first thing that you do. It's usually the last line of defense, the last thing that you're actually trying on this. So this is not what you would normally do to engage. The idea was to see how long it took for people to catch us, right? So I was in the primary building, which was uh, building one, and I think we we're on the third floor, and the room kind of looked like this. Let me go grab this. So we're in a hallway like this, and I had my buddy, and he was standing next to me, and here's the door, and I'm standing here, and he's got a note, he's got like a like a, a clipboard in his hand, right? And I'm picking the lock, and this dude walks up behind us, and I was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, he's going to notice us. And he stops here, and he goes, you picking that lock? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, awesome. And he just walks away. He, just, he didn't even report us. The dude did, just walked away. On the same pen test... I'm over in the QA building, and there's a wall like this. And by the way, that went in the report. I was like, what are you doing, you dumbass? you got to report people like that. What's the matter with you? The same thing. There's like a weird part of the building that's like this. There's like a water cooler there, and there's a way around the corner. And it kind of it kind of went like sort of not even where the door was there. It's more like down here. And it went like this. And the water cooler is like there. And this is QA. QA is there to, to catch bugs. That's what they do. And they're very good at that. So the, I get this feeling, I'm sitting there picking the lock, and I get this feeling like someone's watching me, and out of the corner of my eye, I look over, and I was like, oh, shit, and there's a dude right here, and he's like this, and he goes behind the wall, and I'm like, oh, shit, shit, and I start to panic, and I'm like sweating, and I'm like, I'm not going to get through this door, and I'm there for like 10 more seconds, I'm like, oh, damn it, god damn it, and immediately this manager comes around the, the corner, and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just doing my job, sir, thanks, and he goes, oh, yeah, what department are you from? What are you doing? Where are you from? And I was like, shit, okay, you got me, right? And I explained to him, I was like, we're pen testers, we're from senior red team specialists, can we know who, who reported us? You guys are the first ones to catch us, this is a really big deal. The employee who was the QA guy actually got an award for this, he was recognized by management for turning me in. That was the whole point of it, was to see how long it took me to get caught, and this is a very good thing. And what we found was that QA was the only department that caught me. And the reason that they did is because their job is looking for vulnerabilities. They look for bugs, man. I was the bug. So kick ass to him. Really good job. And that was great. That was super great. But yeah, no, these are the types of ops that I got to do there. And they're really fun. So yeah, that's what it was. Enjoy that. QA's the best, dude. How many doors do you get through? Yes. <laughs> many do we stream in my career. Here if we're working on music or games that is in the game. Working on music? Or games that isn't a game? If you're working on music and it's related to a game in any way, yeah, stream it here. Absolutely. There's a music category if you're doing music outside of that. If you're not working with games in any way, I think the music category would be more appropriate for that. But this is for game devs, dude. For anyone who wants to do this. Have you inspired me to use my insomnia to be productive? I love to write and draw, but some ideas don't translate well to paper. Games might be the way for me to go on some of my stories. Thank you kindly. Thank you for the $10, dude. You rock. Thank you very, very much. You're awesome. Hello from Japan. You're an epic inspiration. Any suggestions on where to go to get started learning so game dev cool programming stories. in a low budget? Yes. Thank you very much. I, I've done a lot of weird shit in my life, right? Oh, wait. I just put game development, the develop.game site, over the top of the develop.game site. Recursion, chat. Recursion. So, Black Dragon Innovations, thank you for that donation. And I'm, I hope you're having a good time out in Japan, right? I don't even know what time it is there right now. So, if you want to get started learning game programming in a low budget... You don't have to focus on the programming. What you should do is you should focus instead on what kind of game you want to make. So pick a genre, pick a kind of game, then pick an engine for this. When you pick an engine, remember there is no best engine. Just the best engine for the kind of game you're trying to make. Then look for a language that works with that engine. You need to learn that language not just on its own, but in the context of the engine that you are using. So the first thing I always tell people to do is the Hello World of Game Dev. And what that is, is you make a box and you make it move when you press arrow keys on the keyboard. Once you do that, you're off and running, dude. Once you do that, you have a character that can move on the screen. Then you learn how to add animations to it. You learn how to make it so that maybe they can stop by running into a wall, maybe shoot a bullet, maybe hit a monster. All kinds of stuff come out of that. So that's what it starts with. And you can look up tutorials for that specific engine that you work with, specifically to make a character move, and every engine's going to have that tutorial out there, every single one of them, because it is the hello world of game dev. That is how you start, 100%. So yeah, I hope that helps. Um, don't focus on the language. Don't. Focus on the engine. 100%. Engine's going to be the way to go. Did you already have a rant about Scrum on YouTube? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> 
just clone something to train yourself? I did asteroids. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Thank you for the Prime sub. Is Game Maker viable for making isometric games? I've never seen an isometric game in, made in Game Maker. I feel like it could be possible because you could make it like, do you remember Final Fantasy Tactics? Where a lot of them are all sprites, but it's in the 3D environment. I feel like you could do that very well in Game Maker. I think that'd be fine. We also make a website for CS. Uh, for just computer science in general, or are you talking about CS in some other way? I hate acronyms. They could be anything. The internet, everyone uses acronyms differently. I know I, I, I have an intention to put it there for streaming, for game development, and for the game jam. I, I want to update the streaming section. I don't have anything on it, really. It's all placeholder shit. Wind power plant hacking stream coming? Never, dude. I can't do that. I can't even tell you about anything that I did there. It's outrageous. What are these ferrets at the bottom of the stream? So Shay drew those. Anytime someone talks on the Twitch stream, it's that. League of Legends right. client slash code as bad as the memes say it is. League of Legends has actually improved dramatically over the years. It used to be quite bad. It was very easy to form a map hack for it. They've done a lot of really good work with that. So a lot of people say like, oh, map hacks, uh, the developers are shitty. But let's let's take a look at this for a moment. I'm going to pause this real fast. And we're going to talk about map hacks for a moment. And I'm going to snooze the ads because they were about to play. I'm going to snooze the ads. The way that this works is when you're trying to do a map hack, right? Let's say that you have a multiplayer game, and there's a map. There's a unit over here, there's a unit over here. Generally what happens is your client has this stuff cached on, on your client, the location data, the XY location. The reason why this happens is when that unit walks out of fog of war, let's say the fog of war is like this, when it walks out of fog of war, you don't want it to load on your machine and pop into existence. You don't want it to go from invisible to visible because there will be a delay in that. And when there's that delay, the unit is attacking you while being invisible. And when there's a split second decision in games like this, that feels like shit. And the lower and worse your internet connection is, the worse this effect becomes. So what they do is they cache the location of that data. So that when it walks out of Fog of War, it instantly shows regardless of what's going on. The problem is, is it makes the game vulnerable to map hacks because now you can pull that XY location out of the memory of your client and display it on screen. This ends up being the problem, right? So what League of Legends did is originally it was like that, and then they changed it so that it wasn't like that at all, and then they had the invisibility problem. Then they changed it so there's now a barrier like this. And in that barrier, your client doesn't know that a character's over here, but it does when it's there. So right as it's near the edge of Fog of War, it starts caching it. So you can still use a map hack, technically, but it will only show the data along the very edge. This is a really smart way to do it. I don't know if they've evolved beyond, beyond this yet. I haven't really done a deep dive on it to find out. But this is how they handled it at the time, and it was a really smart way to do it, because it stops the pop-in effect from that, that loading into memory, and it stops the ability to use map hacks in that way, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I'm simulcasting. I'm on Twitch and YouTube at the same time right now. So another uh, option of this is before Hearthstone came out, I actually did security stuff for Hearthstone. And Hearthstone, this, this bug never actually went live. This vulnerability never went live. Um, what we had was the same effect, but it was with card effects. Because you needed to cache all the card effects of what was going to go on, right? So when a person played a card, it didn't have a delay between playing the card and showing the graphics and all that because it shows the back of the card to you at all times. It's the exact same problem. So they cached all of the cards in the other person's hand into the memory of your client. Oh shit, because now you can see their hand. Now people can form a hack, a map hack effectively, to see the opponent's hand. And the way that we ended up solving that was we just took every card that could possibly be in their deck and putting all of that into the memory of your client. So now you don't know which cards are in their hand. That's how that got fixed. And it's the exact same problem as a map pack. It's always going to be down to caching abilities because you don't want to put all the abilities that are available in the entire game into the person's memory for their client because then the game runs like shit. You don't want to have that. You have to cache certain what you want someone to be able to pull out of the client. That's what it is. So yeah. Does it increase PC resource usage? Yes, but not by a much, so it won't actually cause damage. You, you're you always trying to mitigate that with, like, you need security, but you also need it to be able to run on machines, right? You don't want to cache everything in the game. That's a terrible idea. This is why Heartbound does this. So if we go into here, and we look at the, the text for Heartbound, which is my game, right? Uh, we'll go look at some lines right here. We're going to go to Act 2, Floor 1, ENUS, Techies, right? This is the English-United States dialogue, specifically... For this one room and it's massive there's a there's a ton of dialogue for this room right it's a massive amount of strings this only loads when you're in this room it's not in memory otherwise it is never in memory until it loads this room and then it loads it out of memory every single time that you leave the room 
and it only loads the language you're currently playing. So it'll only load J Japanese, it'll only load uh, Brazilian Portuguese, it'll only load that, right? And that's what it is. So like, memory management is a big thing, and yeah, as, as Crux says, security is a balancing act. It is a balancing act between performance uh, and, and your security and your vulnerability, and that's the whole point. Audio is cutting? That's going to be on your end, bud. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, there's nothing I could do about that. If audio is cutting, it's going to be on your guys' end. Sounds glitching out for you? Is it glitching out for people on, on Twitch, too? I hope not. Everything looks fine on my end. Uh, nope. Sound good over there? It's going to be something on YouTube. Yeah, refresh refresh the page. Breaking news. Storm Pupa reporting for duty. Unity has layoffs. That's it. Pupa out. Oh, that sucks. YouTube is having issues. Is it having issues across the board? Let me go look. Let the good folks know about the Slinky Cat Sanctuary stream, Mr. Throm. Uh, it doesn't look like anything on down detector. It might be performance related. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be on my end, though, unfortunately. All good here? Yes, it looks like some people are having problems. Yeah, just refresh it. Refresh it might fix it. We got ads in about 40 seconds. So yeah, I'll talk about this stuff for days, dude. Uh, game security is a balancing act. It really is. And it's always going to be down to performance, uh, memory management, and security to try and fix those problems. You have to thread the needle to fix this stuff. It is not as easy as you would think. You can't just, like, ban everybody and, and be done with it. It doesn't work that way. Have you done anything different with New World's launch? Absolutely. I think the biggest problem that New World had was they, they had two problems. Are able to compete with LOL. MOBA is a very hard genre to penetrate. It's a very hard genre to penetrate, and you have to compete with League of Legends, which is very entrenched. When a game is entrenched, it's kind of like beating an incumbent in, in politics. It's a hard thing to do. It is a very hard thing to dethrone a champion, and that's exactly what League is, right? It's, it's very, very, very entrenched as the MOBA. Uh, Dota 2 is the only thing that comes close to it, frankly. So, with this, you were talking about um, what I would change with New World's launch. And there's a lot of stuff, actually. I, I really don't like the way that they interact with their players. I think that they needed to have uh, game customer support, not Amazon's customer support, assigned to the game, which is exactly what they did. It was not good. As a player who has over a thousand hours in New World, I was very unhappy with the way that I was treated as a player for the first several months of that game coming out. I was very unhappy with the way that they treated the game for those first several months. And it turned me off to the game and I haven't played it since. One of the things that bothered me the most is that they had very clear client-side validation for some of the actions in the game. And I'll talk about that after this ad break. Yeah, I have, I have over a thousand hours in the game. We can actually go see that here. We go pull this up. So you can see I'm, I'm telling the truth. It's 1,067 hours. I was very into the game. And I, I quit it because of the way that the developers... Uh, not the developers themselves, but the interactions between the company and us as players. Okay, we got ads. We're going to wait. Do you have any tips on how to start working with games in my area for statistician? You're going to want to look into business analytics metrics would probably be the best for you, to be honest with you. Stats are a big deal for that. Business analytics, uh, customer support analytics, and any type of offensive stuff so people are, are using bots or anything like that to attack the business. You'd find very quickly that any type of logs that you have for login details are going to reveal attacks on the business and attacks directly on the player's accounts, and that's a very useful thing. If you understand statistics or very large sets of data, which you would in the side of that position, it carries over. What's your most played game on Steam? I don't know, dude. <laughs> hey, you know what, to be honest with you, I know what it is. I'll show it after the ad break. You're going to laugh about this. Do game studios care what degree you have? Sometimes. Not all of them, though. It really depends. Uh, work experience and game and degrees always are kind of at odds with each other or hand in hand with you getting a position. It's not heartbound. It's not... Could you tell us again how to crack YouTube algorithm? Yeah, we'll talk about that. That's fine. I'll get back around to it because I'm in the middle of one rant and then I'll bleed over into another rant. We'll go for it. Breaking news. Thor smells like a used nursing home diaper. Zoltralud, I'm, I'm sorry to say that it's your own smell backing up on you. Uh, it's not actually me or anyone else. Yeah, that's you. That's you. It's just you stewing in your own smell. and it's, it's upsetting, I know. I didn't want you to find out this way in front of all these people, but... Yeah, that's what it is, man. It's rough. If you don't mind, how old are you? 36. Thanks for the prime sub, dude. 
My, my middle name is Thor. I was actually born in a thunderstorm. Yeah, my parents named me Thor. <laughs> well, middle name. I've been going by my middle name since I was like 13. Now say oh and leave? How dare you? All right, ads are done. So let's talk about New World for a minute, because I, I think some people are really interested. I paused the donations. I paused the, the music. Um, New World was great when it first launched. I actually really enjoyed the game. I think it had some problems, mostly with performance-related stuff, and that's to be expected when you launch a game with a million concurrent players. That's that's some wild shit. It's actually super wild shit. And it was, it was amazing to me to see how many people were in it, and the game suffered as a result. I don't blame the developers for that. I don't believe that they thought it was going to be that many people. It kind of blindsided them, and the server infrastructure didn't work, right? I found the game to be very compelling. Most of the gameplay loops very much so felt like old-school RuneScape, especially for the profession stuff. Very, very good. It felt really, really nice. It felt really, like, like fun on a server. It felt very, like, uh, the PvP was really nice, all this kind of stuff. Then we started to find bugs, as a community does, right? The problem that I had with New World was the developer response to those bugs. I found it to be incredibly disingenuous and shitty. And it turned me off as a player because I have a background in game development. So one of the things that we found was really interesting. If you carried an axe at the beginning of the game, you could get a power up. And the power up was once you got below nine or no, once you got below 10% HP for the next three seconds, you became invulnerable. Now, this would be fine if all of this was managed and rendered on the server. If you manage and render this on the server, that means the timer is on the server, the effect is on the server, everything is on the server. The problem arose because they did some of this on the client. And when you do things on the client, especially in an MMO, client-side validation is the worst thing you could possibly do. So what happened is that in PvP, there were capture points. And they would walk into the capture point, they'd get below 10% HP, and they'd have their game in windowed mode, and they'd grab the edge of the window and do this. Now the client thread was frozen, and they were invulnerable forever. And this bug was active for like three months. So every PvP match, which the game was entirely driven by PvP for map control, just had a million people standing on the capture point doing this shit. Which is just... Oh. Now, this is fine. I understand that the game was not meant to be an MMO at first. When I worked at Amazon Game Studios, I worked on the Lumberyard engine, and at that time, New World was a Rust-like internally. It was not meant to be an MMO at that point. It was a Rust kind of game. There are things that go wrong at the launch of MMO. I understand that these things are insanely bad, but also bad things happen. It's about your response to them. Amazon's response is what pissed me off. And they said, no, this bug is not client-side. It's just the server waiting for the client before moving forward. That's the definition of client-side validation. The entire community split into two halves, people who understood what client-side validation was and people who, under, who just believed Amazon blindly. They actively made their players dumber by lying about this to their community, and it pissed me off like you would not believe. It pissed me off like nothing you could possibly imagine. And I, I've been mad about it ever since. And that's something that I've been angry about since that time. And it's not the only reason why I quit the game, but that is a primary reason. Do not lie to your players about this shit. Just own your mistake. I don't care if you have a terrible mistake like this. I don't care. Just don't lie about it. And it was super weird. The forum post that they ended up putting up for this, they tried to say that everything in the game is physically rendered. All of it is done server side. And they even put up this analogy where they said every time you swing an axe and it hits a tree, all of that is done physically. And it was very apparent that that's not even possible either because you could turn around backwards and your animation would keep going into the air and hitting nothing and you're still mining the tree. Then they edited that post and they made it so that every time you swing a sword, that also is doing that. But that also wasn't true because the animations weren't dynamic. None of it made any sense and they kept doubling down on this narrative and it was wrong and it pissed me off dude i hate when developers lie to their players and it turned me off to the game that being said they have greatly improved since then they've improved their ability to communicate with the players they've improved the game dramatically and they've released an expansion since then the issue that i have with it now is the same issue that i have with many mmos which is if you have a friend and you want to get into an mmo right, and you want to get an MMO, you have a box price for a game. Let's say the box price is $40. If you want to go play with your friend, it's just 40 bucks, and that's all they actually have to say, right? Just 40 bucks. that's all they have to do. Come play with me. We're going to play together. That's fine. Let's say an expansion comes out, and the expansion is another $30. Well, for you, the original player, you're like, oh, it's just 30 bucks. That's cheaper than when it launched. That's totally fine, right? No issues here. But when you try to get your friend into it, they got to pay 70 bucks to get to where you are. And that's their latest DLC. So if you want to get a new player in, they look at a $70 bill. 
An aged player, one who's already been there, just looks at a $30 bill. And the psychological difference between this is massive. So getting new players is harder in these types of situations. And that's what they're doing right now. And it makes it really difficult to get friends into a game when you're already invested in the game. And that makes it hard to play with people. And an MMO is completely built off of community. So this this feels gross. This feels gross. Yeah, Destiny has the same problem. This feels gross. And yeah, Bungie should listen to this part. I agree. I don't like when games do this, and that's why I'm one of the reasons I'm excited for Ashes of Creation, actually. Ashes of Creation is doing a completely different model. And it's it's really good. And also, you're seeing the same thing with Guild Wars 2, but Guild Wars 2 doesn't do it quite this way. Ashes of Creation has no box price, no DLC prices, and it's only $15 a month. And in order to prevent bots from flooding into servers, they are making regional servers, and those regional servers have localized prices, but if you pay for the Brazilian server, you like Brazilian server price, you can only pay play on the Brazilian servers for that price. You can't use a Brazilian server cost and go to the US server and then make a million bots this way because the price is reduced and spam the shit out of the server. This is brilliant. A $15 a month only price, I'm down with that. So this is the more this is the better business model, I think, than doing it the other way to me. For me, as a player, I'd rather do it this way. Because then if I want to get someone in, I'm like, hey, it's just 15 bucks, right? You just have to pay $15 to get into it. And if you don't like it, that's the cost of most indie games, right? And then you just walk away. You don't have to pay a $90 box price to get into it to try it to see if you enjoy it. And I, I like this model so much more. So yeah, that's kind of my little rant about New World and the things that they did. It, I think a lot of it came out of the fact that Amazon Game Studio was kind of a new studio. They didn't know what they were doing with that kind of stuff. They made a bunch of mistakes, but I think the response on the forums, the player response to that was was not good. I, I think it was very terrible. Really, really terrible. And it wasn't the only instance of that, but it turned me off to the game. And I, I wish that that had gone differently, and I hope that they make the game in a better way going into the future. And maybe I'll return to it and try it again, but I I don't I don't like it. I don't like what they did there. You got banned in New World for fishing? Hmm. Hmm. Are you sure you were just fishing? You sure you were just fishing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't believe it. <laughs> Let's summarize. In order to have good security, you have to tread on noodles. Thor likes voyeuristic QA. You shouldn't cash hands, but Thor has two tiny hands for that anyway. If you understand very large sets of data, then you might begin to comprehend Zultralord's gravitational mass. He can spread calories over peer-to-peer -peer networks. Little known <laughs> fact that FAT32 oh, oh my is god, dude. Him. I Who made you this way? I pay you a monthly subscription to play Fallout 76. Hold up. So, to play Fallout 76, and someone asked at the same time, thoughts on Fallout 76? I actually play Fallout 76. Uh, let me pull this up. You're going to be surprised about this. Fallout 76 is one of the biggest shit shows for a launch of a game I've ever seen in my life. It was outrageous. The shit that they did at that launch is so depressing and so insane to me. And it took them years to make the game in a playable state. Do I think Fallout 76 is fun? With friends? Yeah, sometimes. Alone? Not so much. Is it a good Fallout game? Absolutely not. It is, it is not a good Fallout game when you compare it to many other Fallout games. Just play New Vegas, right? That being said, if you want to get into a game, and it's kind of clunky, you want to shoot some bullshit with your friends, Fallout 76 doesn't suck. It's not amazing, but it doesn't suck. i definitely buy it on sale if you're going to do it. It's not... It's really janky, dude. It's really janky. And the shit that they did at the launch of this game is totally unacceptable. But I, I do have fun in it sometimes, legitimately. Yeah, it's fun with friends, mostly because the shit just breaks all the time. It's the shit just breaks in the game constantly. It's pay to win too, if I remember. No, it's not. You get so overpowered in the game that there's basically no challenges anyway, really at all. It's it's ridiculous, frankly. Like so, like no, the bag issue with launch was not even the the worst part of this, dude. So the thing I think that that blew me away about this is they had this issue with this bag, and they had this issue with like the the drink that they put with it. And one of the things that they tried to do is they tried to get everybody to get a refund. And the way that they wanted to do this is they had everyone put in a ticket on these forums, right? They're like, oh yeah, just go put in a ticket on these forums. And it was just a forum. And that forum didn't require a login. Now the problem with this is, because it doesn't require a login, the URL at the top had an ID number. And because it didn't require a login, that ID number was fully exposed. And you could just change the number and see the next person's payment processing information. So you could just be like, ID1, ID2, oh look, a new credit card. Because they required your name your address, and your credit card information on the ticket. And all of it was exposed. Thousands of players exposed in this way. God damn it. It was so bad to watch.
It was so bad. And what it showed you is that they were caught with their pants down with the mess that they created. They tried to put in a jank solution. They didn't really have a way of doing it appropriately. And they forgot to security check that shit. Whoops. Whoops. Not the best. Final Fantasy XIV keeps bumping up the max level of the free trial access so they're less of a financial wall to get into game with. So when you make shorts, do you clip these convos and upload them from the VODs? Shadelock does it. Shadelock clips them for me, and then I upload them with all the tags and everything like that. Shadelock is an absolute legend. So Steets does our editing for our long-form videos. If you like those, those are Steets. If you like the shorts, that's going to be Shadelock. And if you've watched the shorts, I implore you to go watch the long-form videos, because they're quite cool. Yeah. You gave me a pass by saying not the best? No, I'm adding humor to the situation when we all know it's quite grim, to be honest with you. It's completely unacceptable, completely dog shit, and you should absolutely be doing security checks. But when I'm saying not the best, it's smiling like that. It's to add humor to it. You know that. Ben, you developed that game site through YouTube Shorts. The release tips were super helpful. We'll keep it bookmarked. I don't use Twitch, so I'm going to uh, burn the free prime. Thank you very much. You're awesome, dude. Is it goblin mating season where there are two KP people watching? It is goblin mating season. It's finally happened. Your time is now. Good evening from Singapore. What's up, dude? How's it going? Do they get any legal representation for basically adding customers' data like that? When you make a mistake with PCI compliance, you usually have to buy credit reporting stuff for every single one of those. It's uh, credit protection stuff. So yeah, that generally happens anytime you screw up PCI compliance, and that is absolutely a PCI compliance failure, 100%. Payment, P PCI compliance, if you don't know what it is, is payment card information compliance. When you make a mistake with that, it is very costly to the business because you have to buy credit reporting for every person to protect them to make sure that their information is not stolen across the board. It's it's very expensive when you screw it up. That's that's why we have security teams specifically for PCI compliance, and I've worked in that for a number of years. It's it's rough, dude. You don't want to screw that up. What game is this? Game Maker Studio. Can't believe you streamed for my DGen PSD hours. Expect me back. Thank you. Can you please talk about the YouTube algorithm? Okay, okay. There's a bunch of people asking about this now. Thank you for the prime sub. We're going to pause this for a moment. What I've been doing with the YouTube algorithm is this. And you can do the exact same thing. Now understand, whatever content that you make is still going to have to be good. It's still going to have to be well edited. You're still going to have to talk about things that people enjoy talking about. This is not just going to pop off on its own. I have been making content for the last six years, so I'm very comfortable doing it. That means I have a better chance of being able to produce something that is a higher quality. Not because I'm really good at this, but because I've practiced over six years. So I'm comfortable talking, which makes it easier for people to understand what I'm trying to put forward, right? So practice. If you, if you want people to notice the things you're doing, practice and give yourself to do this. Let me go through these different things. The first one is on each one of your YouTube uploads. So I'm going to go grab one of the shorts that isn't out yet. We're going to go do this. I'm going to show you this right here. And I, have, I think I have a short out for this already. Let's go to content, and I'm going to go grab... Okay, this one's coming up soon. It's one about good dough. We have a new clip that's going to come out today, right? It's not even out yet. We go down here. Um, if you go to this, we go to show more. You can go all the way to the bottom, and you can see this right here. Publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers. Uncheck that box. Uncheck that. The reason why is on social media platforms, when you make an announcement, any type of announcement, usually what it does is it doesn't send this out to everyone who's following you. It sends it out to a percentage of those people. If you uncheck this box, it is only sending it out to people that are not subscribed to you. The reason why it's important not to send it to a percentage of people like this is some of the accounts that follow you are dead accounts. They're people that don't engage anymore. They're not part of YouTube anymore. Maybe they lost access to their account. Maybe they're not around anymore. Whatever, right? Yeah, dead accounts. Dead accounts that are not there anymore. Because of this, many of those aren't going to engage. When it sends it out to, say, 100 people, if 50 of them are dead accounts, it makes it look like your video is not that interesting and it doesn't push it in the algorithm. The same thing happens on Facebook and Twitter, etc. When you are unchecking that box, it only sends it out to live feeds, specifically people who are not on your subscriber list. It prioritizes non-subscribers. That's what it does. So this is a really big deal. Do this. Turn that off. We've already worked with a whole bunch of other people. I've talked to people about it. They're sending me in their stories. They're like, hey, I started unchecking these, this box, and I've seen a great deal of improvement on the visibility of my videos. That's exactly what it is. If you want to use the shorts algorithm, that's a great way to do that. It's super, super useful. Now I'm going to go look at the, the rest of these. So the next one that you're really going to want to do is come up here. Look at all these tags. I have a ton of tags for everything that's going on with this, everything with game art, everything with game programming, game development, all the stuff that I normally do. Tag the shit out of your stuff and make sure that you have tags up here as well. You can only have three tags, hashtags up here that take it into different areas. I've got this specifically for shorts, game dev and Godot, and then I have a bunch of tags in there. Tag everything. Use your 500 things and tags because the way that it works is if somebody watches a video that shares a tag with you and they like or engage with that video, the algorithm is likely to send you another video 
with those same kind of tags on it. You start building a web. It's a net of people that are getting caught in the type of content that you're creating. The next one is put links on everything. Don't make a giant wall of links. I hate when I see that shit. It's so overwhelming. I make one link. It just says, watch the stream here, piratesoftware.live, and it takes you specifically to this stream. That's how people can generally find it because there's a link to my main stream on every single video. And if you like the video, you're likely to go and look into the description and see that. And it's right there. There's no bullshit all over it. It is simple. I hate it when links are gigantic. Links don't work anymore. If they didn't, then this stream wouldn't be at 1,900 viewers right now instead of the average 500 that I had before all this happened. So it's definitely working. We already see a lot of people coming over from YouTube that are finding this. So we know that it works. So outside of that, the last one that you want to do is a 24-hour upload cycle. The algorithm really likes daily uploads. It loves daily uploads. It is such a big deal, dude. If you stop producing content for even a day, I have found that it ignores you for the next five to ten days on average. That shit sucks. It's rough, dude. So what we do is we make a whole bunch of shorts. We put them up on YouTube. We schedule all of them to come out every day at the same time, every 24 hours. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. It's a simple URL, too. Simple URLs are king. Piratesoftware.live. That's it. So this is what I do for the YouTube algorithm stuff. Now understand, this is not going to get you millions of views right off. You, your videos still have to be super entertaining. They still have to have people that are engaging with it. They still have to have people that are interested in it. But I have found that this is the best possible way to capture the lightning when you get hit by lightning. You want to bottle the lightning when it happens. This is what I do to do it. And I've tested this stuff over the last, like, however long shorts have been out. We've been slowly maintaining that and figuring out what works and all this kind of stuff. And now you guys are seeing shorts all over your feed. That's the whole point. The idea is this, and this is the simplest thing that I can, like, grant to you. If you want to figure out how the algorithm works on any given platform, there is one rule to follow. How do you make the most amount of money for that platform? And that's what you should be doing. This makes the most amount of money for YouTube. YouTube is there to make money, not to make you famous, but to make itself money by delivering ads. How can you set up a system that the algorithm will like because you are able to deliver more ads and thus make YouTube more money? That's it. That's it. You're a teacher or a game maker? I'm a game developer and I teach people about all the stuff that I know on the internet. That's what it... So yeah, it's follow the money. It's, it's make the platform as much money as possible. That's all. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. That is the whole deal. That is what I do with the algorithm, and it works. I've been looking for a game coding boot camp of sorts and was looking at Zenver Academy. Thoughts? I have never used them before. I've never used it at all. I, I wish I could give you some feedback on that, but no, I have no idea. Um, I'll need to look at Zenver Academy. I've never seen that. What I do, I actually have a sponsor. Let me pull this up. One moment. I have a sponsor. I rarely ever take sponsors because I find most sponsors to be dog shit. Yeah, now everyone knows. That's the point. That is the idea. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I will always share everything that I learn. I will share the things that I learn so we can try them together and see if they work. Always. Always. It is very, very important to me. Because I don't... I, I don't like the idea of isolating or siloing knowledge. I think it's dog shit. And will the algorithm work this way forever? Probably not. Is it fully repeatable? Most likely not. But... For the people that have tried this, they're already seeing a great improvement to the amount of visibility on their channels, so we know it at least works in part, and I'm happy with that. Have you ever commented on Counter-Strike 2 Cheating Wave? Nah, I don't play Counter-Strike 2, but cheating is always going to be a, a thing in competitive gaming, 100%. Thank you, by the way, for the subs. So, the sponsor that I have is this. I'm going to pull it over here. I normally don't accept sponsors. I normally don't accept sponsors because I find most sponsors to be completely bullshit. Most of them are trying to sell you a product that is worthless. Most of them are trying to sell you something like energy drinks to sit on your ass watching a streamer. I have a whole clip about this. It bothers the shit out of me. I partnered up with a group called Code Crafters, which I'm going to go visit here. Code Crafters puts out a shitload of free knowledge. A shitload of free knowledge. There are tons of tutorials in here. They maintain the Build Drone X GitHub. There is a massive, massive amount of information for you here. It is enormous, dude. And I'm going to put a link for this in chat. This is their GitHub. That is the GitHub for them. It is amazing, and it is free information. And then the other one is they have a paid affiliate system for training that they have that is more structured in a paid environment, and that's this affiliate link here. 
So if you're looking to build stuff, check out the D GitHub. If you want to get more into like a more structured environment for learning stuff, then their paid thing might be for you. But I, I, I implore you to do the free thing first, frankly, because there's a lot of shit in there. It's a lot of shit, dude. You may learn some cool stuff. So that's the only sponsor that I have. The link is not 404. It works for me. It works fine. Yeah. Uh, maybe try it again. Which one's 404 ring for you? Yeah, the link works for some people and it 404 is for other. Try it again. Here, we'll do it again. Because it works for me. <laughs> did you guys just did you guys just hug a death their website? How many people are 404 ing this shit? Did, try hitting it again. This is hilarious. <laughs> we killed their website. Some of you guys are 404 ing. Is it EU? Wait, 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 hold up. Is anyone in the EU able to get in? Or did we just DDoS their site accidentally? Do they not allow it in the EU? No. No. Did anyone in the EU get in? Is it broken? I'm going to send them an email. Are you hearing it works? I'm going to let them know that this keeps happening. I'm going to send them an email right now and be like, yo. Yo. This is a problem. Yeah, I'm going to send them an email right now. Okay, one sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this to them because like, dude, if that's breaking, that's really Four funny. I'm gonna turn these alerts back up. Yeah, I just said I'm having an issue with the affiliate link. Uh, we've got about 3,000 people on between the two live streams. I'm going to send out this link at 404 for tons of people. Is this a stability problem or something else? I'm worried I'm DDoSing the site with legitimate users. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry about that, Code Crafters. Well, check out their GitHub then. Yeah. The animated ferrets on Twitch are so adorable. Same with the real ones you have. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm really happy to run that rescue, man. Really, really happy. Link is wrong. Site works. No, the link is correct. That is that is a correct link, dude. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's app.codecrafters.io. Join via pirate software. When I use it, it actually takes you to this page, which I'll show you right here. There it is. So this works perfectly fine for me. And it gives you guys 40% off on it if you do get those. So yeah, no, this totally works. It's just broken. It's... Yeah, no, it's the link is is 404ing for some people. I think it's because you get I, I think it's getting flooded is the problem. The site might be fine, but I think the link is getting flooded. So there you they'll try it again maybe, I don't know. Shit's broken. What's the game you're making called again? It's called Pirate uh, our, our Studio's Pirate Software and the game, we go pull this up, is Heartbound. As you can see here. Yes, I think we're hug of deathing it. I think we're actually hug of deathing it. Worked for me yesterday, but not now I'm betting we're hug of deathing it. You know what Death they probably have? Well, US here. You know what I'm betting, dude? I'm betting they have a throughput limit. I'm betting we're hitting it so hard that it's killing my affiliate link. Holy shit. I'm I'm betting it's a I betting I'm betting we're hug of deathing it, dude. I really think we're hug because there's two thousand of you on Twitch and another thousand on YouTube. So when I send this, I'm pretty it's not just only you, there's people in the US that are unable to do it too. I think it's I think we're detonating their website. I think we're detonating their website. Suffering from success. Oh, hug of death means that they were set. We have so many legitimate users that are actually interested that it's bringing that service down. I think it's probably having an issue because we're specifically using my affiliate link. The website is doing fine, but the affiliate link is not able to handle this, which means it's probably doing something in processing on the back end that's different, and it's just good. Yeah, I removed the via pirate software, and it doesn't work either. Maybe we're hug of deathing the entire website then. 
Shit. <laughs> it's a fantastic problem for them to have. But, ooh. Ooh, this is not great. It's pretty funny. Join is busted. Yeah, we're probably killing the website. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry, Code Crafters. I'm just going to... I'm going to be real with you. I know that it works, so it's working for me. I'm sorry, Code Crafters, that there's so many goblins in the community that when I talk about your website, it dies. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. It's very funny. It tries to connect you to your GitHub, so the servers might be overwhelmed. That's my guess, too. Yeah, because it connects through GitHub for your access to stuff. The servers may be completely overwhelmed by that. It's probably completely overwhelmed, which sucks, but funny. <laughs> <laughs> he blames the goblins. The heck? You are the goblins. You are the goblins. Yeah, 100% scammed. What's so bad about Java? Nothing. It's a meme, dude. You can work in Java if you want to. I just complain about it because it's funny to me. Because I have to work in it. And when I have to work in it, it's for the block game server. Oh. One sec. Ow. You ever get one of those tinnitus rings? Jesus Christ. My whole right ear just went bee, like I got flashbanged in my ear. God, that was rough. Ugh. Slowly going deaf one day at a time. Oh man, Heartbound is an amazing anagram for Earthbound. I love, I love Earthbound, dude. Thank you for gifting that membership, dude, and thank you for that membership there, Cake. You guys are awesome. By the way, if you are a member on YouTube, you can access all of our shorts and stuff in advance. So I hope you enjoy that. If you got a gift, that's that's what that does. So thank you. Doctor Rock, on. Thank you for the prime sub. Has gone to basically zero. Yeah, that's not great. Thank you for the hundred bits. And uh, how you doing, Orphan? Hope you're having a good day. Your shorts teach so much more than I learned in school. <laughs> that's funny. That's. I think that says more about the school system than it does about me. That's not great. I wish. I wish when I was in high school, I wish they taught us about taxes. It just even not even teaching us tax law, just being like, here you should go here to learn tax stuff. That'd be great. I didn't know shit about that. There's so many young people that I know they're like, I don't even pay taxes. I'm like, that's not great, dude. The IRS is going to find you. They'll get you. Yeah. You want a link to the website? Here, bud. There you go. Your website is not working. Let me see. Now it works for me. It might be cached. Oh, wait. Okay, you know, it's working. It's just slow. It's just slow. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing, chat. You ready for this? Here's here's the the whole sauce. Um, my stream was averaging 500 average viewers. We now have 3,000 in total between Twitch and YouTube, and because of that, the server is eating shit. <laughs> so I have to upgrade the entire infrastructure, which is not great. So I'm going to be doing that. It's a it's a good problem to have, and I will be upgrading the entire infrastructure. I'll probably be moving develop that games off onto its own web server. So thank you. It's currently part of a, a bunch of other web server stuff that I have, but I'm probably going to move it off onto its own because it's it's a lot of stuff. So thank you very, very much. I will be migrating it probably in the next couple of days. And um, I hope you get a lot out of the resource. I'm going to keep updating it so you guys kick ass. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, no, it's insane. It's a lot. It's a lot. I'm going to turn these I back on. I majored in business, math, and accounting, but I'm a musician now and a recording engineer. Weird how life works. Weird. Yeah, life is weird, dude. I went to college to be an entomologist and a sick scientist. Then I became a hacker. Now I make video games on the internet. Life's weird. It's full of surprises. So, it's awesome shit, frankly. Ads. We're gonna wait. Denny, thank you for that gifted prime. Or, not gifted prime, what am I saying? Gifted membership. Jesus. It's gotta... I gotta get used to calling them memberships on YouTube. I wish YouTube didn't call them that. It's so hard to say thanks for the membership, dude. What's an entomologist? Insect scientist. I love bugs, dude. Yeah, I just... I used to find bugs. Now I write them. It's different. But the same, right? Not getting ads? Sometimes you won't. Twitch ads will only go to certain people based on regionality it's and time of day. kind of mental yeah. that I subbed through a short about a week ago and suddenly your sub count increased by 2,000%. Yeah, full throttle mad bastard, it's, it's crazy. Thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you very, very much, dude. Yeah, thanks for the member. Lime smug, dude, I love limes. Limes is super wholesome. Love those emotes, too, from limes. Can't get ads through Adblock? Some of them don't work. But I won't tell you which ones do, because if I did, Jeff Bezos would crawl into my How stream and punch me in the neck. Now? So I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm scared of him. Oh, actually, let's check. Let's find out. 
I don't know how many YouTube subs we have now. I'd like to go look. But but up but up, but but up but up, analytics, live count. Jesus Christ! Holy shit! That is a lot of people. That is outrageous. To be honest with you, the ads are over. Um, that's a lot. That's a, that lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. So thank you. You guys are awesome. That is outrageous. And we now have a thousand viewers on YouTube, and we have two thousand viewers on Twitch. About two thousand one hundred viewers on Twitch. Yeah, that is a lot. Hey, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. I'm pausing. An absolute legend just entered my chat. An absolute legend. I want you guys to look look in chat right now. And I'm shouting him out. That's Cardboard Cowboy in my chat. I watch him all the time. Cardboard Cowboy is an absolute badass. He's amazing. His content's insane. It's like watching a live-action version of a show on Adult Swim. It's one of the highest production values of anything I've ever seen on Twitch. Also, he does a great impersonation of me. <laughs> you think I didn't see it? You think I wouldn't see it? They said that shit to me immediately. That was funny as hell. Does anyone have that clip so we can show that again? That's the funniest damn thing, dude. That was the funniest damn thing. Yeah, send it to me again. You didn't see it? No, I saw it. Oh, I saw it, dude. I didn't see it live because it was sleeping. Yeah, here we go. Hold up. I'm pausing this. This is so funny, dude. Is this the same one? This might be a different one. Is this a dip? Did you do this twice? <laughs> Who ratted? All of chat ratted. All of chat ratted my you out, dude. Listen to this. I'm a hacker, and I, uh, my dad was in South Park one time. Um, I worked for this <laughs> for many years. Um, one of my favorite streamers is Cardboard Cowboy. True, uh, actually. He would True. Never tease me or do an impression of me that's unflattering because I'm so nice to him. <laughs> Indistinguishable? Yes. That's the word I understand because I am Thor. That's my name. Uh, I'm a hacker. I, am a, I also make uh, video games. And uh, let me tell you something that's bad about uh, the uh, stuff that a company did once. Uh, Unity is <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Unity is stupid, and here's why. Uh, they did something really dumb. And that's what Thor does, only way better. Hey, Blau, thanks for the 40 months. Thank you. That is exactly the content. You don't even need to watch the stream anymore. Cardboard Cowboy has laid it all out for you. It, for the rest of the stream, it's just going to be that. That's all it is, the entire time. So, Cardboard Cowboy stuff is amazing. You need, you definitely need to watch this stream. I, I watch a, a handful of people on Twitch. I watch Bajo, spelled B-A-J-O. Bajo is, if, if you like fart jokes, if you're Australian. These are things that you really enjoy, right? Those are good. Uh, Cardboard Cowboy has one of the highest production values of anything I've seen on Twitch. It is, it, like I said, is like a live-action adult swim show. It is completely insane. And this isn't even like, this isn't even all that he does. He does storyline. He has music. He has full videos for stuff. He has fully animated environments. It is wild, dude. It is completely wild to me. Play this a quick clip. Why? What is it? Let me see. What'd you uh, do? I love using Java. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no and then from there i i watch in game asylum in game asylum has again very high production value he does some very funny skits on stream he plays horror games really good shit i watch excessive profanity excessive profanity has one of the most honest pieces of feedback for any game he'll ever play he'll tell you your stuff is dog shit he'll tell you straight up if it's dog shit or not he'll he'll give you that example that the the information from a consumer perspective and he's very honest about it also excessive profanity stream his tier three subs can choose to execute people in chat and they start an execution. If you're an idiot or say something absolutely outrageous, they'll execute you. And then all of chat votes on it. And then they will cut off your head live and you're permanently banned. It's one of the funniest damn things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Excessive profanity is awesome, dude. He's very good. And last one is Doig Swift. Doig Swift are animators here on, on Twitch. And also they've been animators for a great number of years and they do creative stuff here on Twitch. And it's amazing. It's really good shit. Really good shit. Also, Excessive Profanity is the Minister of Violence for our Ashes of Creation Guild that's coming up. So he's going to be the dude leading the PvPers. He's going to be kicking some ass. He's awesome as hell.
Yeah, Doig Swift is great, dude. So those are the people that I watch on Twitch. They're they're the people that I get to spend the most of the time that I can with. Um, I rarely get time to watch people outside of that. Those are the ones that I get to watch the most, and they're they're buddies of mine, and they're all fantastic. So if you want to watch more than just me on this platform, definitely go watch them because they stream at different hours too. I want to raid you nerds more, but you're never streaming at the time that I end my stream. A thousand, a thousand bits, shorts be popping. Thank you very much, dude. So yeah, no, great people. All of them great people. 100%. The shorts be popping. Nice to meet Chithor. Is Warhammer 40k public domain? No, I don't think so. <laughs> That'd be a little bit weird, right? If, if Warhammer 40k is public domain, then Mickey Mouse is too. It's kind of how I feel about that, right? Definitely not. Just pull the 24-hour like you used to all the time? Dude, I could. I could. I got no qualms about... You want to know something funny? You want to know something funny? The other day... I have, I have a confession, chat. I actually have a confession. You know the other day when I was like, I only slept an hour and a half and I streamed one day and then I said I slept an hour and a half and I streamed another day? Yeah, that was a lie. I didn't stream at all. I didn't I didn't sleep at all, rather. I didn't sleep at all. I lied to you. I didn't sleep even a little bit. Um, I literally laid down and I, I sat there trying to sleep for an hour and a half, got back up and streamed again. This, that's just what it is. It is, but I just, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep. I couldn't. I couldn't. I've lied to you. It's, yeah, it's, it's 100%. And I've seen the deception. I know. I know. I uh, I only sleep about five hours a night, and sometimes I just can't sleep. And that's what it is. It's not a little bit of insomnia. I I laid down on my bed and I did this for an hour and a half, and I was like, screw it. I just got up and started working again. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't fall asleep. It was just a waste of time. That's just how it happens. I'm not burning myself out in any respect. This has been the way that I have been for like ever, for like 20 years, which is very funny. If the audio is doing weird stuff on YouTube, refresh your page. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried hard drugs? Nope. Not my jam, dude. I drink water, orange juice, and chocolate milk. I don't even have caffeine. Caffeine messes me up. I can function off only five hours. If I sleep more than that, I get weird nightmares. <laughs> really weird nightmares. Nah, it's not too low. I've been doing it my whole life. I've talked to my doctor about it. The doctor's like, whatever, you function fine. And they've said some people require less sleep. Some people require more. That's it's whatever. I love Ovaltine. Oh. I got Love views. It. They're multiplying. Good. And I'm coding in a way that's mystifying. Thor on the stream with a hammer so divine. Ferrets by his side in a tetchy design. You better log in, cause I've got the code. Streaming Who made you this way? through the wires like a lightning road. Ferrets in the spotlight with mischief and glee in the coding symphony. You're this is the amazing. harmony. Do you have a referral code for Ashes? Yes, I do. In fact, I have an entire guild set up for it. I was a, uh, the leader of Strybog Clade in EVE Online for 15 years. I ran a guild that was 1,200 people strong. We were absolute badasses, and I was a villain. So I'm very into social sandbox MMOs. I'm going to be leading a guild in that, and there's the link for the my affiliate link Hi, and my our new Discord Gunner. that I made specifically I for that. I am a game maker, game developer, power plant hacker, and a giant spoon. I lives in Down Under with Bajo who has worms. That is right. It's true. I consume Bajo only burritos and hammy. I also oh. fart goblins, so that is why the entire chat is just a collection of my fart who screams seven because of my birthday. It's not my birthday. Everything else might be true. Might be. Couldn't it be me? Seriously. You talking about my Godot? What yeah, I think Godot's amazing, dude. I have to pay to get rid of the madam voice. It makes you can't. me want to put a toothpick under my toenail and kick a oh. wall. Oh. Oh. Why would you do that? Think of the 100 bits. Yeah, to be honest with you, the madam voice is there for chat to be a goblin. Wait, you it's were great. a guild leader in EVE Online? Yes. Hey, I know literally zero about coding, and I want to make an RPG with Game Maker. Where should I start for code? make an object and make that object move using arrow keys on your keyboard. And once you manage to do that, that's the hello world of game dev. Now you've got most of a game created. Getting a player to be able to interact with the world is the basis of games. That's it. That's all it is. So go look at tutorials for how to make a character move, how to capture inputs from a keyboard, and you'll find very quickly you can also capture inputs from a controller that way. Very easily. So now you have controller support in your game, and you've only been working on it for under an hour. It is absolutely wild how much you can learn just by making the character move. That's your hello world right there, if you're trying to use a new engine. If you have 100%. to choose a tooth to clip in half with nail clippers, what tooth are you clipping? My wisdom teeth, because I don't have them anymore. 
Thor! Full throttle, mad bastard, has made a critical error. It's true. See, what you don't understand, full throttle, mad bastard, what you don't understand about what you just did is you told chat something you hate. You see, this community is completely composed of goblins. And now that you've done this, all they're going to do is use the madame voice until the end of the stream. And there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. And it's all your fault. God damn it. Is this guy named Michael or not Michael? My name is Jason Thor Hall. My middle name is Thor because I was born in a thunderstorm. I've been going by my middle name since I was 13. You can find me in credits for pretty much every Blizzard game going back to the beginning of time. Right? Everything from World of Warcraft Vanilla all the way to Overwatch. And also, you can find me in Special Thanks or Rocket... No, no, not Rock and Roll. Uh, Lost Vikings 2. You were actually born in a storm? Yeah, thunderstorm. Uh, my brother was born in the fall, so they made his middle name Russell, which is quite funny. Prove it. I'm not going to show you my driver's license. Go look at the credits in WoW, dude. Got them programmer Thor, socks? I don't wear socks. I'm what barefoot. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies. God damn it. <laughs> Thor, That's awful. I shouldn't even let... Have no. you ever had a bad sausage? It's the worst. I'm not even going to give you that one. I won't Thor, do it. What do you call a girl in the middle of a tennis court? Annette. Seven, I'm actually seven, mad at these. seven. You're a seven. You're a seven. Who no, made you this way? You're a seven. Hey, Thor, I've seen your shorts come up in Predicted. my feed more than a few times now, and I literally just moved you on what players want short. And I totally nice. agree. It spoke to me, specifically because a game I've played for literally close to a decade, World of Warships, embodies the opposite of this very simple principle. I wonder if you've Good. ever heard of it, and had any opinions on the dev studio, Wargaming. I know it's niche, but this has been burning a hole in my soul. Yeah. So it, one of the things, if you didn't watch that short, it's completely about me saying what players really want is they want to be able to interact with the developers and they want the developers to take them seriously. It is a very normal thing across the entire industry for developers to slowly get out of touch, especially in large game studios or not respect the opinions of the players. And that breeds contempt among the players. And then that communication line breaks down and it gets worse and worse. and It becomes very toxic. It is very, very important to maintain that communication with your players. And even though a player is mad and they're screaming things at you, you have to understand that it's coming from a position where they care about the game just as much as you do as a dev. They just don't know how to articulate that without getting angry. And that's fine. All player feedback is important, even if it is not correct. You can learn something about how your community feels, even if they're not articulating that in a way that is impactful to your development process. And if you're having that kind of community management problem, you need to change something. It is very, very, very important. And I, I think that's something a lot of dev studios have forgotten. It's one of the reasons that I picked up streaming in the first place was to be able to talk to you guys about this, talk to you about the games that I'm making. And I've gotten tons of feedback from players, and some of that feedback is great, some of it is worthless, but listening to them is the point. Listening to them, yeah. Listen to the complaint, not the suggested solution. Thank you for the $5. That's incredibly nice of you. I will read your donation in just a minute. I want to give an example of this before we move forward. There was a person who contacted me, and I have a mini game in Heartbound where there's these pods that fall down the screen. You have to click on them. That's the point of clicking on them, right? And they said, this felt laggy. And I was like, that's really weird. This game runs perfectly on an Android watch. There's no way it's lagging. So what I did was I went to go play it, and I wanted to see what they were talking about. And what it was is I had an icon. Your cursor was a hand that did this. It wiggled back and forth, right? And it was animating. So because the icon was animating, at some points it looks like it was pointing here, and at some points it looks like it's pointing there. When a pod is like this... And it looks like the icon is pointing here, but it's actually pointing up there. They'd click on it and it would miss. So they'd have to click it a second time. When this happened, they felt like it was lagging because their input didn't go through correctly. All I had to do was that animated hand. We stopped it. It's a static image now. Changing it to a static image stopped the lag. 
The player was wrong about what was going on, but their bug was completely correct, and it led us to a fix that otherwise we wouldn't have known about. This is why it's really important to listen to your players. You should always listen to them, and even if they don't know what's happening, it may lead you to fixes you otherwise wouldn't know you needed. Very important. Really important. So yeah, let's start this back it's up. It's almost as if chat wants to find your critical wound spot. Stab you there, and then keep pouring salt into the wand. Show the you wand. The, docks, <laughs> the woofers, the little puppy wappies, if you will. The woofers, dude. You get your Not again. Hundred thousand dollars gold. Would you shave your head live on stream? E no. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I don't have a price. You will never buy my baldness. It'll never happen. And if I start going bald at any point in my life. I'm shaving that shit off, waxing my head, and blinding people on the street with it. And you couldn't stop me then either. That's it. That's it. All that money, that's going to the ferrets. That's what that's for. It's so that I can make the ferret rescue larger. You're not buying my baldness. Can't do shit about it. XD. Yeah, you get Wait free baldness once I get older. Yeah, right? brother name is Russell or Russell or Rambo. I am so sorry that ya had to live with a brother who was born in the fall. I have like seven siblings, so I feel ya pain. Could ya Why share that bad? some jab at ya brother's childhood? Ya twitch. Also chat. I think that's mean. Ya are a seven out ten. Ya called. Hello, Why are you like here. this? No, I think that's Can mean, you tell dude. tell me your opinions on Star Citizen in a convenient short size? XD. Yeah, um, one of the things that got me into Star Citizen in the beginning, I actually, I thought it was going to be a really cool project. It looked really, uh, uh, like, cool to me, was they talked about having an in-game economy that's driven by the players. And I, I like the idea of an in-game economy for a space game that's driven by players because they played EVE Online for 15 years, right? And that, that sounded really cool. The problem that I've seen since is they, they've set up these things called licenses for characters, and those licenses are you pay money into the system and you get a ship, which is already subverting the entire idea of an in-game economy of players building things uh, immediately because you've added money, real money to the mix of getting in-game items that have technically in-game power to them, right? And then from there is if you lose that ship because you own a permanent license, you can just get the ship back again. I don't like any of that. I, I think that's really negative to me and it kind of defeats the purpose to me of having any type of, kind of in-game economy and it sucks. Were you there for World War B? Yeah, I was. So I was in, originally I was in Goon Swarm quite a long time ago. Then I started what was called Strybog Clade. I was the leader of Strybog Clade, which is the largest truck laving alliance in the game. We created Pochfin together. We owned about one third of Pochfin, if you've ever heard of that place in space. And I had 1,200 players at my command. I am very into statecraft. I am very into spy work. And I am creating a guild in Ashes of Creation going forward uh, once that game comes out. And I'm going to be putting everything that I know to the test in that game as well. I absolutely love Social Sandbox MMOs, and I was not a nice guy in that game. I was a villain. I was a well-known villain. There's even dramatic readings that people have made of my Eve mails on YouTube, which is quite funny. So, yeah, I was into it. And uh, I'm going to put out my links for that in chat real quick. So if you want to use the affiliate link to go join us in Ashes of Creation, when it does come out, it's going to Alpha 2 next year. And if you don't want to buy it, because it's prohibitively expensive, don't buy the ticket if you don't want to get into a very broken alpha. We're doing it. They're doing that specifically to keep the player base small. And it's an alpha, which means everything is going to be broken. Your characters are going to get wiped. They're going to be changing tons of shit. It's a real alpha, not one of those alphas where they're like, three weeks later, the game comes out. It's a piece of shit. They're doing an alpha for over a year, dude. So with that in mind, like, don't get into it if you don't want to be a part of that. And um, the Discord, even if you don't have a key, you can join the Discord and come join the guild because I'm leaving it completely open up until the game releases. Then we're going to get more restrictive based on OPSEC and everything else. It's already leveled out with a whole bunch of OPSEC stuff regarding um, different roles and everything like that and the and the management structure for all of it. So, yeah, that's a thing. I I, I have a, a big problem with, with, um, with that, though, with Star Citizen, specifically because of that. The game might turn out to be really cool. But what I've mostly seen is a lot of what I would determine to be kind of like alpha state things, um, design ideas for stuff, and no cohesive net between them. I know that will change over time, but I, I find it to be in a really weird spot where it's hard for me to want to latch on to Star Citizen because it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right yet. And uh, maybe their vision will come through in, in the end, but it, I'm not seeing it yet, if that makes sense. I got the, the alerts are back on now. You ever stop streaming? Every day, 8 to 10 hours a day. Always. 
It's been 12 years since announcement, and there's still no cohesive vision. That's a huge red flag. Not really. Tie. Love it. Oh, From thank you. SC to monetization to ashes. Perfect. Thank you very much for the XD. 500 bits. I'm the... So... So one of the things is someone said it's a huge red flag for 12 years. When you're trying to build a social sandbox MMO of any kind, um, or even a large-scale MMO, it is more important today to get it right than it is to get it out, just like it always has been. The industry has forgotten this. They forgot it for many, many different games. You're starting to see a pushback on that where there's many studios that are trying to get it right before getting it out, which is going to be better for players overall. The problem arises when you have a vision like that that just doesn't come together for a long time and it starts to look really dangerous to outside players. There's a very good chance that they release Star Citizen in the end and it actually kind of kicks ass, right? There is a good chance of that. It's harder and harder to reach that vision if you don't start putting systems in the hands of players to test those things and having a cohesive system for them to play. And I'm worried about that portion, but I don't know if it's a red flag enough that the game is dead or anything like that, if that makes sense. BG3 is a good example of everything coming together after a very large amount of time and, and it going through. And it does have its problems. BG3 does have bugs and issues with it, but it pales in comparison to the, the vision and the, and the beauty of the rest of the game. So it doesn't ruin the experience. I'm worried about core system functionality, stuff like professions, crafting, economy, because those are the things that drive me in a game like that and if they're not put together correctly it's going to make me unlikely to play it if that makes sense yeah they are making huge progress recently i did see that with star citizen but i still am not seeing anything with professions economy that that drive me to be interested in the game mostly because of the real money loop that they're having for in-game content i don't like having real money for in-game power in any way i think that shit sucks i think it undermines player behavior in every way player progression in every way and it feels very bad to me as a player it feels gross i would rather have a um a, a game that just has cosmetics and nothing else and even then the cosmetics have to be either at the same level or slightly worse than the ones that you can earn through in-game activities such as end-game achievements for very difficult tasks. And that's very difficult to do for a lot of companies because they get that little feedback loop of I put out a thing and I made millions of dollars, let's do it again, let's make it cooler, let's make it cooler. And then you're like, well, we've used our entire development team for artists who only make stuff that's paid for and now we just make shitty ones for the in-game achievements and it starts to unbalance it. So you have to rein that in and make sure that it's balanced when you're making a game like this. Otherwise, you get mounts that are amazing on the mount store and just terrible for your most dedicated players. And like, that's just mounts for an example, but there's tons of examples like that. So you have, it's it's a beast you have to keep in control of, if that makes sense. I'm going to start the alerts back up. asked for advice about video game QA tester resumes the other day. I took your advice mm. and now I'm in the big roles. Jokes. I'm still a full-time dad and haven't had a chance to do jack. But I have been rewriting my CV and it's already looking a lot better. Thanks for the Good. advice, Cap. The advice, if you, if you want to know what that advice is, um, the advice that I always have, was that a raid? Who just raided me? Which among you? No, it was, this, it was a hype train. The advice I always have is this. Uh, one page cover letter, one page resume. So your CV, one page. Your resume, one page. Never go above this. Otherwise, you're going to get thrown away by a million different hiring managers. You have to remember that they look at thousands thousands of applications and if you want to get seen you want it to be short and sweet cover letter i usually do as one paragraph and the paragraph starts with hello i am this person as per my resume i have relevant skills to this position and here they are and you always reference back to the resume to make sure that they are interested in looking at the resume after that you say um you know thank you for the opportunity because it is an opportunity and you want to be respectful i look forward to hearing from you that's it that's the whole res like the cover letter. It doesn't need to be beyond that. You don't need to tell them your life story. Most of them aren't going to read that shit anyway. Be short and sweet, polite. Show that you have things on the resume. Make them interested in the resume. Resume is just going to be one page long, and that's it. If you make it longer than a page, most of them are going to get thrown away. And I know that that's devastating, but that's really it. It is really simple. It's incredibly simple, and that's all you have to do. And you you will be surprised at how much that goes for. And you have you have to realize. The reason this is the case is because they get thousands of applications, and if you make a massive application like that, a lot of times hiring managers just throw it away. A lot of automated systems throw it away, too. Only one paragraph? Yeah, I only keep it as one paragraph, to be honest with you. There's no reason really to go over that. It's just bloat. It's bloat, and it, it makes it really difficult for hiring managers or even automated systems will throw it away because it's just too long. Yeah, don't send a 100-page autobiography. It's a terrible idea. Have you heard of Signalize? I'd love to see you make a long-form video on it. I think it has one of not. the greatest stories in gaming. Also love your content. What is this? Someone gave me five dollars for this. This is really this is. <laughs>
<laughs> what is this from? What song is this? Asking Alexandria. Not the American average. I haven't even heard that song. Thanks for the $5, dude. You just paid the mods 40%, by the way. It's a really nice thing you to do. But, you know, thank you for the song lyrics. Whoever you are out there. And remember something. You have to understand this. I'm, I'm going to say this right now. Really, since you've sent me this, this looks like hitting on the bartender. And I'm going to have to tell you right now, right? And I know this, this might be devastating for you. Um, there are currently, what is this, 2,009 people on the on the Twitch stream. And there's currently 900 people on the YouTube. So there's about 3,000 people here. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to turn you down in front of 3,000 people. I know that's that's going to be rough. It's it's much more rough because you decided to do it here. It's real rough, dude. But uh, yeah, you're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, sucks. Sucks, man. Thanks for the donation, Chat by the way. Is too horny. <laughs> True. Very funny. Thank you, though. Thank you for the donation. Hitting on the bartender. Cool. Cool. How do you know the Econ of Ashes creation will work? So they've actually listed out all of the systems that they want to work with with that, and it looks very compelling to me right now. The reason why is because they have a very valid system of item sinks, and all of the repairs for all the gear in the entire game also sink materials. It is not just a currency-driven economy, and currency has weight that you have to move around, so you can have things like bandits go and steal that, you can have players engaging with each other to attack things. Social sandbox MMOs are built entirely on player-driven content. That player-driven content is usually built on conflict. So the fact that they have so many systems in place for sinks for different items and materials and so many systems in place for conflict to occur and steal from a different people is great it's really really good and since i played eve for so long i know that these work and i'm, I'm excited for that more like a poe style economy yeah that's very simple like very simple like that where there is and not only that there's risk to moving items risk to moving items means there's risk that i'm going to show up and steal your shit there's risk that our guild shows up and takes over your caravan and takes all your stuff that is what breeds really cool environments and really cool moments testicles, in social sandbox and the most. Testicles, testic Why are you like this? Who made you this way? Thank you for the 100 bits. I'm putting you in the toilet for the next 10 minutes. In the toilet for the next 10 minutes. You live there now. In the toilet. So thank you for that. What was that donation? Let me go look at this. I threw money at my screen. Did it work? Yes, Georgie404. Thank you for the $10, and thank you for giving 40% of that to the mods. You're awesome, dude. 10,000 years dungeon, yes. Enjoy these pancakes, sir. You earn it. Thank you. What is this? To all my fellow veterans out there, I'll see you all at Denny's and Applebee's tomorrow. Oh, dude. I love Denny's. Every Denny's you ever go to is the same Denny's. You could go at Denny's at any time of day. It's always exactly the same, no matter what. It's the exact same goddamn Denny's, and I love it. That I love it for that reason, dude. Love it. What is that? Thank you for that. Oh, by the way, you know how I just put up that message that said you just got scammed? You know that one? That message just says, you just got scammed. How vital is it to watch the movie Office Space for upcoming CSIT grads? I mean, you should. It's part of the culture. It's fun. See how it just said scammed? Let me explain something to you. I'm going to show you something because we, we won today, chat. All of Twitch won today. All of Twitch won today. And the reason why is because of this. When you throw bits at a streamer, you pay about $1.40. And the streamer gets about $1 because you spend 100 bits on the streamer. This gives you 71% of your donation makes it to the streamer. 71%. If you buy more bits, up to 25000 it can give up to 82% of your donation makes it to the streamer. This is great, right? If you do hype chat, or whatever it's called, on, on YouTube... Oh, actually, on YouTube, it's Super Chat. On Twitch, it's Hype Chat. If you do this, Twitch takes 5% of this and then takes 30% of whatever's left over. This comes out to 66.5%, which means it's objectively worse than bits, which is already in there. And I want to show you this because I'm oh so happy about this. Twitch did an announcement, and I am so goddamn happy about this because we've been bitching about this feature for months. I wanted to turn it off, and today, they said 18 hours ago, based on the community's feedback, we've decided to deprecate hype chat on November 15th and invest more into cheering and bits. Going forward, we still believe in the value of pin messages and fast-moving chats. Viewers will be able to pin cheers with bits in the coming weeks. They're killing the feature. Thank God. I am so happy about that. I was not happy about hype chat. 
I have never been happy about Hype Chat. I wasn't happy when they made it into, what was it, Cheercoin originally, when it was a replacement for Bits. I'm not happy with it being in my channel without me being able to turn it off. And in five days, it will be gone. It will be gone. And I can't wait for it to be gone. Oh, that feature sucked. But W for Twitch. Good job. Get rid of that shit. Hate it. Hate it. Always hated it. And that's it. I'm just happy about it. Thank you for the $5 over there on YouTube. Have you seen the game creation of dungeon card game made in Minecraft? No, I haven't. That sounds wild. Can you send me a video for that? Actually, send it to me on the Discord and DMs. I'd love to see that. That sounds cool as shit. What is this, Jack? From Zach? Oh, Zach is great. Oh, yeah, let me go copy this so we can actually see what it's turning into. Because this is a really big deal, actually. $5? Let me go look at this. Just wanted to say that you've been... I've been unemployed for the past four months, and your streams and resources for game dev have helped me elevate myself out of a dark corner. Much love to the ferrets. Dude, you kick ass. You don't... I, I need you to understand something. If you're, in a, if you're in a rough spot right now, like financially, like it seems like there, you don't have to throw money at me. And... and I, I don't know what else your economic situation is, but if you've been out of work for four months, just hang out, man. And it means a lot to me that this was able to help you in some way and get you in a spot that's really cool and get you like more positive. But don't worry about throwing money at me. You don't have to do that. And you kick ass. So thank you very, very much. Seriously. Thank you. None of you guys have to do that. Not at all. So let me go look at this. Um, from Zach. New pin cheer functionality will scale to the number of bits cheered. Creators can set a minimum pin cheer limit. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, this looks really good. No way for you to remove it? Yeah, we can't remove it. That feature is just there, so I de-incentivize it by putting a meme image with it. This is great. Uh, so you'll be able to pin messages with bits, and it says the number of minutes there. This is a much better system. That's a much better system. I'm glad that they tied this in finally. Bits are the, the king of Twitch, so even hype chat alone was just ridiculous to me. Are you going to buy Lamborghinis to 300k? Um, no. Thor, Let me show I you. I am sorry to inform you, but there are no Denny's in Denmark or in the EU for that matter. Also, what land. is the difference between hammy and a grilled cheese and a toast or panini? Moons Over My Hammy is made specifically in Denny's, and every Denny's everywhere makes it exactly the same way. At any time of day, Whichever Denny's you go to, it is never different. It is never different. And it's fantastic. It's the same. It's like an SCP. It's great. I'll explain the uh, $300,000 donation goal after this ad break. The ad break's about to pop up, and I pause the stream for ads. So just give it a minute. Did you ever check out Albion Online? I did. I didn't like the interface. I didn't like the interface very much. It kind of turned me off. I played it for a little while, but it wasn't my jam. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the game. It's just something for me, right? Yeah. You've had I 10 average. Like Thanks. I'm kind of feeding YouTube Shorts content here, but that's okay, so I'll ask. Relevant to my last message about World of Warships, could explain how adding multiple, loosely connected fake currencies into a game preys on the player base? Lots of people do not understand this because they are specifically implemented to muddy the player cost waters. Yes, so adding a whole bunch of different currencies like that is actually super devastating to players. Uh, it's done generally if you're doing real money currencies like that. You've, you've done it because you're trying to get players to de-associate the currency with real money. You're like, oh, it's only 700 silver. That's all it is. They're not thinking about the real world cost of that. That's a normal behavioral thing. and It's to manipulate players, 100%. Absolutely. Okay, we got ads. We're going to wait for the ads to be over. Waiting for the ads. Eastward, based on your suggestion, is so cool. Eastward's an amazing game, dude. Absolutely fantastic. I need to use the bathroom real fast. I'll be right back. Give me just a minute.
No ad blocking, you don't see any ads. What's going on here? This is what happens when there's Twitch ads. Twitch ads happen on a regular basis every 30 minutes, so I pause the stream during that so that people don't get left behind. Yeah. And most people on Twitch won't get ads either. It only goes to a certain select number of people that are in a certain region where Twitch is delivering ads. Yeah, we'll talk about the 300k. We got 30 seconds left on the ad break. We're going to wait for it. Not everybody gets ads based on your region, bud. We wait for the community. I hate ads on live stream, but they pay me a lot of money to do it, so there's no reason I'm not going to. And we wait for it, so that way nobody gets left behind. Oh, let me see what your donation was over there. Oh, that donation was the same one as earlier. Is it still up? What happened? It's a little bit weird. Any suggestions where to go to get started learning game programming in a low budget? Yeah, we, we answered that one. That's weird. I wonder why that's still up. Have you seen the game? Yeah, that's all the same stuff. Weird. The worm stares into your soul. The worm is real. Did you know that? It's made by Sam Page in our community. And then they sent it to my P.O. box. All right, there we go. So, 300K. Do I play any games in my downtime? Yeah, I've actually been playing World of Warcraft uh, Dragonflight. I was very mad with WoW for a long period of time because of the fact that all of World of Warcraft seemed to be based on borrowed power systems, and I don't like those. And now... They have moved more towards evergreen systems, and they've stated that the borrowed power systems from Dragonflight, such as the dragon flying itself, is going to be rolled over to the rest of the game and turned into an evergreen system. That was my main complaint about WoW. So I've actually been playing it. I've been playing it the last few days. It's been fun. Yeah, dragon riding is pretty fun. It's shitty in the beginning, but it feels better going forward. So we're going to pause this real fast, because somebody, or real fast, because somebody wanted to know about the 300k. So, $300,000 donation goal seems outrageous and insane, right? And it kind of is. I'm going to show you why. I run a rescue for ferrets in Washington State. It's something that I do on the side with Shay. Shay is the artist that does all the art and animation for our studio. And this is a live stream showing them. It's ferrets.live. You can see them at any time. We have a live stream showing the actual stuff right here. Shay is an exotic vet assistant. So we do all the medical for them, everything we possibly can. And we work with a lot of different veterinarians because the ferrets that come to us are ones that are up for euthanasia. Ones that families can't take care of. They don't have the ability to. They're on their last leg or it's too expensive. And it's easier or better for the animal to euthanize them than fixing them, right? When they come to us, we say, hey, if we find one that we think we can fix, if it's available to be fixed, right, and we, we know we can do it, we'll take them in. And we do that with a whole lot of different animals, a whole lot of different ferrets, only ferrets. And we put them all up on stream. This is their sleep time. They sleep 18 hours a day. Why ferrets? Because I like ferrets. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and they sleep 18 hours a day. But if you go and watch these videos... We'll go and grab this one here. Let me see where their playtime is in this feed there. There we go. You can see that the whole room is theirs. We have tons of play toys. We have dig boxes and all kinds of stuff for them to play and run around and be ridiculous with. And this room is their room. So they have tons of time out of the cage and they go back to sleep on their own. We actually wait for them to go and do it. Usually there'll be like one or two stragglers. They're like, I still want to play. And it's like, no, everyone else is asleep. It's time to go back to bed, right? But that's what this is. And you can see there, there's Beans. Beans is super cute. It's like, hey, look at me. Hey, look at me. You going to pick me up? Look at me. He's like, whoa. Whoa. They're very cute. They're really cute animals. But yeah, this is their room. This is for them. So on top of that, we give them the best possible diet they can have. It's a full raw food diet on both uh, freeze-dried and raw ground food. So, and we also do taurine supplements so we can keep their heart health up. We do a lot of research and information so that we can help not only our ferrets, the ferrets that come to us, but any ferrets out there. I've, I, we've actually been able to bring a number of ferrets back from the brink of death with very bad conditions. And one of the ones that we've been working with recently, his name is Mocha. And Mocha has what is called DIM. It's disseminated idiopathic myofasciitis, which is a autoimmune disorder where the immune system attacks his actual nerve, it attacks his nervous system, his muscles, and his soft tissues. We recently put him on chemo. We were able to put him on chemo to try and go in and, and help him with this. We had to do the chemotherapy at home. Everybody's wearing PPE. We did it actually sitting on the couch with a bunch of pads and everything set up so that we wouldn't be able to distribute that anywhere. And what this does is it suppresses the bone marrow in his system, which stops him from producing neutrophils, which reduces that immune response to his own body. And I want to show you the pro progress for this. Now, remember, he was unable to walk or move about a week ago. And look where we're at now. He's not moving very well, but he's moving. And this is 
this is way more than I, I was anticipating in four days. He responded very, very well to the chemotherapy, and I'm very happy with it. So this is the kind of stuff that we do to try and improve their lives. He's less than a year old. It's very sad that he got dim. It's a rare condition, and it sucks, right? So that's what it is. So this is a rough one. No, it's not similar to AIDS in humans. That's a, that's a reduced immune system. This one is his immune system attacking his own body. Very, very rough stuff. Or are you saying a ALS? Um... I'd have to look to see if they're exactly comparable. They are slightly different. Yeah, somebody asked AIDS earlier. Yeah, no, it's it's a very, very rough thing. It's attacking his own body, and it's very it's not curable, but you can treat it. And it doesn't work for every ferret. It's also a very yeah, I thought you were saying I thought you were misspelling AIDS. That's my bad. Somebody because somebody asked about AIDS earlier. Yeah, no, so it's not chemo can't affect AIDS or no, affect ALS. So in this case, chemo works because we can reduce his body's ability to produce neutrophils by suppressing the bone marrow. And that's what's happening here. So it worked, and it's working out really, really well. So if you're wondering about the 300000 donation, what that is, is I'm trying to make a facility that is larger for this. I'm trying to make a facility that's larger. We can take care of between 15 and 20 ferrets maximum. That is it. I'm going to build a facility so we can do this to up to 100 ferrets. We've had a number of veterinarians in the area that want to actually, they want to um, uh, volunteer for this, to work with this. And all of this, the interesting part... Most of these types of groups, it runs completely off of donations and people throwing money at it. It runs completely off of ad revenue. You don't have to sub. You don't have to throw bits. You just have to watch the stream. And if you watch the stream, you will generate ad revenue and it pays for everything. Everything. Right now, they're in my house. Eventually, I want a building to do this. So... It's working really, really well. We've done a lot of good research. We've helped a lot of ferrets, and I'm very happy with it. And that's it. Yeah. So if you want to watch that, it's Ferret Software here on Twitch. You can go to ferrets.live, which is a domain that will redirect you here. And I hope you enjoy that. And that's that's why I have the $300,000 donation thing, which is great. What is that, Mr. Hollywood? Fantastic emote. Well done. So yeah, let me start this all back up. And we got a couple of donations. Hold up. What is this? 50 bucks for the ferrets and the ferretarian. Tarnian? Ferretarian? I know this isn't going to the ferrets. I just wanted to say the thing and make a pun. Do you want to know something funny? Anything that costs money over my expenses, like anything that comes in over my expenses, I just throw it at the ferrets anyway. I have a separate, like, account for the ferrets, and I just keep siphoning my own money into it because I want to do this stuff. The next thing I'm trying to do is buy a bunch of medical systems specifically for them. I want to get a, um, I've actually been looking on AliExpress to try and get it direct from manufacturers overseas, which is a big deal because it cuts down the price by about 50%. But we're going to get an ultrasound so we can start doing heart health checks at home because it's generally quite hard to do that at the veterinary. It ties up veterinary time, and Shay is already trained to use those devices, so we can just do it at home. Home, which is great. It'll be really, really useful for that. So yeah, that's the next thing I'm going to be doing with this. Uh, $5 donation. Just wanted to say you're getting all the success you deserve. Amazing to see a week ago you're at 15k. Absolutely flying. Thank you very much, dude. You rock. And another $5 donation. The dungeon game I mentioned is in general chat. Not sure where else to post in Discord. Send me into DM. I'd love to see it later. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really... It's a really rough thing for Mocha, but Mocha's doing well, and I'm so happy he can walk now, dude. You have no idea. Blows me is away. I'm going to turn these alerts back on. Humans? Yeah, so let me pull this up. ALS. Let me Morning, see if ALS responds. Just in case anyone to hasn't chemo. told you today, you are awesome. Seven's in chat for the ferret savior, Thor. So, it says right here. In short, we observed that chemotherapy is associated with decreased ALS risk. Our findings support the notion that antecedent disease reduces ALS risks. But it remains unclear whether the antecedent disease protects against ALS or whether there are actually treatment-specific effects. So there might be research in that direction for chemotherapy affecting ALS in the future. So they may be more related than we thought. I'd like to go and read research papers for this. This is a cursory thing from a Google search just now. So I'd probably have to go and look into a bunch of research papers to find out what's going there, right? That's cool as shit, though. I, I'm interested in that research. We'll see. My uncle keeps... Why are, you, why are you doing the jumper cables meme? God damn it. Who made you this way? I found your channel. The world needs more people like you. Thank you. I would donate a few. Don't, don't worry about it. You're unemployed? Don't worry about it. I'm just happy you're here, bud. 100%. So thank you. Thank you for the prime sub. You kick ass. Thank you for all the subs. You guys are outrageous. And that 10 gifted subs from Frostcoy. Thank you very much for that, dude. That is very nice of you. 
That is very nice for you. Yeah, the uncles, the uncle's jumper cables are the dad's jumper cables meme. God damn it, dude. Outrageous. Zafroth has been stuck on that one for like four days. And he says it every chance he could get, dude. It's like his new toy. Or can we donate for the ferrets? Any any money? You don't have to donate. So like, here, let me, let me be clear about this. Hold up. You don't have to donate for the ferret stuff. Just watch the stream. That stream makes bank on ad revenue. It pays for everything that they have. It pays for all of their food and medical systems. If you just watch the stream, you are doing an amazing job. That's it. That's all it is. The ad revenue from the stream is awesome. And if you have Twitch Turbo, you don't even have to watch ads. And it still pays the stream as if you did watch the ads. So oh, that's all you got to do. Thank you very much. I'm unemployed, but why not use Prime Sub? You rock. Thank you very much. That is super nice of you, dude. Thank you to Tier 1 Sub there, too. Does Lurking also provide ad revenue? Absolutely. Like, here, I know this is kind of a weird thing. I I've seen this a lot. And, like, this is kind of a streaming culture thing, man. There's a lot of streamers out there that are like, don't be a lurker, you have to talk. Dude, be a lurker. Lurker is, like, like lurkers are the backbone of the community, man. Like, you don't have to, like, you don't want to interact, you want to be antisocial about it, or you want to be, like, more closed in, you don't want to interact. That's great. That's fine. Lurkers are the backbone of Twitch, dude. This shit wouldn't exist without lurkers. So, like, lurk it up. I'm fine with you. You kick ass. You don't have to say anything. There are people that have followed me for, like, years, and then they say something in chat for the first time. They're like, I've been lurking for ages. And it literally shows, like, follow for, like, two years, and I'm amazed. I'm amazed at that. Because, like, that person has been supporting me silently for two years, which is great. So lurk it up, dude. 100% lurk it up. I, that is fine with me. And I, I find it very odd when streamers are like, you have to talk in chat. We need talkers in chat. No lurkers. Here. Like, what the, what? No, no. You exist because of your lurkers, dude. Like, you exist because of your community. Don't cut half of them off. Like, ridiculous. Chat is a, it's an iceberg in the water. There's some people that talk, and then there's this big old majority that doesn't. Lurkers are the, are the backbone of all of that shit. So you guys kick ass. Keep it up. You should add the comfy cushions and more cool stuff to the throne wish list. Yeah, true. 100 lurk it up. I haven't done anything with the throne wish list in a while, dude. Hmm. 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 I tried to make it a bunch of food stuff. I need to update that. It's only for the ferrets. Think of the 100 bits. You finally have a backbone because you're a lurker, dude. That's how it works. Yeah, no lurkers. Loses 85% of viewers. Gets, you know... <laughs> Gets absolutely blasted on social media. It's one of the. It's, don't, don't do that shit. Who, it doesn't matter how someone watches you. It just matters that they're there and they en enjoy your shit. Who cares how they watch, right? You could be sitting in your bathtub right now, I'm looking lurking in my now. chat. Should I wait? Or and I know I some of you are. Now, I'm normally a lurker. I know some of you. But your are. community makes me want to interact. Absolutely love everyone here. I'm Dude, you're wonderful. So Thank you. I don't even do this. Hold up. You know that I know that some of you are currently in the bathtub. It may just be one of you, but there's 3,000 people between both streams. There's got to be at least one of you in the bathtub or shitting right now watching this stream. I'm not wrong, and you know it. Past a certain point of viewership, it's unrealistic to expect the majority of people to interact regularly. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. You shouldn't expect that. Could be both. Could be that both. That is True. right. I have been a lurker for six years and for cannot do anything about it. I am a professional lurker because I don't get Good. pay. What do ya mean that is not how it works? Also seven. I think that's how it works. But thank you very much. Thank you for ver very much. And lurkers, you guys rock. 100%. I was brushing my teeth, but now I'm sitting here. Yeah, there you go, dude. You're brushing your teeth. That's how it works. <sighs> Are you inside my wall? Oh, dude, I'm telling you, I'm streaming from inside your house. Let's be honest. Do you have any thoughts on Valve's choice to prioritize polished game releases over transparent development? I like transparent development. Each studio is going to try their own different thing. They're going to try a different way of doing it. Most likely you'll get in AAA, you won't get a lot of transparent development. The reason why is because people get hyped up about certain game ideas, and those certain game ideas may never come to fruition. You usually don't want to release every one of your ideas. Most major studios have many, many, many games in pre-production. And if you're telling the community about every single one of these, 
they're gonna get hyped about it, and then you're gonna kill off the game, which happens a shitload, and they're all gonna be depressed. So, like, I understand for a major studio not doing that. If you're working on one project, I am fine with that. Transparent development works great this I'm way. I'm running dude. out of bits. Great. Here, What's hardbound? The game I work on. You find it here. Order off your wish list now, or if I should wait until you have it updated. That's up to you. Hold up. Order off your wish list now, or I should wait until you have it updated. The wish list for. Are you talking about the wishlist for, um, the throne thing? Or the wishlist on Steam? Oh! I haven't updated my Steam wishlist in forever. If you're looking at my Steam wishlist, don't buy anything on that. I don't, you don't, you don't, no, no. I need to go look at that. And, uh, no. <laughs> I don't even know what's on there. I don't even know what's on there. But yeah, if you're doing that, you don't have to do that. Wishlist on throne? Oh, all that stuff goes to the ferrets. That's all ferret stuff. I haven't used my- I haven't updated the Throne account, but it's- it's got stuff just all- anything on there is valid, if you want to do that. If you want to. I don't even know if I have the alerts turned on for it. I need to reintegrate Throne into my shit. But it, it's made for, like, treats and stuff for the ferrets, so if, if you do that, that's very nice of you. I used to be a lurker here, Thor. Can't believe you forced me to talk in chat. And now, now I have to babysit goblins for you. Can't believe you bullied me into this. I am not saying that it's I working, am, Chet. but I'm not saying that I'm not pooping. Hey, it's working. Thor, since you're an MMO guy, do you have any plans to play Blue Protocol when it releases next year? I'm yes. Honestly really yes, I do. I'm going to try to get my friend group into its smile. I'll play with you. Um, I'm actually interested in it because I want to see if there's any types of systems that I, I find compelling in that and that I can learn from. I think it'd be very, very engaging for me, mostly from a research basis. Like, I don't I don't know if I resonate with the art style very much comparatively to other games. I like kind of more realistic sort of stuff, but I am going to play it because I want to learn about those systems in there. I think it'd be quite fun. You're creating the art for the game too? No, that's made by Shay. Shay does the art and animation for the game. Our music, which you're hearing here, is all from the game, and that is made by Stein von Wakeren, who uh, lives in the Netherlands, and they make all of our stuff. They're great. The music is fantastic. And if you want to get this game, let me show you this here. One moment. I'm going to put the link. I'm going to spam that link, dude. I'm going to spam my own shit. Here you go. Number one. And I'm going to be very, I'm going to be very clear. I'm going to pause the alerts. I'm going to stop the music. Do not buy my game. Do not buy my game. Instead, play the demo. I made the demo so that you can find out if you want to buy this game. If you like the demo, you will probably like the game. If you don't like the demo, you will probably not like the game. Do not buy my game just because you like the things that I say on stream. Buy the game because you like the game. It is very, very important for me. Very important. Also, when you do buy the game, the way that I handle the payments for that is of the 100% of the money that Steam sends us, which is only 70%, they take 30%, I take 50% of this. Stein, our musician, gets 25% of every sale. Shay, our artist, gets 25% of every sale. When you buy the OST, 100% of the OST goes to Stein. When we have the digital art book done, 100% of the art book is going to go to Shay. Of my portion, I pay for all the software and hardware and samples and everything out of my piece. I put those licenses into their names. So even when they're not working on things for me, even eventually when they don't need to work for my studio anymore, they get to keep that stuff. I also pay for all the legal fees, such as trademarks and other business stuff, out of my portion. That means I take the most amount of risk up front, but I have the highest chance of getting a lot of money when the game is gone and like out and doing very well, right? So I have the highest chance of getting uh, the, the highest chance of risk, the highest amount of risk, and they don't absorb any of that risk. They just get payment for that stuff. In pre-production, when they were working on this, I paid them hourly, and I paid it out of my day job's money. I only had them work a couple of hours a week because I couldn't afford more than that, and I took my day job money and paid them with that, so we had hourly, so they had no risk then either. We transitioned into this model after talking to each other about if it would be good or not. What about taxes? I pay them on a royalty, they pay taxes on their income, and I don't pay the taxes, and I have to do the business paperwork to show that I have paid them that money, and it's not my problem anymore. Just like any other business. Just like any other business. Normal shit, right? Basic stuff. So that's that's how this works. So when you do buy the game, you're supporting them. If you want to buy the OST, it's also on this same page. The OST is everything you've been hearing on this stream thus far. And if we go down here, you can see it has 100 songs in it. It has 100 songs. So it is three and a half hours of music. And 
As long as you are not directly re-uploading the music with no other content, you are free to use the songs in this OST in any videos or streams, whether they are monetized or not. We will never DMCA you unless you just re-upload our goddamn music with nothing else, and then I will absolutely come after you. So, you can do this for your streams, for your for your, your YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff. What is the ta- What do you mean, what is the taxes? What? <laughs> it's... Taxes are when the government wants to take your shit, and if you don't give it to them, they come and take it. That's what that is. That's what the taxes is. What is that? A secret gift. Oh, I guess the, I guess the throne thing actually does work. It was a secret thing. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I'm going to turn these back on. Who made all us lurkers come out of the woodworks? Reveal yourself! Lurkers unite! Yeah, taxes are optional until the IRS Lurk finds the you. Yeah, that's... Lurk the planet. They're not optional anymore. Lurk the planet, dude. What was that, Quack? Somebody's alert, dude. Steam makes more money than them? No, it doesn't. Actually, you're completely wrong. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why Steam doesn't make more money than the other people who work on my team? Let me show you something. Steam takes 30%, but they don't. Do you know why? Let's say that my game is $10. Let's say that I want 10,000 keys from Steam to sell on other platforms. How much money does Steam charge me to do this? How much money? Zero dollars, chat. Yes, zero dollars. Now, let's say that I want to go put the game on Humble Bundle. And I want to put all 10,000 of those keys up on Humble Bundle. What is the percentage that Steam charges me for selling those keys on another platform? Zero percent. They take 30% of the sales on their platform. Not 30% of the sales. And Steam keys are a massive driver for indie devs everywhere on the internet. They do this as a loss leader so that Steam can garner new customers that they otherwise wouldn't have. And they use your game as advertisement and they give you the full value of your game when you sell through a key. It is incredibly good. So no, Steam is not making more money than the people who work on the game. Not at all, which is great. Steam doesn't make any money on keys. Also, when you make trading cards for your game, which you should make trading cards for it, there's a community market fee that happens every time you sell a trading card to another customer. Anyone who sells a trading card to another person on Steam, guess where that community market fee goes? That shit goes to me. That shit goes to me. I make the community market fee every single time, and so does every other developer anytime you're selling cards for their game. All of this is actually listed and public over on partner.steamgames.com. You can read through all of their systems. They make all of this information public for everyone. People just don't read it. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty good shit. I'll turn all this back on. You can sell them on itch.io. You can sell them on Humble Bundle. All kinds of stuff, man. What's your favorite MMO? Mine was Secret World before they changed it to Secret World Legends. It's great. I insist. Okay, let me go look at that. I need to go sign into my throne account. Thank you for the gift, by the way. It's a secret gift. Uh, let me see. How do I look at the gift? I have to go to my dashboard or something? Yeah, close that. Close that. Oh my god, there's so many... Stop it. Uh, where did it go? I'm trying to find it, dude. They changed their whole UI. The nightmare is real. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where it is! It says, this fan has left no message this time. Was... It says anonymous. This fan has left no message. It's under orders? Wait, there's a different one. I can view this one. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, there's no message on it. Oh, wait, there's a secret. I'm not seeing any message. Did they eat your message? I think they ate your message. What was your message? I feel like a jackass now. It's missing. See my message for 500 bits? Let me go back and look. I probably missed it because I'm a jackass. One sec. I used to be a lurker. Yeah, no, I, I actually I actually responded to that. So that's really cool that you used to be a lurker. Um, 
Now you actually, yeah, you do actually have to babysit goblins now. Is if that's the same one, magical star, you do indeed. Thank you for the five hundred bits, by the way. I'm probably missing things. It happens. I'm very sorry. I have an activity feed, and it gets filled up very quickly. That's yours, Magical Star. Is there another 500-bit message? Did I miss another one? I'm going down the feed. I'm going down the feed, chat. There's so many alerts. There's a million alerts. Oh, my God. There's so many alerts. I went to the bottom. It's filled. <laughs> oh! I missed it! Can you just at me what your message was? Because now I'm a jackass. If you're going to throw money at me and I missed it, I feel awful, frankly. Is there a way to pirate your game? So a lot of people do pirate the games that we make. Um, if you do that, all the ones that we found out there are usually packaged with malware. And I usually have to help people get that malware off their machine afterwards. So to be real with you, if you can't afford the game, if you are wanting to pirate it for whatever reason, I generally find that it's an economic issue or a distribution issue. So explain to me why you want to pirate it. And if it's a problem of regional pricing we can always change the regional pricing and if it's a problem of you can't get it i'd like to know why so maybe we can fix that right and if you're just doing it because you want to pirate it then like all right but you run the risk right and then that's that's kind of how that works you mean programming game maker legend oh uh, yeah so game maker language is very similar to c sharper job very very similar what's your opinion on runescape fun people like it a lot i do find that the progression is kind of weird because the progression is completely tied to the amount of HP that a monster has, which means you're not killing monsters because they're hard, you're killing monsters because they have large health pools. That felt very strange to me. Yeah, it felt weird. Yeah. What's the hype challenge for? Oh, shit, we forgot to check that. Also, thank you. I, I want to be clear. Fee, thank you very, very much um, for sending that. They really love those. It's chicken heart treats. They're actually little freeze-dried chicken hearts. Every time I put them in there, they all take one and they all go to different corners and they eat them. So it's really, really cool of you. Thank you very much. And there's exactly enough in those to give one to every ferret. So you're awesome, dude. Legitimately. Bits, bits, bits have some bits. Thank you for the 100 bits. Yeah, uh, recent change changed that. Uh, Dan Clancy is amazing. He's the CEO. He allows us to simulcast now. Thank you for the $2 over on YouTube. You kick ass. You're awesome, dude. Would you say Game Maker language is similar to Dart? I, I would say it's similar to C Sharp and Java syntactically. Uh, it does handle most garbage collection for you, though there are some data structures you have to self-delete, such as particle systems and DS maps and things like that. Fanny, after YouTube fed me like 20 of your shorts. Nice, dude. Was wondering, since you worked in SC2, what are your thoughts on Spiritual Successor? I'm interested. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what's happening there because the RTS space is generally dead. It's very hard to get RTS games out today, and it's very hard to get people interested and excited for them. Mostly because many RTS games end up being more fun for people to watch than they are to engage in because they're very technical, they're very physically demanding for people that are microing stuff, and uh, I'm interested to see what their take on it is, frankly. I, I love the RTS genre, and I, I, I want to see what they do, if that makes sense. Have you thought of simulcasting the Ferret stream? Yeah, we've been thinking about it. That, that computer can't handle it. Um, I've got a 3080 Ti sitting on my desk from my computer because I upgraded beyond that. And I'm going to be plugging that into the Ferret stream and I, I need to make sure the PSU can handle it first. I keep talking about it, I just haven't done it yet. Random thing, do you like cheese? Hell yes. Absolutely. Sometimes the music Absolutely. gives me images of a Siberiac factory staffed entirely by children and Christmas elves. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, RTS is real-time strategy. It's a genre of games mostly dealing around uh, controlling armies of units that you can micromanage individually. It's very physically demanding because you have to be fast. You have to be fast and think very quickly and move very quickly, and it's it's tough for people, man. It's really tough for people. So because of that, many people get discouraged. It becomes fun to watch someone who's very good at it. It's not that fun for people. What is your favorite Ads. developing memory? Also, have you played D&D &D before? If so what were your characters like? I will talk about that right afterwards. We have ad break first, and then I will I will answer that. All right, I've got those written down now.
Twitch is dealing with ads right now, YouTube. Yeah, it's ads on Twitch, so it goes off every half hour. Was that Dago there? Yeah, I'm using TTS Labs. It's funny shit. Been playing H2 on Xbox, so it's hard to, to go fast. Definitely need to get better. Yeah, it's tough. It's a tough thing. So, you asked if I'd be interested in someone translating the text into German. We've tried to translate the text into German many, many times. And the reason why is it's filled with puns. It is filled with puns. And because of that, translating it, localizing it into German is very difficult because you end up getting these massive words. Because you, you know how it is in German. When you guys have a pun, it usually creates like a big silly word that's quite long. We've been having trouble fitting that in the game and making it feel right, if that makes sense. Because the whole game is full of puns. It is ridiculous. Is your game related to Earthbound? Um, I grew up on Earthbound. I liked it. And the name's just a pun as a result. Yeah. There's a lot of puns in the game. It's a massive amount. Watching the Ferret Software stream. Love these things. Don't know what they are, though. You love these things? The ferrets? They're ferrets. That's what they are. And thank you for the $5. Very nice of you. How much time do I need for the game jam? It lasts for two weeks. You can spend as much time on it as you want or as little as you like. As long as you learn something, I think it's working, right? The new language mojo? No, I don't know anything about that. All right. Ads are over. We had a donation that asked about this. So my D&D characters, I actually play a character named Barnaby in a campaign. The campaign's kind of on hiatus right now. I'm interested in, in picking it back up again once the DM is ready to. And um, that character is a wizard and he's quite fun. And he has a, a robe on him right now that has these patches. And you can take the patches and you can turn them into items. And in the last battle that we had, there was a dude that walked up and tried to attack me. And he attacked. And my AC is only like 11. And he missed. And then I took one of the patches off and I threw it at him. Now that patch turns into a 12-foot boat. So I threw it at him and I yelled, get boat murdered. And he died. And it was really goddamn funny. So I dodged his attack and then threw a boat at him and he died. And that was that was the fight. Because everyone else got demoralized instantly. It was very funny to me. Yeah, get boat murdered. That's what it was. Which is a reference back to Dwarf Fortress, if you remember that. Yeah. It was it was my I was like, oh god. And I have one more of them. I have another one of those patches, which is great. And now we have that boat sitting there so we can use it as a camp whenever we go by that area, which is great. It's really good. Also, my favorite dev memory was actually at Denver Comic Con. Denver Comic Con, there was a fan, and this was kind of early, and I'm, I'm going to pause this for a second. There was a fan that walked up to us at Denver Comic Con, and I will never forget this moment. They were dressed up as the main character of our game, Heartbound. And I don't know how to describe to you the emotional reaction that that has, like the emotional impact that has on a developer. It will stick to me for the rest of my life. And it's just, I don't know why, but it, it really hit me really hard. It was really cool. It was really goddamn cool to see. And even though our character is pretty simple, he's just wearing a sweater, right? They walked up, dressed up as our main character, and it was it was awesome, dude. It was really cool. So I'll never forget that. Never in my life. I'm going to turn the Show ads back the on. Or not the ads, the alerts. D &D. Oh, yeah. You can cheaply set right. up to our MTP server to simulcast on things such as Linode save on your bandwidth and encoding effort. So you can. What I'm actually doing is I'm encoding once, and I'm using an RTMP plugin on OBS, and it is sending the message out twice. I'm not using an RTMP server for that. I'm using specifically one encoding method on this side. It encodes one time and then uses double bandwidth. Um, since I have a one gig symmetric connection, there's no reason for me to set up a server. This is my D&D box. I have lots of stuff in this. I've been playing D&D for a very, very long time. I have tons of props. I got things like keys. I got stuff like little potion bottles that are actually filled with notes and stuff so that players can find those. I have chests that even I don't know what in what is in them because they're randomized. So when you open it up, you get to find out what's in there, and I get to find out too, so it's fun for me. All kinds of stuff is in this. All the worlds that I've ever created. I have hundreds and hundreds of worlds that I have tied together over many, many years, and when a player any party interacts with something in the world, I note it down, and it stays permanent in that world. What's in the box? That. Also, it's my footrest. <laughs> Do you play any other tabletop games? I used to play White Wolf stuff, and uh, Vampire of the Masquerade was fun. A lot of fun. You into any board games? Not really. Not really. I've played some digital board games, but I just never get into them. First time you stream, do you always work on your current game when you're answering about IT stuff? Just want to know how you do it. Yeah, no, so what I do a lot of the times is this category was made because we yelled at Twitch for about a year. Thank you, the 100 bits. I'm going to pause it real quick. This category was made because I yelled at Twitch for about a year. 
community rallied around me yelling at Twitch. We put in a user voice, became the second highest voted thing of all time, and it's for game developers, right? Not just game developers, software and game developers. And the cool thing is, is software developers, programmers generally, game developers, all kinds of shit, right? So artists, musicians, voice actors, writers, all kinds of things. My whole deal on Twitch is trying to get you into game development, teach you that you can do these things, show you that you can do these things, so that not only I can tell you, but you can try it and you can believe it, right? So I've tried to get a whole bunch of people into here to try and do this, to also stream game development, everything like that. And it's, it is attainable. I also run game jams and give out information for this kind of stuff. I actually run a website called develop.games, and it is all of my information that I have learned over a 20 year career in the game industry. You can go see it here. It's probably going to detonate now that I've linked it in chat. But you can go down here and see skills required. None of them. You don't need any of that shit. You can learn it along the way. How to pick a genre. How to build a team. What tools should you use. How to finance this stuff. How to market it. And fun fact, there's no ads. The only thing it has is my stream at the bottom. So mute it. And you don't have to deal with it. Yeah, you're going to hug a death it. Now that I've linked it, it's going to hug a death. I need to upgrade the server. And I also run two game jams a year, which you can see here. And we're going to check that donation in a second. Thank you very much. And your dev, that is very nice of you. So yeah, if you go to the game jam section, which it does not work currently. You have now hug of death the website. Well done, chat. Your legitimate interest has denial of service this beautiful site. <laughs> God damn it. Every time. Every time. I gotta update this goddamn web server, dude. It is eating shit. It is absolutely I'm gonna switch I'm gonna switch develop that games off into its own server. It's in a it's in a joint server right now that I put together and it's not it's not able to do it. We're gonna have that done tonight. I'll get it all migrated tonight. It'll probably... Oh, God. I'm going to have to deal with DNS again. Oh, DNS. DNS. Every time DNS, dude. It's going to be rough, dude. You're hearing double because my stream is at the bottom, like I said. Just go down and mute me. Just go down and mute me. That's all. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's not going to load because the website's dead. The hug of death is... I just sent 3,000 people to look at my little website. My little website doesn't know how to handle 3,000 people clicking the link at the same time. You killed it. It's dead now. So give it a minute. It'll slowly restart. It'll be okay. Yeah, DNS is always the problem eventually. It will be eventually. But yeah, you guys, you guys just denial of service the website by looking at it. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, let's go look at that donation real fast. By the way, any of your donations, 40% uh, of those go to the mods. So thank you very much for that. I just really like Farage. Thank you, Anonymous Gifter. You're awesome, dude. I love your stream. Your stream sits permanently on my third monitor. Thank you for being a good role model, inspiring people to chase their dreams, and spreading positivity all around. You deserve everything good that comes to you. Thank you. That is very, very nice of you. You kick ass, dude. And thank you for supporting the mods by doing so. You rock, dude. 100%. All right. I'm going to turn these back on. How much variety in game devs do you see in your stream? A lot. A lot of variety in devs. We get voice actors, all kinds of stuff here. All kinds of people. And people in the IT industry just asking questions. Don't know why you're suddenly all over my feed, but I'm loving the content. Really insightful and awesome inspiration. Keep it up. Thank you for the 10 bucks, dude. You kick ass. Thank you very, very much, and I'm glad you enjoy it. Check out yeah, what is DNS? When you have time. Networking stuff. Solo developer, very interesting. So what it is, is when you're dealing with DNS, right? DNS is, I need to reach out to a website. Well, how do you know where that website is? You type in Google, but what is Google? Google's an IP address. You reach out to a name server. Name server sends the name back. All of this stuff has to propagate through a bunch of different servers that store it, like a little a little box, right? And it has to propagate between all those different things. And it takes a while to get there. So usually, when something doesn't load on the internet, because I have to switch servers, I have to switch to a new IP address on that server because I'm going to be migrating it to a different one. The server is still going to be sitting there, and the DNS is still going to be pointing at the original one. Which is not going to be great, so I'm going to have to do a bounce for a little while until it updates and propagates across everything, right? It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Yeah, try to explain it um, in layman's terms. It's like the internet phone book. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah. How do you balance needing to uh, live with game dev? I need to provide for my kids. Okay, so this is, this is very serious, very important. I'm going to pause the alerts for a second. I'm always going to encourage you to make video games. I'm always going to encourage you to go and try your hobbies and to do things. But the first thing you should always do is make sure you can pay your bills. Make sure you can pay your bills. If you're going to school, stay going to school. This is called a hobby at first. You do a little bit of it each day. And if you don't have time, you don't have the funds, you don't have the ability to do it, then wait. Life is long. It's a long-ass adventure. And you can do wild shit throughout it. You don't need to force yourself into a bad financial situation just because you want to make games. As a good example of this, let me go pull this up. This was our first game as a studio. I had never used Game Maker Studio before. 
I never programmed in Game Maker language. I never used any of this stuff. This is a simple arcade game. It is made in Game Maker Studio. With that in mind, our artists had also never made pixel art before, had never made game assets before. And if you look at the background there, do you see that dog? See that dog right there? That's Baron. We wanted to make Heartbound, but we weren't ready for it. So we started working on this game. Our musician had never made music for a game before, never made sound effects for a game before, and we actually recorded physical objects for all of the sounds for the game. So imagine all of that non-ability to do this. And I had a full-time job. I worked at Blizzard at the time, and I was working in security, right? Every single day I went home. I worked two to four hours on this, but I couldn't do anything outside of that because I had a full-time job. On the weekends, I got to do four to six hours on this. With all of that in mind, from concept to launch on Steam for a game that had 160 achievements, it's got like six playable characters, it's got leaderboards and all that shit, I did it in 24 days. Make a tiny game. Read a shitload of tutorials. And if you don't have the time and money to do it, then wait a little bit. Don't push yourself. I had the opportunity to do it then, and I took the opportunity. I spent my extra days on it. I didn't watch TV. I didn't go and doom scroll on Twitter. Instead, I worked on this when I got home. And yeah, for some people, it's really rough. But it was my hobby. And that hobby turned into a career. And now I do it full time. So if you want to do these things, make sure it's a hobby at first. Your day job funds your hobby. And that's it. Did you make any income from this game? Hell no. As a financial system, this was a failure. It was an absolute financial failure. But it taught me how to launch a game on Steam. It taught me how to market a game. It taught me how to run a community. It taught me how to do Steam achievements. It taught me about Steam trading cards and how they make money for you. It taught me how to update games on Steam. It taught me that controller support is important because people with physical disabilities can't play your game without controller support because they remap the controllers into their own devices. This game taught me a shitload. It is worth its weight in gold, even though it didn't make very much money. It was great. This is our tester game to try and do it. And we wanted to launch Heartbound, but we weren't ready. So now if we go and look at Heartbound... As a result of making that little game, Heartbound now has a 96% positive reviews, 35,000 sold copies. It's in six different languages. It's in Brazilian, Portuguese, French, Russian, Spanish, and Japanese and English. And it has 120,000 wish lists. This game detonated all over the internet. It did awesome. And I couldn't have done that if I didn't make that tiny game first. That's it. So, like, don't ruin your life. Don't jump into game dev and be like, I'm going to do it now. I quit my day job. That's a great way to go homeless. Don't do that shit financials first and when you are comfortable when you are able to pay for your stuff do the hobby and do it as a hobby how many people in the studio there's three of us i do all the programming writing and design shay does the art and animation stein does all of the music and sound effects we also have a team of five different translators they're our localization team that go and work on stuff and then i have two editors which is steets steets does the long form videos and shadelock does our short form videos nobody works for me for free either there we go. You know, you mentioned that you weren't partial to the Blue Protocol art style, but also you mentioned Denver Comic Con. I suppose this doesn't mm -hmm. specifically entail anime, but it's definitely there. Are you not personally an anime guy? Very uh, happy some anime I'm super in into. Feed. A I little bit of like a weeb. I can learn a lot from mooing you and happy to be here, so thanks for what you do. <laughs> Thank you very much. Somebody actually just sent me something here. They said... I wanted to thank you for bringing attention to game price localization, talking about the short in which you, you showed people in Brazil paying for your game. I live in Iran, and that means that my currency is pretty weak, and because of that, piracy is a big thing here. And if the game prices are localized in Steam, like in Turkey and Argentina regions, we can pay and play the game without having to pirate it and actively hurt the dev. 100%, and that is exactly what it's all about. I believe Iran is also cut off from the SWIFT banking system, so I, I think it's harder for you guys to buy games anyway, and I wish there was something I can do. I've actually received a number of emails from people in Iran who have not been able to buy our games and wish that they could, and it's been a very difficult thing. It's been very rough, just like our Russian fans as well. Many of our, pl our players in Russia can no longer buy the game, or it's much more difficult for them to buy the game because of the fact that the war is on and they've been cut off from the SWIFT banking system, which makes it very diff difficult for them to charge up their Steam wallets. It's really rough, dude. And it's not your fault that these things are going on. It's not your fault that there's wars going on and your government is doing actions, and other governments are doing actions, and people are fighting. You are just a player who wants to play video games, and I, I wish that you could. I wish there was something I could do for you. So, um, you know, keep keep kicking ass and i you know if there's ever an opportunity where i can fix these things on our side i most definitely will i have i have tried everything that i can and this is about the limits of it right it sucks it sucks bad you say hard not at all some people can't do it we've we, i've gotten a lot of emails about it man not everybody knows how to go and charge up the steam wallet stuff it sucks yeah 
because Steam doesn't allow crypto and they have to go through secondary means. It's just extra steps to get there. It is possible, but they have to go through extra steps. Seen a shorty on YouTube one to two days ago, and you talk about how VPN sucks and does not protect you. Can you give me a quick explanation because I'm confused? All that a VPN does, if you're looking at this from a technical aspect, is let's say that your IP address exits you here. A VPN can make you exit here. That's it. That's it. There's no extra layer of security. I'm a hacker. I've been a hacker for 20 years. I work in offensive security. My last job was hacking power plants for the federal government. Before that, I was a senior red team specialist for Blizzard Entertainment. I do bounty programs, and I have three black badges from DEF CON. VPN does not inherently make you safer, and I find it obnoxious that many of the ads for VPN services on the internet claim that they are making you safer inherently. They do not. It is just changing the location of your address. That's it. It is good for getting around blockades that are based on GOIP and pretty much nothing else. Hate that shit. Yeah, VPN is a trust company more than ISP. That's all it is. That's all it is. All right. Thanks for the membership, dude. He's incognito to do shady stuff. Okay. Doesn't really change anything. All you've done is make it so co like you're not using the cookies you normally use. It's not really changing anything at all. What about encrypting stuff? That's what HTTPS is. You're using an SSL cert to encrypt all your connections anyway. That doesn't change a thing. Hello, I'm playing the demo right now. Does anyone know in the chat if there's a way to switch the game to switch the game to a Zerti or map the commands? Not in the demo. In the main game, you can actually go and switch all those out. So if you look at this, this is something I haven't rolled over to the demo yet. You can actually change these city keys that you want. So there's full character remapping in the full game right now. I need to get that done on the demo. I need to transport that back to the demo. It's not something I have right now. Also, for anybody out there that uses non-standard controllers, you plug this baby in. If you use non-standard controllers or you have a physical disability of any kind, we do the exact same thing here. So you can go and change this. Also, if you go to style, you can change it to PlayStation controls or anything like that if you want to. So this will actually change all of the icons in combat, and it can be done in the middle of conversation or in the middle of combat anywhere you want to in the entire game. And if you have any type of dyslexia, you can turn off the wiggling animations for all the text in the game. You could do this dynamically even in the middle of a sentence. It'll work perfectly. So, hope that helps. So yeah, have that's what it is, man. Have a look at Rotovus when you have time. Very interesting solo development process all documented on YouTube. Can you send that over to me on, on Discord, actually? Can you send it in a DM to me? I'll Not probably check it after stream and research into it. Simple cyber security. Yeah, absolutely, dude. 100%. One second, I'm going to pause this. Thank you for the bits, by the way. It's super nice of you. And thank you for the thousand bits. That is outrageous. I studied game development at uni, but back then, there really wasn't much of a market. I ended up going into comp sci and now work as a server engineer. I've been thinking about getting back into animation and game design, and YouTube started recommending me your shorts, and I haven't been this excited to get back into something in a long time. The biggest thing I can I can warn you about, not so pro kitty, make sure that your job allows you to do what are called side projects. Side projects are not always allowable. In some countries, they can't stop you from doing this, but some businesses write into your contract that anything you make on the side, even outside of work hours, could be owned by them. It is a way to protect their IPs, right? Normal shit. So make sure that you're well within your right to make those things. And if you are, go make some games, dude. Go do some game jams. Have some fun. But do do check first, because many offices do that. I've seen it all throughout my career. It's rough. Yeah, in, in some countries, it is illegal for them to disallow you from doing that. In some countries. Not all of them, though. So check, check to make sure that you're Sorry allowed to. Sorry for a repeat yeah. question, but do you have any advice about getting stuck at plateaus slash steep learning curve points of projects? Been working on reverse engineering and modding a PS2 game, but after about nine months of working on it, I find it hard to finish my half-finished features. Loving the stream and YouTube shorts. Keep up the good work. I find that when I get stuck on situations like that, it does happen to me quite a bit, right? I take a step away and I work on something else in the game. Like, if, if I get stuck somewhere, I take a step away and I, I work on something else, and then I come back to it. And usually, a lot of the times, you'll kind of reset your thinking on that. You may come up with new ideas in the other area that could help you with the first area. It's it's not great for you to sit there and bang your head on the wall over and over again, especially if you're stuck, right? It's just gonna It's just going to make you feel real shitty. So anytime I'm stuck on something and I'm really stuck on something, I move over to something else, and then I come back later. And it, 
it generally helps me. It might help you, right? It, what You want to know uh, what a game jam is and how it helps? Yeah, here, let me show you. A game jam, I run one uh, twice a year. The next one's going to be on January 12th. The way that this works is for a brief period of time, two weeks, you make a video game, right? You make a video game. And it's very, very useful for practicing your skills. There'll be a theme. There'll be a certain kind of restrictions that you have to put on it. So you have to think outside of the box and you'll be competing against other people. And if you're worried about that, you're like, oh shit, I don't know what I'm going to do. The first half of the game jam for me is for you to create what is called a game design document. Game design documents are entirely you discovering how to make that game and you write it down and you display that to other people, right? And with this, you now have a rule book for how you make that game. So it dispels all the worries. It dispels all the unknowns. And when you do this, it makes it much easier to make that game. Way easier to make that game because you know exactly what you need to do. So don't worry about not knowing anything right now. Game design documents about discovery. That's how you learn. So don't worry about it. What do you think about Tor? Half the exit nodes are owned by the FBI. <laughs> it's not secure. It's not safe. You're Top not anonymous. Chat, it's me, Jason Torball. Did you guys know Rust is the best language? It's better than any other language. Becoming a crab enables four pairs of programming socks giving you a 4x programming boost. It's true. Also, I guarantee I don't even you wear socks, though. Me. He'll even give you my IP 127.0.0.1 Have at it nice. script kiddos your FN oh, man. I'll have you know I graduated Not local host in the Navy SEALs, Oh my god this guy's I've bringing down local host Can you believe it? Secret raids on Al -Qaeda, and I have over 300 confirmed kills Son of a bitch This meme dude uh, This meme though do you have video streams about hacking? Not really. Uh, most of them I just talk about on stream. To be real with you, most of the content that I produce is all live content. So it's me talking with chat, riffing on stuff, sharing my experiences, sharing my knowledge on stuff, and discussing things. Uh, most of that gets drilled down into shorts or other videos that get put up on the YouTube. So that's that's really what it is, right? That's the whole idea. Yeah, doxing local host. What a bad lad, dude. It's very funny. It's very funny. Creating documents are tedious and most for me. Now, nah, some people find it tedious, but the thing is, is that sense of discovery where you're going, figuring out what everything needs to go into that document specifically for making a game and the fact that it put a template up for you means that it, it gets you in the habit of doing it because game design documents save you a shitload. Using government names now? True. Kyle Webb. Is that Queb in my chat? Hold up. Hold up. We have to pause. We have to pause. Queb. Queb, is that you? You Quebbing over there? What are you doing on YouTube? Get back over on Twitch. How am I supposed to shout you out if you're sitting on YouTube, you goblin? Get over there. Get over there. What are you doing? Queb is an audio engineer. Makes some awesome shit. Really awesome shit. Queb is Queb. Get over and get over on Twitch so I can show them your shit. Queb used to work with me at Blizzard. And now, he, he worked on BG3. Audio engineer. Awesome dude. And he streams on Twitch. He's cool as shit. And you have to go over there and say something in my goddamn chat so I can shout you out. You literal goblin. Do it. Do it. Or I'll beat you up. I'll do it. I'll do it. And go back down there. I'll, I'll leave this set. I'll go find you. Where are you? There we go. He's Synetics on Twitch. Dude's awesome. Check out his shit. Legitimately. He's new to streaming. I understand this is going to be terrifying. He's new to streaming. He's still getting the hang of it. So don't blast him too hard. But also, blast him. Because it's funny to me. Because we've known each other for like 15 years. <laughs> We've known each other forever. All the way back from the QA days, man. Yeah, all the way back from the QA days. So definitely, definitely check out his shit, dude. Definitely check it out. He's awesome as hell. So yeah, I'm going to start it's these back up. Meme, what are you doing over but it checks chat? out. Thank you very much. Are you using Godot? No, I'm using Game Maker Studio. Very good for 2D games. Fantastic. Worked with finance quants? No. I don't know what any of that is, dude. When you say quants, it makes me think Quaternion, and then a part of me dies. That's how that works. So, uh, there's actually there's actually a donation over on YouTube. It says, hey, I haven't seen much of the game, and a friend of mine is asking, is this game photosensitive friendly? Can you tell me, or it points to the game where it gets bad? So, all of my all of my flash effects in the game, there's no flashing effects, because I was worried about photosensitivity. There is effects that blend in slowly, and then disappear. There is never a time where it's going to flash on you because I know photosensitivity is a problem never gonna have that happen it is always fade in and then end fade in and then end which should not trigger photosensitivity issues that being said 
anytime you have photosensitivity issues, you may have to worry about playing games. It's always going to be a mixed bag, and it may it may still hit people just because it's the nature of playing a video game, right? But I have done everything that I could to mitigate that kind of a problem, if that makes sense. So, Cypher, I, I hope that helps. Uh, let me know if they ever have any problems, if that's ever a thing where they have any type of uh, issues with this. There's always things that I could fix, and I, I hope that it's fine, right? If that makes sense. There's, there's only so much you can do with that. So do you understand, there are flashing effects in the game, but the flashing effects are fade in and then end, and they, they take quite a bit of time to fade in, so it's not an instant, there's never anything like that. Even the lightning does it, so. Ace Quaternions once. I hate Quaternions. I hate Quaternions, they make me crazy. I had to use that shit back in Second Life back in the day when I was working with 3D math, and it's just a nightmare, dude. What is Godot good for again? It's actually fantastic for 3D and 2D. It's really good, it's a free and open source engine, so if there's something you want to change, you can change it and recompile it. And that being said, it is effectively this generation's blender for game development, dude. It is a system that Has is slowly upgrading even better and better. Today? It's awesome. Yes, it's gone. It's gone. I'm very sorry. It got it got taken within the first 10 seconds of the stream. What are your opinions on Game Pass from a developer perspective? So many games that go up on a Game Pass, they actually get money up front. It's really, really good for a game dev to get those types of things. Um, you get a huge deal from Microsoft for doing that. And your game gets to go out effectively to a large amount of audience you get a ton of feedback from that and you've already been paid so it's not really like you're worrying about individual sales this can be a good deal for some developers but not for all of them right so in the short term awesome boost of money in the long term you might make less because you're not based on individual sales if that makes sense do you not mess with euler rotations oh yeah i do wrote to euler was like a pretty common thing that i had to do and i i usually got around using quaternions by doing that <laughs> oh do you have an organization on which engine to My learn for something Duke small and fast paced? Let me show you. Of steel. Oh. Do you now? Would you say that you have balls of steel? Would you say that you have balls, balls, balls of steel? This is an important distinction. I read Scrum Train. Did anyone else? Oh god, it's in your brain, dude. The demo is an hour long. It's the entire first chapter of the game. That's what that is. What do you think of Project Ghost? I need to look more into it. People are talking about it before. I want, I want to see more of that game. Your opinion on Game Pass from a developer perspective? I just answered that, bud. You asked it in both chats. Balls, 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 balls of steel. <laughs> God damn it. I thought your donation was over. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh my God. You could be any other way. You could be any other way. Why do you start at 4 a.m.? I start at 1 a.m. PST, and I stream all the way to about 10 a.m. PST, so I stay in the Kingmaker slot for this category. Yeah. How can I email you? For, to who? To me? Steel. What? Steel. Thank you for that. So I'm going to pause that for a second. Do you play Alan Wake 2? No, I've not played that. Any advice for someone who'd like to get into cybersecurity besides getting into comp set? CompTIA Sec Plus. Yeah, do some bounty programs, man. So if you're trying to get into security, and offensive security, um, and you want to do web security stuff, or you want to do networking security, there's a number of websites you can go to. So you're going to want to clip this so you can you can remember all these. Go to OWASP.org. That's going to teach you a lot about the top 10 web vulnerabilities, specifically look into XSS and SQL injection. Those are going to be great for you because they're really easy to find out on the internet. Fantastic, frankly. Uh, the next one you're going to want to do is go to HackerOne.com. Make an account there. Try Hack Me. Hack the box. Hack the site is also fun. That's more of a puzzly type one, right? OverTheWire.org. All of these are fantastic. They're really good places to go. You learn a bunch of stuff and you're able to hack legally. Legally which is important. Do you need a degree for web security? No, I have no certifications or degree of any kind. I went to college for entomology and I quit three years in. And I'm a hacker and I have been for a long time and I worked for the federal government hacking power plants because I got three black badges from DEF CON and was able to get that job based on my work ethic alone and the proving of my work alone. You think that AI can be incorporated in video games of multiple choice and error? No, I think that it creates dramatically different results for things. And because of that, you're creating an experience that is so different for every individual player that you're going to lose people. I would rather curate the experience myself. You may be able to use AI to create a bunch of different often balls, options balls, and then pick balls, which ones balls. sound the best. I finally played the demo of Heartbound. <laughs> God I'm still damn it. not too sure if it's my type of game. However, I will say I feel the demo isn't long enough. Tongue will still save up my 500,000 channel points to get it. So, if you think the demo isn't long enough, here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. 
Go play it again. But this time, feed garbage to Baron. Or throw his food away in the trash in front of him. Or both. Heartbound is a game of choice. There's a shitload of different routes. Leave your room without putting on your sweater. Decide not to throw the axe. There's a lot of options in there. A ton of them. Tons and tons. In fact, don't even pick up the axe. Never get that. You'd be amazed at how much in the game changes based on the choices that you make. There are thousands of routes in Heartbound, and it's why I've taken so long to build this. It's the reason. It's massive. Currently start at this 105k. You screwed if you don't have a degree? No. No, you're not. I mean, if you don't have a degree, I would always say get the paper. It opens up options for you. But if you don't have the options, you can always go and do bounty programs and things like that and prove your skill. It is definitely a way to do it. It is harder. Some people like a structured learning environment. Some people like a non-structured learning environment. And that's important. That's important to understand how you like to learn and the best way that you learn and the best way you can be effective for yourself, right? It's going to be different for every one of you. There is no silver bullet. There is no best. There is what works for you. Yeah, Heartbender's Butterfly Effect the game, 100%. In fact, this cutscene has 72 different routes through it. We built them all live on stream. Do you invest in the stock market? No, I don't like to gamble. Players look for experience as much as degree. Some of them do. Not all of them, but yes. I looked for experience. I didn't give a shit about the degree. What do companies base on when hiring people specifically in tech nowadays? It depends. It's always going to be different for every hiring manager. Usually they're going to look for experience or they're going to look for the piece of paper, right? Or both. Or both. It's whatever person... Whatever that person brings to the table, that's going to be better, right? Do you have a way of seeing stats of what choices players have made? have a lot of branching paths based on what items you pick up. Thor utilized his experience as a pickup artist during development. He is it's a man true. of many talents. His only regret is being forklift certified is not one of them. It is okay, Thor. You can't have them all. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I needed a minute. <laughs> that was good. Well done. Proud of you. Proud of you. Jesus Christ, dude. We got ads about 50 seconds. That's very funny. Oh my god. I'm about to touch grass and go fly fishing? Dude, I love fly fishing. My, uh, my grandfather actually taught me how to tie flies when I was young. I used to go fly fishing in Colorado. I used to get trout and, uh, like rainbow trout. Oh, so good, dude. I love fly fishing. I love it. It's very fun to tie the flies, too. Really, really fun to do it, because you can make all kinds of different shapes and colors and stuff. Really fun to do. How does one fish for flies? Well, first, you fill your house with poop. And that's the only step. Well done, Hyperjerk. You've done it. You've done it. All right. As we're going to play the, these donation the messages. Time, I'm finally medicated for ADHD. It's life-changing, and I'm going to kick ass in your game jam. Do it, dude. Awesome. I'm glad that's working for you. Kick some ass, seriously. What do you think of the recent partnerships between Xbox and an AI company? Anytime somebody's com uh, partnering with an AI company, AI in itself is not inherently bad. It's how you use it, right? So if they're using it for business analytics, or if they're using it for trying to determine, they, um, they use it as a tool to try and make cooler things without breaking any taxes. type of copyright law, then and I'm Thor's for it. I don't have any problems today. there. I'd be interested to see what they do with it, is really what it is. Happy birthday. It's not my birthday, how dare you? How dare you? Ads are about to start. We're going to pause the stream during the ads as usual. What are your feelings on Microsoft buying Blizzard? I'm very happy about that. Blizzard has a lot of internal problems. I'd be interested to see what Microsoft is going to do to change this. Um, as someone who worked at Blizzard for seven years, I know how, how bad it is internally in some places. Not everywhere is that bad. However, they need to change things, and this is the greatest chance they have to shake it up. Does it mean it'll work? No. Does it have a chance? Yes. And that's much better than it was before. Every day the wiki page says it's your birthday today? No. Subscriber count? Let's check, bud. Jesus Christ, dude. Ads. We got ads. We're gonna wait. Tor! I'm late for today's scrum meeting. How can I ever make this right? <laughs> Who made you this way, dude? Who made you this way? There's no scrum meeting, you goblin. 
Thank you for the prime sub. It's very nice of you. Yeah, we get ads. Only some people get ads, and it's only on Twitch's side right now. Holy shit, that's going, dude. That is going. My dad was in South Park. Are you Easter egg somewhere? Not in South Park, no. Nope, nope, nope. That's all him, man. All him. He uh, he actually works at Jagex now on Old School RuneScape. Yeah. 50,000 IDR. What is IDR? IDR. Indonesian Rupiah. Thank you very much. Let's see. I'm not a game dev, but trying to add a new language to my repertoire. Want to try Lua, and I find game dev engine using Lua. Is it good? Lua is a great, great language. Like here, let me let me actually pause this for a second. And there was a donation as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and a, and a hype chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> so, if you're trying to use Lua, and this may seem kind of odd, there's a lot of mods and in the modding community you can do this with. For instance, World of Warcraft uses Lua for all of its mods. All the add-ons that people make, it's all in Lua. So you may find that you can make cool stuff with it. You can use engines with this. Yeah, Zomboid is written in Lua. It can definitely be used for making games. And you can absolutely use it, if you're not making a game, to do add-ons for certain other games, which is great. It's really, really useful. Lua is a great language and definitely something I would recommend using because you can do it for all kinds of cool shit. It, really cool shit. Yeah. Love is a good engine overall. Definitely is. I would agree with that. I, there's no reason not to learn that. It's really good shit. And it, it opens up a lot of doors. It's really helpful. So yeah, Lou is good. I'm going to wait for this. Ads are over. Gmod uses Lua too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Lua is great, dude. Since you read it, but TTS distracted you, madam. It's here to remind you. Do you have a way of seeing stats of what choices players have made in Heartbound? Aside from achievements. So, I can't do that because of GDPR. However, whenever we went to conventions and we were sitting there with people, we noted down all the different choices that people made, and what we found is about 5% of players on their first run feed barren garbage. Which means 5% of players are terrifying human beings. Just saying. If you fed barren garbage on your first run, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to say to you. Yeah, European law, we can't track a bunch of stuff about players. Uh, it's not a good thing to do. Yeah, you don't want to do that. They get they come after you and they remove your entire wallet. It's scary. But yeah, Project Zomboid is a uh, code is a two language system using both Java and Lua. Yeah, pretty cool shit actually. All right, there we go. Now it's working again. I have nothing to do with programming or code, but your shorts I've seen are great. The information you give out makes it easy for anyone to follow and understand. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. You're awesome, dude. Really awesome. But yeah, we're at 256,000 subscribers now, which is crazy. I hear that. Why is that? I hear that white noise. Balls. What's it going to be? God damn it. <laughs> Of course it is. Why would it be anything else? Seven. Why would it be any other way? Why would it, why would it ever be anything else? I swear to God, you're seven, dude. Absolute goblins, every freaking one of you. I swear to God, dude. That is outrageous. The shorts really work. First time on stream. I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying the shorts. I'm really glad. We've got a ton more of them set up, actually. So for anybody who got a sub today, anybody who's well, it's not a sub, a membership on YouTube, you can access all of those early. So you can go and see them. I've got a bunch of them queued up. Um, I'm going to keep adding more every week. Our our new editor who, who works only with the short stuff is Shadelock. And is just knocking it out of the park. Dude kicks ass. Steets does all of our long-form videos. So if you like long-form stuff, you want to watch like 19 hours I'm of me playing Java Amori, that's all Steets. Data crunching slash crud for a ministry of transport of a European country. We have a to work okay. project where people who have tough time getting hired due to being jobless for a long time or have special needs or need more chill friendly environment we will hire and allow you to train up your java stuff while also working that's a great working environment that is I second that, that is an awesome dude. working environment when you explain things you explain them well i'm not even five years old and i understand everything <laughs> <laughs> thank you don't say that shit which will ban you 
We You're not five years old. Take it back right now or they'll come after you, dude. I swear to God. About going into it and we give them a few days of pair development, internship to see if for them. Being non-commercial allows us to do this. See if your government does something like this if you want to get into IT. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's I'll a good idea, man. For work soon, but wanted to say out of your four tips for YouTube shorts, there was one I wasn't implementing, and that was unchecking the notify subscribers box. Been posting shorts and videos for 40 days straight now, so I'm excited to see if they do better. I'll keep you updated Let me know if on they do. any noticeable changes. Thanks again for the great content. We've seen with a couple of other people, they went from like 30 to 50 average views to about 900 to 1,000 average views by just putting in that last piece, which is unchecking the box. I'd be really interested to see what changes for you. And that's that's it. Why did I start streaming? I started streaming because I wanted to share with the community the fact that I was still working on the game so that their investment in our Kickstarter would not be wasted. It has evolved since then where I'm now sharing as much information I can about the game industry and my experience in the game industry as possible. I've done a lot of things in my career, so it's really useful for people. Yeah. Let me do this. There we go. Also, there was a couple of donations in there. Let me grab those. Longer message ahead. When you get hired at Blizz, was it through the careers page? Or did you have any inside people to be referred by? I had no inside people to be referred by. I hate nepotism. Are you able to give any advice to a self-taught dev with years of C-sharp, C++ experience, but no diploma open source contributions looking for a similar position? Uh, anytime you have any side project stuff at all, even if it's not open source, you can always use that on your resume. Anytime you have any of that type of information, don't be afraid to apply. All you have to do is look down the list of things that they need and try to match your resume to those things and specifically cater your resume to the position that you want, right? And make sure that you're trying to hit as many of those goals as possible. A lot of the times you might be turned down if you're not hitting all of the really critical ones, but if you have most of the really critical ones and they have a hiring manager or hiring team that is paying attention, you may still get in to get a, a resume, right? It's still useful for that. But yeah, um, I, I don't like nepotism at all. I Nobody even knew who my dad was until I worked at Blizzard for four years, which was really funny because I was talking to my dad in the quad of Blizzard, which is right near the big wolf statue. And um, my manager saw me talking to him. And then when my dad left, he's like, why were you talking to Joey Ray? And I was like, that's my dad. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, that's that's my dad. And I had been there for four years already, which is deeply hilarious to me because I had kept it a secret from everyone because I didn't want them to treat me differently in the job because of that. My dad worked at Blizzard for 23 years. He was a cinematic director for Blizzard. He was also he who has no life in uh, Make Love Not Warcraft. That's That's who he is. Which is really funny shit. But yeah, I, no one at the office knew. I kept it a secret. I just didn't talk about it because it's not relevant to the position. It's not relevant to the job. And it opens up opportunities and closes off opportunities to you that are not based on your work ethic or your ability to do things. And I think it's dog shit. Nepotism sucks. 100%. Every time. It would make me feel like my work was less valued because they would just be giving me positions or giving me uh, opportunities based on who he is, not who I am and what I am doing. Which sucks. What was your first position in tech in total? Uh, QA, I was Charles actually a game tester G. working on World of Warcraft and Pub 2015. The Project oh, like Manager's Guide to Mastering Agile Principles oh, and Practices no. for an Adaptive The approach. Scrum Witch. Wily, a very important concept in Agile, is the definition of done in Agile. The goal of each sprint is to produce. I have to kill it. I have to. I have to kill it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, so my first job was actually nepotism, 100%. In 2004, I was a game tester. Actually, let me let me end the music here so you guys can have this. In 2004, I was a game tester on World of Warcraft Vanilla. I got that job because of who my dad is. My dad is the was at Blizzard for 23 years as a cinematic director that basically worked at Blizzard forever, right, since the very beginning. And I got this job because of who he is. I sucked at it. I was dog shit. It bothered me very greatly that I had gotten a position where I was not up to snuff to be able to do this stuff. I found a couple of bugs, but I was not very good at these things. I left for five years. I went off and made my own things. I actually made them in Second Life, as funny as it is. I went and made an MMO in Second Life called Gearworks, which is a first-person shooter MMO. I learned a shitload about programming. I learned a shitload about server management. I made a bunch of textures, a bunch of models. I worked with players, and I got much, much better at doing what I was doing. I went back and applied to Blizzard in 2009. I got the job. It had nothing to do with who he was, and nobody knew at the company that he was my dad until four years into my career there. 
which is when I was leaving QA to become the lead of application engineering or lead, lead of application security on Battle.net, which is where I got this because I made that team because Blizzard didn't have a security team for its websites. So I built that team and I did it all on my own after realizing that I was dog shit and not following the path of nepotism. So as much as you meme, yeah, definitely no nepotism there, Lamal. Nepotism leads the person who is getting those positions, if they are thinking about it, to feel like shit, legitimately. And the reason why that happens is because if you're getting a position that was, that was not there because of your skill, what the hell are you doing? And it made me feel very bad. Very bad. So yeah, I left, got a bunch of skills, came back and kicked some ass. 100%. And my first opportunity was because of him, and I did not like that. Hey Thor, I've been lurking on your shorts, and I wanted to ask you something. Somebody has been trying yeah. to commit direct deposit fraud against me twice in the past two weeks. I work at a Talk small bank. business, so it's been caught both times, but is there any sort of steps I can take to help prevent this type of stuff? If you're getting direct deposit fraud like that, talk to your local police force. That's a pretty normal thing. Um, usually, if it's if it's fraud over a certain amount, they'll actually get you in touch with an FBI contact. That's a pretty normal thing in the United States, at least. I don't know what country you're in. Um, also, talk to your bank about this. It's a very important thing. You need to report that shit. These types of things happen very commonly. My my grandmother actually got targeted in a um, a wire fraud scheme not too long ago. They contacted her, and a, a person was as posing as a a police officer and said that I was going to be arrested if she didn't immediately go to the bank and wire, I think it was $15,000 to this other bank. She almost did it. She got all the way to the bank because she was panicking and they told her, you're not allowed to call someone. You're not allowed to call anyone and, and do this. If you hang up the phone, then then we're going to arrest them right now. They tried to put her in a position where she felt too fear, fearful to contact anyone else and she was going to do this stuff. And um, thankfully, she stopped. The phone had disconnected. She ended up calling me. And she found out all this stuff was a scam and we ended up putting an end to it. But the thing is, is if you're if you have anyone in your family who's older that doesn't understand technology, inoculate them again this, against this shit. And what I told her is anytime anyone makes a claim like this, anyone time anyone's ever calling you about these things, hang that shit up and call me immediately because they don't know. And when they don't know, they could lose their life savings as a result of that. So if you have that, if that is happening, if people are contacting you with this or you're, you're you know, targeted from that stuff, contact the police. That's a basic thing. Like 100% report it because you may be saving other people if they can look into that and learn more about the investigation. We're never going to get rid of it completely, but you may shut down that one, one attack that is happening, which could help people. Also, I'm a big fan of the scam baiting community. Kick some ass. Like you guys are doing God's work out there. Rough They're them creating up, fake emails that claim to be me and emailing my boss trying to reroute my direct deposit information. Any advice? Talk to your boss about it. You yeah, so with, with that in mind, uh, talk to your boss, talk to the HR department at your company, and talk to payroll about this. Uh, make sure that it is well known within the company. Have them put a note on your account that it must never be changed unless they talk to you in person. That is a very normal thing. If you're being targeted about that kind of stuff, especially through the business, note on the account to never change it unless they speak to you in person. That is a very normal thing. So do that. 100% do that. I've, I've, I've worked with that kind of shit for a ever, dude. Super ever. And yeah, Kit Boga rocks. Definitely did the right thing not telling everyone he was your dad. Please tell your yep. editor to cut that as a short or a video and share it, because it is a strong message sure. about how shortcuts will not help you. They Heard won't. You recommend they won't help. One earlier. I recently joined yeah. the team at Hacker One that works on the hacker side of the marketplace. Do you have any product feedback I can take to the team? Love the stream. Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest pieces of product feedback I could have for Hacker One. there's a lot of people that don't realize how deep that site goes. They don't realize that private bounty programs are a thing. Anything you could do to explain to new users that private bounty programs are a great place to like make a living on there and do some kick-ass stuff is a big deal. And you only get brought into private bounty programs once you have enough cred on the site, once you have enough points on the site, where companies will pick you up and go, I want to put you in a private bounty program. Once I reached a certain, a certain threshold, I got invited to a shitload of private bounty programs, a ton of them. And it was really, really awesome because you have very little competition at that point. You're in a private bounty program, maybe five to 10 other hackers, right? And if you hammer on it, you can make a lot of money. You can do a lot of cool shit. You can find a lot of vulnerabilities. You can learn a lot of stuff. But that private bounty program area is so powerful and so good and many new users have no idea that that's a thing they have no idea you can be invited in that and i think the biggest thing about that they send it to you in emails so if you're not paying attention to your email you may not even realize that this is happening 
you may not even realize that you're getting emails of like being invited to private bounty programs. So I think any way you can put that to the forefront of new users and teach them that that is happening, it's going to help. It's going to help a lot, if that makes sense. HackerOne.com is what it is. They're an awesome website. Really good. We actually, when I worked at Blizzard and when we made the bounty program there, we did it through HackerOne because I know they're very good. There's also Bug Crowd as well, which is a competitor to them. Those both work. I use HackerOne I've personally. moved all my features to the next sprint with this sub. Thanks for the good times. Thank you very much. Do they pay? Well, it depends on the bounty program, right? You can make a living doing that, absolutely, but you gotta be really good. It is competitive. Like it is hard. I just YouTube Shorts and want to support Smile as someone who took a game dev course at college and transitioned into defense contracting. They've helped me see the game nice. dev industry in a positive light again. Kick Thor, some ass, I'm dude. Screaming. Thank you for the 500 bits. Look Thank you. This. Oh no, Main, what have you done? Move it global security incident. Hold up. I'm going to I'm going to look at this donation first. What have you sent me, Zafroth? Let's look at the donation first. Thank you for the $3 anonymous. Following up Blizz question guy. Do you think hiring managers are more likely to disregard someone's application if the company is NA based and the applicant is EU based? Yes. Absolutely. And I know that sucks. I know that sucks. But remote workers are harder to get. Remote workers, it's always going to be harder for you to get in. That being said, if you're trying to work at Blizzard, there are regional offices for this. Regional offices are just fine. So, like, make sure you go into that and look at that. So, yeah, we're going to look at this move at Global Security Incident. Maine encourages individuals to take steps to protect their personal information. We're sharing information relating to a cyber incident that exploited a vulnerability in a widely used file transfer tool, Move It, which is owned by Progress Software. This event has a global impact affecting thousands of organizations, including certain agencies in the state of Maine. While impacted individuals may receive notice of this incident separately, I'm wondering if I'll get one, I'm not in Maine, we are sharing details broadly on our website. Please visit this website for latest updates regarding the incident. I'm going to send this out. There you guys can have that. Yeah, move it again, dude. On May 31st, oh, that's a while ago, the state of Maine became aware of a software vulnerability in Move It, a third-party file transfer tool owned by Progress Software and used by thousands of entities. The software vulnerability was exploited by a group of cyber criminals. God, I love the term, dude. I'm going to be real with you. When I grew up, cyber meant something very different. And I hate every time I see the word cyber now. Because I don't think of it in the terms that we use now. I think of it back then. And I can't see the word cyber criminals without laughing my ass off at that. They, that's, that's, god damn it. And allowed them to access and download files belonging to certain agencies in the state of Maine between May 28th and May 29th. So for one day, that's still, I wonder how the export was. If they were exfiltrating data, that, I wonder what the throughput would be for that. Importantly, as it pertains to state, this incident was specific and limited to Maine's Move It server and did not impact any other state networks or systems. What information was involved? Determine this incident has impacted approximately 1.3 million individuals. Oof. With the type of data affected, differing from person to person, the state encourages individuals to reach out to its dedicated call center to verify if they were affected, and if so, to identify what specific data theirs was involved. So that's, that's interesting to me. Now, here's the thing that you have to understand. This is daily. There wasn't a day that went by, a week that went by, that every business I've ever worked for didn't get knocked over in some capacity, either by nation states, by interested people, by people who are actually trying to steal data, etc. This is a very normal thing. As much as we always glomp onto situations like this and be like, oh my God, it's a big breach. This is business as normal. The world is very insecure. You should be protecting your data as much as possible. And the best way you can do that is using two-factor on every service that you use. Don't use the same passwords across multiple services and use two-factor everywhere. That's it. Those are the big things. And no, a VPN is not going to protect you. I'm going to get back to it. Aw, oh. No, oh, God, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You could be any other way. Thank you for the 10 bucks. Let's see. I'm going to pause this real quick. Let me go see what your donation was. As a trans person, I feel daunted by creating a game or any content. I feel like I have to be perfect and make the perfect game to live up to trans people before me who have made great games. Is there a way to get rid of this feeling of chasing perfection? So to be real with you, that is the way that you're feeling there is not unique to you being trans. Everybody who is creating anything, many, many people feel that way. It's what we generally call imposter syndrome. Nothing that you create is ever going to feel great enough for you. And the thing that you have to realize about this, no matter who you are, regardless of who you are, what you like, what, like what kind of issues you're dealing with in your life, what kind of things that you have to overcome, the challenges that you have to move through, you spend all day with you. You know exactly where the weak points are. You know exactly where you're weakest. You know where to punch. And that isn't a fair fight. 
because you know exactly where to hit. So, in any situation where you're beating yourself up, thinking you're not good enough, just understand the person you're fighting knows every way to beat you, and that shit isn't fair, so ignore it. Ignore it. That shit's not a fair fight. Nobody else feels that way about you. No one else gives a shit in the way that you give a shit. So do not, do not give in to that fight, because it is not a fair one, ever. So I hope that helps, dude. What do you mean? Password 123 is not secure? I use it for everything. Two-factor no. authentication is just bothersome. Kappa. Oh! That is awful. Why are you like this? Tor! Have we had our daily hype of ashes of creation yet? Thanks for accepting me to the organization. I need my so, daily hype. I want to show you. Um, this keeps happening. <laughs> Review the alert. Mark is resolved. Increased activity from normal members. No action needed. And now you can go and join it again. Which is really funny to me. So. Every day. Every day. By the way, our Discord is discord.gg slash pirate software. Go and join it. Things. Have fun. Once you start and yeah. take a look at your own progress, you'll feel pride. You'll look back and think yeah. old projects aren't as good as they could have been, but that's a sign of learning more. Yeah. The, the best way that I can do it is this. It's very easy. It is very, very easy to compare yourself to other people. It is incredibly easy to compare yourself to other people and to look at their work and go, my God, I could never do such a thing. I can never make something super good. But I want to show you something. You see how beautiful our game is right now? See how great this looks, right? We've, we've worked on it a super long time. I'm very proud of where it is. But this, if I go and run this right now, screen's going to go black for a second. Don't panic. It'll be fine. Wait for it. This is what Heartbound started off as. This was the first build of Heartbound ever. Look at him. He looks like a goddamn potato. He looks like a god... Look at him. So don't compare yourself to other people's work. Compare it to your work a month ago, a year ago. You will know if you progressed by looking at what you made versus what you made now. And that's it. So don't compare yourself to other people's shit. Compare yourself to your shit in the past. And you'll see how far you've come. 100%. I love you and your amazing twat, 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 twat. There's two kinds of chatters, dude. Oh, God, it turned black again when I close it. I don't know what's wrong with that old client. I can't fix it because it's ancient. I've used 12,345 as my hotspot password for nearly six years now, and I find it hilarious. That's the same password on my luggage. How did you find that? This man's hacking me. Thank you for the 100 bits. You have imposter syndrome bad? We all do. Let me let me give you an example of this, dude. Let me go pull up. Let me go pull this up real fast. Heartbound is currently sitting at 96% positive reviews out of 1,177 reviews. It's 35,000 sold copies. There's 120,000 people wishlisting it. It's in six different languages, critically acclaimed. People love the shit out of it, right? The first thing that I think of every time I see this is how did I trick 96% of these people into thinking my game is good? And I have to tell myself, that's bullshit. Shut up. That's always going to be that way. Imposter syndrome is there for every single one of us. No matter how skilled you are, no matter how successful you are, no matter what. What I use that for every time is, okay, if I have that thought, does anyone else have that? Can I prove that they do? And if they do, why do they have it? And can I make the things that I'm making better so that they feel differently about the things that I make? And if I can't find anyone that has that thought, doesn't have that feeling about my work, then it's bullshit. Then it's bullshit. So don't sit there and form inaction just because there's a little voice in your head that says you're dog shit. Go and do something. Make something. And prove it wrong. Every time. Just prove it wrong. And then, what you'll start to do is what I do, which is make everything out of spite because that little voice is bullshit. And I'm going to prove it wrong Password every time. Password 123. Real hackermans know that the best password to use on all your sites is Hunter Tooth. Good reference. Well done. Oh, my God. Thanks for all the advice. Anytime, man. I need to stop listening to myself. No, you should listen to yourself. But you know what you should do? You should trust but verify. Trust that that is the truth, but verify the claim. If you can't verify it, if there's no proof of that negative thought, if there's no actual proof, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Don't fight yourself. It's not a fair fight. 
Do everything out of spite is how, how I pass school. I love doing stuff out of spite. I am a spite-driven robot, dude. But I'm not a robot. I'm not a robot, chat. Don't, don't clip that. It's not real. We have the same pin number. What's yours? I know. <laughs> That's a pretty good one, dude. Thank you for the 35 czar. I actually don't know what czar is. I don't know what that is. Interesting. Yeah, Block Game was born out of spite. It's my side project. It's my side project. YouTube shorts versus Instagram. I actually don't use Instagram very much. You want to see what my Instagram is? It's going to make you laugh. I have a lot of hobbies. And I put them on my Insta. Let me show you this shit. It's it's not that interesting. Ugh. Give it a load. Oh my god, where's my home? Where is it? My Instagram is literally just filled with pictures of my ferrets and pictures I've taken of nature and my mushrooms. Jail. Thank you for the 100 bits. You, you don't need to do that. Look at this one. He's a snorkel. There he is. There he is being a snorkel. I take pictures of the ferrets. I take pictures of the mushrooms that I cultivate. Um, wildlife in my area, which is kind of a thing. And I just put them up on here. Here's some of the ant colonies I've had. There was a Campanatus pensilvanicus. There's a ROM that I made using pulled pork, which is fun. Burgers that I've made. Uh, this was me building... Uh, what was it? Potatoes au gratin? So I had to make a um, bechamel. And then turn... Uh, yeah, it was super good. Lay that into a cast iron. Do all the potatoes au gratin in it. Covered in cheese, infinite cheese, and then it was Here delicious. Is the rest of my God, life it was good. savings. There's cheese. Look how cute she is. Look at that little face. Look at that little face. Oh, I can cook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love cooking, man. I cook every day. And there's some heartbound stuff on here too. But my Insta is, is mostly empty, man. Oh, look. This is one of the ferrets when we gave them snow one year because it snowed outside during the winter, and we just gave it to them, and they were like, "Holy shit, what is this?" And they lost their minds. They were super into it, dude. And there's all the, there's all the, the barons. There's so many barons. There's so many barons. Cooking street, people want that. I did one ages ago. I made chili from scratch and it was fun. I might do it again. Might do it again. Might be fun. You expecting painted minis? Nah. I, I raised mushrooms, a bunch of different cultivations of mushrooms for it. Lion's Mane, uh, Reishi, Shiitake. Of mine make it and it was the best damn soup I've ever ate. I've never had that. No. I like eating a bunch of different stuff, but most of the food that I like to make is Vietnamese. I love Vietnamese food, dude. And I love pho. Oh, pho is so good. Oh, it's so good. I love making that shit homemade. I go down to the butcher and I get, um, like, bones so I can make the broth. Mmm. Mmm. Give me the five bucks. Let me go look at that. Short watcher. Short time enjoy it. Thank you. Shout out to shorts. Those are literally correct. I just want to say, I used to work in insurance under a cyber program. Oh, cyber. <laughs> I was just selling. But my god, do people not know anything about technology nowadays? Keep being awesome. My life for our A. A Protoss has entered chat. A Protoss has entered chat. Thank you for the five bucks, dude. By the way, 40% of your donation went to the mods. 40%. Gonna get that tonight? Fuh is amazing, dude. Fuh is amazing. Have you eaten your own mushroom? Oh yeah, no, 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 hold up. Uh, if you don't know what I'm what I'm making with this, here, let me let me do the command in chat real fast so I can show you this. I have a hobby. I have a lot of hobbies, but this one I'm I'm quite happy with. And I, I like where it is. I have a shed in my backyard. It's kind of dog shit. It's pretty bad. And when I got it, be gone. Um 50% of the shed did not have a foundation, which is horrifying. Um, so we poured new concrete. We did this. We actually I worked with my neighbor who I, I was like, hey. Can you help me? Oh, there's ads. God damn it. Okay, we're going to wait for the ads. We're going to wait for the ads. The ads have run. The story will wait. We will pause. Kek, wait. Oh, Thor. Our no. bespoke cyber lord. I can't not read Shiitake's shit take mushrooms. If you True. don't eat foe, shit take oh, mushroom. Bow, you ain't eating foe. Oxtail is top tier. Oxtail's good. I like oxtail and I like wonton soup. Whole lot. I make it at home. It's delicious. Two weeks till I someone give me a sub. The ads up immediately. Nope. A TS is a system <laughs> of industry applications designed to curate a desired multi-experience using a unique hybrid of machine learning and on-site scrum sessions. Our specialists have redefined tech-centric problem-solving, disrupt, innovate, Major refine, this one. advanced systems. Why? Real lyrics I heard today. 
Thor. What I have such a high donation goal? Sorry for repeating the message. Would you recommend using a service such as KeePass as a password manager for secure passwords, or do you have a recommended solution that you use? Also, how did the vegetable farmer sell his produce on the dark web? It's going to be onion related, isn't it? He I bet, used I bet the anything. onion routing. God damn onions every time. Oh yeah, to be Set. honest with you, um, when we when we go back to that, let me go look at that. I don't use a password manager. I don't use a password manager at all. I'll talk about that after this ad break. Um, I'm gonna wait for this. So yeah, I, I don't use a password manager. I don't use a, ma a password manager whatsoever. I know a lot of people that do. I'm a giant nerd, and you don't have to do it this way, obviously. But what I do is I store a memory offset in a file, and that memory offset is the location inside of an image that is my password. Because the location inside of the, the text of an image is actually going to be a bunch of symbols and garbage, and I use that as my passwords. And I'm going to show you right now. Let me go grab this. Where is it? This is my password for Twitch. I know this is non-standard, but I do it because I find it very funny, and that's it. That's what it is. That's that's exactly what it is. I use this one for Twitch because I find it hilarious, and I assign each one of my images to a different service, and I have memory offsets for every one of them. This is not normal. It's a, it's a, it's a way of storing passwords as steganography. Yes, you don't have to like. There's no reason to do this shit, but I do it because I'm I've been a hacker for 20 years. I find it hilarious for myself, and it's stupid. And that's it. That's all it is. Yeah, it's good luck, right? No, it's it's very funny. And I also use two factor on everything anyway. So like whatever. Right? But enjoy this. It don't matter. None of this matters. Enjoy that shit. It's, it's dumb. It's dumb. You don't have to do this. It's stupid. But I find it funny. Um, outside of that, for the mushroom stuff, these are the mushrooms that I actually raise. So I, I made a deal with my, my neighbor, and I was like, hey, I will trade you lion's mane if you help me build the shed. And he, he works with the city, and he does a bunch of cement stuff. So he's able to talk to some other dudes. We got cement running there. Then we went through an electrician to go and get a uh, line run from the house. It's very cheaply done. I built these what are called Martha tents. These Martha tents are tents that we could put humidity in and I can run an HVAC system. So I put an HVAC system right out the back. Cost me like 20 bucks to do the HVAC system. Built this whole thing up, just cut holes in it and then wrap tape around it. Very simple. This causes negative air pressure inside of this, pulls air up from the bottom so we can pull that moisture upwards as it goes. And with this, mushrooms need oxygen and they breathe out carbon dioxide, right? So from there... I was able to do all this kind of stuff, everything there. No, people are asking psilocybin. No, it is not. It is not hallucinogenics in any way. These are food. It's food. No hallucinogens. Calm yourselves. Ran the electrical so we can have lighting over the top so they could grow well. Um, ran straw into some buckets. We actually got some food grade buckets. You can see it says food grade container right there from Home Depot. Then we could put all this straw into it using grain spawn on top of it as a layering system. And then I made sure that the environment was correct in terms of temperature to control that. Now, if you look at this, the humidity goes off. We go and build this stuff. You can see the mushroom growing there. This is a lion's mane mushroom. They get quite big, really big, shaggy looking dude. Then you can go and take that and you can eat it. And, and what it tastes like is once you look at it, it looks like a beautiful kush ball, right? And if you look at that, you can slice it up and it tastes just like lobster. It is delicious. It is super tasty. Same texture, same flavor. And yeah, for people who are asking if I do drugs or anything like that, I don't. Um, I don't like stimulants of any kind. I don't like any altered state stuff of any kind. That's not really my jam, frankly. F to be real with you, I feel like it would get in the in the way of me doing work. And I know some of you will have differing opinions about that, but I, I don't want to mess with that shit. You know, I, I already have a very highly active lifestyle. I work 16 hours a day, and anything that could possibly get in the way with that is is not acceptable to me. So I just don't. I just don't, right? But yeah, if you look outside of this, I also do shiitake mushrooms. These ones are kind of grim. They're they're really pale. I didn't have the right lighting at the time. I have much better lighting now, so they're quite good. And then down here, those buckets actually grow into this. They actually come out of the holes in the buckets, and they fill up right there, right? And when you pop them off, it's like picking an apple, and they're very big. Yeah, they're very big. And then you could just shred those up, and then you could put uh, butter and garlic in it. It's just delicious. They're very tasty. So I love doing this stuff. I, I love growing mushrooms because I find it very fun. I also go foraging. So Shay is trained by the Mycological Society of Washington State. So Shay knows what he's doing. Really, really into it. And I've learned some things from him. And anytime that we have something that like Shay doesn't know or it's like slightly on the edge, we just don't eat it, right? Because you don't want to mess around with mushrooms. If you don't know what you're doing, you will die. And that's not a joke. 
you will die if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to scroll back through this and find this picture. And then I'm going to go through all your guys' donations. There's quite a lot of them I can hear. So this is, I know this is terrifying, but I touched grass. I go out to the forests of Washington State during mushroom hunting season. These are King Belites, which don't have any type of poisonous alternatives in any way. And we go and get King Belites. These ones, this one, big one is kind of grim. It's not very good. I just got it because it's huge, right? But we get a ton of King Belites. We slice them up, put them in the food dehydrator, and you get, basically get mushroom jerky. They're super tasty. But look how ugly this one is, but it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, they're massive, dude. And um, if I go and pull that down, there's another one here. This is the full haul that we got. It was about 20 pounds. It's about 20 pounds of mushrooms, right? Love that shit. Love it. It's so much fun to do. And we take it and we, we shred it up. We, we make powders out of it to use it on steak because it's got a mommy flavor for it. Uh, we shred it into slices and then dehydrate it and you make jerky out of it. It's very good. Yeah, really good. Love that shit. Anyway, I'm going to start these back up. Actually, let's look at the donations first. Thank you very much for that. No, I, I don't do drugs, dude. I don't do drugs of any kind. I don't even drink coffee. I drink coffee maybe twice a year. I do water, orange juice, Ovaltine, and that's pretty much... Sometimes cranberry juice, and that's about it, dude. I don't I don't like altered stage stuff. It gets in the way of my work. It's not, not good for me. How open is the gaming industry to people moving between different software development disciplines internally? Depends on the company. Depends on the internal culture. That's going to be different for everybody. Uh, at Blizzard, it was kind of tough to do. It was hard to break out of QA, which was the thing. That was that was a little bit weird. I, I like internal mobility as being a standard. If somebody is a better fit for another part of the company and they can still produce value, there's no reason that any manager should stand in their way. And I find very often managers do stand in the way to reach internal metrics for certain departments, and I find that to be dog, dog shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't do coffee. I, it bothers me. Do you eat much sugar or sweets? No, I actually cut all sugar out of my diet. You can see I'm much thinner than I used to be. I was 265 pounds. I stopped drinking soda of any kind, and I lost about 80 pounds. I'm down to about 180 now, and uh, much, much happier. I have a much better lifestyle. I have much better eating habits, and it's because I cut sugar out of my diet, and all the food changed flavors for me. Um, the, the biggest one that got me was cucumbers are sweet. Didn't know that shit. I had no idea. And um, when I cut sugar out of my diet, I went to go eat a cucumber, and I was like, this has flavor? Like, what? And it it blew me away because it didn't taste like texture anymore. And it just, it was wild. So when that happened, I naturally changed my diet, not because I was imposing a diet on myself, but just because I things tasted different. And that was it. Did you cut honey as well? I just don't have very much honey. I don't have very much. I think the most amount of sugar I get in the day is from milk, frankly, because I drink chocolate milk and I love chocolate milk. Ovaltine is delicious. Like Milo. But they trick you by saying it has vitamins in it. It's, it's the same. If you're Australian, you'll understand. Yeah. Uh, hey, dude, just wanted to say love the content. You give amazing advice and I really appreciate it. I wanted to ask, do you have any advice for someone majoring in game art? Oh, dude, uh, make an ArtStation account. ArtStation is really good shit. It's really good to build a portfolio of online pieces. Put up your best pieces on there. Show them people, get feedback on it. And real in reality always play video games. If you want to work in the game industry, play games because you will look at it from a different perspective as a game developer, an artist, anything like that, and you will learn from other people's actions, whether it's a positive thing or go, I'm never going to do that because it looked weird to me. Great shit. Really good shit. So definitely do that. 20 bucks from Even Sanity. Thank you. This is the first stream I've ever returned to daily. Perfect time, perfect topics, perfect atmosphere, perfect host. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Learning a lot just by lurking here. So here's a little for your effort. Any advice for a beginner in the IT industry that wants to transition to offensive security eventually? Do bounty programs. Bounty programs are great shit, dude. You can engage with them now, especially if you have a background in IT. Uh, make up to look. Make sure to look up stuff on Hacker One. Hacker One is really good for bounty programs. Bug Crowd is great for bounty programs. If you want to learn some more stuff about offensive security, go to OWASP.org to learn about the top 10 vulnerabilities in the internet. They have tons of ways for you to actually search to find vulnerabilities. They have um, like Google dorks and things like that, but make sure you do it legally and you can do that on the bounty programs legally. And then from there, you can do things like overthewire.org you can do um hack this site you can do uh god what else try hack me hack the box there's a ton of websites for you so i hope that you do that legitimately but yeah there we go we're gonna push this back over here turn the alerts back on turn back on the music Cooking is awesome if you have the time or energy just made myself a nice ban me sandwich wait even if you don't have the time or energy you want to know the best thing you can invest in it'll save you more money than god Get an Instant Pot. Get an Instant Pot. Go to Amazon right now, and if you have the money for it, buy a goddamn Instant Pot. It is a pressure cooker. You just throw shit in it. You press the button. You walk away. And in a couple hours, you got a meal. You don't have to do shit with it. You don't even have to do shit with it. I put pulled pork in that thing. It was just a pork butt, a bunch of seasonings. I walk away. I have food for five days. God damn, do I love Instant Pots. 
I love Instant Pots. Chef here, Instant Pots are godly. I, I cook in my Instant Pot all the time, dude. All the time. I actually figured out how to do, I, I talked about this in stream, I figured out how to do hard-boiled hard -boiled eggs on it, and I bought the shittiest eggs I could. It was a 40-pack, 40 eggs from Walmart. It was like three bucks, dog shit eggs. But I put them all in the Instant Pot, and they, they perfectly hard boil in about two and a half, three minutes. And then I made 80, 80 deviled eggs. And I ate them. I ate those deviled eggs. I don't recommend it, but my God, was I not. Was I, was I not. I was not unhappy. I was so full of eggs. You have no idea. I love deviled eggs. Don't do it. Yeah, no, I ate, I ate them in like one to two sittings. It was not as, it was, I'm, I am not a smart man when it comes to deviled eggs. I am a dumbass. But my God, will I eat all the deviled eggs? I don't even care. You will, you will fart yourself to death afterwards. Worth, worth, delicious, deviled First eggs time every time. Making a house Weakness for one. me. It's amazing. Fo sounds great as well. Moot water. Fo's great. Yum yum. What you have to cook fo forever. The broth is the king of it. On Hackerone, in your opinion, I just want to get. Oh, I just talked about that. Kick some ass in my free time. You're awesome. I've just answered that question, so I hope you got it. Looks how ugly this one I is, but it's huge. It's something I've heard before. Wait, what? Why is there no mug in the merch store? How will I store my drinkable liquids that are too hot to hold in my hands and sip slowly? <laughs> there used to be a mug. Hold up. There used to be a mug in the merch store. Let me pause this. Let me go see if I can find this thing. Oh, God, what was it called? Let me see if the mug even exists. It's in a product image thing that's, like, missing now. Why is this... Ugh. Ugh. Hold up. I think there's a product... Yeah, it's hidden now. Stop it. It's popping up ads. It was one of those mugs that when you heat it up, the images reveal. And we had this for so long. And the manufacturer that I went through stopped producing the mug. And I was so sad, dude. Because you could gift this to someone in solid black and they put in their coffee and then my stupid ass face appeared. I can't restock it, dude. They stopped manufacturing them. It was called a magic mug. And I was so excited about it. it was so I think three people bought it ever, by the way. There's three of these goddamn things out there somewhere. There's three of them. That is <laughs> so stupid. It's so dumb, dude. It is so dumb. That's the okay bud uh, emote here on Twitch. There's the okay bud. Yeah, it's, that's when someone makes a dumbass claim in chat. You know it's wrong. I use that emote. We all know that eggs are not Thor's kryptonite. It's cranberry juice, but I bet he won't talk about it, Kappa. I talked about that the other day. Cranberry juice is cursed. Don't, don't do what I did. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't drink 100% cranberry Free juice. It was a mistake. Beverage surprise. So, some because you have a voice as deep and gravelly as a country road in a valley. I, now country roads is playing in my head. Thanks. Thanks for that. It's not going away. I can hear Todd Howard selling me shit already. Fantastic. So, if you're wondering what happened with cranberry juice, um, this is so stupid. I love cranberry juice. I have a very high tolerance to alcohol, so most of the time when we go out to bars, uh, pretty much every time in my entire life, I am the designated driver. Designated driver does not mean drinking a little alcohol, it means not drinking any alcohol. So what I would do is I would go up to the bartender and be like, hey, can I get a cranberry juice? Because they, they would always be like that, right? They'd always be like, oh yeah, you can have cranberry juice, absolutely. And I tell them I'm designated driver, they usually give it to you for free, tip the bartender, free cranberry juice all night. Cool shit, right? Fantastic shit. Um, I found... Pure, 100% concentrated cranberry juice. I bought this. I thought, oh shit, I'm in for a really delicious tart drink time, right? This is going to be fantastic. And I brought it home and I drank it on stream. And it was like, a f not. it was about half as much as this glass of pure concentrated cranberry juice. It was so tart. I was like, oh, oh, it was, I was making faces while I was drinking it and shit. Here's what I didn't know. Cranberry juice has a shitload of vitamin C in it. Cranberry juice has a shitload of vitamin C in it. Yeah, if you have the clip, send it up. Um, vitamin C in very large concentrations is a very powerful laxative. It's a, it's a very, very powerful laxative. I didn't know this until 24 hours later. It took 24 hours to get through my system. 
And I had to run away from the stream while I was playing High on Life, and the community was talking to me. And I walked away from the computer to go shit my skeleton out. That is basically what happened. And while I was gone, this is what the character said. Oh, wait, it's not playing. Hold up. Audio browser. While I was gone, this is what he said. Is that not playing? It's not even playing. Why is this doing this? Oh, that's why. Because it's inside of OBS. God damn it. One moment. Got it. Now it's actually going to play. Thanks. Thanks, OBS. We're going to do it now. Are you in the bathroom or something and you forgot to pause the Are you taking a fucking disgusting shit? That was while I was AFK. Dying in the bathroom. And I came back to chat losing its mind. Because they're like, you have to look at the clip. And I was like, oh, it's, oh no, I gotta end the stream, guys. Oh, God. I was like dying. And they're like, no, you have to look at the clip. You have to. And it's just, it's just the stupidest shit on the planet. So what I've learned from this is, do not drink pure concentrated cranberry juice. You will shit yourself to death. I was terrified I was going to die. I was like telling Shay, I was like, I have to go to urgent care. I don't know what's going on. I thought I'd been badly food poisoned. I thought my kidneys were shutting down. Like, it was... It was horrific, dude. It was horrific. Don't do not do what I did. Was that Morty? Yeah, it's the same guy. Same dude. So yeah, no, dude, it was... That was a grim time. It's, it's worse than prune juice. It's worse. It is horrific. It is very, very powerful laxative. Not good. Not good shit. So Imagine anyway, the pick of you enjoy that. that. For it's from the vitamin C. Only it's at the bottom of a coffee mug. So it's staring at you after your coffee is finished. That'd be pretty funny, actually. Country That'd be roads, pretty funny. Take me home to the place where I belong. I can hear Todd Howard already. Country Thank you for that. Roads, He's selling me 16 times the detail. Take me home to the place where I belong, West Virginia. Mountain Mom, God damn take it. me home. Country roads. That song... Look, I'm gonna be... What do you mean I can't I'm gonna be real with you. concentrated cranberry juice. Whatever happened to trust but verify? <laughs> don't do it. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't believe a goddamn word Todd Howard says. I am sick of that man selling me dog shit. But the moment that Country Roads comes on, I'll buy anything he's selling. I don't even care. I don't even care what it is. I don't care at all. Country Roads playing in the background, I'll buy anything from you, Todd Howard. I'll buy my own house from you. I don't give a shit. I love the shit out of Country Roads, but I hate Todd Howard. I hate that every time he gets on stage, he just says some dumb shit. And, but I love country roads, and I Life can't handle. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia. Mountain mama, take me home, country. So, if you want to know my PC specs, because someone's asking for it, I have a thirteen thousand nine hundred K, and I have a forty ninety. The reason why I did this is because of AV one encoding, which is basically the future of streaming. Uh, YouTube has implemented this, Discord has implemented this, and Twitch is going to be implementing it soon. I'm very excited for it, very much so. Mmm, lovely cranberry juice. Blow it out your ass. Infinite money. What kind of game do you make? I definitely don't have infinite money. This is probably the most amount I have ever made as a streamer in my life. And what I do with all of my excess money is I run a ferret rescue, a ferret sanctuary here in Washington State. And we take a bunch of animals in. You can actually see them right here. Let me show you. And we have currently... Music's playing twice. There we go. Uh, currently what we have is 18 ferrets. Uh, we bring them back from the brink. We take ones that are up for euthanization and we help them. And all of my excess money, everything, goes to this. Also, who is that? Who's sleeping like that? Look at that weird little goblin, dude. Super cute. Looks like beef. Beef is being cute. So yeah, that's where it all goes. Everything, all my extra money goes to that because I, I want to run that, right? And they pay for themselves because you guys are throwing ads in, or you're watching ads, but all my money is saving up. That's what this donation goal is for, is I'm going to build a facility that will do up to 100 of them because we can only do 20 right now. Country roads, unlimited country roads, but no country roads. But no country roads. Unlimited country roads. I know roads. how to fix this here world. But no country roads. Why, you like this? this yeah, if you want to coding, this never king, ends. It goes on no. and on, my friends. I can see Lamb Shop already, you goblin. Some people started singing it without knowing what it was. Most monsters. 
and I thought eating a few boxes of fiber bars was funny. <laughs> and you it's know bad, what was funny, Sha? I act. Wait, wait, I have a message here. Does pirate software read YouTube chat? No, never. I've never read YouTube chat in my life. Surely told him at the time to not drink the cranberry juice because it will come <laughs> red out both sold and liquid. Oh. He doesn't remember it, but I do. And when I learned it about it, I laughed because I predicted it. Good times, Thor. Never changes. Also, seven chat. Yario you're seven. Ke so, if you're wondering why there's a difference between my responses on YouTube and, and Twitch, um, Twitch is currently sitting at 2,400 average viewers, and YouTube is sitting at 1,200. Twitch chat is moving much faster, which means there's much more co questions. I try to read both chats as quickly as possible, but remember, only human, right? You've got about 3,600 total people, and I'm talking very quickly and rea like reacting to people's questions very quickly. So Logan on YouTube said, Love the rescue, I love your work. My question is, if you miraculously had infinite money, what game would you make? Oh, if you had infinite money. This one. Exactly the same as what I'm doing right now. Like, my general stance on making video games is always going to be the same. If your team size works for a D&D &D game, then it works to make a game. I want three to five people, no more, no less. Otherwise, you run into inconsistencies with time, you run into problems where people are overworking or underworking, you run into communications issues, and it ends up being a huge problem. I don't care how much money I make. If I make infinite dollars or one dollar, if I have enough money to keep continuing making my game, it's always going to be this exact same model. And, quite literally, when I die, the studio goes with me. Because any game studio is not based on the name of the studio. It's based on the people that build that studio. It's based on the developers that make that name. And if I passed it on to somebody else, it wouldn't be the same studio. It would eventually change into something that I would probably be ashamed of, frankly. So, when I'm gone, it's gone too. And I'm okay with that. Have you tried 200% cranberry juice? No. What? What does that even mean? You have all the developers buried with you? Yes. It's in the contract. You figured it out. <laughs> you know, Steam Deck is making an OLED version? Why is it on your throne list? Ooh. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to laugh about this. Before my YouTube exploded, I was a pretty small indie developer, right? I'd been doing this for a great number of years. I um, I actually applied to get a Steam Deck from, from Steam. They have a process for developers to get it. We recently got approved for Steam, or for Steam Deck, so the game is fully approved. They never replied to my my request. It's still been sitting there for years. It still says that it's in process. <laughs> I never got a Steam Deck. I actually don't have one. I've always been waiting because I was like, the moment I buy it, they're just going to send me one. I've been having that thought for years now since the Steam Deck was actually announced. <laughs> it's really funny. I always wanted to test it on Steam Deck. We actually used fan Steam Decks where like I was like on live stream and they had it and we were doing live live testing to make sure that we could get approved for Steam Deck, which is really funny. Uh, do you get much time while streaming? Most of what I stream now is, is developer advocation and we built this category. We actually yelled at Twitch for about a year. The whole community did. Uh, banded together to make, get it done and they finally made it. So... I try to get people into making video games and into streaming those video games. But yeah, it's really funny. It's no hate, no shade to Steam. I know, like, our game is a smaller game in the grand schemes of things, but it it did make me laugh where I was like, God damn it, dude. Like, I wish you would, please notice me. Please, Papa Gabin, please, please, I ex please look at me. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny as hell. Thor then declared his studio would die with him in the same vein as those who exclaim, my bloodline dies with me. Truly a very metal stance in this industry. Hmm. Do you consider yourself a renaissance man? No, I just do shit. I just like shit and I learn shit. I don't... I don't really have... I think once you add labels and stuff like that, when you're like, I am this sort of person, then you you get an idea... Like, people start to have an idea of how you feel about yourself and it starts to feel a little egotistical, I guess. You see just a little Australia bit. So for me, it's just like, nah, I just do stuff. Phone company had an outage that lasted 12 hours mean people had no phone data. Internet and land phone couldn't call emergency services and their response to the issue was basically, we don't know how. Hmm. That's not great. <laughs> not great at all. Oh, dear. That's really bad. 
They couldn't country even connect Thor, the emergency take services. Me home to the place I belong, Goblin Chat. Thor's my mama. Take me home, Country Thor. God damn it! It was BGP that caused it. That makes more sense. I'm interested because, like, the emergency services being cut off is a pretty big deal. Industry is that, unfortunately, a decision has to be made. Either you set out to make a lot of money, or you set out to make an enjoyable game. You can't double down on both. You can. So, that's not, that's not actually true, to be honest with you. I find that many studios are doing it wrong, frankly. Um, I make my primary focus for our studio and for our games to be on community. Because community makes us work. It makes the machine work. That's the whole point. You guys are why we are successful. You guys are why the game is successful. Without you, none of this would work. None of this would work. So, if you want to be successful in games, talk to your players. Listen to their feedback. They're not always going to be correct. But they're always going to bring up things that bother them, and you may learn something, and you may get better as a developer. There are so many studios that could learn from doing that. Just talk to the players, man. And I, I think if you're worried about like, oh, I have to go make a lot of money, I have to, or I'm just in it for the, the passion, those are not mutually exclusive. You can do both. You can make a lot of money and still do it for the passion. That exists. That is totally fine to do. And a lot of it, for me, is going to rely on your ability to talk to players, listen to their feedback, and share in the experience together. You're on a journey together, and you can't do all of it on your own. You cannot. The players are there to support you and to course correct you when you do things that don't make sense to them. And part of resolving that is just talking to him, man. 100%. Yeah, constructive criticism, even non-constructive criticism, is important. I'm very passionate important. about making good games and paying my bills. Yeah, do it. Definitely pay your bills first and then make games in your off time, right? Why are you so wise? I don't know. I'm a nerd. <laughs> uh, I put it all the way up on my stat chart, dude. That's why I'm a nerd. I stay inside. I don't really go outside. I sit in this chair, right? Strength to the bottom, wisdom to top. That's how you do it. Min-maxing. But thank you. That's very nice of you. Amish Chubby Knees. What a name, dude. Thank you for the Prime sub. What a, what a name, dude. What kind of chair do you have? I actually use a Secret Labs. I don't like the armrests, so I got some extra ones off of... Amazon, which are like soft. They're like 20 bucks. I've been using them for years, which is great. Um, I got it because I was getting really bad back problems because I'm an old man. And I, uh, it's got a lumbar support bar that you can like adjust and it fixed all my back issues, which is great. It's really good. Thank you for the Prime sub, by the way. Just bought a Steel Series. This thing is a tank. I, if you enjoy it, let me know because that's pretty cool shit, actually. Yeah, it's pretty cool shit. Do 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 do. Oh wait, wrong button. Did that not work. All right, let's see. Uh, just got to work and was wondering, did Earthbound inspire Heartbound? Yeah, dude, I, I grew up on SNES games and I love the shit out of them. Earthbound was a very big one for me. Our alerts broken. Oh, there we go. They were trash for a moment there. It was really weird. Can we see the code? Sure. Yeah, what do you want to see? I'll show you anything, man. I was just working on some other systems before. Thank you for that $5 donation. What is that one? Any tips for anyone learning C, C++? Give yourself a project. Every time it's going to be the same. Yes, yeah, give yourself a project. It is very important for you to do that. If you want to learn a language, the best way to do it is learn it in practice, I find. And giving yourself a project to do that is so important, dude. Do you just go by Pirate Software, another name? My name is Thor. Also, you're like six foot four, and I'm six foot two, actually. You have six foot two, about 180 pounds. Yeah. I used to be a fat ass. Can Wanna we see? take a moment to appreciate my boy, A. Nassau, who in the year of our Lord 1800 BC was a scam artist who kept play tablets oh, no. and people complaining that he scammed them under his stairs in some sort of ultimate troll collection. What a champion. He sold me copper ingots of poor quality. I'm going to show you an example of Fat Thor, and I've shown this before. Wait for it. Wait for it, chat. So understand something. I used to be 265 pounds. You're going to see me with multiple chins. All right? Multiple chins. Oh, we got ads. We're going to wait. We're going to wait for the ads. I'm going to wait. No, you're good. You're good.
It's the worm. It's the ads worm. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Chins. Unlimited chins. But also chins. Yeah. Chins. Really like your hair? Thanks. I also enjoy it. As it is mine. <laughs> you got a great voice, my man. Thanks, bud. I think the TTS is trying to shit itself. You okay there, TTS? There it is. It was eating it, dude. What are you developing, Game Maker, over other engines? It's great for 2D. It costs $100 one time for a lifetime license, and it has no royalty fee. And it also allows me to build any of the games that I want to build. It's great. Fantastic for it. Choose an engine based on the kind of game you want to make, right? So yeah, we're going to end the ads for a moment. I need to show you this. We're going to pause this. The ads are over. We're pausing the alerts. I used to weigh 265 pounds. I cut sugar out of my diet by stopping drinking soda. It changed my way that everything tastes, everything like that. I weigh 180 pounds now, and I'm six foot two. And uh, this was Fat Thor. There he is. There's Fat Thor. Look at, I just want you to look at this. We're going to get real close. All right. Look at, look at that. I had a chin, and then I had another chin in there. I, I, I was just, that wasn't me. It's my buddy. Look at this. Look at this. Cuddly. There we go. That's the nicest way you could put that. I lost a shit ton of weight, dude. Yeah, two, two different people, exactly. I lost a shit ton of weight. And um, yeah, I feel real good about that. I will tell you one thing. I will tell you one thing, Chet. Losing a shitload of weight taught me one thing over everything else. That cold exists. When I was fat, I never got cold. Now that I'm skinny, I'm cold as shit all the time. I didn't know what that shit was like. I didn't believe any of you, thin people, when you're like, oh, it's cold. I was like, you're a bitch. You know, no, 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 it's cold. And now I'm the bitch. I lost all my insulation. 100%. 100%. It's real. It's real. I've, I've seen both sides of the coin now, Chet. I've seen both sides. When you're fat, you don't know what cold is. You think everyone's a bitch. It's not true. It's cold. It's actually cold. So I've learned this. Chin layers like the layers on an onion. Onion be with you. Don't you onion do? reminds me of the nerd giant from the Fable trailer who says heroes I exercise the dedication no. to a good vegetable garden. I don't get up out of this chair. Does. So some people are asking, like, how did you do it and stuff like this? I didn't exercise. I don't do that shit. Dude. I'm, a, I'm a lazy slug. And by the way, um, my doctor's mad at me because they don't exercise. I'm a... I'm a programmer. I sit in this chair. But to be real with you, I, I quit soda. That was what it was. And because I quit so much sugar, my taste for things naturally changed. So cucumber turned out to be sugary. It actually felt good, right? And everything loose skin? No, it's mostly tightened up over the years. It took a while, but I, I did have like some weird skin for a little bit, but I, I just left it alone and it went back to the way that it should be. Um, and since I lost my, my weight naturally over time, not all at once, it was, it was not as extreme as it could have been, right? So with that in mind, it's I, I just stopped drinking soda. I lost the weight gradually over time by doing this. And because it changed my taste for food, because not I wasn't consuming so much sweet shit all the time, it re it changed my, my taste for everything, right? So I, I eat vegetables now. Vegetables are actually sweet. It's, it, they're actually sweet. And I didn't know that, which is wild. What do I drink now? I drink water, orange juice, and uh, cranberry juice, and, and sometimes Ovaltine. But with that in mind, I also drink uh, carbonated waters, but I make sure that they don't have any sugars or sugar substitutes in them whatsoever. And um, that's it. So it's just carbonated water. It's just got a flavor in it. That's that's usually it. And they're good. Yeah, carrots are super sweet. I actually eat carrots when I want to have, like, it tastes like candy. It tastes like candy. So, like, yeah, man, it changes your, your flavor for stuff. And I don't force myself to have any kind of a diet or any of that kind of shit. I just, I changed the way that I eat food because it tastes better, right? And it tastes better because I got rid of soda. No, not diet soda. No sugar substitutes. No sugars. If, you, if you're in the camp where you think that diet soda is somehow going to not make you fat, you're dead wrong. You're, you're still consuming dog shit, frankly. Yeah, it's not good for you. It's never going to be good for you. And sugar substitutes are just as bad as sugar, man. Like 100%. Diet soda is not going to make you thin. They put diet on it to trick you to buying that shit. It's still garbage. Stop it. Get some help. Your Don't do that. Shadow layer bad. Meat, so its meat match would be aerodynamic. Chat. Yeah, soda's not healthy at all. Never it's will be. You're drinking cigarettes, my dude. That said, constant diarrhea did make me lose 35 kilograms in less than a year. 
Don't drink cigarettes. Don't do it. It's gross. It's gross. Seltzer water is a good substitute for me. Yeah, it's good. If you want, like, that texture on stuff. If you go to carbonized water, <laughs> I get bubbly water, which is, like, this one brand that's really cheap. It's just cheap as shit. I get the lime one. In a soda stream with a low sugar drink mix, the nicotine patch of soda. It's true. It is the nicotine batch of soda. That's exactly what it is. Rather drink soda than smoke? You've missed the point. It's called drawing... It's drawing... You know, the difference between those two things? Soda, real bad for you. Lost a ton of weight. Cigarettes, real bad for you. Make you die. Same shit. You're gonna die from obesity if you keep doing that anyway. It's really bad for your lifespan. Really bad for you. Smoking, also bad for you. And smoking, much worse. Yeah? Don't do either. You could actually live your life without consuming garbage. And it's cheaper. Amazing. Did we hit the sub goal or are we just really close? The sub goal? Wait. Did we hit the sub goal? Are you guys kidding me? No way. There is no way. Hold up. God damn it, Twitch, show me my channel. What? Wait, 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 wait. Are you shitting me? 2,249 sub points? I put that up there because it gives us another emote. I had no idea that you guys had hit this. We get another emote slot from this. That's what that is. You get new emote slots based on the number of subs you have on Twitch. This is... This is that. I had no idea. Hold up. Yeah, let me go look at Twitch subs. Uh, uh, no, Twitch emotes slots. So you can understand what, what I mean by this. This is a really big deal. You have no idea. That is outrageous. So if you look at this, the emote slots for this is... We get 35 now. I get another emote slot. I don't have another emote ready. I didn't even think about that. The next one's at 2,400. Uh, and it goes all the way up to 54 at 7,000. Which is crazy. And I guess it's 60? You added 60 now at 10,000 plus? But yeah, this is what it is. I'll go link this in chat so you guys can see this. That's cool as shit. We have another emote slot. We'll have 35 of them. That's awesome. I, I'll, I'll talk to Shea about adding a new emote, dude. That's rad. Thank you very much. Also... We got this. That's a thing that's happening. We're about to 260,000, which is wild. So thank you. Let's start the stream back up. <laughs> yeah, dude. That is outrageous. So thank you very, very much. Uh, I didn't expect that or any of this. So you guys kick ass. Thank you very, very much. You guys are amazing. Is that a Primogen emote? Prime's the best, dude. It's a great dude. I watch Primogen all the time. He, he should go on my list of people. I never talk about that. Primogen's amazing. I watch him all the time, whenever I can catch him. He's always running around. It's hard to catch him, but you should catch him, because he's There's great. Only one emote we Community want. contest. We want it back. For new emote? What is the plan on I know we do. Back? I don't think there's a, a way to get it back. There we go. Shout it out to Primogen. Definitely check out his stuff. He's awesome as shit. Primogen's awesome. Definitely do that. Dude's great. Yeah, it's all YouTube shorts, man. You subbed at 40k on Monday morning? Yeah, all of the shorts. By the way... By the way, Chet. I applied for the YouTube button. The silver play button. Um, they said they would send me an email within 10 days. Since I applied for the YouTube play button, which was last night... We have gained another 60,000 subscribers. <laughs> if this hits 1 million before they send me the silver bl play button, I'm going to lose my shit. Because 1 million is when you can apply for the gold play button. And that is ridiculous. So. <laughs> because they're going to they send you an email within 10 days. And then they send you the play button within, within three weeks. So. Yeah, it's, they said it to you within three weeks. I don't know if they, I don't think they make you cost anything. I don't think Check it does. Stream chat. We need your love. What do you got? What's in stream chat? Let me go look. Oh God, I have a million messages. 
Oh, it's so cute. I'll get... I'll get Shay to make a heart. I'll get Shay to make a ferret with a heart. I see you guys have AI generated this. We'll, we'll get Shay to make one. Yeah. Maybe something like that. We already have your heart, though. How'd you rate Adder Wilds on a 10-point scale? 10. I'm going to be very clear about this. Outer Wilds is, is easily one of the best games I have ever played. And the only thing that I can say about it that is a negative in any way is that I will never be able to play it again. Ever. And that's the part that hurts so bad because it is so good. I enjoyed the shit out of that game. And I got to play it blind recently on stream. I actually put the entire playthrough up on YouTube. And um, phenomenal experience. Absolutely phenomenal. And uh, let me go pull this up right now so you guys can have this. If you've never played this game... If you've never played this game, this game is amazing. It is so good, dude. What is it? Without spoilers, what makes it so good? I won't tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. Do not watch the video for that. Don't watch it. Go play this game. I'm going to be playing the DLC in January. That's going to be my thing in January. Play this game. Don't, don't even look at this trailer. None of that shit. Don't look at any of it. Don't tell your friends. Don't look at any of the videos. Don't look anything up. Go play that game. And if you do look anything up, you will rob yourself of an experience that you can never get back. That game is awesome, dude. That game is really, really awesome. So, I'm, I'm being very serious with this. It's, it's an experience you don't want to miss. Yeah, is don't tell anyone. Is it just me or is your sub count accelerating? Can we calculate it the is. acceleration rate? Any math boys in the chat? It accelerates during daylight hours and every time I send out a new clip. There's another one, another short that's coming up today that's regarding Godot, so that'll happen. Yeah, no, it's it's great, dude. That game is amazing. Yeah, don't watch my video. Don't, because it'll ruin it for you, dude. It'll ruin it for you. I don't want you to... After you play the game, go and watch the video. I don't want you to ruin the experience. Do not watch it. In fact, on the YouTube video, let me go pull this up. I don't want you to see that. I don't want you to ruin it, man. Let me grab this. 260,000. There it is. Holy shit. There we go. Let me grab this. The description. On the numbers. Thank you very much. This is the only video I've made that I don't want you to watch. Outer Wilds is an incredible time-looping atmospheric spacefaring adventure where the world is at stake. And you'll only be able to experience it once. The game doesn't explain anything else, so I won't either. Go play the game. And then I put a link to it right here. That's on the video. I don't want you to watch this until you play the goddamn game. Go go play it, right? Go play it. That's it. It's space facing, goddammit. It's fixed now. <laughs> it is so good, dude. It is so good. Yeah, no, do, do it. We're at 260,000 now. You guys are amazing. Thank you very, very much. Also, all of the subs are coming in. Thank you very much for that. The uh, the goal is already hit. I'm gonna have to improve that. Let me go. Let me go do that now. We put it up to the next emote. Whoop, whoop. Where is it? Emotes. Yep, they've already given it to us. Check this out. This is actually the interface for our emotes, and you can see we now have one open slot. We actually have three. Op what? Wait, 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 wait. Why do we have three open slots? The website says we should have 35. We have 34. And there's three open slots now? Did they add extras? No, no, no. It just added it. It already added it. Did they add three? Did they give us new ones? Did they add more emotes? They didn't ban any. It's one through 34. Hmm. 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 You guys get three new emotes, I guess. All right. All right. All right. We'll see. We'll see what it's going to be. More crunchy emotes. Um, nom nom. Agree. We got to get a... We already have a bite emote in there. We'll add something. Let me grab... Let me go grab this and see where I can do this now. Because we have to do... How do I add the goal? I don't remember where this shit is. I want to Which, go why do you hide everything in weird areas? A golden dumpy would be pretty cool. We already have a golden Thor, though. There's a golden Remember Thor. We can't put a dumpy in. Remember to play the Outer Wilds DLC when you have finished Animus. 
We are waiting for ya. We will. Keep the good we work will. up. Also, don't we will show do it. Twitch the dumb PMO. Yar Twitch. Look, guys. Look, I know. I know. Everybody in the community wants the dumpy back. They're never going to give us a dumpy back. They're never going to give us a dumpy back. I know they added five more of the animated ones, too. It's not going to happen. They deleted it. I'm mad at them about it. I'll never forgive them for it. I find it ridiculous that they deleted it and said it was sexual content when it's not sexual content. The reason why it pisses me off is because it's a draw over of a children's movie from 2016. And it pisses me off that they deleted this because it's not sexual in any way. And uh, Twitch, I'm, I'm disappointed in you. I am 100% disappointed in you for this. It is, is deeply depressing. They have not only deleted it from our channel, they've deleted it over a whole bunch of them that are out there. Many other content creators, many other streamers have lost their dumpy emotes as well. But all of this comes back to a movie. If I go and pull this up. Yeah, if you don't know about this, it's really dumb. Oh, wait. Audio browser's there. Uh, if you want the short on it, I can send that. Let me let me play the short. I'll actually play the clip for it. No, we'll play the short. Screw it. The short's better better edited because our our shorts man is amazing. If you want to know what's going on, Twitch deleted one of our emotes this last year, and chat wants it back because it was our favorite emote on the channel. It was our favorite emote. Okay, apparently Dumpy doesn't pull up. I gotta search for the word dumb. God damn it. Also, I used a pun in the title of the short. It says Twitch dumped our emote, which is deeply hilarious. There we go. There we go. I needed to show this. I think this will play at the right volume. All right, let's Twitch play it here. Uh, it's too quiet. Let me go to a YouTube video and then refresh this one. Actually, better idea. YouTube.com. Watch any video. Pause this audio. Go to this. No, shut up. Stop that. Go to this video. Oh, look, it's my own stream. There we go. Look, I can put it in the normal browser now and I don't have to deal with any of this. Whoop. There we go. Now listen to Last this. Last night, Twitch decided that they wanted to delete our favorite emote on this channel. It's been in use since January 2022. It is an animated ferret butt. There is no butthole on it. There is no anything on it. It is just a blank ass. The only thing that they've told me is that it's disallowed content, imagery of sexual content or nudity. Twitch, if this is sexual content, if your moderation team thinks that this is sexual content, I think that says more about you than it does about me. I'm just saying, it's a little bit weird. Don't get too aroused, Twitch. I know that ferrets turn you on so much. So, they deleted my emote. And I'm mad about it. They deleted my emote, I'm mad about it. And then they deleted the emote for a bunch of other channels as well, and I'm mad about it. Also, there's a massive raid. Absolutely enormous raid. Thank you very much. What is up, dude? What were you streaming? Tell me about it. What were you streaming? Spud Hunter with 1,349 viewers. How's it going? How's it going, dude? Chat is going to go absolutely wild. But yeah, our Twitch community wants that emote back. They're never going to give it back to us. They deleted it. It uh, they deleted it from a ton of different channels. It's ridiculous, but it is what it is. Your voice is like butter on a hot, hot pan. Nice, a hot ass pan. Is it hot ass, or is it ass pan? Where is the hyphen? I need to know. Dark and darker was the game you were streaming. Great game, fantastic, awesome stuff. I am a game developer. So, for all you people who are new, my name is Thor. I've been in the gaming industry for 20 years. I used to work at Blizzard Entertainment, then I worked for Amazon Game Studio, then I worked for the United States Department of Energy. My last job was hacking power plants for the federal government. I also have three black badges from DEF CON, and I quit all of that to go start my own indie studio called Pirate Software. And now I make a game called Heartbound that you can see here. Most of the time that I spend on stream is getting other people involved in the gaming industry, teaching them how to make games, make, encouraging them to go and do this cool shit, and answering questions. So you can ask me whatever you want, anything that you want. And I'll probably answer it if I can see it in chat. Chat goes really fast here. So, thank you for being here and thank you for the raid. Uh, Spud Hunter, je definitely juicy voice. That's what I rated. Saw some of your videos and thoughts and pieces. Good stuff. Thanks, Bud. Thank you very much. I'm going to drop you a follow. You kick ass. Thank you very much. Definitely going to check out your content, man. And we're going to do a shout out for you here, too. Thank you very, very much, man. Oh, wait. I have to wait 58 minutes. Did one of the mods already do it? God damn. Mods are doing their jobs. 
Mods are doing their jobs. Good job, mods. I'm so used to doing it on my own. Can you make me a goth robot girlfriend? No. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Because I'm going to jealously guard them all to myself. Yeah, you can't have them. They're mine now. Thank you, by the way, for that Prime sub. We're going to turn the alerts back on. For animated emote and tier 3 emote punk. I do. Okay, according yeah, to I do. Social Blade, it's accelerating still. Social Blade it is. by tomorrow you will have 261k subs. So the rate of subscription is increasing rapidly and outpacing Social Blade's extrapolation. I think we're going to have 261k uh, subs in the next half hour. Yeah, Twitch over here telling us how to add. Yeah. I think it's special with that ferret back. Yeah. Who made you this way? So somebody actually asked, do you have any advice for someone who's QA engineer? I started in QA when I was at Blizzard. I worked in that for four years. I generally find that QA engineers, more often than not, are underpaid. If you feel that you're underpaid in that position, go and apply at a different business. So if you're if you're in any type of tech position, this actually works for everybody, not just QA. But I find more often QA is underpaid. Go apply somewhere else. Get an offer. Take that offer back to your boss and say, hey, I've received this offer. Can you match it? And then you enter negotiations with your current position. If they cannot match the offer, go to the other place. If they can match the offer, you have the option to stay. I did this quite a lot. I think that QA is critically underpaid in the industry, and I hope that that helps you. Outside of that, if you have a good working condition, you won't have to do this. But this is normal practice inside of the tech industry, and since QA is generally the most critically underpaid in the industry, it's more common for them. I, I find that QA is very valuable. It is important to have QA, and QA absolutely absolutely is critical to the development process. Also, if you're working in QA, fight for being embedded QA. Many companies try to separate QA from the rest of the development team, thinking that there's some going to be like cross bleed and they're going to lose their QA teams. Embedded QA is infinitely more effective than external QA. Infinitely more effective. Having QA sit with the developers is very important shit. It's very important shit. So if you are QA, fight to be embedded. It will make your lives easier, make the devs' lives easier, and you guys will build something better together. And that's how that works. So, hope that helps, man. Under that, Limielicious, a fellow ferret. What is QA quality assurance? Actual Twitch staff has a ferret. Yeah, so a lot of people suddenly are asking what QA is. QA is quality assurance. They're the people that test the games. They um, come up with the test plans. They build automation frameworks, all kinds of different stuff. They are the ones who find the problems with the game. Um, also, you usually get Compat Labs in QA. Those are the guys that determine the minimal specs of a game as well. Yeah. Dumpy. Absolutely insane growth. And no one deserves it more. Super pumped for you and team. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Again, Dev. As a dev, love my QA team. Walk for a Real one right there. Where is the game, Dev? You're goblin, dude. What are test plans? Test plans are a system that you create to say, hey, these are the things that we're going to test. This is how we're going to test it. It gets distributed to a QA team so everybody stays on the same task and you know that everything in the software, whatever it is, is tested appropriately. That checklist is then used to make sure that all of the things that you guys have tested, you haven't missed anything. Important shit. Really important shit. What are badges you got from DEF CON? Would you like to see them? One of them is radioactive. Would you like to see, chat? Hmm? Hmm? I'll be right back. Why, hello. I have returned. So... I compete at DEF CON every year. Well, I have for many, many years. I'm part of a group called the Psychoholics, which is a hacking team. Uh, I used to be on Council of Nine. DEF CON is a hacking convention in Vegas every single year. And it about 30,000 of us descend on Vegas and do stupid shit for about four days. DEF CON is a series of challenges and sharing knowledge and a very fantastic community. DEF CON 23, I won my first black badge. And this is it right here. This is Uranium-238 Dope Pearl, Yellow Cake, and Tritium. On the back, you can see that this is what is called a Lichtenberg figure. That is a put into Plasma Lab. They hit it with plasma. It spreads all throughout the entire acrylic form, makes this cool-looking lightning effect on it. 
And it also has a cipher on the back of that coin there, and that was cracked by Crypto K on Twitter using a running key cipher solver that he wrote. Awesome, cool shit, right? So that was the first black badge I won. The second one, DEFCON 24, this one was also for cryptography, is a robot head, which is cool as shit. The eyeball actually comes out, but it's not powered right now because the, the battery swelled up like a balloon, which is not great. This one also has a cipher on the back, but we've never solved it. Uh, it ends in 1507, so my anticipation is it uses columnar transposition in some way because the Puzzle Master's name is 1057 for that one, and that's quite cool shit. It's really, really good. The next one is from DEFCON 25. This is for telefreaking, which is phone hacking. You can see it's very reflective because it's solid gold. So it's just got the DEFCON logo on it. If you're wondering what a black badge is, it basically means I got the gold at the Hacker Olympics. That's the best way that I can put it in layman's terms. Uh, it gives me lifetime access to DEF CON for free. And when I got my third one, the Department of Energy of the United States gave me a job hacking power plants. Because they went, oh, this is cool. No, you don't need any certs. And that's how that went. So that was my last job, was doing that. And now I own my own game studio, and I do this for a living. And I've been doing this for a living now full-time for about the last six years. So now I'm going to go put these back, because I don't want it on my desk. BRB. All right, so before you turn the alerts back on, outside of this, I also run a website called develop.games, and now that I've said this, the website is going to die. The reason it's going to die is because so many of you guys are going to try and engage with us. So many of you guys are going to hit it, and it's going to blow up, right? It's going to blow up. So, this is develop.games. This is everything I know about making games for the last 20 years of my life. Um, yeah, you're going to denial of services just by trying to use it, right? So, skills required, you don't need any. Uh, pick, how to pick a genre, how to build a team, what tools do you need, the fact that there is no best engine is a big deal. Yeah, Hug of Denial is coming. How to finance all of this, how to market all of this, how to launch your game and where and why, all this kind of stuff. I need, yeah, it's already dead. It's going to be dead instantly. There's so many people in the community now, like I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I averaged about 500 uh, viewers on Twitch and I had zero viewers on YouTube before this, about 12, right, on average, uh, before I started making YouTube shorts. And now that they've allowed us to simulcast and now I can do YouTube shorts, this has happened in the last week. So because, yeah, it's dead. I told you it was going to be dead. I told you it was. Um, I need to upgrade the server tonight. So this has all happened in the last week. The community has grown from 500 average to now we have 3,000 people on Twitch. We have 1,300 people on the YouTube channel. Everything has gone nuclear. So with that in mind, my infrastructure is not set up for this shit. It will be, but it's not yet. <laughs> so if you got in, you can go and do it. If it's broken right now, just hit it later, man. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. It is a simple HTML website. It's very, very lean, and the server will repair itself as it goes forward, and it will it will come back. Yeah, we got to do some auto-scaling shit. What time is it for me? It's about 7.31 a.m. I live in the west coast of the United States. I'm in Washington State. I stream from 1 a.m. PST to about 8 to 10 a.m. PST every day. Yeah, I got 60K subs since yesterday. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, I actually just applied for the, uh, the silver play button because the system didn't think that I had 100K subs yet. Because we went from 13k to 260,000 in four days. What? What? And it didn't know that I had them until like this morning, which is great. Yeah, it's, it's insane. The schedule's crazy. I actually do it because of uh, YouTube or Twitch analytics. Would you like to see why? It's really interesting. Yeah, it's YouTube Shorts did it. So I'm going to play some alerts while I go pull this stuff up. Just so all the new people know, it's Thor's birthday. Happy it is not. Birthday. Don't believe them. The it's not my birthday, God damn it. XOXO. Thank you very much. How dare you. 666. Six, six. One away from seven. S-E-V-E-N. Seven onion severed several scraggly scoops of skeleton. Lest be thy birthday onion. Who made you this? It's not my birthday. No. No. You stop this at once. How dare every one of you. How dare everyone, it's not my birthday. So, why would I start streaming at 1am, chat? Why would I start streaming here, at the very bottom of the trough? Why would I do that? Who knows? Who knows the reason? Who in chat understands the analytics? Geosim's got it. Kingmaker. 
So if we go to this category, we're going to go to Pirate Software Live, which will redirect you to my website or redirect you to this. Um, we go to software and game development, and we go take a look at this. Software and game development is the category they stream in. We got me, Primogen, with his beautiful mustache. We got KDV4, and we've got Relisco, right? So these are the top streams in the category, every single one of these. These are what is called the kingmaker slots, usually the top three or four people in the category. The reason why is when you search a category, you usually will click one of these streams before you click anything else because they're the largest ones in the category. That means the king stays the king. So if you're trying to be found on Twitch, you got to try to be the kingmaker slot. And the way that I do this is I start streaming when there's the least amount of competition. I've been doing this for years. And as a result of this, the outcome has been really, really, really good. And I'll show you what that outcome was. If we can go back. You going to go back? You going to do it? You going to go back? Are your website dead? Hold up. Website's having a time. Okay, there we go. The outcome of this has been really, really fantastic. And what we're seeing here is this. Software and game development, 9.9 .9 new followers per hour. Over 2,395 hours. This is very very good for growth and if you have the opportunity to do it it's going to be helpful for you the thing is is you're not always going to have this opportunity you're not always going to be able to do that you have to find a way to manipulate the systems on these websites to work for you that is the point of it no website is going to push you no website is going to make you famous no website is going to do anything like that for you you have to find the way to do it and that's the whole point can you stop doing it now that it's banned out for you? I could, but I'm not going to. I don't want to. Now I have a time slot, and it works for me. And what I usually do is I shout out as many other people as I can. By the way, go watch Primogen. The man kicks ass. He's beautiful. Do it. Let me see if I can shout him out. It's fantastic. I can't even do it. I have to wait 37 minutes before giving the Primogen another shout out. God damn it. He's wonderful. His stuff is cool as shit. Works for Netflix, by the way. Good shit. So, like, I always try and shout out other people in our category, spread that around, because to be real with you, some of you guys aren't going to like my content. Some of you guys aren't going to like it. And you're going to want to find somebody else. And I, if you can find somebody else in this category that you enjoy, then we're all winning together, and I'm fine with that. And so if you, if you don't like the things that I'm doing, you might like one of them. Check them out. I'm always going to raid people in there. I'm always going to raid other people that I think are cool around Twitch, because I want you to find a place on Twitch where you can watch people that you think kick ass, right? That's the whole idea. So we're going to start in the, the alerts back worlds, up. And I'm waiting, earthling. Rescue just before Earth's demise. Navigate space with a diverse group, including a researcher, a two-headed ex-president, a fellow human survivor, and a perpetually depressed robot. Their cosmic oh, escapades, no. infused with wit, humorously explore the randomness of existence, all while unraveling the enigmatic answer Have you participated in Black Hat? We ran a booth for Blizzard once. That was about it. 42. Defcon's the after party of Black Hat anyway. Happy birthday. Thank you for all the subs, by the way. Science and technology. Don't listen to Thor. He starts streaming at 1 a.m. because he gets sad and lonely. Ever That's not true. Participated in Black Hat? No, I didn't. I've never done Black Hat. I've actually um, we ran a booth for Black Hat once uh, for Blizzard. Oh god, all my stuff just moved. Ran a booth for Black Hat once at Blizzard, and then um, I basically that was the only time I ever went to Black Hat. I just the Defcon's the after party. It's super fun. I'm gonna go read some some donations over here. Randomly found your channel. I love it. Great work. Thank you for the 20 bucks. You kick ass, dude. And here for Cloudflare, or whatever you use. Did you work at Blizzard during End of Cata Start a Mop? I worked at Blizzard from World of Warcraft Vanilla all the way to Overwatch, minus Burning Crusade. My dad worked there for 23 years. You actually know who he is. Which is really funny. <laughs> really funny, actually. Hold up. Hold up. Some of you... Some of you don't know... Who my dad is, and it's going to blow you away. I actually put out a short about this recently. Asmongold amped it, which is pretty funny shit. Uh, we're about to get ads, so I'm going to get all these images ready. When the ads are going, stream will be paused. Don't worry. Ads have started. We've got ads. So we're going to wait. I'm going to turn the music back on. We're going to get through some of these donation alerts in a minute. But I'm going to show you who my dad is. It's going to make you laugh. What sword? I have a sword. It's from the, the WoW movie, actually. Is when I got mine. I can show it to you in a minute. Give me a sec. Bup, bup, bup. Bup, 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 bup. Someone who told you your voice sounds like Markiplier? They call me Hackiplier because I'm a, I'm a hacker and I have been for 20 years and they say I sound like Markiplier. It's very funny shit. It's really funny shit. I've seen so many YouTube comments. Bro, this is Hackiplier. It's, who's they? YouTube comments. I read all the YouTube comments. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. It's such a bad idea. It, the, the comments on the YouTube videos are horrific. But I read them anyway. I read them anyway. 
What sword? There is no sword? I'll show you. It's good shit. So nice of you to pause the stream for ads. Anytime, man. Always. You're a hacker? Yeah. 20 years. Did your dad work on Warcraft 2? Much more than that. I actually had him on stream not too long ago. Because he came to visit. He lives in the UK now. Thank you for the 20 bucks. Very nice of you. Thanks for being a cool human and sharing your knowledge and experience. Here, have some vast love for the entertainment. And, uh, and the mods. I've seen the last of the sun for the year in Washington. I know, dude. It's, it's so dark now. I have to eat vitamin D all the time. Because you just there's no sunlight here. Which is crazy. It's possible to turn off CC. The button underneath the stream. That's actually through Twitch's CC program. I'm using a plugin to feed it over there. Jeff, yeah, you have CC on, it means you turned it on. Hey, Melky, what's up, dude? How's it going? I'm waiting for the ads to be over. Wrench and chat. Oh, no. No, that's fine. Good. Hell yeah. One sec. I'm going to show this picture off. Once the ads are dead, we got two seconds left. Happy birthday. Stop my birthday. Don't you don't you do it. Vincent, thank you very much for that that uh donation over on YouTube. You kick ass dude. You're awesome. So, um if you don't know who my dad is, you do, actually. Uh you see this. It's not my birthday. How dare you? How dare you? Uh this is he who has no life. That's actually my dad. That's not a joke. Um he was the cinematic director for Blizzard Entertainment for twenty three years. He worked on everything going all the way back to rock and roll racing. I'm sure many of you Blizzard fans have seen this image. That's him right there in the center. That's him. So he, I, I actually show you this. So make love, not Warcraft cast. You can go and look up the cast there. And there is a picture of him right here. Let me grab this. Now this one is very funny because they photoshopped his middle finger out. But that's him right there. So he worked with them. They turned him into a character in the show. And you all know him as he who has no life. A guy actually cosplayed him. And people didn't, even, like the cosplayer didn't even know he was real. Which is really funny. And now he quit. He actually quit a number of years ago, back in like 2015, 2014. And he now works at Jagex in Europe. So he lives in Europe. He actually went and, um, and visited from the UK not too long ago. I had him on stream for about six hours and he answered a bunch of people's questions. He's Year Joy here on Twitch. So Y E A R J O Y is what it is. Yeah, he works at Jagex now over on Old School RuneScape. He is a creative services director now, is what he is over at Jagex. So yeah, that's what he does. And, um, I worked at Blizzard after him, so I was the first, second generation employee at Blizzard. I worked there for seven years. I worked on everything from, I was QA all the way to, I, I became the lead of application security for all Blizzard's websites globally. And then um, and I got my cool Battle.net coin during that. It was great. And then I went to uh, IT security. I became the a senior red team specialist. And I do have a sword for my five-year tenure there, which is quite cool. And I worked on everything from World of Warcraft Vanilla all the way to Overwatch minus Burning Crusade. Yeah. So it's, it was a long, it's been a long career. I've been in the gaming industry for about 20 years. Yeah, Year Joy, Y-E-A, so Year, Y-E-A-R, J-O-Y is what it is. I was working on Overwatch 1. I did a bunch of security stuff for Overwatch. They did everything right. They did everything right. You are killing it right now, representing the dev category, homie. Raise this bar. Dude, I, we fought for this category, actually, Melky. So I, uh, I put in the user voice for it originally. I, I wanted this to be a place for Twitch, like for people to stream on Twitch. If I go actually go over to Twitch Tracker, I'll show you why. This is the history of this category, just so you guys can find out. If we go to the games that I've ever streamed on here, we'll pull this up. Let me grab this. And we go down, and we'll look at, like, the last 100 entries. I used to stream under Creative way back in the day. So, way back in the day, Twitch had Creative. It was all of the non-video game things all in one place, right? It was terrible. Awful to be found. Very terrible. And they broke this up into a million different categories, like cooking and, and music and all kinds of shit. And they had one for a brief period of time called Game Development. And then they deleted it like two weeks later. I got to stream it for about 48 hours and then it died. But if you look at this, I got 7.1 followers per hour. And then we had to stream in what was called, um, what was it? Science and technology. And I got three followers per hour. So we have documented evidence that I was more visible in a game development category as a game developer, right? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew that that would be the case? Well, for a long time, we actually streamed in science and technology. I watched a lot of other streamers die there, basically. They they lost their viewership. Nobody could find us. We were in this hole because most of that category was 24-7 animal cams and weed growing streams. And then NASA, also, interestingly enough. So I campaigned for this. I actually put it on user voice. It became the second highest voted thing of all time on user voice. Twitch finally made the category and software and game development was born. And if you look now, 10 followers per hour. 
It's exactly what we said it was going to be. Thank you very much for the five gifted subs. You kick ass, dude. So now what I do is I advocate for the, the um, development community. I try to get people streaming on Twitch. I try to people get, get people doing this. I run game jams. I make video games on Twitch. And I also run a website, which is now going to crash. Now that I've said these words, develop.games, sick domain. Enjoy this. It's going to detonate. If you get in, you get in. It's going down, right? Once it caches, you're good, though. So if you go pull this up, it's um, skills required. You don't need anything. How to pick a genre for building your game. How to build a team when you're building your game. The tools involved. The financing involved. Marketing. How to launch your game. All of that. You're probably going to hear me at the bottom because I have my own stream down here. So just mute that shit, right? I've got it embedded in there. There's no ads. There's no paywall. None of this. I've also got a section for game jams. So I run two game jams a year. They usually have a, like a, about 100 submissions, but I'm pretty sure they're going to get a bit bigger now. Just a little bit. And um, with that in mind, I, I run those two a year. They're free to enter. The first half of that is the first, um, two, like the first week of the two weeks, you build a game design document. And what this is, is it's your entire description of everything you want to do. If you don't know how to make games at all, this is perfect for you. Because what you end up doing is you investigate everything that you need to do, and it's no longer a mystery. There's no more fear with it, right? You don't have to worry about that because you're, it's not an unknown anymore. So you dispel all the mystery, and then you're in your second week, you build a prototype. So you get rid of all the mystery, and you're able to do this. It's very important. Got any advice for product managers? Are we useless? No. A product manager or a producer or a project lead is the healer for the team. You are both the tank and the healer. You visit meetings. You get blockades out of the way. You make those devs able to work. You are the most important thing for a team to run correctly. And if you're in an environment where you cannot fulfill that goal, the environment's the problem, not your position. You, we need you guys to allow the developers to keep kicking ass instead of standing in stand-ups and wasting their time every morning. Hate Just that shit. FYI, we are full up on toast names. If you have toast in your name, change it to something else. I am the paladin of crust, the knight of need, <laughs> the king of crust. I am the holy Well, why you be the goblin? I'm deleting that. Happy birthday, Markiplier. Yeah, I'm not Markiplier, goddammit. The team is via the donate button below stream. If you'd like to pay the Do you narrate your games? No. Pally.gg is how to do it. Pally.gg rocks. So, uh, for all the people who are throwing dollar donations, let me actually link this real fast. I use a system called Pally. No one works for me for free. Ever. Uh, every one of your donations, 40% of it goes to my moderators. Every single time, automatically. I don't even touch the money. It goes directly to them. It doesn't even touch my account. So when you're throwing these donations, these $5 donations and all this kind of stuff, 40% directly to the mods. Shay just dropped something large. <laughs> I find that concerning. I'm going to find out what Shay just did upstairs. But if you're wondering what I work on, this is the game that I generally work on. And it is called Heartbound. You can find it, amazingly, this website won't go down when I show you this. You ready for this? Steam. Let me, let me message Shay real fast and find out if he's died. There we go. Yeah, so it's up on Steam. You can actually go grab this. Steam won't go down. It's the one thing I'll link you today that won't die when I show it to you. Uh, we have our game up on Steam. I, I build this with Shay and Stein. Stein does all the music and sound effects, which all this music is the music that you hear on stream. Shay does all the art and animation in the game. Uh, the game is sitting at 96% positive, but I want to be very clear about this. Do not buy my game. And I'm very serious about this. Play the demo. If you like the demo, you will probably like the game. Play the demo. If you like it, buy the game. Do not buy the game just because you want to support me. Buy the game if you like the game. The demo is there for you to determine if this is a game for you. And I'm very serious about that. I don't want you to buy a game that you end up not liking just because you like the things that I say on stream. Don't do that. Play a game, play the demo, and if you like it, buy it. The other thing is, the way that I structure my business is like this. Of 100% of the profit that comes down from Steam, I take 50% of this. Shay, who is our artist, takes 25% of every sale. Stein, who's our musician, takes 25% of every sale. Of the OST, which you're hearing all the time on stream, that music I was just playing, Stein gets 100% of this. When we do an art book, Shay is going to be getting 100% of the art book. Of my portion, I pay for all the software and the hardware, and I put all of the licenses for those into their names, so they own them completely, whether they're working on my stuff or not. I also pay for all the legal fees. I absorb all of the risk in the beginning, and they never have any of the risk, and they get royalty checks for the rest of their life or as long as the game is selling. 
That's how I run the business. So if you are buying the game, you are supporting not just me, you're supporting the entire development team. So thank you for doing that. Also, the OST is up on here. You can go and grab this. And it is 100 songs. It is three and a half hours of music. It is massive, dude. Absolutely enormous. And one of the things that I put on this, because I'm a streamer, this is what I do. As long as you are not directly re-uploading the music with no other content, you are free to use the songs in this OST in any videos or streams, whether they are monetized or not. So you can put this in the background of your streams, in the background of your YouTube videos. But if you go and upload it all on its own, trying to garner money from I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to DMCA you so fast, your head will spin. Outside of that, we won't even touch you. So you can do that. It always pings up me on, on YouTube stuff, and I, I won't go after you for any reason for that. So let me go see some of these donations. I've been working IT help desk for the past couple of years. I'm now wondering what step I want to take next. I love hardware and networking, but I'm curious if software or security would be better. Thoughts? It depends. What is the most interesting thing for you? Because if you're if you're really looking for money right now, if you're trying to build up a whole bunch of cash, I can understand going for a position that is based around that. But if you're looking for a job that's just more fun and more enjoyable for you, it's going to come down to your personal interests. Try some stuff. If you want to try some security stuff, there's a ton of websites online that you can do this in a legal setting, which is very, very good. HackerOne is a bounty program site. Awesome for going and trying stuff. You can go read about security stuff on OWASP.org. Try things on Try Hack Me or Hack the Box or Hack This Site. Those are great. OverTheWire.org is great for networking pen testing too. Try it before you buy it, right? So go and try that security stuff. And if you're interested in it, if you find that it's very appealing to you, you like solving the puzzle, maybe you should go in that direction, right? So that might help you. Um, friendly Fire, man, you're, you have a great story. I just discovered your channel a couple of days ago. You were talking about bots and exploits, so I got curious. You'll know everything that happened back then. Oh, if you're talking about bots and exploits stuff, I can tell you anything about that. I can talk about it for miles, dude. I've been there in Blizzard since the very beginning. When I worked security there, I was actually going and finding a bunch of different methods. I worked with Norm, who who is actually all of Warden. It's one man. And uh, I would form detections and stuff for them. I was part of the team that formed detections so that Norm could go and ban a lot of people. In my time at Blizzard, I actually banned over 2 million accounts, which is quite funny, including my own guild leader twice. But maybe he shouldn't have been cheating, so. <laughs> Good shit. Uh, does the sales department for a game company interface with development at all? Not usually. What relationship is there, if any? Depends on the uh, the different teams, but usually those two don't interact outside of management interacting with them to set up goals and standards. I find a lot of the times monetization of games has gotten in the way of making good games because monetization of games can be so corruptive in terms of what types of game features are available and if those game features are locked behind paywalls. It's ended up being a very bad situation with mark microtransactions and it leads to kind of a devolvement like devolving gameplay mechanics, moving much towards uh, you have to buy this to get the cool thing. And I don't like that. I find it to be pretty dog shit as a game player. I don't like microtransactions most of the time. If it's cosmetics, I can kind of let it have a pass as long as the rest of the game also has co cosmetics that are comparable in terms of um, kind of like effort and look and style so that if I go and do really cool achievements, I get something unique that I can show off to people and be like, aha, I did the thing rather than just having to buy it with dollars, right? I don't like that. I've been working from home today and my job, is pretty boring. So thank you for making my day less boring. Thank you very much. You're awesome, dude. Just here to donate to a king. You kick ass. I'm going to turn the alerts back on. We're going to get back to it. I tried to find Mod Year. Hard for me to read everything. No info on him, Sanch. Also seeing Fat Thor, you looked exactly like your dad, Omega Lal. Morning from a fellow VFX nerd just north of you in Vancouver at Industrial Light and Magic. Love your content, glad I came across it. Shay Thank you very much. Actually, while he was inside it, Shay broke the oldies ferret cage, Omega Lal. I'm so glad that Wait, all what? these people found you. We need more of you in the world. Hold up. I'm going to be right back. I need to go make sure that Shay is okay. I run a, for those who don't know, I run a ferret rescue. I'm going to pause this real fast. So for those who don't know, I actually run a ferret rescue in Washington State. I have a secondary channel, which is ferrets.live. It'll take you to ferret software, which is this right here. You will always be able to see the ferrets. It looks like the camera's up close right now because Shay is in there. Um, I rescue ferrets from around Washington State, and we, we take care of them. We bring them back from the brink because a lot of ferrets are up for euthanization because people can't take care of them or those like because they're very sick or anything like that. We save all of them. That's what we do. The money for this does not require donations or subs or bits or any of that stuff. It all comes from advertisements. Absolutely everything. So if you are wanting to donate to this, you don't need to. Just watch the stream. 
it is fully funded by ads on Twitch, which is absolutely outrageous and really awesome. The $300,000 donation goal on the stream is kind of a meme. What I'm doing is I'm saving up all the money that comes from that, that is not going to the moderators, and I'm going to build a better facility so we can do up to 100 ferrets because we can only do about 20 right now. So that's what that is. So I'm going to be right back. Um, I need to go find out if Shay's okay because it was a large bang and I need to know what's going on. So give me just a minute, guys. Give me just a minute. I'm going to play the music and we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Hold up. So I walked upstairs, and Shay is using a vacuum on the floor. And I said, what happened? And I quote, he said, my ass was too fat. I knocked the water bottle off the cage, and it shattered. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's okay. But Shay's ass is too fat is what I learned. This is deeply hilarious to me, dude. Holy shit. I'm going to start the alerts back up, man. Oh my god. Thank you for that donation over on YouTube side. Let me see what you got. Keep up the great work. Love the game, by the way. Thank you very much. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do. Why was Drainer so undercooked? Drainer was not actually undercooked. The problem with it is it was stretched too thin. They tried to do so much shit in Draenor. So many different things. They moved in so many different directions. And because of that, a lot of those systems ended up being shallow. A lot of disparate systems shallow. That was the problem with it. It was all kinds of different. And they didn't have really good buckets for building those types of things at the time. And that was the issue. They tried so many things with it. They should have tried less things and done them better, frankly, is how I felt about it at the time. Thank you for the, the $2, by the way. It's very nice of you. Yeah, why does an ocean deep as a puzzle? Or a puddle. Yeah, that's what it was. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Do you still play seven. any Blizzard games? I picked up uh, Dragonflight recently, actually. You're a seven. Yeah, I actually Hi, picked up Dragonflight. Are you Twitch stream and perks to the game jam? Also, I'd love to see you cover common game engine network frameworks from a security standpoint. I feel like security in game dev is the last thought. I find that true a lot, actually. Maybe I could do that. I think it might be fun to do. Uh, the game jam, the winner gets three things. You get $100 because the exact cost of a Steam upload is 100 bucks. You get a laurel, which a laurel is like an image that you put next to your game saying you won, won a jam or won a, an award, right? It's a pretty cool thing. And on our Discord, you get a title. So you get access to a couple of different things. And uh, I actually know there's a fourth one. And this is the big one. I help you publish your game for free and we don't put our name on it. I tell you everything you need to do to set everything up on Steam. I give you as many hints and tips as I possibly can. And that Discord channel is for Game Jam winners only, and I, I release all that information on there. Everything we've learned from releasing our games and kicking ass and doing everything we do, it is effectively the same as getting a publisher, but for completely free. I'll hook you up with everything that you need to do, all of that stuff, and teach you how to do it yourself. That's part of the Game Jam winning. That's the whole point. Ferrodocalypse will blow up all the ferrets at the bottom of the stream. That's what that is. So, join the Game Jam. Also, you want to get our Discord, it's discord.gg slash pirate software. Now that I've said that, I'm going to have to go over to it and wait for a million people to join it and then turn off the alert that ensues because it's going to. <laughs> yeah. I'd kill have a boss like Pirate. There's only two people that have... Actually, there's nine people that have me as a boss now. No more. What did you say about Dragonflight? So I started playing Dragonflight 
Uh, one of the biggest problems I had with World of Warcraft for a long time is a system called Borrowed Power. Borrowed Power in video games is the idea that you have a system that goes away. So you'll have something in an expansion that it, like, you pour a bunch of effort and resources and time into, and this is like uh, artifact power in World of Warcraft. Artifact power is a very long-standing thing, right? At the end of a six-month period or nine-month period or a patch, artifact power is completely deleted. Your artifact is worthless. It doesn't matter anymore. I hate this shit. It makes me feel like I, all of my time investment is gone, and I know a lot of other players echo the same sentiments. Yeah, we don't talk about artifact power. Bingo. Destiny does it with every DLC, too. I hate it. So Blizzard has actually said that they're changing over to more evergreen systems. An evergreen system is a system that lasts forever. That's the whole idea for it. So evergreen systems are something I find very compelling because this feels very good to me, right? Does that mean you hate seasonal concepts? Absolutely not. Seasonal shit is very cool. I like the idea of having a time-limited thing for engaging in events like that. I don't like having a core system to the progression of my character that then goes away. Core systems going away is borrowed power. Um, time-limited time seasonal events are usually about cosmetics and having fun in the moment. I love a Halloween event. I love a Christmas event. I love an Easter event. Those are fun, right? I enjoy that shit. But a core development system, a core progression system for your character disappearing, borrowed power sucks, right? I don't think tier sets are considered borrow power at all. I think that's totally fine the way that it is because you evolve into different tier sets as you go. Imagine a borrowed power system would be like, let's say this expansion has tier sets and the next expansion doesn't have tier sets. That's an example of a borrowed power system. You fully lose that progression system. It does not exist anymore. That feels like shit to me. What about PoE? I'm guessing you're going to be talking about seasons in a game where the, full, the game fully resets. Totally different circumstance. Seasons are things that you know are coming. You know that that's going to happen, and you don't lose your character. The character just becomes non-seasonal. That's a different system. You still get to play them. You still get to play them exactly as they were. Nothing changes. Awesome character. It's just not a seasonal character. And you have the option to create a seasonal character to go and try and do that. Same with Diablo 4. Same with Path of Exile. So an evergreen system stays forever. A good example of this is talents. Talents are an evergreen system in World of Warcraft. They stay forever. You will always have talents. They may re-evolve them and things like that and change them and modify them, but it is still the same system forever. And I, I like that. One of the things that they said that they're doing with Dragonflight is at the end of Dragonflight, they're keeping dragon flying and rolling it out to the rest of the entire game. My biggest gripe was that Dragonflight had dragon flying only for the Dragonflight environments, which means it would be a borrowed power system. This core progression system that I had to go and progress down a talent tree to make my dragon faster and better and stronger would then go away at the end of the expansion. God, I hate that shit. I hate it. And they said it's going to be evergreen now, and I'm, I'm compelled. So I went and downloaded the game. I actually started playing it, got up to level 70, and I'm going to be doing raids soon. So that's it. Yeah. And I'm really, I'm really excited for that. Evergreen Systems is what I want. Do you work on Overwatch much? Just security side, and they did a fantastic job, frankly. Security side was fantastic for that game. Let's start the alerts back up. Actually, wait a minute. We got some YouTube ones. By the way, Dan Clancy W. He allows us to simulcast now. Love the man. I have three plus years in C++ development experience. Always wanted to get into game development. I'm too tired after work. Any advice how to learn web development? Or where to start if you already know how to code. So if you're trying to do web development, you can actually build a lab right on your desktop. You can make anything that's like index.html. You can build out all your CSS, HTML, everything right there in your desktop and try it. One of the best things you can do is have a test bed that doesn't cost you any money. It's right there on your desk. It's awesome shit. You can do that anytime. So if you want to get into web development, start there. Start making some websites that you think look cool. Show them to some people and that. And then host them on the internet when you feel comfortable with it. Really useful stuff. Really useful. Uh, learning Apache and things like that for web hosting is going to be kind of your bread and butter. If you're already a C++ developer, this is going to be pretty trivial for you. Tons of tutorials online. It's very easy to get into. So I hope that helps you, bud. Let's see. Friendly Fire. Then you banned me too. The one-hit exploit with the priest spell and the gold exploit through the Dark Moon quest, starting with Sparsely Me. I didn't do the crash rollback in MOP, but I helped fix in fixing it. That's funny as shit. One of my favorite exploits I ever found in World of Warcraft there was one that was, uh, we knew that these guys were crashing the servers. They were actually crashing entire battle groups in WoW. And we had to determine what it was. And we, we narrowed it down to being a mount. And it was specifically the mammoth mounts. And what was happening was, one guy would sit here, and then one guy would sit here, and he would jump back and forth between the two spots, while another guy was off the mount, and he would jump back and forth between this spot. And something would go wrong. And when it went wrong... I guess it was trying to put both people into the same chair at the same time in the same game frame, and the entire battle group would go down and not recover. It was insane. So we finally found out what was causing it on the security team. It got fixed, 
Everything got fixed, and we stopped these guys from doing it. It was insane shit, dude. They were going to every single battle group and doing this on all of their characters. And I was like, God damn it. So some of these are insane, dude. Some of the bugs are nuts, and the things that they find is completely crazy. Let's go back over here. Let's see, Buckaroo, you were seriously inspirational. If it didn't work two jobs, I'd start trying to develop something. I did QA for EA back in 2001 on Sims Online and James Bond Nightfire. That's awesome. Former was a literal nightmare. Later was super fun. Dude, every project is going to be different. I worked on StarCraft II Wings of Liberty for two years in, in QA, and it was a freaking nightmare. I worked on Diablo III when we launched it. Freaking nightmare, right? At the same time, I'll give you another one. I worked on War... Wait for this. I worked, I worked on World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King, when we launched it in China. And China does not allow human remains in their media. That entire expansion is about skeletons. I was in QA at the time. I had to find all the skeletons in Ice Crown Citadel. And the rest of Ice Crown. Shit. <laughs> that was a nightmare, dude. I worked some awful jobs. Awful jobs. And then I've worked some really cool ones. I've done some cool shit. So we're going to turn the alerts back on. You mentioned that you were banning people's account for, of course, there's reasons. How did you get the job? Yes. And is it a possible entry level job? It's. So. It wasn't really an entry-level job. I got that job because I knew a lot of people in the company, talked about my security experience. We ended up forming a team which was, um, like, I actually went to the director of Battle.net. Let me, let me explain this from the beginning, actually. I was in QA. I was critically underpaid. Blizzard did not have a security team set up correctly for web security. I went to Ali Vitani, who was the director of Battle.net at the time, and I handed him a 13-page document that I wrote of a job position that should exist at Blizzard, which was the, the application security team. A couple of weeks later... Um, I could have lost my job for that, by the way. It was like breaking ranks and all this shit because it was in QA. Uh, a couple of weeks later, he contacted me and he's like, hey, you need to look at this job. And I was like, but I'm in the, I'm in the middle of the task. I'll so look at it afterwards. Yeah, QA is quality assurance. And he said, no, you really need to look at this job app. And I went to go look at it. And it was my job. So I applied for it. I ended up getting the job. Everybody was cheering and stuff like that. We built the team on, inside of Battle.net. It kicked a lot of ass. Uh, eventually, Battle.net split into two halves. We had web and mobile and core. And the problem with this was, you'd think they'd put the web security team over on web and mobile. No, they put us on court. We got completely hamstrung, couldn't do shit. So I ended up leaving that team and I went to IT security and I was a senior red team specialist. Senior red team specialists get to engage with the company in any way necessary. I get to attack the company as a real world attacker. Some of that was picking locks. Some of it was diving into dumpsters and stealing passwords that way. Some of it was, you know, getting into your office in any way that I could. I do physical access control systems, which is breaking and entering. I do Wi-Fi related vulnerabilities, web related vulnerabilities, and social engineering. Those are the things I'm best at. When I was in that team, I was like, okay, let's go find some bots. And I started working with the risk team that I had a long time working with throughout my time in QA. Um, found a bunch of ways and a bunch of methods to hack stuff and um, a bunch of ways to detect bots and things like that. Did a bunch of reverse engineering in the bots, looked into the assembly for those things, formed those detections, gave them over to Norm, and he put them into, into uh, Warden, and we caught a lot of people. So it ended up being about 2 million accounts in total over my time there. And uh, most, of the, most of those band waves were like pretty good. They were like 60,000 plus people. But the worst one that I ever had was... I tried to form a detection for automatic phishing bots, and I was doing a heuristic detection for it, and it caught like 13 people. And I've, I'd spent like two weeks trying to form this freaking detection, and we put it out, and it caught like 13 dudes. And I was like, God damn it. I was so mad, because I was like, oh, this is going to be so clever. It's going to catch all the automatic phishing bots, and it, it didn't catch shit. Didn't catch shit. Felt real bad, so. It's actually my dream job. <laughs> Good stuff. For Van Hammer, but I have no experience whatsoever. There's actually a good possibility that you and I interacted at Blizzard. I was on the customer support side, but I spent a lot of time banning bots. I averaged about 20 a week. Were you working nice. on WoW yeah, was... during the plague? Yes. No, no. During that, that blood plague, I was not. I left Blizzard in 2004, came back in 2009, so I think that was in the time that I was gone. Fishing is in f fishing, like with a rod in World of Warcraft. Automatic fishing bots. What are your thoughts on using AI to teach yourself programming? Fantastic tool. Wait, we got ads. I'm going to pause everything. We have ads. What's up? I did. What was your joke? Yeah. What was your joke? God damn it. Is he over there? Is that Mocha? You guys want to see Mocha? During the ads? Look at him. Hey, little man. Sleepy. 
Oh, sleepy. Oh, sleepy. Poor little guy. He's so sleepy. He's so sleepy. Yeah. So yeah, Shay's going to work. Shay is an exotic vet assistant. Video of him walking around was awesome. I'll show it off in a second. Oh, she go to Twitter real fast. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Grabbing it. There we go. Ads are almost done. We got 54 seconds left. I wait for ads. Little guy's super cute. Yeah. Super cute. What story behind the ads in progress banner? I don't like ads on live content, but Twitch pays me a lot of money to run ads. So I wait for the entire the entire community to get, you know, over the ads before I move forward. I think it's really important. It also gives me downtime for my voice because I'm basically talking 24-7, right? Why Twitch and not YouTube to live streaming? I'm streaming on both, bud. I'm simulcasting to YouTube right now. YouTube, I have about 1,400 viewers. On Twitch here, I have about 3,200 viewers. You're banning people in Tenerife? I was banning people everywhere. Vitamin D, Ed? Nice. You really respect your viewers? Yeah, I wouldn't be here without you. So somebody actually said on YouTube, you really respect your viewers. I would not be here without you. I want to be very clear about that. I don't exist... Without you, I'm like your weird, shitty Captain Planet that you've summoned into the internet. I exist because of you. Legitimately. So, thank you, because I wouldn't be here doing this if you didn't care, right? That's the point. So, if you're wondering who that ferret was during the ad break, thank you for the dollar. It's very nice of you. Thank you. What percent is Heartbound Complete? I will show you, actually. So, I run a ferret rescue in Washington State. Mocha is the ferret that came to us last. He has what is called DIM. Disseminated idiopathic... or idio Yeah, is it idiopathic? Let me go pull it up. Disseminated idiopathic myofasciitis, I believe. Yeah, disseminated idiopathic myofasciitis. Um, this is a disease, it's an autoimmune disorder where his immune system is attacking his soft tissues, his muscles, and his soft tissues. And it's very bad. It's very rough, my dude. So with that in mind, we started him on chemo recently, which has been found to help ferrets that are in that. It usually takes between three and five, three and six days to have an effect if it's going to have an effect. And I want to show you something. This is him after four days. He couldn't walk before this. He couldn't move. He couldn't even get up to use the bathroom. And now look. He doesn't move very well. But it's early days on this. And he can move now. And I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited for this. Because we work very, very hard to bring these animals back from the brink. And this is, this is great to see. He's got a lot of trouble ahead of him. Dim is a lifelong condition. It doesn't go away. The way that this chemo works is it actually suppressed his bone marrow, which causes his bone marrow to produce less neutrophils. The neutrophils are what are attacking his body. So he's a little bubble boy. He's a little bubble boy. And that's what that is. What is this? What is this, Wolf? What did you send me? Oh, yeah, there's more. There's another one. Hold up. It's very cute. He's such a good little dude. He's trying really hard. And we're going to do everything we can for him. And all that is from your guys' ad revenue, so... Look at him. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Look at him go. He's walking. He's kind of wiggly. His tail's so puffy because he's excited here, by the way. They get puffy when they're excited or they're scared, but he's, he's excited here. He's never walked. He wasn't able to. He could just lay down and kind of breathe shitty, and that was about it. So, we're doing really good. He's kicking ass. So I'm going to turn this back on. You have personal ferret pet? Well, I mean, none of them are going anywhere. They're all mine. I jealously steal all of the ferrets that are injured and have bad problems, and I keep them until the end of their lives. You can't have any of them. They're mine. All of them are mine. So let me pull this up, actually. What's your opinion on Overwatch 2? I think what they've done is very sad. I think it's super depressing. Somebody was actually asking about Heartbound and how much of it is done. I'm going to show you right now. This is my Heartbound completion sheet. This is my total overall completion sheet for the game. Every task that needs to be finished. It's the art, programming, sound, design, and all the languages. We're in English, French, Brazilian, Portuguese, uh, Spanish, Russian, and Japanese. Also, we're going to be expanding into Portugal Portuguese, which is very different from Brazilian Portuguese. This is everything that is finished. 
this right here is what I need to finish before December 24th. Once that is done, then we have the next chapter of the game completely finished. This is the rest of the game that needs to be done right here. Just this. Which is going to go pretty fast. I'm, I'm launching the game fully, hopefully, in 2024. Probably fourth quarter 2024. Also, Brazil is awesome. Arabic is something I want to do, but I'm going to have to build a system to make the language go from right to left. What you'll see right here, if I go and pull up the engine for you, um, I actually drew the entire font for this. And the reason why I built the font in this way is because I wanted it to work for people with dyslexia. This is a monospaced block type font, and you can see it's exactly the same width across all of the different languages that we support. Absolutely everything. So it's everything from Cyrillic, all the French characters, all the Brazilian Portuguese characters, everything. I drew this font. Looking for translators? Not right now. We've got all the ones that we need. So with that in mind, uh, this allows me to do some really cool shit in the client. So check this out. Wait for it. We're going to wait for some dialogue to pop up. Every one of the characters that are displayed out here, this is an object. Every one of them is an object. What it allows me to do is some wild shit. Here we go. See this text, how it's moving? See how it's wiggling like that? Now watch the text that comes up right after this. Wait for it. I can do narrative screws in real time. I can make it so that I can display one thing and then change it to show the difference between what is actually said and what your character perceives. I can make it so they can light on fire. I can make it so they can fly around the room, change colors, anything that I need it to do. So we go and listen to her now, and we talk to her. Let's get to something where she's actually using wiggling text. See how that's shaking like that? Some people that have dyslexia can have a problem with moving text like that. So I put in a feature where you can turn that off in real time at any time. This allows me to control that and give you an option if it's a problem for you. Also, if I go and grab my controller and I actually plug this thing in, it's going to take a minute, one sec. The font is made of sprites, yes. There we go, it's plugged in now. The moment you click this, you can actually change it any time to controller. You don't even need to be in this menu for it. You can change it between this and that, so you can actually change out the different buttons that you want to use, depending on how you want this to be. We can go change that there, so if this wants to be actually over to there you can remap it fully the reason that this is important is people with physical disabilities need to remap their controllers to work with their custom devices it's a very normal thing and it's something you should always do in the industry it is super super important for a very small number of people that very much so need it to play your game these are the things that i've learned while making indie games 100 percent. so do that you got that pixel is still there in the volume bar wait what pixel pixel oh there's a little green pixel in the volume bar. You're totally right. Here, let me let me go fix that. One sec. Sprite settings volume area. Let me grab this. Oh, you're totally right. There it is. Here. All right, I fixed that. Thanks, bud. Thanks for the bug report. Thank you for that. Community's always looking out, dude. You attend any school get a degree for your career. Uh, hacking, development, etc. Are you self-taught? I'm self-taught. I went to college to be an entomologist, an insect scientist, and I dropped out three years in. It's quite funny. I'm, <laughs> Chat's losing its shit. <laughs> what are you mad about, Chat? What's wrong? I fixed the bug. I fixed the bug. It's not a green pixel anymore. It's not a green pixel. Yeah, no, so I went to college to be an entomologist, insect scientist, and I, I ended up dropping out, and I'm a hacker, and then I became a game dev. And if that didn't work, I was going to open a bakery, as funny as that is. What language do you program in for GameMaker? It's GameMaker language, very similar to C-sharp or Java, syntactically. Um, it's quite good, object-oriented language. The only thing I would say is that global center are quite good. You actually use 20% less CPU power than accessing the memory of another object. So do keep that in mind. It's, it's quite a bit different. You good at baking? Oh yeah, dude. I cook every day and I bake tons of stuff. I don't even buy bread in the store anymore. I just do it for myself. I've been doing that for like 10 years. Love that shit. I also cultivate my own yeast, so I do it from wild type yeast sources. Um, I'll actually take flour, uh, usually wheat flour and white flour together, and then cultivate a yeast out of it, use it for a couple of months, and then change it out because I want to have a different one, right? Sony baked goods? Nah. I'm going to start the uh, the uh, alerts back up. Thing pets another smaller hairy thing. Favorite sandwich. Why you like this? Reuben. 100% Reuben. Why you like this? 3,000 goblins for my war room scrum meeting to help resolve the MYSQL database discrepancies. They can all wish you a happy 77th birthday. No, no it's not my 77th birthday. I'm 36. 
No. I'm glad he's having no. a good happy walk. No. God damn it. Why are you like this? The pixel. Why are you the like pixel. this? What about the pixel? What about it? I fixed it. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Oh, I just sevened your shorts. Did not move them before as I spend most of my time here on stream. You said thanks for the Aldrothim for the insane reach, but there is something more important Thor. Your stream is high value, and the shorts are snippets of the high value, quality content with good marketing. It's a one plus one man, keep on nerding. First off, thank you very, very much. That's really nice to, to hear. Um, I feel like all of this has resonated with people quite a lot, uh, as you can see. Uh, if you didn't know this, I had 13,000 subs on YouTube about a week ago. I was talking to our editors, and I was hoping that we could reach 15,000 subs by the end of the year. I I think we've reached it. <laughs> uh, I started producing YouTube shorts with that. Uh, yeah, it's about a week. It's been about a week. Uh, Shadelock is our, our editor for shorts. Steets is our editor for long-form video. Uh, this is going to make quite a bit of money. What I'm going to be doing with all this money is I'm putting it towards, as I said, that ferret rescue that I am running. I'm trying to build a facility so we can have up to 100 ferrets. Basically, if you if you see Alvius Sanctuary here on Twitch, Alvius is doing the same thing for a lot of different animals. I'm doing this specifically for ferrets, and it's something that I, I think is very important to me, and it's what I do on the side. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy the adventure now that you're here, and y you mean more to me than you could possibly imagine. This is absolutely phenomenal. You're amazing. Never thought I'd be here today. So thank you very much. I went from 500 average viewers on Twitch, which is already quite a lot, and I always felt I already felt like pretty amazing about it, to now 3,000 people on Twitch, and at the same time another 1,452 on YouTube. You guys are absolutely incredible. So thank you. Thank you very much. Also, seven onions on your bloodline for reminding me of that darn pixel. You don't. What language should I learn if I want to make games? None. Let me show you something. This website is going to go down. It's going to go down instantly. It's developed at games. It's my website. I don't have the infrastructure to show all these people. But what I'm going to show you, grab that URL, save it, until I'm not streaming. Because it'll work when I'm off stream. Thank you for the $10. Thank you very much. And thank you for that hype chat for a buck. You are, you're awesome, dude. Uh, what you should do is first pick a genre of game. Go to the picking a genre section. From there... You say building a team, if you want to build a team, right? You bookmarked it, perfect. The tools involved, you pick the engine next. So you say, kind of game, the engine, and then what languages are supported by that engine. Never pick the language first. It is game, engine, language. And that's it. Yeah, it's never going to load. It's never going to load. I'm going to be upgrading the server probably tonight. It's super gone, dude. It, this is meant for like maybe 20 people browsing it at a time. It, I did not expect this. Also, my host is going to be pissed, which would be deeply hilarious to me. Yeah, I'm going to be migrating the... I'm going to try and migrate the website off into its own thing because it's bringing down our entire infrastructure at the same time. It's quite funny. I have a bunch of websites hosted on the same box using VMs. It's not great. It's not great. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be fixing it tonight. And I'm going to be upgrading the shit out of the website so we can we can deal with the load. But yeah, so like, don't don't choose the language first. It's, st it's, it's static HTML, yeah. It's actually HTML and CSS. It's just using CSS Grid to make this little fancy, like, woo, and that's it. That's all it is. So you can cache the whole thing. Granny Cream's hot butter ice cream. We take the hot butter, mix it with the ice cream, freeze it up cool. You can see it on your screen, oh. put it in your microwave, make it real oh. hot like a soup or a dip. We call it heat. Ends up very tasty and healthy too, Granny. Cream's hot butter Why ice cream. Why you like cream. this? I love that I game. Hypnospace Outlaw was beginning. sick, dude. Your stream gets me through my day and keeps me motivated for my own passions. Thank you That's for very encouraging nice of you. everyone to pursue their dreams. You should. You should. As long as you can pay the bills. As long as you have your bills paid. As long as you have that day job. Fund your passions. Have a hobby. Learn things. Even if you, even if what you learn is that you don't like doing that thing, you've bettered your life. And you get to move forward and do awesome, cool shit. And it'll open up doors for you where maybe you could be doing this, right? Maybe you could be doing the thing that... Like, I started this as a passion project. Let me let me explain this really fast. A number of years ago, I started making a video game while I worked at Blizzard. I wanted to go and make something really cool, right? And we, we had trials and tribulations and all this kind of stuff. And I funded it using my day job money. As time went on, I went on to Amazon Game Studios. Then eventually went to the United States Department of Energy, right? 
I took all of my my side money, anything that I made off of it, and I funded it into the team so I can make something really, really cool. Then my team fell apart at the DOE. I ended up leaving because they wanted to up my amount of time per year flying around the country from 10 weeks a year to 30 weeks a year. And I just didn't want to be not at home for more than half the year. I was going to take two weeks and figure out what I wanted to do. The game was getting more and more popular while I was going on. And two days into that two weeks, Jack Septicai played my game to two and a half million people. And I've been doing this ever since. So to be honest with you, if you want to thank me for all the things that I've done on the internet, don't. Thank Jack Septicai because I wouldn't be here if he didn't do that. 100%. I exist on the internet because Jack Septicai played our game. And that's a big goddamn deal. He played Heartbound. I'm going to show this up right here. He put us on the map, dude. 100%. He put us on the map. We're sitting at 96% positive with our game. This completely ignited my streaming career because I started streaming development of the game. And it, it has been, everything has evolved out of that. I blame him entirely. <laughs> so, it's a very good dude. He's very nice, too. Now is the best time. We have a scam drain, so quick chat. Why you like this? Any primers in chat? Any prime subs? Happy birthday! Do you have any? For today you are seventy-seven. It's not my birthday. Hey, no, I'm not. Game engine. Would you recommend for someone who understands coding enough to pick up a language fast, but just wants to know what engine I should use? I wanted to make a choose your own adventure that has Civilization Five like elements in the late game as you grow as a ruler. So. I'm going to be real with you, that sounds deeply complex. I will always advise you to make something very simple first. An arcade game. Like, I'll give you an example. We made a game called Champions of Breakfast, which I'll show you here. And I'm going to cut the music for emphasis here, because this is important. We had never made a game before. Outside of AAA, we'd never made a game before. This was our first game. And it looks silly, because it is. The idea internally was, let's make asteroids with a toaster. That was the joke. We made a shit post for a game, right? If you look at this background, this is actually the floor from Heartbound. It's Laura's rug, and it's actually Baron, which is one of the characters, right? Yeah, it's out of AAA. The thing is, is when I was in AAA, I wasn't part of the development process. I was security, man. I wasn't building that shit. So this was the first time I really got to express myself in a creative way to really build something from ground up, right? I worked in Game Maker Studio, which I'd never used Game Maker Studio before. Yeah, there's no there's no sound on it right now. Let me go switch over to the, uh, the web browser so you can hear the sound. Because I love the music in this game. I love it. Yeah. Sick. So we had never made a game before. I had never worked in Game Maker Studio. I had never made game assets for a game. I had never programmed in GML, which is the language that's used for it. It's object-oriented programming language. Pretty easy shit. Learned it pretty fast. Shay, our artist, had never made any assets for a video game before. Never done pixel art before. Our musician had never made sound effects for a game and had only made music outside of game development. Never made it for a game. We did all of the sounds as Foley sounds, which are physical objects that we recorded, right? With all of this shit going on. From concept to release, from I want to make a game to my game is on Steam, was 24 days while I had a day job. We had a working prototype in six hours. The only thing stopping you from making something like this is wanting to make something massive and impressive and showing everyone off. This game didn't succeed. Be very clear, it didn't succeed financially at all. We tried a shitload of stuff, but you know what I got? Everything I needed to succeed for the next game. I learned how to make a Discord. I learned how to launch a game on Steam. I learned how to update a game on Steam. I learned that Steam trading cards, whenever somebody trades them from one person to another, I get the community market fee as the developer. I learned about Steam alerts. I learned about the fact that if you make your game 20% off on Steam, it will send an email to every one of your wish lists. I learned how to do a Steam sale. I learned how to put my game out on itch.io. I learned how to put it on Game Jolt. I learned how to run achievements. We have 160 achievements. I learned how to put the game in controller support and why that is important for people with physical disabilities. I learned all of this shit from our failed game. And then I went on to make Heartbound. After learning all of that, with all of that in my tool belt, that was the point. Make a small game. And don't even take my word for it on this. Let me show you another person that did exactly that. To much more extreme degree, no less. Let's go grab this. Scrolling. Give me a sec. There's so much to scroll. God damn it. God damn it. Stop doing it. I didn't hit middle mouse button. No. All right. There we go. One sec. I want to show you this list of freaking games. Look at this shit. 
Look at this shit. Look how many games this is. Look at this. Look at all these games. And then we're going to stop here in 2014. Why? Because there's a game you need to see here called Fart Hotel. Goddamn Fart Hotel. This game, all it is, is a grid of nine people. And you have to select which one farted. That's the game. That's the game. And they're, and if you get it wrong, they all laugh at you. Like they're in a fart cabal. That's right. And they, they're all in on it and they farted and they're like, haha, he smelled it, but he doesn't know which one of us did it. And we're all smelling it too. Ridiculous ass game. It's a phone game and, and just absurd. It's absurd. The guy who made Fart Hotel is Scott Cawthon in the same year that he released Five Nights at Freddy's. He made Five Nights at Freddy's because one of his fans said, your games are creepy. Your characters look creepy. They look like animatronics. And he said, I'm going to make a game about creepy animatronics. Legitimately. He said this in interviews. You want to go make games? Go make Fart Hotel. Stop worrying about making the massive video game that you've always wanted to make. Make Fart Hotel. Learn some shit. Listen to your players. Then go make something that everybody can see. That's Scott Cawthon. Yeah, it is. This is actually his Wikipedia article. And you can go pull it up yourself. No shit. 100%. These are all the games that he worked on throughout his career for 20 years. Since 2000, what, four? No, since 1994. My God, it's been 30 years. I keep thinking that 2004 is 20 years ago. I, or I keep thinking 1994 is 20 years ago. 2004 actually is 20 years ago. Jesus Christ. It's terrifying. I, th I keep thinking it's 2014. Pandemic does some weird shit to time. Does some weird shit to time. Start this back up. I was wondering what your thoughts are about using GMS2 to learn basic game dev even if my end goal is a mix of 2D and 3D projects. Is it yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. to stick with an engine that's limited to 2D or is it good for learning the process? Sorry if you it's good for learning the process. time I'm at work so I can't hear everything. Yeah, so it's good for learning the process, but that being said, if you want to make a 2.5D game, use an engine that supports 2.5D. I would use something like Godot, Unreal, stuff like that. And if you're wondering, like, why would I say Unreal? Because a lot of people are going to see that as a 3D engine. Let me show you something, because I have this cache, so I can keep opening it. If we come down here to Engines, you may not realize this. Let me pull this up. We're going to look at Tools, Engines. Unreal Engine, amazingly, was used to make Octopath Traveler. Look at this game. Look at this. They use this engine probably for the lighting and particle systems. It is a 2.5D adventure, and it's made in Unreal. And it's one of the most beautiful games that I have seen in a long time. Octopath is cool shit, and it's made in Unreal. So if you're really looking for an engine that can do that, we have documented evidence now that Unreal can do this quite well. It is a very dense game. It is. So think about that. When you're choosing an engine, Make sure that it supports the kind of game that you make and look for other games that exist out there that are kind of like the game that you want to make and find out what engine they're made in and find out why they would do it, right? Pretty cool shit, actually. Yeah, Octopath is super cool, dude. Awesome stuff. Your Let's website back works on the way back machine. Turns out you can go back to when you weren't famous. Thoughts it's true. We have a love-hate relationship. I love your content and hate you probably banned me for botting in WoW. You mentioned Direct. clicking before. Look, I, wait, I'm going to be honest with you. If I banned you in WoW, I didn't just ban you in WoW. I used to go on Owncore afterwards. The rest of the entire team used to go on Owncore afterwards. We would go read through the forums on Owncore and the WoW forums, and we'd see everybody that was crying, but I only, I didn't even cheat. I didn't even cheat once. Oh, Blizzard unrightfully banned me. Burr, burr. And we would print those out, and I'd put them next to my desk, and we'd have a pizza party every time we did a massive band wave. I'd order a pizza, and I'd drink your goddamn tears every time. Every time. I don't give a shit. Don't cheat at video games. Get wrecked. Don't, just get wrecked. That's it. If you're cheating in a multiplayer game, I'm going to laugh my ass off at you. And I wanted to know what are some recommendations for budget cooking? Money is tight right now. If you're looking for budget cooking, get an Instant Pot. Instant Pot is cool as shit, dude. Instant Pot is amazing. You will save so much goddamn money, and it's so easy. You don't have to be a chef. You just get an Instant Pot, get a whole bunch of different recipes for Instant Pots. They're awesome. They're really, really good. You get them on Amazon for like 50, 60 bucks. It seems like a lot of investment in the beginning, but like to be real with you, it's great shit. It's really good shit. You save so much money and cook so many different things, and get a recipe book for it. Maybe cost you 10 bucks. I love Instant Pot. I don't see it as a fail. <clears throat> I see champions of breakfast as a good start. Yeah, I have the email I agree. if you want to see it in chat. 
Thor is the guy yeah, from no, 1800 BC who fired the clay tablets that contained the tears of his victims into permanent writing. <laughs> it's true. How do I exit Heartbound? Uh, you can go into the menu and change it to windowed mode and close it if you have it in full screen or alt it for it. On one hand, also it's like Vim. Cool of an encabulator you are. On the other hand, I fucking despise Zool Trailord. He can get wrecked. <laughs> get wrecked. Well, I don't like Unity. So the reason I don't like Unity is this, and this is kind of a very serious topic among the games industry right now. Uh, thank you for the rating party of 22, Windy Beard. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Another developer here streams in this category. Definitely follow Windy Beard. So with this in mind, Unity made a very idiotic mistake. They tried to move to a model that is known as cost per install. Cost per install is the stupidest thing you could possibly do in the games industry. The reason why is because they were trying to get developers to track this themselves. Not only is that ridiculous, it's rife with abuse opportunities, but also it's against GDPR. I can't track our players in Europe. That's against the law there. So this shit doesn't work even out the gate. But secondly, they wanted us to pay 20 cents per install of the game. Now imagine this, right? First thing I thought of. Let's say that you are a rival developer making a video game. And we're both making mobile games, right? And you have the same kind of game. And I've made kind of a clone of yours. But I find out yours is made in Unity. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up three different servers, maybe a bunch of different servers. I'm going to have random, them randomize their hardware IDs every time they do this. And I'm going to install your game tens of thousands of times per minute. I'm going to rack up a massive amount of fees and cripple your business. This is why we don't do cost per install. Unity, what the shit were you thinking? So the entire internet lit on fire, yelling at them about how stupid this actually was. They walked it back, and now it's 20 cents per install or 2.5% royalty fee, whichever is smaller. But they're still making you self-report. And this still doesn't make any goddamn sense. So everybody's just going to do the 2.5% revenue share. Now, I still don't trust Unity. And the reason why is because now they have an untested business model. They had an untested, they had a business model before that was losing them so much money that they had to make such drastic changes like this that were completely misguided. And it showed that they have very little understanding of the market in the industry that they're currently working in, which is insane to me. Absolutely outrageous. And now they've created a new business model. We have no idea if it's going to work and give them the amount of money that they need to operate. So as a result of this, I don't trust it. And I don't recommend the engine to people, even though the engine is quite good, I don't recommend it to people purely on the basis that you could get in the middle of a project and they could change the business model again and you'd be screwed. And I don't want that to happen to people, so I don't recommend the engine. If it changes in the future, I'll change my mind, but I actually removed the engine from develop.games as a result of this because it's absurd. This is one of the biggest fails in business that I've ever seen, frankly. And in our industry, it's devastating because I know many people that work in Unity and it's upsetting. It is really, really damaging for our industry and it sucks because Unity is a very common engine. They lost a lot of credibility as well. Absolutely. Greetings, account name, cart below to account action. Suspended until the 10th of May 2018 offense, use of bots or third-party automation software Blizzard Entertainment has suspended this World of Warcraft account after identifying the usage of bots or other cheat software. Was this you? You got caught by Warden. No, it was not. I quit in 2016. You got caught by Warden. Good old Norm, dude. Get wrecked. The way that you got caught is probably really funny. Uh, generally, the way that you form detections for this type of stuff, think of your computer as a box. That box is filled up with programs. This is the programs running in memory. World of Warcraft is going to be one of those boxes, right? Now, World of Warcraft in, its, in and of itself is a box, and let's say that you load in a new asset, like an image. That's loading in a memory, and then when you leave the environment, it unloads out of the memory. When people are talking about memory leaks, what they're actually talking about is loading this up over and over and over again and forgetting the reference point for it. So that means that the box fills up with the same goddamn asset. That's a memory leak. Now, when you're botting, usually that bot is going to be what's called in-process. An in-process bot means that it has to inject its code in assembly into the main main game, right? So it'll pick a spot all the way down here where it doesn't think it's going to get overwritten. Here's the problem, though. The moment you're inside of World of Warcraft's client, that's when I found you. Because you're in my house, standing in my living room, and I could see everything you're doing. So then I grab all of your code which is called a code cave, I turn it into a detection method, we pop that shit into Warden, and you're banned from WoW. Every single one of the bots on the market said it wasn't in process. We never found one that wasn't. All of them are in process. They're lying to you so they can make money by selling it to you. Now, 
From there, what we do is do a band wave every three to six months. The reason why is this would allow us to run the detection method for a super long period of time, catch as many people as we possibly could, and then ban you all at once. But why would we ban you all at once? So that you would go back to the bot creators and cry at them which would give them a shitload of angry customers all at the exact same time, and many of you, because it was within the three to six month period, would then do chargebacks through PayPal, crippling their business. Welcome to game dev. <laughs> Isn't Unity's Start the alerts CEO back up. A guy who monetized FIFA and said Battlefield should have a one dollar fee for reloading. Can yes, the not the smartest move. Like entire escapist staff resigning. Rip zero punctuation BTW. Oof. Yeah, I know it's really rough. Ten dollar donation message. I think it got skipped a few minutes ago. I'm sorry about that. Let me go grab that. Thank you for the ten dollar donation. Remix said I made a game years ago that remains in alpha stage because I'm not sure where to go with it for the graphics or if it's even worth releasing. Could you give it thirty seconds of your time and give me some advice? I will put this up on another monitor, and I will look at this after stream. Thank you very much for sending me that. I know how difficult it can be to get people to give feedback. That being said, do not take my feedback as more valid than anyone else's. I am just another player. Just because I have a lot of experience doesn't mean I'm going to give you better feedback. Give your game to a lot of different people. Give your game to a lot of different people. Compile it out, put it up on Steam, put it up on HIO, show it to the world. It may be in a bad state, but you can talk to them about that. That's okay. And you can learn a lot of stuff from that. One of the things that I like to do is when I have my game in a playable state, I give it to children. Why? Because they will shit on you. They will tell you your game sucks, and they will spit on it, and they, they have no filter. They have no filter or any qualms about being rude because they're not an adult and they don't care about that yet. So give it to a kid, man. And that kid's going to tell you right away if it sucks. And they're going to tell you exactly why it sucks. Kids are savage as shit. I agree. Thank you for the 10 bucks. <sighs> tell the story of the guy was botting while visiting Blizz. I'll tell that in a second, actually. Think of the 100 bits, by the way. Yeah, kids will call you... Kids are no filthy, dude. I'm gonna... Wait, wait. There's an... I'm gonna... I'm gonna tell you right now. And this is... This is a cautionary tale for all you parents out there. I swear to God. Don't ever do this shit. I have run a lot of conventions. A lot of conventions. Where we show off our games. I don't know why parents think, some parents think this is accessible. We'll have like a booth with stuff going on and a parent will walk over and they'll like plant their kid at our booth playing a game and they'll go to leave. And I go, hey, wait a minute. No, you, you can't leave your kid here unattended. And they're like, oh, I'm just going to be gone a minute. I was like, cool, then you can be gone a minute while taking your kid with you. I'm not your daycare center. If that if something happened to that kid, I'm not going to be liable for that bullshit. Don't leave your kid at my goddamn booth. I swear to God, dude. I swear to God, don't do that to indie devs. It's not my goddamn problem. I'm not going to make it my problem. That shit happens all the time, and it's ridiculous, dude. It is insane Your shorts to me. have inspired me to get back into front-end development, so thank you. Also, I heard awesome, dude. everyone Keep it up. is here because of some shorts. When do we get to yes. see your booty shorts? I'll show them to you right now. Here they go. You ready? You ready? So, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, it was, it was more alerts. Let me go. Let me go to more alerts. Shea will steal yeah, don't do it. Pokemon cards. It's true. It's true. It's actually true. If my account ban story makes it into YouTube short, I will gift five more subs. Embarrassed smile. I don't control face. it. I let Love Shadelock do their thing, man. Congrats on the newfound popularity. Thank you very much. Only fans game? Nah, dude. I okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I got a good one. I actually tried to make an Only Fans for April Fools. I tried to make an Only Fans for April Fools Day. And uh they denied me. They wouldn't approve my account. And the reason why, and don't don't tell Twitch this. This is secret. Wait, we got ads. <laughs> we gotta we got ads. I gotta wait. We got ads, I gotta wait. God damn it. God damn it, Twitch. One moment. We got ads. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. They're freaking out. They're freaking out. It's funny as hell. 
Everyone's getting debated. Look at him go. Don't tell what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Twitch staff member that I'm definitely not going to show this in front of. Don't don't worry about it. You'll see after the ads. You'll all see. Yeah, can't, ads cut off at the exact moment I was trying to tell the goddamn story. Is Beans being a bully again? Let me look. Maybe. He likes the bully. He's good at bullying. Oh, no, they're playing, dude. Yeah, they're playing. Ra ra ra. Ra ra ra. Ferrets fight all the time. Ads are almost over. God, Beans is being a go goblin right there, dude. I'm going to go stop Beans. He's being a butthead. One sec. back. Sorry about that. Beans decided to be a butthead. So, let me turn all this stuff back on. There we go. So, <laughs> a couple years back, I tried to make an OnlyFans for April Fool's. And I wanted to do this because I thought it'd be really funny, but they refused to approve my account. And don't, don't show Twitch this. This is, it's, don't let them know, guys. Don't let them know. They'll ban me. And don't, don't let don't let YouTube know either, right? Because we're streaming on both. It's my Tasteful Nudes folder. I was going to put Tasteful Nudes on OnlyFans. And I have, this is all the food that I make. And I love making nudes. I mean, look at that. Look at it. It's beautiful, right? It's, this is a homemade kimchi. This is uh, oyster mushrooms that I actually grow on my mushroom farm. That's bok choy that I grow in my garden. It's all homemade deliciousness, right? This is, this is ham carved off of little ham or moderator, right? So... Just a little ham off a little ham. And uh, they, denied, they denied me. They, they wouldn't approve the account. I wanted to do it, and they wouldn't do it. And it, it actually ruined it ruined my April Fool's. I was so mad about it. It was so dumb, dude. They yeah, don't let Twitch know. They'll ban me, dude. They don't want you to show your nudes on stream. They'll ban He's you. going to say something ridiculous next, like I have normal-sized hands, SMDH my head. BTW I do have normally sized hands, did you reach that and you will respect them. You see the eyed? Or engine you use in life. There are times where I see grass as a there. mesh, or while playing a sports with friends, see the 3D XYZ thing to grab the model, or imagine how you would code something that happened in front of, like a weather change. The way that I feel about that, I can build the bird. And I know that's gonna sound really weird, but I could make that bird. I could make that bird. I could build I could code the bird, dude. And <laughs> For anyone who's a programmer who's been doing this a long time, if you look at a bird, think about how you would code the bird. You can code that bird. Some weird shit. All hail beans. Found you how many verts does that lamppost have? Glad I found you. How many verts does the lamppost have? Three D modelers, you know. Game dev side of things. Beans is still being a dick. 
I will provide the web hosting if you create a only Thor's site. Beans is going to go in hyper time. Hey, He's been a Beans big Beans are dick. doing it again. He's being a poo-poo head. Beans. He ain't been fight. Okay, Robot I'm going to go lock way. Beans in hyper jail. Give me a moment. He's going to super jail, Chet. Give me a sec. Actually, to be honest with you, what time is it? Actually, it's 8.47 a.m., Chet. Chet, it is 8.47 a.m., and Beans is being a butthole. That's right. You know what's happening. It's going to happen. You were waiting on the bot bands? Did you let us run the gold exploit on purpose? Yes. Of course we did. Then we get to catch more people doing it, and it hurts much harder when we catch you, and you have less of an idea of why we caught you. That's no, the you whole point, my longer. dude. Cat and mouse. Cat and mouse. Do ferrets get along I have to go stop beans. I'm going to go stop beans immediately first. Give me just a second. He's being a, he's being a big dick. One sec. I'm going to turn the music back on. God damn it, Beans. Alrighty. I have put Beans in Crimes Prison for being a dickbag. Crimes Prison, this entire cage setup is modular. I've actually put this up here. He has access to water. He's in Crimes Prison. He can't escape Crimes Prison. He's there now. So he'll be there for a while, probably about an hour, till he calms the hell down. He was beaten up on the other ferrets and they didn't want to fight, so he was just being a dick. <sighs> Good old Beans, dude. He does this all the time. He's just a little grumpy old man, right? Beans got banned. It's true. It's true. What is this? What is this? Let me go see. The oh, God, I closed the donation menu. Where did it go? Where did it go? I have all these other things open. Oh, God, it's missing. Hold up. Was Heartbound inspired by Undertale? No, it was actually inspired by uh, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore, and WarioWare for the combat system. Whoop. There we go. Grab that, put it over on this. Let's see your donation real fast. Cyberpunk, No Man's Sky, Fallout 76, etc. We are seeing a trend of broken games being patched into a playable state. Is this intentional or a side effect of the development cycle? 100% side effect of the development cycle. It is games being pushed too soon with not enough support and games getting larger and larger in scope, but smaller and smaller in terms of time for release. I don't care about how long it makes you to, it takes you to make your game. I care that the game is playable and good at release and that you communicate with players along the way and players are like imp helping to improve that development cycle by doing so. A uh, really good example of this is actually Ashes of Creation. They've done a very good job at interacting with their community, listening to feedback, and they're about to go into probably about a year, they said, of alpha in 2024, which is not a normal alpha, like the, the bullshit alphas you see out there. They're going into a real alpha. A real alpha. And that means lots and lots of feedback, lots and lots of changes, and they're going to do a very good job of it. They have so far, and they're kicking ass. And if you want to play with us, I played EVE Online for 15 years. 
At a very high level of play, I was the leader of Strybog Clade, the largest Stregalavian alliance in the game, about 1,200 players. And we're going to play the shit out of it. So that's the secondary Discord that I have specifically for the Ashes of Creation Guild. That one is not partnered. My main one is, which is discord.gg slash pirate software. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be running a massive guild, having a ton of fun, and it's a social sandbox MMO, right? Yeah, so many bullshit alphas. I hate them, dude. Ashes devs are doing exactly the right thing. Exactly the right thing. They're doing a very good job. I finally got to catch a Twitch stream. Cool, dude. What's up? I'm not doing the No Man's Sky rant. I'm having a good day. I don't need to be bad. What? You were the leader of Strybug Clade? I wasn't just the leader of Strybug Clade. I built that bitch. I was the one who formed that while we were fighting against Edencom across all of the galaxy. When we took those 27 stars, I led the charge on that. I was the highest military wing of the entire group. We built a whole ton of Fortizars and a whole bunch of different ones of those stars. And when Pochfin finally came together, we all stood together on the Fortizar, teleported into Pochfin as it happened, and we owned one third of it. At the end of that chain, all of us corporations that went into Pochfin fought amongst ourselves for months, as good Triclavians do. At the end of that, not only was it so buggy as shit, and there were so many different developer actions that were stacked against us, we burned that bitch down. We burned the entire system to the ground. All of us together. And eventually I left the game. I won't be going back, but I had a great time while I was there. And if you go and look on YouTube, you will find dramatic readings of my Eve mails to my entire alliance. It was about 1,200 players in a game that has about 30,000. So not a huge amount. And I had a blast. I had an absolute blast. I was very interested in spy mastery, statecraft, and I was a villain. I was not, not a good guy. I played Eve for 15 years, used to be in Goonswarm, and then went and built that alliance separately afterwards. And we fought with Goonswarm sometimes, and we were friends with them for a while. It was awesome. I think, I don't know what Strybog's up to now. I don't know what they do. But everybody that I left there was in good, good people. They were really good people, to be honest with you. First of all, thanks for now giving I'm gonna go me do motivation it in to do stuff in general. But second, do it. curse you for putting game development back onto my list of things I want to do. I still want to get more into 3D printing and have a project car in my garage. How TF yeah, should I dude. get all that done? What is your opinion? I mean, the, the thing is, is if, if you want to have hobbies, allocate some time for yourself. Allocate some time for yourself. And... Until you start doing that, until you start managing that time, you're not going to be able to do any of these things. So give yourself a little bit. Did you Do you visit the Something Awful forums these days? I haven't visited them in a long time, but I grew up there. I grew up there and a bunch of other places, y Team and d all kinds of shit, man. I grew up in the old internet, before monetization and bullshit everywhere. But now we're here, right? So if you go and look at this, uh, let's see. What do you think of the game development studios using AI-generated content in their game, like textures, models, voices, etc.? AI generation is fine under certain constraints. Most AI generation that's happening now, you have the AI right here. This AI is fed what is called training data. That training data is usually, right now, trained on art assets that are unlicensed. This is where the problem happens. Because you're using an output for commercial use using unlicensed, as, as in the artist makes no money, assets to start this chain. This is unacceptable. As we move forward from the wild west of AI, we are now getting new types of systems where art is brought in in a licensed format where artists get paid. It is then used to make training data to produce stuff out of AI, and then that AI is producing value for other people. This is the correct system. It is okay if that training data has been licensed to be used in a commercial setting. It is not okay if it has not been licensed and it's just lifted off of the internet. AI art generation is totally fine under these constraints. And you have to remember that as long as the artists are making money and the work is available for commercial use, then we're fine. Then we're fine. But it has to be licensed. Has to be licensed. ...on Terrarium or Soaked Mod Loader, which allows players to make mods that completely change the game. P.S. I love Terraria. Can I make a great, actually. suggestion for the ferrets? Buy one of those sure, message ticker things, so people can use channel points to leave a message on the ticker of the cage. Just to get some more interaction with the wiggly ones. So, as much as I love that idea, I know, eventually, as I'm, I'm a denizen of the internet, someone would format a racial slur using symbols and the ferret stream would be banned. 
I'm just going to be real with you. That's that's exactly how that would go. I've been on the internet long enough to know this shit, which is why none of the messages appear on stream unless they're heavily scrubbed. And if somebody does some dumb shit here, I would 100% ban you. That's just how that shit goes. So let's go see another donation message here. I know the internet. I understand who you people are. Some of you are fantastic people. Some of you are garbage. Very few of you are garbage. And that's how that works. There's always one. And I know this because every time I run the game jam, people send me malware. And then I take that malware after we detect it. After I put it on the secondary machine, I go send it to Gurn. You see, I'm a hacker. I have been for the last 20 years. I have three black badges from DEF CON. Gurn is a malware specialist. And he eats that shit for breakfast, dude. Delicious. All of your malware. Delicious. F hashtag feed the Gurn. Agreed. Agreed. So when people send me that stuff, I send it over to him. That's the whole idea. It's quite funny to me. So let's see another donation here. I made my game from scratch in C++ as well. I'm thinking about redoing it in an engine because I realize now, seven years later, how much of a mistake that endeavor was. Also, I've all but forgotten C++ because I've since moved on to the dark side of Python. That's so fine, though. I mean, like, if you're moving on to making stuff in Python and trying to rebuild this stuff, I think that's kind of cool, man. I think that's kind of cool. You made a game from scratch in C++ and now you want to redo it in an engine? Do that. That sounds great. It sounds really good. What do they do with the malware? Well, first they find out what your command and control server is, and then they report that shit. Hey! And they tear your stuff apart so they can learn things. That's what they do. Being a spy in EVE was awesome. Rip that game. I, uh, I, I was a spy master for a long time. Worked with a lot of different people. Did a lot of really cool things. And I remember every one of those interactions quite fondly. Um, I'm very much so hated in the game. Yeah, I was not... I was not a good guy. I'm a villain, dude. That's the point. It's only a mistake if you didn't learn anything along the way. True. Let's go hey, start four. these back up. Discovered you on YouTube yeah. during one of my insomniac nights. Just a question nice. for you. What is your opinion Love of is great. Use that. as a starting point for game dev? RPG Maker isn't just a starting point. If you want to make an RPG, it's absolutely viable to go make games in RPG Maker. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. In fact, let me go pull something up for you. Do 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 do. I've got some buddies of mine that make a uh, very beautiful video game. They make a really, really, really beautiful video game. And some of you nerds in chat are going to know what this is. One Shot. One Shot is freaking amazing, dude. This game is awesome. Um, so the people who make this are my friends. They are uh, Night Margin and Gur. They live locally. We hang out like all the time. They're awesome people. And they made this an RPG maker. It's sitting at overwhelmingly positive with 98% positive reviews at 36,000 reviews. One Shot is incredibly well known. And it's made an RPG maker. So like... There's no such thing as a beginner engine. Make shit. Share it with others. Right? 100%. I'm going to write a game in PHP because all programmers hate PHP devs. One year... That is the most horrible thing I've ever heard in my life. Do it. Year of Do amazing it. content. Thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you very much. It's very, very nice of you. Yeah, one shot on sale for the next hour. Buy it. It's 40% off. I'm going to link this in chat. PHP got better recently. They've been saying that for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, support one shot. They're awesome dudes. Fantastic game. Fantastic game. Let's see what this donation was. Let me go look at that. I applied to an internship at Blizzard and got denied. I have experience working in a Fermilab as well as a local engineering firm. Is there something I can do to increase my odds? I've reached out to the recruiters and written cover letters, but it doesn't feel like I'm getting anywhere. Well, one of the things that I would say, especially from Blizzard hiring, one page cover letter, one page resume. If you're going beyond that, your application is probably being thrown away by automated systems, most generally. One page cover letter, one page resume. On top of that, you need to make sure that your cover letter probably is going to be about one paragraph, and the paragraph is going to be, hello, this is my name. As per my resume, I have these skills. Two sentences so far. I want to thank you for the op- Actually, wait. From there, you say, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for the opportunity. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole deal, man. Your resume just needs to list all of your skills and, and projects that you're working and everything you've done in one page. If it is not catered specifically for that position, you're going to have a rough time. If it is not one page, you're going to have a rough time. Outside of that, if you're not getting a job at Blizzard, apply to other games companies. 
Your life is long. You have a long career ahead of you, right? And if you want to work at Blizzard one day, if you're very set on that, and you can't get the job, work at another games company and then pivot to Blizzard later in your career. I went from Blizzard to Amazon Game Studios. I went from Amazon Game Studios to the United States Department of Energy. You can change jobs. You can change places you work. In fact, it's very common in the games industry. It's very common in the tech industry. So don't worry about it. It's not a reflection of your value. Not a reflection of your value at all. Thoughts on deep learning anti-cheats? Impractical futurist gimmick? Or is it something you'd be revolutionary? It could be very revolutionary, to be honest with you. However, right now, it is not perfected, and it will still lead to false positives. It is something that I'm keeping an eye on because it could be very, very, very good. Now, remember, those types of deep, deep learning anti-cheats are only going to be valuable right now for heuristic detection. Heuristic detection are games or cheats that are not injected in the client, and that's very important. Ones that are injected in the client, we can use other methods and we don't have to sick this kind of a demon on it, right? Even then, when you're using deep learning, you're going to catch, and this is the biggest problem, you catch high-end players. You catch high-end players. When you have a really amazing, like, FPS gamer, when you have an absolute amazing FPS gamer, they are nearly indistinguishable from a bot. It happens all the time. False positives of pro players are also very devastating because many of those pro players in today's age are streaming live. And if you ban one of those people while they're live, your company looks stupid as hell and ends up being a PR nightmare. So you have to review all of the findings. You have to make sure that you're actually catching bots and you need to filter that shit through old people to find out what's going on. It's a big deal. And if you ban one of the pro players, you're definitely rolling that back because it means you caught real people. Part of what we did when I was at Blizzard for all of our band detections is to review all of the findings and make sure, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that what that person did was impossible by a normal player. Not improbable, impossible. It has to be impossible. It cannot be unlikely. It has to be impossible. And if it is not impossible, your detection is shit. And you need to go back to the drawing board 100% of the time. And right now, AI can't do that correctly. Let's see this. Yeah, Hello, I'm new, and I have a question. I want to make an RPG, yeah. but I don't know anything about programming where I start and see. Hello, yes. You would not start and see. I'm going to give you my website, and it's going to go down the moment I show you this, so bookmark it. Develop.games. There it is in chat. Brace for impact. Brace for impact, chat. It's going to die. With that in mind, there is no best engine. There is no best programming language. None of this exists. Go to here. You don't need any skills. None required. You're not starting with C++. You're not starting with any of that. You are starting with what is called a game design document. If you go to the game jam section, you go down to submissions, you will see right here a game design document. This is one from the winners, one of the winners of our game jam. If you go down through this, you will understand exactly how they put this together to determine what they needed to do to make a game. You make a game design document, and after you do this, you can then go make your game. The way that you choose this is first, you pick a genre. So this is going to be the steps for you. It's three steps. Pick a genre, determine the kind of game you want to make. My website is dead. <laughs> None of my links are working. Nah! It stopped caching! Wait, wait, wait. We're good. Huh? Huh? In any case, <laughs> it's dead now. It's dead. Wonderful. So what do you do is you pick a genre first. Let's actually just get out the MS Paint. There we go. You pick a genre. From there, you determine what kind of engine will be able to make the kind of game you want to make, right? So genre of game, then the engine. Then you find out which language works with that in engine. When you find out what language works with the engine, you now know what engine you want to use, what kind of game you want to make, and what language works with that. Never pick the language first. That's like building the roof of the house before you build the foundation. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. As per my last email, I would like to work at Blizzard. I have attached a breast milk sample. I trust your reply will contain an offer. Thank you. Dude, I'm going to be real with you. That is some of the grimmest shit that I ever had to witness in my life. And I'm going to be honest. I left Blizzard because of internal problems like that shit. I left it because the business had a lot of problems, it had a lot of issues, and I got sick of it, and I wanted to go somewhere else where I could get paid more effectively, paid correctly, because I was paid 36% of industry standard at that time in my career, and I got sick of the internal bullshit and the internal drama and the frat house bullshit culture, and I went to Amazon Game Studios. 
I had a much better time. Much better time. And it sucks because there's many, many fine people that work there. There are very awesome people that work at Blizzard. Very passionate, very amazing, and not unhinged weirdos all over the company. They're everywhere there, right? They're everywhere there. And it sucks for them because the company gets a bad rap because of these just absolutely dog shit decisions by these terrible employees. So it sucks, dude. It really sucks. Did you or do you work on New World? No, I own my own studio now. And when I worked at Amazon Game Studios, I worked on Lumberyard Game Engine, which was used to make New World. But at the time, New World was actually a Rust-like game, and it was in very early production. I was based in Irvine, California. Yeah, that's, wh that's where Blizzard was at the time. Well, that's the main quarters of Blizzard. That's where I work. Can you add a burrito into Hestbound as an Easter egg? I could. I could do that. Where do we get the game design document? I'm going to link it in chat, and it's going to detonate the website again. Actually, I'm going to give you a direct link to it because it's going to Google Drive. I wonder if this will blow up my Google Drive somehow. Oh my god, everything is broken. Here you go, chat. This is a game design document. I'm sure that nothing will go wrong linking this to you. There's... How many of you are there right now? Let me go look at this. By the way, all this music is from our game, and I love this new song. There's 1,500 on YouTube. There's 3,300 on Twitch. So, it's going to blow up. It's already a bit broken. I'm not surprised. You heard this tune somewhere? Do you want to know something cool? This song isn't one song. This song is three songs. The way that it works is we have three different tracks playing at the exact same time. One is the baseline track. Plays forever. One of them is one character song that plays when it's their turn. The other one is their character song that plays when it's their turn. Listen to this. You start here. Listen to that. And now listen to this. Totally different instruments, totally different leap motives that are used for those characters throughout the game. And it's part of the combat system that I'm building for the next fight, and it fades in and out between the two different characters, in real time, at all times. Love this song. Yeah, it's really cool. Really, really cool. Stein is a wizard, too. Stein's our musician, just kicks ass. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on over here? Hold up. We got ads in about two minutes, so get ready. Holy shit, dude. Ho! <laughs> oh. Ho! Oh. Does your website show good pro programs to use model? No. I mean, I've got I've got some stuff there. I've got Blender listed, right? For 3D modeling, if that's what you're looking for. I only use Unity, but I don't trust them anymore. Check out games. Uh, check out develop.games, because there's a section under engines that will show you a million different game engines that Thoughts are out there. Thoughts on the security implications of anti-cheat software since it installs at kernel level. An exploit in kernel level anti-cheat anti I hate. Scares me. Thought, yeah, I hate it. I, I hate kernel level attitude. Some web hosting to avoid your website exploding on every stream. Oh no, I've dude. The reason the website is is exploding, um, I have it through a host right now, and I pay twelve dollars a month for it. I'm not. This was not meant for a billion people to look at it. It was meant for like maybe twenty people at a time to look at it. It was not. I'm gonna be real with you, dude. Basically, the website is a straw, and you guys are a fire hose. All right, it was not. We didn't. It wasn't set up for this. The infrastructure will be fixed in the next couple of days. Your web server has sent me in sauce. It says to stop doing that. Thor, have pity on your web server. It's dying for I know. I know. I know. It's so upsetting, actually. Tutorial for Game Maker, and I can't wait to make more things that suck until they eventually suck less. Thank you, Yaha. Damn right. Why Damn don't right, you dude. Want to be friend Oh, wait. If you're making something for Game Maker right now and you've never made anything before, if any of you guys want to go make something, choose any engine. Any engine that you want to use. Go into it. Make a box. And then we have ads. Thanks. Thanks, Twitch. Jeff Bezos entering your minds and stealing your money. We're going to wait. Mind wallet. Mind wallet thefted from. 
We're gonna wait. Every time, dude. Every goddamn time. Yeah, you gotta make a box and then run ads on Twitch. That's... Why does it always happen, dude? Why does it always happen? F in the chat for the Twitch Andes? Oh, no. Poor Twitch. Only the unsubbed get ads. Even then, not everybody gets them. Only US gets ads? No, it's whatever regions are actually available for ads. Twitch delivers them to individuals. I wait, though. I wait until the ends of it. And if you have Turbo, I'm still making money as if you would watch the ads, but you're not watching them. Same thing on YouTube Premium. So thank you guys very much. You guys are amazing. F in the chat, dude. So good. YouTube's YouTube's razzing you. YouTube's razzing you, Twitch. YouTube's razzing you. Because they get skippable ads. They get skippable ads. You don't get them, Twitch. That sucks. That sucks. Has the site built WordPress? No. It's HTML on bare metal, dude. It's HTML sitting on Apache. With CSS grid. WordPress. Ugh. Maintaining shit. Ugh. Ugh. You want to see how I develop it? It's actually going to make you laugh. All right, ads are over. Somebody's asking me how I developed the website. Um, let me just let me just go up here, right? We're gonna find we're gonna find this. I'm gonna change that to the word potato. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna go onto this. I'm gonna hit Control F5, potato. That's how I developed the website. It's literally just done in Notepad plus plus. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I'll give a shit even a little bit. It's just HTML sitting on a Apache box. It's a lamp stack sitting there being a meme. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing. I store all that shit on GitHub anyway. Don't care. Don't care. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Yeah, I'm just using SFTP. Doesn't matter. Lump box, dude. It's there to distribute information and blow up when I show it on stream. That's what it's there for. That's what it does. So, we're going to get back to this. This is the first thing you should do. Hold up. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think my whole brain just came out. You ever just sneeze and feel like you did a like a hard reset and you just went back to factory settings? God damn. Oh, that is rough. So here's what you need to do if you want to start making video games, right? Here's what you need to do. Take any engine that you want to. Any engine. Do a little bit of research to find out what kind of engine is going to support the kind of game you want to make. Go into that engine. Make a box. Look up a tutorial on how to move the box. You are going to set it up so that you can capture keyboard inputs to move the box in a direction. This is called the hello world of game dev. The moment you do this, you have made half of a video game. What does Super Mario do? What is the basis of Super Mario? The MVP. The minimum viable product that is Super Mario. He moves to the right. Jumping isn't even included. He just moves to the goddamn right. That is what you're doing. He moves to the right. Then you add jumping. Then you add a Goomba. Then you add a pit. Then you add lives. Then you add blocks. Then you add coins out of those blocks. You do them one step at a time. You do them one step at a time. But the first thing you need is a box to move. So do that. Do that. And you're already there. That's the whole point with your co-workers anymore. Take a sip of your drink whilst you think of an answer. Beep beep. Your beep beep. I just beep. want to say beep, I'm beeps. very glad I found your YouTube shorts. Game Maker and all of the tutorials available for it is spectacular. In just a few days I've completely revived my programming spark and have most of the functions planned if not implemented already. I'll have a demo by nice. the end of the month, I'm sure. A good no, notifications aren't lagged. I pause them when I'm talking about something, because otherwise the notifications would literally just run shit me over, dude. posts his shit posts using Notepad++. 
A great shit I love shit posting. That shit post on an Apache server. The best shit poster yep. has shit posts that make people develop games. It I want you all to know. I want you all to know this right now. I build this bitch in Notepad++ over SFTP, and I put it right on the website immediately. I don't have any version control doing those updates. I have a GitHub, and I update it maybe once a couple days with that. And you have all been inspired to make video games out of this shit post that I put on the internet, running with just dog shit. The whole thing is, the whole infrastructure is dog shit. The website goes down every time 50 people touch it because I'm running it on a host that makes, charges me $12 a month to do it. And it doesn't even matter. Look at all the good that's come out of this. Look at all the good that's come out of this. And I'm building a Notepad++ and you're mad about it. You're mad. You're mad because it's not Vim or something else. I don't even care. Notepad++ is the best. And I'm going to show it right now. Look at it. There's the code. There's the website right there. It's just HTML and CSS. It's not even fancy. It's not even HTMX. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There's no JavaScript in this. None of it. I just wrote this bitch right like this. All these, I wrote them right in here. I wrote them right in there. Yeah, don't over-engineer it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Get mad. Get mad. If your site is literally Super static funny. and has no sensitive source code, set it up as a GitHub pages site for free. Let GitHub handle the goblins. Your True. five beep beeps. Your five beep beeps, dude, at least. Maybe even six, maybe seven, so then chat will spam sevens. That's right. Can't even afford twelve dollars a month. Well, that's a rough time, man. A lot of people are in a really bad straits in terms of economy right now because of the pandemic. I hope you get through that. I do. It's very, very hard out there. Very, very much so. And I've been in really bad situations. Percent yet? Uh, let me check. Actually, so like to be real with you, um. I've been in bad economic situ set, like situations throughout my life. If you don't have $12 to do something like that for development stuff, you can always build things locally on your machine. You're obviously sitting on some kind of processing thing right now. It could be a phone, could be a, a computer. But I hope that you get through that. It is very rough, and the economy is in a horrible spot. So I understand. And, you know, kick some ass. And don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you can do with what you have, right? So let's go see what the percentages on this are. Let's look. Analytics. Jesus. It is not updated. YouTube is still unable to calculate the power of this stream. The API is also not delivering the right numbers. The numbers on Social Blade, the numbers on my analytics, and the numbers through the API are all completely different. <laughs> it doesn't even... I don't even know what's happening anymore. Thank you, YouTube. You're the best. You made a basic website to get people to develop games. Now you need to make a basic game to get people to develop websites. I have now True. published a new Udemy course on how to move boxes to the right. Only 29.99. 10. Oh my god. So someone said, just curious, how long you've been in pandemic mode? So, um... At the beginning of the pandemic, I got the early access COVID. Not the best, right? Uh, I got it at DreamHack, and I ended up getting sick for over a year. It was uh, it was about nine months of sickness, and then I had about six months of recovery. In total, I lost about a year and a half of work. It was horrific. I could barely walk up my stairs. I would have to take breaks for that. I was on an inhaler for a long time. There was a fungal infection in my lungs afterwards. They had to cure that, and I almost died. It was horrific, dude. So to be real with you, I'm a shut-in now. I have not gone outside effectively in a number of years. The first time I'm going to be leaving my house really heavily and traveling via plane somewhere is I'm going to DEF CON this next year, finally, in August. And that's the first time I have gone to a convention since the beginning of the pandemic. That shit is rough, dude. I almost died and it freaked the shit out of me. It's wild as hell. K positive reviews from Indonesia. Every time Thor recommends one of his websites, it's like that old game. There's a donation, I'm gonna find it. Itself through the tunnel LMFAO. It's true. It is actually true. Okay, I've chosen my engine, genre, and have a simple idea. Now do I learn to code? You don't. What you do is you learn to move a box. And once you've done this, you go, okay, well, how do I do the next step getting towards my vision? How do I get the next step towards my vision, right? Do I smoke? No, not at all. No smoke, I don't even I don't even drink coffee, dude. So I want you to look at this. Game's really pretty now, right? This is kind of the end vision of what I wanted this environment to look like. But I'm going to show you something right here. So you can understand the difference between these things. Let me grab this. Where is my downloads? Screen's going to go black. Don't panic. Don't panic. 
This is what Heartbound looked like originally. This was the very first build. Thank you for the 10 tier 1 subs, you kick ass, dude. This was the first build. Look at him. Look at his horrific little potato head, dude. Make that shit. You want to get towards your game? Build the ugliest version of your game. Build the ugliest version of your... Look at this door. What, what is that transition? What is that? Build the ugliest, most disgusting version of your game. Build it. Look at this. That doesn't even work. What's that even doing? It just teleports you all the way to the top left. It's dog shit. Whole thing's dog shit. So, like, to be completely real with you... Oh, God. There we go. To be real with you, just start working towards it. You are building a house. One brick at a time. One brick at a time. Don't worry about the end result right now. Work towards that end result. You will get there. It may take you a long time. It may take you years of your life, even. I usually say to make something tiny, and when you make something tiny, it is easier to reach that vision to its conclusion so you can learn more. So it makes a small game. Something you can do in a month to three months, right? Not something massive like this. This was not my first game. It's not my first rodeo for this. So, yeah, do it. Do it. Make your ugly-ass potato child video game so you can make your, your beautiful RPG indie darling, right? That's, that's the idea. That's the whole idea. Screen go black for a moment. Thank you for those seven gifted subs, you goblin. That is amazing. You're awesome. Thank you for the prime sub. Seven. Always Glad seven. Not dead. Who wants to Would you consider teaming up with Lamb 8-Bit for a vinyl? I don't even know. You mean, like, music? I don't make the music. I don't make the music. Don't panic. Don't do it. Um, Stein von Waker, a musician, makes the music, and all this the music is for the game. And build a game. The game will be about Thor developing Heartbound and streaming. True. See the high It'll level happen. Has gone up to 10. Anything cool from that and what's the next oh, shit. fancy goal from Twitch? Let me go grab this. Um, Twitch created a new system. And I'm a part of it. They made this thing called the Hype Challenge. This website looks kind of weird. It looks like a, like, a, like a mobile site on here. But I want to show this to you. They didn't need to do this. And I think this is incredibly generous of them. They set up this system. That's what the thing is up above me. Every time you throw bits and subs, it adds experience points. And if we look at this, we just got rank 10, you said. They're giving me a $500 Delta airline voucher. That's the ticket I'm going to use to go to DEF CON. So I don't have to pay for the airline ticket. That's a huge deal to me. That is incredibly nice of you. So thank you very, very much for being a part of that. Now that's level 10. If we go look at this, I'm going to make it bigger. Yeah, it's level 10 now. So that's exactly what I'm going to use that for. I'm going to use that to go see all my, my favorite buddies at DEF CON this year. And that's really, really cool. Uh, also, a custom Bose Quiet Comfort headphone. So that's pretty cool shit. I can't wait to try that out. Front page carousel for three hours. So my web page can go down even more than it already is. Fantastic. Well done. Great. Uh, Rode NT2A, which is a microphone, which I'm interested in that because I've been using... I'm going to be real with you. I like things being the same. Um, I have two pairs of pants. I had one pair of pants for eight years. Chat made me buy a second one. I have been using the same Blue Yeti microphone for five years. I'm kind of afraid of using a different microphone. I don't know what it's going to be like. So I'm going to try it, and I'm interested to see what it is. A Nano Leaf kit, which is a bunch of lighting stuff. This one makes me laugh. A custom glitch ID LED neon light sign. Let's go look at this. So this these are all the things we already got. They have to write pirate software in LEDs. This is going to be long as shit. It's going to be... Imagine if my name was Maximum Character Cap. Maybe I should change my name today to just... Ah, ah. So they have to produce like a 36 character long light. I think it'd be really funny, actually. It'd be, it'd be deeply hilarious. And the last two things it looks like are a Switch OLED 16-bit and TwitchCon North America tickets for two people and a three-night hotel, which is outrageous. So, you guys are here. Thank you for doing that. Twitch doesn't need to do this. Understand that. They don't need to do this. And the fact that they are is very, very cool. They are supporting streamers by doing this with a fun event where they are, frankly, when they do this, they are losing money giving us these types of things because people are giving us money. They're taking a cut of that. But overall, a lot of these communities are going to get cool shit without anything changing for the normal amount of donations and subs that they get. And I think this is a very cool thing for Twitch to do, and it gives back to streamers. So thank you, Twitch, for kicking some ass, putting together a cool little event, giving us this neat little you know, UI above this. And uh, I look forward to you know seeing my gigantic ridiculously long LED name so that I can put it on my wall. You're welcome. Absolutely, dude. I think it's really cool. I can't wait to see you guys do this more. 
legitimately. I really, really like this. I think this is very neat. Very, very neat. So thank you. Uncommon Twitch W. In fact, no, it's it's becoming more common, to be real with you. Um, in the last year, I have gone from being kind of mad at Twitch, because a lot of changes made it hard to be a game developer in here, to being overjoyed with the changes that have been happening. And to be real with you, I can blame much of that on Dan Clancy and a couple other people at Twitch. But I want to call out Dan Clancy for kicking complete ass right now. I'm just, I'm just going to be a little bit of a Twitch shill for a minute, which is uncommon for me. Many of you know me. I bitch a lot. I bitch, and like, to be real, for much of, for much of the last couple of years, uh, my, my stance on most things has just been this. It's just been a lot of this, right? Just in the book of grudges, 100%. 100%. Dan Clancy's kicking ass. He's the CEO of Twitch. And the first, the first idea that I had of him was very... Pretty negative. The first impression I have was pretty negative. Because one of the things that he was talking about was he thought that he, um, he said that he had an understanding of what it's like to be a Twitch streamer because he took high school classes in drama. And everyone didn't like that. That was, that was not great. That was a bad look. So he also agreed that that was a bad look. And what did he do? He started streaming. But he didn't start streaming using all of his handlers. He didn't start streaming like a CEO. They didn't set up a bunch of shit for him. He started streaming on a shitty little camera over Starlink Internet in his home, playing piano and singing. He has about 100 average viewers, and his stream started off very bad, and he didn't know how to talk to people. He didn't know how to interact, and I've been watching him since he started. He's been doing it for months. And he's gotten better over time. He's naturally gotten better. And he's not having the company do it for him. He is getting better. And then after this, he went down the west coast of the United States, started interacting with streamers all along the way. All along the way. Going and having an IRL stream throughout it, going in a van and doing this, meeting up with those streamers, doing IRL streams with those streamers, talking about the platform, learning stuff about the platform, answering questions to people. And then he came back up, all the way back up, and... The first thing that he did when getting back at, at TwitchCon was he allowed us to simulcast on multiple platforms. He unlocked the gates. And you know what? I currently have 3,200 viewers. I averaged 500 viewers on Twitch before this. I currently have on stream on YouTube 1,300 viewers. I got to double down on putting my content elsewhere onto the internet because Dan Clancy learned how to stream. That's a kick-ass CEO, dude. That is a kick-ass CEO. And the process that this is, that we call this, is called dog fooding. It is when a CEO or their C-level executive engages with their product or service in a way where they can change things throughout the company to make the company better. Every CEO should be doing this. Awesome job, Dan Clancy. And if you want to know his stream, we're going to shout it out right now. It's DJ Clancy. And you can go watch it yourself. He actually applied to be a partner recently, and he got denied for it. And I believe he is now a partner, which is quite cool. He didn't tell anyone he was applying. Most of his viewership was from raids. And because of that, he got denied, which was really funny. It was really funny. And now he has the numbers for it, and he was able to get it. So that's cool as shit. Yeah, it's cool as shit. So I just wanted to call that out. Dude doesn't suck. He went from, uh, to like, wow, I actually have a lot of respect to you. It's, it's really good shit. Yeah, he got denied. That's a great thing. That means the system's working, right? Yeah, no, awesome dude. Really awesome dude. A lot of respect for him. Imagine the intern's face when he realized he denied the CEO. You know what? He probably got denied through an automated system. Because what it checks for first is it checks for 75 average viewers, and it makes sure that those viewers aren't primarily from raids. And you know what? He didn't have the numbers. That's it. That's an automated system most of the time. So, good. Means it's working. All right, let's go check this out. Let's see what those donations just were. What language do you recommend for someone looking to get into the back-end development with zero experience? Back-end development, that's interesting. What would be entry-level jobs in back-end development out of college, whether it be the gaming industry or otherwise? So for back-end development, you're generally dealing... Are you d talking about web back-end development? Are you talking about games back-end development? Because a lot of that stuff is going to be... You have to have uh, experience with databases, networking, and being able to cache and access assets effectively. So you're going to want to talk to... You're going to want to go and look at a bunch of jobs that are up there. I think the best thing that you can do, honestly, look at some back-end development jobs that exist at the different companies you want to do, whether it's uh, game development or anything dealing with a games company or dealing with a web development company, and see what skills they require on that resume. Because they will give you requirements on that. Shoot for those requirements. It's the best. It basically gives you a shopping list of what you need to learn, right? It, it apt, absolutely does it. Everyone wants full-stack devs now? They've always wanted full-stack devs. They always have. And to be real with you, I was there when Node.js entered the, the arena. 
I was there when they were like, oh, the front end engineers will be back end engineers now. Everyone wants a full stack dev. No one wants to train them to be full stack. That's it turns into a shit show. It turns into a shit show. Having a specialist that just does back end dev or just does front end dev ends up being amazing. And every business has those. Full stack devs are like the unicorn of the development world, dude. That, like a good full stack dev, they're rare. They're rare. Let's see. I'm a software engineer for a cloud provider, so I'm very comfortable with and probably prefer using code to develop things. Game engines are so UI intense that I feel like I'm unable to leverage my pre-existing skills. Any advice for people that already know how to program at a high level? Yeah, to be honest with you, if you're trying to, you say it's so UI intense, I think that just comes down to familiarity, right? You're talking about UI intensity. It's, it just comes out of familiarity. Spend some time on it. If you're a very skilled engineer, if you've been doing this for a long time, you just have to learn the interface. You just have to learn how to build UI instead of these environments. And like, that's that's going to end up being a, a thing that you have to learn, right? And to be real with you, I don't think that's a bad thing. You'll gain a lot of extra skills in different areas. You'll learn how to use these different tools. And you'll get a lot of good out of it, right? So like, I don't think... I don't think it's something you should be deterred by. I think you should it's something you should learn, frankly. I think it's I think it's a very important thing. Thank you for the five dollars. I hope that helps. I know that's not like the best answer, but I, I think it's in my experience, I think that's the right answer, right? Yeah, visual design is its own skill. It is. If you're talking about creating UI, the best thing I could say is going and looking at other UI. And not every game needs really fancy UI. It doesn't. There's many games with very minimalistic UI, and that's okay tons of arcade games like that. You can do a study on arcade games and see the UI in that, and it's usually very simple. Show a couple of points things, the amount of health that the person has, and you're good to go. If you're talking about the UI and the actual engines themselves, it can be pretty complex, but most most IDE, IDEs are, right? So, I think it'll be okay. I think, I think you should play around with it. I think you should maybe make, if you want to make a game, make a very simplistic UI game, and that's fine, right? You don't need to make a mess of UI. It's not necessary. Most of Heartbound doesn't have any UI. This is the only UI method that I have in the entire game. It's pretty simple stuff. It's basic settings, right? Responsive HTML CSS to responsive game UI was a trip. Yeah. I like to make a game, but I only really know how to write and voice act. What advice would you give me to proceed? Go join some game jams, meet some other people, and form into a team to do that stuff. You are not just your skills alone. You are the entire team of your skills meshed together. And if you want to make a game with those two, two skills, you've got writing and voice acting, right? Writing and voice acting. You can make a narrative adventure that way. You could learn how to make a narrative adventure with voice acting. It'd be really cool to have a text-based adventure that is voice acted. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And it'd be very simple to code, and you can do that. That is accessible to somebody who is very new to programming. A text adventure with voice acting sounds cool as shit, dude. Hype train. Thank you for the 500 bits. That's very nice of you. Let me start these alerts back up. PTS, PTS. Happy birthday. There's two kinds of chatters. Happy birthday. Wait a minute. We get another one in here that I missed. Feeding the mods. Also consume the rich by using your prime sub. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for the $5. I don't enjoy making full games, especially not solo, but I do enjoy designing and or programming specific systems that are a part of my game. Any suggestions on where to go that? If you don't enjoy making full games, that's okay. You don't need to make full games. Make a bunch of game jams, dude. Joining game jams means that you don't have to make full games, right? You don't have to make full games. And you can join teams on those on those game jams. If you don't like doing it solo, you like working in a team, game jams are the way. We've got one coming up in January 12th. You can read about it on develop.games. And once you do that, you'll be able to team up with a team of people, make something that you probably won't finish, learn a bunch of shit, and move on with it, right? If that's really what you're after. That's totally a fine Rain thing to do. Home party, fluffing party, ferret party. Hype train, y'all. Goblin. How did you learn to code? So I learned to program through trial and error. I'm fully self-taught. I went to college to be an entomologist, an insect scientist. I left college, went to like go do my career. I started off in QA, became the lead of application security for Blizzard, then became a senior red team specialist. Then I worked in automate as an automation engineer on AGS, working on uh, the Lumberyard game engine. Then I was a hacker working for the federal government, hacking power plants all around the country. Then I quit, started my own game studio, and now I make video games on the internet. All of this is self-taught. You have access to all of human knowledge on the internet. It is a click away. All you have to do is sit down and do it. I choose not to doom scroll. I choose to learn shit. You can Here do this. Here are some bits to let Twitch know they backed a worthwhile streamer with the hype challenge. Thank you very much. D do you ever work as an entomologist? No. I just have a bunch of bugs now. I actually have a gigantic paludarium next to me with Madagascar hissing cockroaches in it. It eats all the food waste from my house so that way I don't have any. 
And then I collect their waste, and I use it to fertilize my garden. It's the cycle of roaches, is really what it is. Why did you act power plants? It was my job to. The federal government hired me to do this. I worked for the Department of Energy as my last job. They flew me around the country. I act power plants with a team. We found vulnerabilities. We turned them in, and the grid got safer. That was the idea with it. And it worked. It was great. Awesome team. Let's see here. Uh, there was another message in there. How much do you need to know to join Game Jams? Nothing. Nothing at all. That is the intention. Start from zero. Start from zero. Want to trade careers for a day? You run Liebherr LTM 1400, I will dev games. No. I mean, you could do both. Have a hobby, dude. Isn't QA just a digital entomologist anyway? I mean, I went from finding bugs to writing bugs now, but in the middle I was QA, so I was definitely finding bugs. It's all bugs all the way down, dude. The whole career is just bugs. My career is bugs. All of it is bugs. You're 100% right. There's no escape from it. Congratulations! 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 I can see the anime in my head. Congratulations! 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 God damn it. Out it is a weeb, dude. <laughs> oh, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. If you think that congratulations scene is, scene is rough, I'm going to show you something right now. Something hidden inside of my video game, all right? We're going to go to Act 2. We're going to go to Floor 2. We're going to go to the cafe in the tower. And I want all of you to just look at this arrangement of coffee cups sitting on these desks. I just want you to do that for just a moment. For just a moment. I just want you to look at that. For just... For just a moment. Rodrigo, thank you for the $10. First time viewer, subbed after seeing your shorts. Any advice for someone that has been laid off after a couple of months? Uh, was a back-end developer. The first thing is going to be your mental state, man. It is always super terrifying when you get fired. And it will make you feel like you are not worthwhile and that your job was your value. It is not. Firings happen all over the industry. It is not a reflection of your value as an employee or a reflection of your value as a developer. Get back out there. Try to apply at different jobs. And you will find that you are worth just as much as you were before that happened. And that's it. That's it. And I know that that's a rough time. I have seen it. I have watched my friends get fired. I have watched everyone around me get fired in, in layoffs. And it is horrifying. It is absolutely shitty. You are not your job, exactly. You are not your job. So that's the first thing that I would say is get yourself into a sort where you feel good about yourself and everything is okay. And then just keep moving, right? Just keep moving on it. There we go. Congratulations. The cool thing about Game Jams 2 is sometimes the little games turn into yeah. full games. Look at yes, they do. Wasteland Kings slash Nuclear Throne. Speaking Nuclear Throne's loss, amazing, dude. You have all just lost the game. I have just lost the game as well. Thank you for informing me of this. Um, also, my tongue is in my mouth and I can feel it. And I'm manually breathing. And there's one more for that, actually. Uh, there's one more important thing to know here. And that important thing is that The word homeowner is actually home yowner, and you can never unsee it now. It's rough, I know. It is, it is really rough. It is so upsetting that you have this now. Every time you see homeowner, you're going to say home yowner in your head, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you have to do that now. It's such a difficult life for you. It's so rough. I know. I know. I know. It's rough. I know. It's going to be okay. One day you'll be a home yowner too. One day. It's rough. It's rough. We're going to set those back up. Did I mute myself? God damn it. Okay. I heard the most devastating comeback I've ever heard in my life. I totally muted the mic. I'm a dumbass. I heard the most devastating comeback I've ever heard in my life the other day. And I talked about this on stream a while ago. When someone says, okay, boomer, you respond with, okay, renter. And holy shit, is that rough, dude. That is the funniest shit I have ever heard in my life. That is, you. the person just gets annihilated from space, dude. 
they just they're just absolutely deleted. Like, oh my god, that is grim, dude. That is absolutely grim. <laughs> and I couldn't. I was like, oh, oh, oh. But I wanted you to have that because it's it's funny in an awful way. In an awful way. Horrific. Horrific. Why did the ad thing just restart? Why did they just get re-snoozed? Did one of the mods just snooze the ads? What just happened there? What just happened there? No, dude, the economy is shit. The economy is really shit. I wouldn't... There's no way to buy a place right now. 8% on, on loans? That's impossible. I couldn't afford my own house if I tried to do that, right? That's insane. That's insane. There's no reason for it. Yeah, you can snooze five minutes of ads. I think one of the, uh, I think one of the mods did it. Zaff and me didn't do that? Somebody did that. One of the mods did that. So what prizes are you getting from the, our, our challenges? I actually put them up already. Uh, you can go check here one sec. Been in KF for 10 years, trying to transition to design. Going to game jams as a designer feels like I'm being the idea guy, though. Any advice on making this transition? Start making some stuff at home. So this is a big one. I was QA for a long time. Find out if the company that you work for allows you to have a side project. Not every company allows this. In some countries and jurisdictions, it is illegal for them to stop you. So find out what your local laws are. Find out if you're allowed to do a side project and the company doesn't own it. Right? This is a very normal thing to do. When you find out if you can do side projects or not, if you can, then start making one. And this is going to be a, an indie game, right? It could be a very small indie game. So if you're trying not to be the ideas guy, you need some skills behind you. And that requires you to start making stuff as a personal project. You'll find that you're probably very excited about this. Yeah, negotiate the shit out of it. When, uh, for instance, when I went to go work for Amazon Game Studio, when I first applied there, um, there during the interview process, they told me that I asked them if I could keep making things on the side. And they said, no. And I said, okay, then I'm not working for you. And they said, what? And I was like, no, I'm not going to take the job. I have an indie, indie studio. I make games for that indie studio. I'm not letting my players down. And I was going to decline the job. And they said, okay, wait a minute. We'll go talk to some people. We'll get back to you. They talked to some people, got back to me, and they said, okay, you can keep making your games, but you have to rebuild them in Lumberyard. And I said, no, again. I was like, that's some, no, that's some dumb shit. I'm not changing engines in the middle of production. That's not happening. And they said, okay, you can just keep making your indie games. That's fine. Just come work for us. And I said, as long as it's in the contract, we're good to go. They put it in the contract, sign the contract, and we're good. Negotiate that shit. Always negotiate that shit. Always. If you don't ask, you don't get. So always ask. Always. Always, always. The most dangerous canoes are the volume canoes. Homona is a foreign Why word like to this? us millennials and zoomers. It's true. The it's rough. The deep. economy is bullshit, Need dude. much sleep. Yo, what's That's some shady goal? shit. That's how business works. 2,431, 2, yeah. That demand was insane, Meta. It was insane. Force admin slash dev, and I use paint all the time to explain stuff to clients. Love that Good. you use it too, D. So the reason that I use paint to explain stuff, some people are visual learners. The reason why this is important to do is a visual learner will like you to have just a box to explain it and you say this is a concept this is a connected concept this is a separate concept just having that imagery on screen allows some people to more easily understand what you're talking about that's it that's all it is it's a simple extra thing that you can do that helps people learn what you're trying to Tor. talk about Tor. there oh. seems to be a lot of people looking to joy team for the game jam but not oh. enough teams looking for new members is there Make something you could do to facilitate the creation of new teams yeah so what i'm going to do is this let me go over to the discord real fast let me see what we got here we have a section in here called game jam lfg that is a channel specifically for doing this and we have game jam forums go to the game jam forums put in a post saying you're looking for a team if there's a bunch of you guys and you're like, oh, I need a team, right? And there's some teams over here and they're full up. And there's a bunch of people all alone, not in teams. Then form a goddamn team, right? Like, start building teams. So you need to get on there and say, hey, everybody, I'm starting a team with this. More often than not, people don't want to start a team because they're really worried about it. They're really worried about being the leader of the team or anything like that. Just start a team. Get some more people on it. Find out one person that's better at project management than you and move forward, right? It's totally fine. It's totally fine. And if you make a team of one to three, like, you're good to go. If you make a team of ten, you're probably going to have a problem, right? So that's it. That's what it is. So if you want to do this, you want to Discord, discord.gg slash pirate software is what we do. That is where the whole community is. There's about 6,500 people in there. We got ads. Ads. 
Time to wait. That's how I make a raid in WoW. Just offload lead to somebody else. Yeah, totally fine. What's your favorite music genre or band? I love chiptunes, my dude. I have a whole... Actually, I'll show you the one I've been listening to a lot lately. Um, the music from Risk of Rain by Chris Christotulu, which I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. I played that on repeat for like eight hours yesterday. It's a great song. Fantastic. Super useful for doing work, too. Where does the song play in the game? That's the neat part. It doesn't. I added a whole ton of music. We added a ton of music to the OST that is not in the game. So that way there's a reason for you to buy the OST instead of just rip the songs out of the game. There are OST exclusive songs. Bean still in jail? Yeah, I'm going to be going and letting him out in just a minute. He's sleeping. He's sleeping in the hammock. He's just fine. Little grumpy boy. Yeah, no pixelated ferret butts. Twitch will ban them. It'll be bad. What's your favorite game? Super Nintendo uh, Secret of Mana. That's what it is. Near or farsighted? Very nearsighted. Very nearsighted. Is it worth becoming a game hacker? Is there a lot of money to be made? If you're going into that trying to look for money instead of going into that trying to solve puzzles, you're going to have a really rough time being a hacker in the first place. We're driven by solving the puzzle. We're driven by finding a solution every single time. And if you are going into it being like, I just want to make money, there's a lot of jobs you can make money. Not a lot of them are as demanding as being a hacker. All right, ads are over. Well, chat, now that the ads are over, I have bad news. I have been streaming now for about nine hours, which is about the time that I need to stop, and I need to go take care of the ferrets. So, in any case, in any case, I need to go find someone to raid. So what I'm going to do, let me go pull this up. I'm going to look through my buddies who are online first. Are any of them online? Are any of these goblins actually online while I'm streaming? None of them. What are you doing? What are you doing? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go look. Let's go look in software and game development. We've got a couple of people. Got a couple of people in there. A couple of people over here. Very good. Very good. Okay, we're going to go back over here. Who's it going to be? Oh, you know what? I have someone that I haven't rated with you guys. She's amazing. She's really goddamn cool. And she is 100% not expecting this. This is going to... She's got about 100 viewers right now. She's an artist that does 3D modeling. And she's really, really good at it. Really good at it. We're going to raid Ratlord. We're going to raid Ratlord. Ratlord's cool as shit. She's absolutely amazing. Super awesome human being. And this is going to terrify the shit out of her. So, with that in mind, the raid is going to be Yar Rabbit. Show us your work. Yar Rabbit. I love showing off creators that I've seen on, on Twitch. She's a fantastic entertainer. Her work is amazing. I'm going to go link this in the YouTube chat as well. Thank you for the $50, Phoenix Matthias. That is incredibly nice of you. You kick ass, dude. Thank you. Seriously. And there we go. So, you guys are fantastic. You're all amazing. I couldn't do all of this without you. You are absolutely the reason that I'm able to get on the internet and do this every day. And I can't thank you enough. So, thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.